Happy Halloween from Talk to the Entities headquarters. Here at the Talk to the Entities headquarters, we believe that you shouldn't be scared, you should be prepared. So this Halloween, we have prepared a compilation of the greatest hits of past Talk to the Entities Halloween celebrations from many of the Talk to the Entities facilitators. Get your favorite Halloween treat, tuck in. This is an 11 hour video, but don't worry, there's time marks below to show you when different facilitators start, what their topics are, what their language is. I hope that you start to learn what you know, get empowered, and learn these amazing tips, tricks, tools of Talk to the Entities that will make all of your spirit awareness easy, effective, and even the facilitation of consciousness. Love you guys. Hello, everybody. So hopefully I'm coming to you guys live. I am currently in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, doing a three-day body class, and I really want to show you the class, but like I'm not allowed to. So anyways, they're just all right there. So welcome to Talk to the Entities Halloween slash Deo de, de, de Muertos celebration. Um, I hope all of you guys out there have been enjoying some awesome Facebook Lives with some of the awesome Talk to the Entities facilitators. Um, we had some really, about two hours ago, I was like, what am I going to talk about on this? And I asked the class here and there were some great questions. Um, so I think my theme is, what were your two questions? How to be a witch? That was number one. And what was the other? There was like, 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 what is Halloween kind of a thing? Um, you know, and like these days we celebrate a lot of holidays and things that we don't necessarily are we're not we're no longer connected to their origins um and quite frankly a lot of the holidays that we celebrate today were originally celestial or seasonal celebrations because our ancestors lived more in communion with the earth so they were more celestial connected because they had to be and they both Deo de Muertos and Halloween occur during the time of har of harvest when we're starting to enter into the darker time of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. So I was saying, yeah, this is, it's really interesting. The, um, so any of you guys running body processes that start to tap into everybody that's online for this, just recognize that that's what this is. <laughs> it's really interesting bringing this energy into a body class. So um, yeah, let's play with it. So it's like, like today we celebrate mostly with food and candy, um, but what are the legends that brought us here and what were sort of the original sources of these celebrations and do they need to be relevant to you? We always do something for Halloween with Talk to the Entities because it is essentially the Talk to the Entities holiday. Um, and I think the question of like how to be a witch in modern times is sort of an interesting one. Um, I would say that in this day and age, no one would really call me a witch. They would more call me a bitch. <laughs> so all you witches that turned into bitches, we destroy it and create all that. Yeah. Right, wrong, combat all nine, pod, fox, shorts, boys, and beyonds. And all you bitches who really just want to be witches, but are super angry that you can't be the magic and the sorcery that you really are, we destroy it and create all that. <sighs> right, wrong, good, and bad, all nine, pod, fox, shorts, boys, and beyonds. So it's like, we have to remember that our ancestors all lived with, worked with, talked to, and believed in the spirit world. Lack of belief in the spirit world is a relatively modern phenomenon that was instituted by religion and then solidified by the religion of science. So we sort of live in this weird world now where you're like not really supposed to believe in ghosts, but like we all believe in ghosts. So we have like this dichotomy. And you have to remember it's like, our ancestors, like where Halloween slash Deo de Muertos slash all of the harvest celebrations that have gone on through with all the cultures all over the world, um, call them whatever you want, they were essentially aware 
that the season was about to change and we were going from the time of warmth in light into the time of darkness. And I think that that going into the time of the darkness of the winter has been heavily misconstrued as like the darkness of the spirit world or the dark arts or the dark side of the moon or, you know, that stuff. And so how much of your connection with the earth that is the magic that then was accused of, that then was called witchcraft, have you given up because it's not acknowledged as a, val as a, as a validity anymore? And everything that is and everything that brings up, will you guys destroy and create it, please? Right, wrong, good, battle, nine, pod, puck, shorts, boys, beyonds. And like, what if, what if this time of year, instead of celebrating the dead or celebrating the ghosts, like in America, it's all ghosts and goblins and ghouls and guts. And it's sort of like the one day of the year that like the dark side is allowed to come out. I remember we were in uh, Santa Barbara, California, Santa Barbara, California, about four and maybe five years ago for Halloween. And I'm from Santa Barbara, but I hadn't lived in Santa Barbara for many, many, many years. So I was sort of back there for the first time in a really, really long time. And it was on Halloween and we were staying downtown and I didn't know it was Halloween. And I was walking around in the morning and there were people literally walking around with monsters masks on. And there was like dead bodies on lawns. And I was like, whoa, this is weird. And I was like, oh, it's Halloween. Isn't it interesting that that's the one time a year that people will let the dark side come out? And what if, it, what if we didn't have to heart, hide the dark side? No, let's do this instead. How much of your magic, mystery, possibility, and energy have you hidden in the dark so no one would judge you for it? And everything that that is, we guys destroy and create it. Right, raw, good, bad, all nine, pod, pock, shorts, boys, meons. And what humanoid capacities have been so heavily judged that you believe that if you're ever that capacity, that ability, that healing, that knowing, that energy ever again, you'll be, you know, condemned as being evil or a witch or both and everything that is, you guys destroy it and create it. And everywhere you perpetrated the curse of witchcraft too, will you destroy and uncreate all that? Right, wrong, good, bad, all nine, pud, puck, shirts, boys and beyonds. And so like when we talk about witchcraft, it can go so many different ways because like either we laugh like ha 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 funny witchcraft, right? Because in this day and age, we don't really talk about witchcraft as like a thing. But remember how like women used to be killed for witchcraft? So, and something I joke around about a lot today is like, I mean, look, it's like, I talk to ghosts for a living. Like, what is that? If that's not witchcraft, I don't know what to call that. Crazy? Like you can either be a witch, you could be crazy, or you can be filthy rich. And what I would like to teach all of the witch bitches is how to be wildly famous and filthy rich for what is different about you that you think is wrong about you. And everything that that is and everything that doesn't allow it, will you all please destroy and create it? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine. Pod, pock, shorts, boys and beyonds. We have to come out of the dark ages where witchcraft was condemned and recognize that we are in a different day and age where witches can be rich. And no one really condemns you for witchcraft anymore because nobody believes in it. So we're pretty much free now. I want to send out a notice, like, <laughs> they might've killed you that lifetime, but did you ever really lose you? So what magic, mystery, possibility, and spirit art craft are you capable of and does come naturally to you that if you chose it would change your life, your reality, and the reality around you? Everything that doesn't allow that, we destroy and uncreate it, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, pock, shorts, boys, beyonds. If you were on this Facebook Live and you don't understand what that weird thing I just said was, that's the access clearing statement. Um, yeah, that's the access consciousness clearing statement. <laughs> I think if you're here, you probably know what access is, but if you're ever watching this sometime in the future out there in the universe, 
somebody is going to post a link to theclearingstatement.com wherever this video lives and go please check that out. It's the magical erase button for all the energy you use to limit yourself. Ooh. Okay, so what else, guys? Ah, so all of your, since I'm in Mexico, I, I'm going to probably take the track of Deo de Muertos, which is basically an ancestral celebration. Is that correct? It's an ancestral, yeah. So most indigenous cultures still do ancestral celebrations. We have lost that in a lot of the Western Anglo cultures. We don't do ancestral celebrations. We pretend like once you die, then you're like gone forever. <laughs> but in more indigenous cultures and more tradi not, not traditional native cultures, there's still a lot of ancestral worship and ancestral relevance, like Mexico, Africa, all of Asia, basically everywhere that is not a European descent culture. So I had a point that I was gonna go somewhere with. Ah, yes. So all of the ancestors that have just come into the room <laughs> and all of your ancestors that are out there with you guys, it's like, this is, now this is the talk to the entities point of view. So you have to remember, like I grew up in a Western European descent culture. Um, I didn't have actually any relationship with my grandparents that were alive, let alone my ancestors before them. Both of my biological parents basically ran away from their families. So I didn't have a strong, there wasn't like a really strong family connection, let alone ancestral connection. So when I first started working with entities, it was like, okay, what do I do with this awareness rather than just be scared all the time, right? Because that's where it started for me. Like I've been aware of the spirit world all my life and I'm really lucky because I was raised by Gary Douglas, who is the is an fucking incredible man. And he, is the founder of Access Consciousness, and he always encouraged me to be aware of what I was aware of. He never made me wrong for seeing invisible people walking down the hall, and you know. But I, there was one. It was one thing to like talk about the spirit world around my dining room table, which we actually did a lot. But then it was another thing to go out into the world and realize that, like, if I talked about, you know, seeing a dead person like sitting on a sofa that most people would judge me. So I knew that that was also going on in the world around me. And so as a teen, I like did my best to shut it off by using drugs, overeating, forcing it out of existence, all of which didn't work. It just made me worse and it made me suicidal because what occurs with spirit capabilities is if you don't acknowledge you're talking to entities or dealing with entities or aware of entities, you sort of distort your perception into depression, anxiety, social paranoia, schizophrenia, bipolar, etc. So by the time I was 18, I was really unhappy and I was extremely suicidal. And Gary had been sort of simultaneously doing more and more access. Like he started access when I was 12 and then I didn't really do much of it because it was just this thing my dad was doing. But then by the time I was 18, I was like, I'm going to die or I need to do something different. So he like tricked me into getting my bars run, which is one of the foundational processes of access. And that started really turning things around for me. I actually started feeling happy again for the first time. And then when I was 21, the light bulb switched on again and all the and all the spirits came back because I had made a commitment to like being myself when I was 21, which I really, looking back now, that's a pretty cool thing for a 21 year old to do. You know, I had made this like, I had been in art school. I had gone to, I had to, my mom like wanted me to go to college. I had no choice about it. I had to do something. So I chose art school and I hated it because I really didn't want to go to college. And I went, so I went to art school and I dropped out of one and I went to another and then I dropped out of that one. Finally, I was like, I don't really want to do this. I want to do access. And so I, I dropped out of art school and I moved back to Santa Barbara where I'm from and was living in my first apartment as an adult for the first time in my life. And I was in this tiny apartment, you know, in Southern California. And literally one day the living room in the apartment filled with so many ghosts that I couldn't see the other side of the room. And I knew it was entities. 
and I freaked out. I went into total reaction and I immediately called my dad and I was like, oh my God, my house is so full of ghosts. I'm so freaked out. And he's like, that's great. You know, he was really positive about it. And I was like, fuck this. I hate this. This is creepy. This is weird. Make this stop. And so I shut the door. I like really forced it to stop. And then over the next three to four months, my whole life just got worse and worse and worse. I didn't feel good. I felt really lost. I like couldn't make any money. I didn't, it was just not going well. And I was out at dinner at my parents' house one night and I'm complaining to my dad in the kitchen. I was like, my life sucks, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, what did you refuse to do? And I was like, oh, I refuse to talk to the entities. And I saw in that moment how refusing something that was a natural ability and capacity was going to kill me. <laughs> so I said yes to talk to the entities, even though it wasn't called talk to the entities at that point. I said yes, even though I had no idea what it would look like. And wow, am I fucking stoked I said yes, because what is this? 20 years later, it's talk to the entities has changed and saved so many people's lives. There's over 150 international facilitators who speak over 35 languages. There's two books. It's this thriving organism in the universe that reminds people that like spirit awareness is natural. And here are all the tools to use to make it work for us in the spirit world. And so when I learned this stuff, since I didn't really have ancestors, it was sort of like, it never really occurred to me until I think I went to India for the first time. And then came the ancestors. And I was like, oh, this is a thing. Like you guys actually want your ancestors around. <laughs> like, cause I had just grown up sort of like clearing entities, facilitating them to move on, creating with the ones that I could cooperate with. There was never really this like ancestral worship thing that happened. And so I've had to learn in Mexico, in India, in Asia, a lot in Japan about how to respect the ancestor culture because the ancestors, well, sorry, I jumped too many tracks. So this is the thing. Would an infinite being have a family? Would an infinite being have a family? If you were born and taken away on day one and raised by some other family and no one ever told you, would you ever know the difference? So family is conceptual. It's an idea we have. It's not a reality. Our families share a genetic, our, excuse me, our bodies share a genetic family, but we as the being don't have family. So when your body dies, do you still have a family? You don't even really have a family now. You just pretend like you do. <laughs> How many of you guys would like to be alleviated from being part of your family? Right, wrong, good, bad, all nine, pod, pug, shirts, boys, and beyonds. <laughs> and so when it comes to the ancestor thing, it's like, I don't really think that it's any different. It's like, I think we treat our ancestors the same way we treat our family. It's like, are your families, now don't get mad at me. I'm going to say this to free a few of you. <laughs> I love the family conversation. If you feel defensive, feel free to close your computer. Um, it's like, oh, what was I saying? Yes. Is your family about empowerment, freedom of choice, and allowance? Or, have your, or has your family been a source of judgment and limitation for you? What's your priority? Judgment, limitation, or freedom and possibility? And so this is like where you need to also take this into the spirit world. It's like, why would you want to keep your ancestors around after they walked out of their bodies? My point of view is like, we should all, we all have, no, this isn't, this isn't even a point of view. This is just what it is. We all have free will and we all have choice. When your body dies, what choice would you like to make? You know, are you going to hang around to, to take care of your family or to control your family or to be part of your family? Is that enough for you? And is that enough for your ancestors? So all of your ancestors that would like to leave now, let's do this. Let's revoke, recant, rescind, renounce, denounce, destroy, and create all your commitments, oaths, vows, fealties, community swearings, binding and bonding contracts that you made to them and that they made to you and the family throughout any and all lifetimes, dimensions, and realities, including all the shaky parts and pieces. Destroy it, create all that. Right, wrong, good, bad, all nine. Woohoo! 
Pod Pock Shorts, Boys and Beyonds. Now, Truth, who are all of you? Truth, who were you all before that? Truth, who were you all before that? <sighs> Truth, who will you be in the future? I don't believe in family. I believe in choice and I believe in free will. And I think that keeping the ancestors around is, it's like, it's one thing if it's their choice, it's one thing if you're needy. And if you're needy towards a spirit that binds and bonds them to this world and doesn't allow them to move on. So it's a different point of view. It's a different way of looking at ancestral things. It's a different way of looking at family, period, you know? So yeah, there we go. Happy Halloween. <laughs> So this was like a speed change for all of you. Um, feel free once this gets posted in Facebook, wherever this is getting posted to watch it again, it'll go up into YouTube into the Talk to the Entities channel. Also, there are other uh, Halloween Talk to the Entities Facebook Lives in other languages too. So if you're not a native English speaker, we have Spanish and Russian and French and maybe, I don't know, I don't know what else, but that's there's a lot. So. Um, I want to say something else. There was something else I wanted to say about this. What did I want to say? Read my book. And then do other Talk to the Entities classes, because there's like so much more. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, whew, yeah, OK? I don't really know where to finish this. We could do this for four hours. <laughs> But we will finish this now. So happy Halloween for all of you guys. I hope you're enjoying. Oh, yeah, someone just pointed, posted the Beings of Light book. That's an awesome one. And then there's another one called Talk to the Entities, which is more like the nuts and bolts of how to get started. Um, beautiful. Thank you all so much for joining. Um, trust yourself. Bye. <laughs>
we've made it to be. Basically, yeah, <laughs> they've added a lot of significance, just like they've done that with with Christmas, like yeah. all these were pageant uh, ritual moments and traditions and uh, moments with Earth. Yeah, and now we've made it into a kind of consumer scary yeah party. Exactly, and ex exactly, and I think it had to do with like the harvest too, right? Yeah, it was, yeah. Like, yeah. Really like, it's a moment of um, of being with nature and preparing yeah. for the winter, yeah, well, which is kind it. of right, really cool and really smart because you know, especially in those days, people were much more agricultural, agriculturally mm -hmm. active, and so they knew they had to create with the entities, and now. Uh, I, I would say, Matt, Anthony, adding this whole religious perspective to it is really very spot on. Like how much have we created this dislocation in a way of the inclusion of entities because the religions have made it something taboo and something dangerous yeah. and something bad and yeah. something that we have to totally reject. And so this connection has really been um, thwarted and undone. And yeah. now we actually have to really make a very in a way somehow i would say nearly forced choice because in those days people just knew it was like it's just like you know that you're going to put petrol in your car if you want to move it you know you just yeah. require that that's part of yeah. life you don't need anybody right. to go if you don't put petrol you're gonna get in trouble you're gonna get stuck it's like dude i know i'm gonna do it myself you don't need to tell me yeah. but that's like what if that's also what is with entities like if we would actually know what gift they can be, would we need to force ourselves to become present? Yeah. And uh, and what if we don't have to be afraid anymore? What what a very, um, how can I say that? What, what a backward way of looking at, at the entity world as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, what if it could be as simple as like putting petrol in your car? And it's not something you have to think about, but so many people, and it's like that, that small percentage of the people that know that there's a different possibility, like they're aware of something, they do have to fight against um, the stigma. And again, yeah. it doesn't matter if you're you know, Jewish or Christian or Muslim, it doesn't matter because they all have their strong points of view that if you yeah. go outside of that particular box, that somehow you're gonna be condemned to hell for the rest of your life, or you're gonna open up this Pandora's box of this demonic world and there's going to be the point of no return. But it's like, it's like th those, those small percentage of the people, like there's gotta be something else though. There's gotta be, cause this is not working. This is not working. And so while they're pursuing or investigating that something else, they're also fighting against the stigma or going against even their family members, maybe even their spouse yeah. or their lover. And so those are the brave souls that are willing to go because they know that there's something else that's possible. And what if it wasn't as bad as they made it? And, and it's not like you have to give up the thing, your religion, whatever that is, but it's like, what if you can incorporate these tools and these awarenesses really just to make your life easier? Because so many people in all those respective religions, let's say, I don't know why I'm bringing up the religion thing today, but I guess it's appropriate. Probably aware of something <laughs> well especially where i live in the south you know i mean it's like, ah, it's like a Bible yeah. belt, you know so it's just oh. so intense mm. and um and it's okay mm. I and mean, i don't have a point of view because i've been there i i know i know what their points of view are but and what i can honestly say for those of you who are listening maybe going through this is that they're these are just tools to make your life easier yeah. you don't have to be at the effect of your awareness <laughs> uh and they're just tools to help empower you. So Exactly. And if you would like to have a richer life, like what you were just talking to, Anthony, like, like, do you want this expansion where life is actually much more easy and you can deal with your awareness without like you stopping yourself or in a way even hurting yourself? Mm -hmm. These tools actually create much more ease. And I think it's really cool that now more and more people are actually willing to have this conversation even though it is still charged and it is still taboo i mean both of us have been traveling to countries where it's like oh my god entities and a class are you fucking kidding me okay. like i'm not gonna like pay to get like demolished you know in the future by all these entities and this pandora's yeah. box that you were talking about and then realizing oh my god no this is not a pandora's box that i will get like 
submerged by. But this is where I actually can get more into choice with entities and into presence mm -hmm. with entities. And it's mm -hmm. this thing of like, if I would do this class, I open the door to something that I can never get out of and I will get yeah. overridden yeah. by these entities, which is actually a lot of times what is already the case because they don't have the tools. And if you get <laughs> no, the tools, yeah. it's opposite Bingo. like no actually you know like you can get to you can come to the class and you can get the tools and you get awareness and then then you can say hey guys not now because i'm cooking or i'm having sex and you know <laughs> and exactly. hey i am creating and i'm aware of an entity and what can this entity contribute so you become much more inclusive and present instead yeah. of just being busy with rejecting and functioning from something that is not yours because the fear has been sold you yeah. know, has had a very good advertising campaign. The fear of entities has done very well in terms of uh, advertisement and this energy of what you're also being here, like this ease, ease, right? Like this, hey, you want it easier? Yeah. So different, there's no fighting, there is no uh, resisting. It's literally like, there's an easier way. Why yeah. would you not want that? Yeah. yeah and and that's the brilliance that you be and 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 that you know i that's the approach i also take too and that's what i've noticed about you and how you facilitate and how you be with it is that it is like just putting petrol in your car you know what i mean it's like you kind of like demystify it and you don't make it significant and you know you you present the tools to the people so they could use it in their everyday life and yeah. it's you take the sort of the woo, woo out of all of this and I'll tell you, because I've done a lot of woo woo, and I'm sure you have too, you know. And we were really good at it. <laughs> I was awful at it, but it was like it didn't change anything. And then, and then when this stuff was sort of presented to us in a way that was really pragmatic, um, it's like, oh my god, you know what I mean? And so, so that's really cool, like how you put this information out there. And like just to make it like an everyday thing. It's like no, like putting your pants on in the morning. It really can be that way. Can you talk about like like this? Well, I don't know if this is even appropriate, but it's like some people are overwhelmed. They are overwhelmed because they have this influx of awareness and like sort of the value of office hours. Oh yeah, the office hours are literally where, like I was just saying, you're cooking or you're busy, and an entity is basically like on knocking on you or many people talk about entities being more active at night it's not like they put their alarm and they all show up because it's midnight but it's just because your barriers are down and you're more relaxed and actually they've been there all the time but now you're willing to be present with them but it's not always the right time for you right at yeah. night you're like actually i want to sleep yeah. so office hours is this great um i would say tool that we have in the talk to the entities um where you basically give them an appointment. You're like, hey guys, I know I've been, apparently I've been an idiot and I've been refusing you and ignoring you and I've been rude, <laughs> apologies. Yeah. And you know, hey, what could you come another moment that's more um, useful, uh, like appropriate and easy for me. And yeah. you literally give an appointment like you would give an appointment if you're a massage therapist or a hairdresser. And you basically say, okay, Tuesday at 10 a.m. And that's your office hour because in the night or whatever moment doesn't work for you, your office is closed because you're cooking or you're feeding your kids or you're sleeping. doing whatever it is. Sleeping, exactly. Yeah. Because I think one of the many, you know, many people say, look, I can't sleep, the entities. And it's like, yeah. tell them to come when it works for you. And they will because they just want you to be present. The fact that you're already acknowledging their presence, it's like, they're like, oh my God, oh my God, she finally saw me. She's finally willing to be aware of me. Yeah. And giving the office hours actually gives them a clarity of like, okay, Tuesday at 10 a.m. And then Tuesday at 10 a.m., just like if you would give an appointment to somebody, you got to be present for your client because now your entity is basically a client. Yeah. And in that office hour, you have your moment to talk yeah. with this entity and talk, not in the necessary verbal human way, but definitely uh, becoming present and asking questions and get awareness of what that entity wants and requires. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. It's an amazing tool and it it works and it works and it really built, helps you to build up muscles. Yeah. Like, like awareness muscles even more. And it actually makes those already existing awarenesses you have much easier on your mind and on your body. <laughs> can you Can you say more about that? 
Well, you know, it's like, again, if we're, if we are, you know, running or hiding from our awarenesses, right, they tend to create symptoms, either in our body, certain pain, certain intensities, as, as we call them in access, and also, you know, maybe some mental stuff, like maybe anxiety, or insomnia, or maybe even depression, yeah. um, maybe even bipolar and schizophrenia, so on and so forth. I mean, you could go on the way extreme. And what if those were, you know, entity awareness symptoms? And so when you have these office hours, and you're willing to actually have your barriers down and be present with these energies that you've been avoiding for 25, 30, 40, 50 years, um, those energies, those symptoms, the energy that drive those particular symptoms that we're referring to starts to begin to release and dissipate. And then you find yourself not having those symptoms anymore. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and, you know, what if those were indicators too for you? What if those were the way your body or your mind was indicating to you what's actually going on in their universe? Mm. And that would kind of help you better have a conversation with them during your office hours. So yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Very I cool. Myself, I had to force myself to do that because I had a strong point of view. I did not have a capacity in this area. Mm. And um, it, it wasn't until I was like super, super, super really depressed for like no logical reason whatsoever. I'm like, maybe I need to really do this office hour thing. And I did. And like I had this about 40 minute conversation and they typically doesn't take that long. But that one particular time it did. And when I got really present and worked with like sort of the three principles, if you will, the clear communicate receiving thing. And I actually did all three. It was like whoop, that depression like completely left. It was like, like totally gone like that. It was wow. like, whoa. Wow. Cool. Wow. Just 40 minutes. I mean, like you said, that's even long, but that's like not a lot of time. If you look at the fact that how people walk around with depression and don't seem to find a way to cure it so yeah. then this change of state like physical or mental are basically possible indications that there are entities that are looking to connect with you and that you might have been refusing to be present with yeah. and 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 that is so cool also because now you know i think you are similar like you see somebody and you are you know of somebody who is in even a mental institution, right? Or under medication, because they have, they've been, um, how do you call that, diagnosed with yeah. certain mental health issues. And you're just like, oh no, that person doesn't have a mental health issue. They just have entity awareness that they don't know how to handle. Yeah. And it's yeah. such a different perspective. And it takes off the wrongness that we have basically projected on these people like oh my god you you're messed up you're crazy and it's like no this person is really aware and yeah. how many of us have felt crazy while we were just really aware of something that this reality says does not exist yeah. and it's just such a different perspective on um mental health and entities so it's really cool absolutely it's really and it's a safe place it's like the talk to the entities provides a safe place for for people like that to come yeah. through and be like, hey, this is what I'm aware of. And I felt insane most of my life. Or when I tried to seek counsel in this area, um, they would either pray for me and nothing would change or they would medicate me and nothing still would change. It was just oh. My creative, you know, desires, <laughs> you know, and numb me out. And so, yeah. um, and, and again, and, and I've seen it, I've seen, I've witnessed it because it was my late wife went through this herself. And it's like, yeah. when you have no place to go, with these awarenesses and and it does if it doesn't fit into whatever your particular paradigm is so spiritually or whatever it can yeah. fuck you up it, <laughs> it gets can hard really fuck you up and and uh you know there's no word less to use than that word because it matches the energy but it's like but this is a safe place for you to say hey this is what i'm aware of and it's been making me insane how yeah. can we change this how can we have ease with this well what you're saying is also really you know, on point about like, it's either praying, which is basic, like, okay, or m medication. So either you're praying and something or someone else has to figure it out for you because you cannot. And yeah. the other one of the medication is you have to basically turn your, switch yourself off and like make yourself basically non-present so that there's nothing because you're not there and right. so your awareness disappears as well right. which it doesn't because it's still there but you're just numbing yourself and in both ways you're totally disempowered yes. right like you're totally disempowered 
the praying one as well as the medication one. And I think one of the big things for me and many of us, right, is like when we started to use the tools, it's like, wow, how many times am I not being present with what I'm aware of? Yeah. Because I've just not been taught that this is something I can be and do. Like my muscles are weak. I'm just so used to ignoring what is just, and then you're like, oh, wait a minute. But like you said, it's so much easier if I've just become present for one minute. I'm like, oh, it's an entity. Okay. Does this entity yeah. want to be clear? Does you know? Does this entity want to communicate yeah. with me? Does the entity want to contribute to me? And then it's over, and you're like, okay, that fog that was there just disappeared in like a minute. But we're taking yeah. like yeah. we're pushing it away and making it so much harder on ourselves by not being present. So the whole mm -hmm. presence, the presence, and is an empowerment also yeah. thereby, beautiful which I think stuff. is awesome which i think is yeah, awesome because that's so beautiful it's beautifully said because it, with prayer it's like we're waiting for some power outside of ourselves to come in to fix it and change it exactly. and you're right, this and that's okay to do that okay but if you've been sitting praying and waiting praying and waiting praying and waiting and you're not getting the results this is a safe landing place to actually have that connection and be empowered and not actually sitting there hoping and dreaming that the change is going to occur well, exactly. exactly. Her, God doesn't love you. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's not working. So I'm praying wrong. God doesn't love me. I'm not yeah. worth it. So it like only makes you more wrong. Yeah. Uh, and in a way, so does the medication because you're like, oh no, you're not right. Take this medicine and you will become right. So it's yeah. such a crazy way of being with people and being with what's up, which is actually like, hey, it's not a big deal. Like you said, they're just people without bodies or a different kind of entity because there are also other kind of entities but it is as soon as you look at it like hey if it's just a person without a body that already creates a lot of relaxation um you know if you just look at like you said like some are fun and some are not and some are you know uh, grumpy and some are not grumpy and yeah. so can so can entities be that way and then you have other kinds of entities like entities connected to the earth or uh, yeah. beings of light or even demons and they're all part of this big kingdom yeah but just this willingness to be like oh wait a minute there's so much more than meets the eye and what if that doesn't have to freak us out anymore yeah beautifully said beautifully thank said. you yeah thank you what, thank you what else this i mean i can go on and on and on about it and, and i know i know how much you love uh, i know how much you love this <laughs> yeah I, sometimes i go into reaction with it because i could i could perceive the struggle in people's universes and i could hear the you know the different diagnoses out there and it's like it it, it it infuriates me because i feel like this is information that should be in everyone's home around the world you know what i mean and and you know, kudos to Shannon, the creator of Shannon O'Hara, the creator of Talk to the Entities, oh, for not yes. using the name of the program, right? Because a lot of people will look at the name and be like, oh, okay, that's not for me, you know, yeah. right? But she was like, I'm not gonna change it and like, you know, mask it with some different title just to kind of get you to come and then maybe you'll hear. But yeah. like, look, it's like whether you believe it or not, they're around you. <laughs> And I wasn't one of those people who were like see ghosts or hear ghosts or anything like that. But it was always had this like awareness here, but I never mm. really developed it. And it took me forever to even develop it, even when, by the time I got to access. And it wasn't until yeah. like four or five years, been in access for eight years, but like four or five years into access, where I actually started looking at this mm. as something that, okay, maybe I really need to build up this area in my life and see what it actually creates. And it's, I mean, it's changed my life. I, I, I remember. Easier too. Sorry? It's, it's helped me to work with body, people's bodies, right? Everything. So, Everything. It, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So. yeah. And it's interesting because how uh, disembodied beings are so connect is so connected to our embodiment. Because mm -hmm. like you said, working with bodies, there's a lot of stuff about disembodied beings that we haven't learned or nobody told us and then it's like oh this pain in your back is not a pain in your back it's actually an entity you know and <laughs> look yeah. actually oops you know something yeah. completely different now what i just wanted to say is i remember the first uh, the the cf uh, entity cf class that you did in vienna that i think was your first and you yeah. it was so fun to be there and see you just like totally get like these you know like oh my god but da, 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 and just you thought, receive, yeah. receive your world open up and yeah. that's yeah. totally what happened to me as well i postponed doing i did my first entities class uh when shannon came to holland in amsterdam 
a few years back and then I kept postponing. I did the advanced class and I loved it and I kept post postponing to do the um, facilitators class and it was always like oh yeah and then suddenly I was like oh, dude what am I doing and as soon as I chose that facilitators class my yeah. world went boom and yeah. it's like no turning back right like that's yeah. when you get you get the bliss of entity awareness and you're like why would I not desire this <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, and it's like, why was I making such a big deal about it? Yeah. You know, I, yeah. this is amazing, <laughs> but it's very different. And it's like Shannon also says, it's one of the craziest classes in access consciousness because it's such a different topic and a different yeah. way of dealing with this topic. And yes, absolutely. Because if Sha Shannon O'Hara had to be the one, you know, she chose to do this uh, despite a lot of energy against it because this reality does yeah. not support this conversation and mm -hmm. her willingness to keep going and ride the wave regardless has allowed now so many people to get access to these tools and get freedom yeah. and a whole different reality around their awareness and entities so i think both us as well the embodied as the disembodied beings are cheering for that <laughs> yeah, absolutely absolutely it's fun. Yeah. I'm smiling here because I was like, you know, it took a lot of courage. It takes a lot, took a lot of courage for her to go out and do this because there oh, were yes. a lot of projections and rejections, you know, because people, people hold on to their beliefs or even people who actually can see them. But a lot, a lot of those people that I've, I've met, they're struggling. Yeah. They're struggling mentally, they're struggling physically. And it's like when they hear this information that it could actually be easy, they actually get more angry. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm like, oh, no, we're just, you know, you're trying to get, you know, why you sh don't shoot the messenger. They're just tools to help your life be easier. And oh, unless you don't want your life to be easier. That one. I was just <laughs> going to say, but those people might not desire an easier life. And then they're like upset with you because you're like, stop making my life so nice. Yeah. I hate you. I hate you. Like, I hate you. Dr. Hate Dr. You. Mattis. You're mean, Dr. Mattis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're making my life more joyful and easy. That's so right. small. What's all this laughter going on here? What's all this laughter? This is an entities class. <laughs> Hello, did you not get the memo? This is serious stuff. <laughs> yeah, this is not a conscious class. Everybody's laughing. I'm very disturbed. <laughs> so, oh anyway. God, love this. Does anybody have any questions, you guys? Oh, I didn't even look at the comments. Oh my God. Oh, I need to click on comments. No, oh, we I haven't yet. Yeah, hey guys. I was like, you guys talking. <laughs> I didn't we're have just having that. we're just having a lot of fun and we're like, oh yeah, you guys are watching. <laughs> yeah. Any uh, questions, anybody? Yeah, anything, you know. Anything, yeah. <laughs> I've been I've enjoyed this conversation a lot, Anthony. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Me too. Thanks for compliment on on the hat. I'm a conscious cowboy. That's what I am for Halloween today. I love that. <laughs> I was gonna <laughs> wear my bow tie and no shirt, but it got a little chilly here, so. Oh, too bad. <laughs> anyway, wow. happy Samhain. What's that mean? Samhain is like the original Halloween uh, oh. celebration nice. from the from the days. Nice. From from the days, from the days. Thanks, Kim. <laughs> awesome conversation. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Well, I don't know if there's anything else to add, Anthony. I think both of us can go on forever. Yeah, uh, really. And, and we will not um, bore you guys <laughs> yeah. with that. But I really love this energy of pragmatics that uh, we have both been basically tapping into and speaking to. And what if this year's Halloween can be more ease, joy, and glory than ever? I wonder. Absolutely. Cool. Do you guys, does, do your kids go, does your daughter go trick-or-treating? Yeah, we're going to go not... trick-or-treating later today. She's got a couple of her friends coming over, and they're going to have awesome. a sleepover. She's going to be uh, Hermione Granger from Harry Potter. Oh, I can imagine that with her blonde. She put her hair in braids, like, last night, so that when she takes them out, they could be sort of frizzy. She could have Friz <laughs> So I love it. She's ready for it. Yeah. She's ready exactly, for it. Exactly. Very cool. Very All right. Cool. Well, Thanks, everybody. All right. See you next time. And there's um, Shannon coming up in a few, like in about, I think, five hours or something, five and a half hours, and uh, or six and a half hours, actually. And keep a, have a look at the page uh, and see what else is going on. 
Yep. Thank you, Anthony. All Thank right. you, everybody. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>
even like when it came to dressing up as Halloween and even now as an adult, you know, when people say, what, get dressed up for Halloween, I'm like, I'll be a fairy, give me wings, <laughs> like give me a halo, like I'll be a butterfly. Like I like, like tend to veer towards like more that fairy like energies. And yeah. I think even the movies I watch. I'll be a watch, fairy. You're like, yeah, going around stabbing people. <laughs> I think we need more of those. Just kidding. Um, it's so funny too, because I was also always terrified as a child and I didn't know why, literally until I took my first talk to the entities class. I'm like, oh shit. I was watching so many of those horror movies as kids. I was so aware of energy. I thought everything was trying to kill me, but I thought it was also in my imagination and I couldn't tell anybody because they're like, no, monsters aren't real. No one's trying to kill you. Ghosts aren't real. I'm like, okay, uh, well, why am I so terrified? And it wasn't until 30 whatever years later that I found out that ghosts are real. You are aware of things. Not everything's trying to kill you. If you watch yeah. those movies, yes, you might think that, but. Yeah, I think there's been a lot of like, uh, uh, you know, so I was wondering like before we got on the live, like I'm like, what am I gonna talk about? Like, because like for me, like I, been way more connected like for me I see I, like the spirit world to me is like a lot of times it's like people that have passed on um, and from a young age I was very connected to people without bodies that had been here before and also like the fairy realm the like the nature spirits I was very much in communion with that growing up That's so like that Ireland. yeah growing up in Ireland because we would just play on the land all day like we would just be out in the field up the mountains um, so I, I I didn't have actually I didn't really like like playing with that many people I used to play by myself a lot and make up my own games and now I realize I was actually playing a lot with the earth spirits and and nature spirits and stuff but I realized that like that scary stuff it was a lie for me so anything that's a lie I tend to just like okay whatever I'm not even gonna go there yeah. and I was looking at today and I was like even the energy around like because you could say like spirit but then you say ghost and it's like the whole energy around a ghost is like it's haunting you or something, right. you know? And yeah. and is that actually true? Yes. <laughs> Not for you. When I was a kid, I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> but I also, so it sounds like you liked more of like a calm, like your point of view around entities when you were younger was like, yay. And mine was like adrenaline. <laughs> like I live for adrenaline or something. Uh, Otherwise, I didn't know it was real. So wow. that's really cool because now yeah. so much, I know I've had a lot of coffee this morning, so I'm like, ah, this isn't adrenaline. I'm just excited. So, <laughs> but now like with being aware of entities and ghosts, it like they don't have to get my attention through adrenaline anymore mm. or through anxiety or sometimes it'll show up like that still. And I'm like, oh, oh, is this an entity? Oh, hello, okay. Now I know that that's just like one of the triggers or like one of the, um, what do we call them? Like signs, entity awareness signs. Yeah. yeah. Entity awareness signs that they're around. And so now when I get anxious or anxiety or like adrenaline, I'm like, oh, is this mine? Is this someone else's? Is this an entity? Like, what is this? Is this the earth? Um, and it's just way easier to maneuver and like be with it. Yeah, be with it. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I you know, I even had like yesterday, like, uh, and I use the tools of talk to the entities, like, on a daily basis, and um, clearing, communicating, receiving, which you learn more about in the talk to the entity class. Um, but, like, I came you home. I went to the rewrite. Just oh, yes. You haven't taken the rewrite yet. Well, you haven't taken the rewrite yet. So talk to the entities is being rewritten. There's a new manual, and there's a fourth thing that you now there do. There is. That's really anyway. Go yeah. ahead. Clear, communicate, receive. Well, I mean, that's interesting. Like that actually fourth element I was reading about in the book last night, which is a lot of how we be with the earth. But like the and um, the like, I came home last night and I was like, after teaching a class around a lot of kind of like heavy energy, like people in re because it's a rehab center, it's a drug rehab center, so people are coming off drugs. So there's like a lot going on in in their world in the center and i came home and i had that like like you said like that anxiety palpitating and i know before like i'd be like oh what is, like i'd be resisting it and now with the tools to talk to the entities it's just like okay what is this like okay is there entities here i can clear and then i go through the entity clearing which is so easy this is why i'm so grateful for talk to the entities because it's like like it's not that i'm not aware of like 
heavy energies or the so-called dark energies or ghosts. I'm very, aware. I'm very aware of it, but it's like, how do you, you know, like, do you really want to be aware of it if you don't have tools to change it? And so most people are like, I don't want to deal with this because I, if I have to deal with this, what am I going to do with it? The beauty of talk to the entity tools is that you can be aware of it and, and actually change it and clear so, it and communicate and whatever is required. So I did the clearings. I did the entity clearings. I communicated a bit and, and then I did a couple more clearings and yeah, it shifted. Like it didn't shift right away, but it shifted. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Oh, one thing that they've been talking, they access has been talking about in classes is like, um, so there's access and talks to the entities has super easy tools. Like who does this belong to? Is this mine? Is this someone else's? Am I, what am I aware of? And a lot of people think that the tools are just to make stuff go away. Mm. But if you're aware of something and it doesn't want to go away and it needs facilitation, you're still going to perceive it. So it's still going to be there. So a lot of people think that like clearing entities is just clearing the entities to make them go away. And like you're saying like, okay, it shifted and it changed. Okay. Now what, what else is possible or now what is required? Okay. The, this energy is still here. It's not wrong. It's not right. It's just like, okay, do I need to ask a question? Can I even change this? Can I not change it? If I can't change it, maybe go do something else. And if you yeah. it, keep asking questions. I like that. And also just allowance. An allowance. Like, okay, yeah. like, okay. Like I live in Denver and there's drugs and homeless people everywhere. And I'm like, can I change this myself right now? No. Okay. What else is possible? And uh, I guess I'll have allowance for you there. <laughs> we'll go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. It's not your job to clear every entity in, right. in the whole planet, you know, like if it makes your life easier, do it. And if it doesn't carry on, like, yeah, I like um, Julie D. Mayo said, she said, I still dislike that scary shit. Reminds me too much of past lives. Some of what people think is make believe is way too real. Ooh, how evil were you in a past? <laughs> <laughs> Everything that is. Can we just try and uncreate it? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, puck, all in shirts. And that's the access consciousness clearing statement. That's what we use to clear like those those points of views we have from past lives. Like, yeah. Basically anything that makes you feel like shrinks your world or scares you or makes you not want to go and be free is a lie. And any of those lies, you can just be like, okay, everything this is, I uncreate and destroy it. Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pock, online, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Or pock and pod, or... Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Pock and pod. That was how, after my first bars class, I just went around every day, just going in my head. Pock, pod, pock, pod, pock, pod, pod, pock, pod, pock. <laughs> Everything I thought, you know, it was like every judgment in my head, pock and pod, pock and pod. And it worked. After totally. a while, I was like, oh my God, this stuff works. It's weird, but it works. I just started our Facebook Live on my phone. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> ah, there you are. So yeah, I know it really works and you can use it all the time. You don't have to say it out loud so you don't have to be like a weirdo. Oh yeah, I did like, it in my head. <laughs> yeah, I did it. I still do it in my head all the time. I'm like, oh, this feels weird. Pock and pod. Okay. Like you can be a closet weirdo or you can... Especially for Halloween, you can just be like a out of the closet weirdo if you want. Yeah. Do you think Halloween just gives everyone a permission to be as weird as they really actually be, but never allow themselves to be? Totally. Oh, yeah. I was hoping you'd talk about that. <laughs> like, like, why do you dress up for Halloween? Because you get to be something different. Yeah. And then, what do you be like when, you, like, in normal life? Serious. The same normal, as normal human. Yeah, human. Like, what would it take to be whoever you'd like to be every single day? Every day, day yeah. Like, what if you didn't need a holiday or permission from this reality to be like, be as weird? What if you got dressed up like this every day? Seriously. Like, what if you're like, today, what character would I like to play? Or like how they have, like, I, I guess as a kid, I turned everything into killer. But most people, when they're adults, they turn everything into like a slutty cat or something. So oh, yeah. you could be a slut every day. If yeah. that's what you really want to be. Yeah, it's so funny how many women in particular, like at Halloween, get dressed up as, yeah, like 
a pro like a like dominatrix slutty cat slutty like slutty bunny like slutty slutty like how many women in the world just want to be sluts every day right <laughs> but they're only allowed one day a year you know just at halloween or they like I don't know. Homecoming. I have to say, I have a friend, Sarah Kelly, and she is living in Ireland and she's brilliant. Like she is so willing to just get up and be like, what does my body want to wear? And she like, she'll go to the gym, like local gym in Ireland. And by the way, now getting dressed like this in Ireland is like, like beyond, 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 like <laughs> crazy. Like, because nobody, most people in Ireland don't even wear colored clothes. Never mind. Like she right. wears like burlesque type clothes so she'll like wear a corset like she'll wear like the um the garter you know the garter tights or whatever like yeah. you know and she'll wear like the shorts or the skirt and like then she'll wear like bright colors like neon and like she just loves it and she doesn't like she doesn't have a point of view she's like people That's can say what they want about me i love dress she loves dressing up and she gets she goes to the gym and works out like with these dressy clothes that's awesome. Really? I've been to Ireland and it is like literally like rainy, serious. If you're talking, it's got to be dramatic and yeah. the world is ending, but somehow you're persevering. So <laughs> yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. She's this little blonde girl walking around wearing her burlesque clothes every day. Like, yes. Yeah. Maybe what? ask your body every day, like, okay, body, what would you like if today, if every day was Halloween, what would we choose? Yeah. What role would we play? Yeah, what role would we play? Amy almost was a cat, and then she put whiskers on her forehead, and she turned into a tree spirit, earth spirit. Earthy girl. Earthy girl. <laughs> and maybe later I'll turn into that slutty cat. Exactly. You know, I don't know if cats are very slutty. Maybe like a... Cats are super slutty. Are they? Oh, okay. Have you ever watched them walk? They're yeah, like and the way they kind of like... And they're like, and they're like, you could touch me, but if you do, I'll fucking bite your hand. Or they just go away. Like they, yeah. are, they are really good at being slutty. I like that. But like you know, without giving it up. Without giving it up, I like it. Being slutty doesn't mean you have to give it up. Definitely doesn't. Where is this Facebook Live going? <laughs> so, more about Halloween and entities. You like, always have choice. <laughs> <laughs> you always have choice. You always have choice with entities. If something's yes. scaring you or whatever, it doesn't like anything that's heavy is not true. Actually, true for you. Yeah. So be like, okay, this feels heavy. Is this actually true for me? Nope, heavy. No matter how real it feels, mm. just like when I was a kid, everything felt really real. I could not, um, I couldn't have the lights off very often. I had to have some sort of light in my room on. I, but I would also torture myself. Like it would be thunder. I was terrified of thunderstorms into college. I was like, oh my god, and I'd have to have all the lights on. But I would also play like Michael Jackson Thriller at the same time, which I don't think was very conducive to like ease. I was like, because <laughs> I was terrified of. <laughs> The thriller song, but I was also obsessed with it. I'm like, this is weird. I'm so scared, but this is what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> so, so if it feels heavy, and I didn't know this back then, if it feels heavy, it's not true. You're just aware of something. Yeah. So sometimes if something feels heavy or scary, something is trying to get your attention. Mm. Yeah. And it's not always like going to harm you. It's not always like out to get you. It might be trying to give you some information. So you want to ask the three tools. Uh, does this energy want to clear, communicate, or receive? Do I need to receive something or would it like something? Yeah. And like also when something, like if something's trying to get someone or something's trying to get your attention and you're ignoring it, they're just going to keep like, tugging at you like a child would want your attention and like after a while it gets kind of loud so like it's heavy because it's loud in your world you know yeah. so like, also crying louder and louder and louder until you yeah yeah I actually had that the other night where there was like I couldn't sleep there was like energies in the room and I was like what and then I was like it's 4 a.m come back in the morning I'm not doing this right now and I did like I did the clearing you know and um, uh, one of the clearings from talk to the entities and uh it cleared a bit and then i just did all of life comes to me with ease joy and glory mm -hmm. and i just and i fell asleep and in the morning i was like okay i told you leave and i and i will deal with you in the morning and then i was like okay what is this and then i asked questions in the morning so that's another thing if things come to you at night like if you're disturbed at night like you're actually having awareness throughout the day that you're not dealing with 
and it, yeah. and then at night, like a lot of that stuff will come to you because your walls and barriers are down. That's great. So um, in the Talk to Entities class, we talk about having business hours. So if you can't sleep very well at night or you are like, I don't want to deal with this all the time, you can ask the entities to show up for your business hours or your office hours. Um, and a lot of people are like, oh, I always forget about that. Or like, I don't remember to do that. I don't know how to do that. Now talk to the entities is where all the facilitators are now allowed to facilitate office hours, which are, I think they're going to be about seven calls. Like there'll be different chunks of, um, mm -hmm. of in a row where we will just go through doing office hours. So if you don't yeah. know how to do it, just hop well, on. Well, you need to take a talk to the entity class. You have to have taken a yeah. talk to the entity class. But yeah, and you cannot like it's like talking to a person, you know, like if someone calls you and you don't want to take the call, you're like, call me back at this time. I can yeah. talk to you then. So Literally, a lot of stuff with entities deal with your entities. Yeah, a lot of stuff with dealing with entities is like you're dealing with people. Like if someone's knocking on your door, you're like, okay, like no, come back in an hour's time and then I can talk to you. And and also like the thing about the fear, like, can really a being without a body, this has helped me the most. Can really a being without a body be more powerful than me? I have a body gonna punch you in the face yeah like what are you gonna do him. like you can't even pick up an object like you don't have a body you know you might we have to mess with the lights or something oh cool <laughs> book fell off the shelf yeah or something falls yeah, like okay pissed off. they're like yeah like maybe you can trip me up or something but like they're usually like, they're pretty good at tripping me like yeah i'm kind of good easy to be tripped as well but like it's you know i'm still more powerful <laughs> i have a body i can kill Anyone, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was so cute. I just have to tell this story really quick about the tripping thing. My nephew, because like I'm like the weird aunt um, who talks to ghosts and animals and blah blah blah, which is normal for you, Amy, and me. And it's like, yeah, you talk to entities. That's normal. But for most people, it's not. And so my my nephew is like, so are there like spirits in this forest? We were on a nature walk and I was like, and I asked him like, yeah, there is. And or there are. And he was like, okay, well, I don't really believe that they're here because I can't feel them or see them. I'm like, okay, well just ask him to make it obvious. He's like, okay, make it obvious. And he starts walking and walking and walking. And all of a sudden he was like, I don't feel them at all. And then boom, he like landed straight on his back. Like this stick showed up out of nowhere. And he's like, what the? And I'm like, did they make it obvious enough for you? And he was like, uh -huh. <laughs> he was like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah. It was so cool. Be careful what you ask for. Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> That's so funny. They were playing with him. I like they that. Were. Yeah. Yeah. He loved it. Entities have a sense of humor too. Some of them. Yes. <laughs> Well, we're done for today, I think. Yeah, I think our, our time is up. Our time is up. Shannon's on at 4 p.m., though, so she's on an hour and a half from now. Oh, great. Yes. I'm like, what? It's 12. I'm in Denver. Mm -hmm. You're in Florida. <laughs> okay, cool. Yay. I cannot wait. Um, how's it Thanks for being here. Thanks Happy for watching, holiday. everyone. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye. And welcome to the first of the Talk to the Entities Halloween Woo! Facebook Lives. We are super Woo! excited to be joining you from Perth in Western Australia. This is Pam Grace. Hey, Pammy. Hey, that was my scared. I'm scared. There's a rich bitch witch here. Oh, Did you're not surely scared of witches, <laughs> are you? <sighs> not anymore. Not anymore. So Tell apparently. Me about that. Well, apparently we're the opening act, so we um, we get to take it away. Yeah. Awesome. So what can what can I tell you about that? Um, yeah. So look, I I had a really interesting relationship with the whole ghosts, entities, witches kind of stuff, and um, probably probably got it from my family, from parents, from, you know, where I grew up. Uh, you were taught that you were meant to be scared of anything that you couldn't see. 
uh, or anything that you could see that looked strange, weird, and uh, like it might have some sort of power over you. So that included witches. So when I get, yeah, just like that, just like that. So, so am, am I scary to you? Uh, no, no, you're not scary to me, so. <laughs> so when when I came across uh, when I came across Axis Consciousness, I loved everything apart from the talk to the entities bit that I kind of avoided for a couple of years until I realised that that avoidance and that stuff I was actually trying to get away from was because there was something that I knew about entities and the spirit world and and eventually I could ignore it no longer and so I took the classes and um, quite recently became a talk to the entities facilitator and now I get to talk to people about how none of that stuff is really scary yeah, I love that. I love and him how are, him Halloween and it's not exactly scary. no. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I didn't. I was born in England, like you, but I did. I grew up here in Australia, and I guess a lot of the things I got it from was from movies and books and like think you know the scary, the scary movies. And a lot of people who come to classes seem to say the same thing. Like they go, well, I sh isn't that something I should be scared of? And then if you actually really look at it, a lot of the time that perspective, like with you, Pam, you were taught to be scared of things you couldn't see or yeah. we've been exposed to a lie that's actually something that's been made up from a movie or a book. And we know how much movies and books make up stuff too, you know. Yeah. Um, and... I, I guess I've always been a little bit weird when it comes to ghosts and death. I kind of thought it was a normal thing. So I go to funerals and stuff like that and I smile and I guess I I love that different perspective on death that Talk to the Entities gives is that it's like the celebration of the life and a letting go of that spirit so that the spirit can then choose again. It's it that that's the bit that I love one of the bits that I love. Yeah. Yeah. And then as soon as you begin to acknowledge that there is in fact nothing to be scared of and you are in actual fact you are more powerful than any of that then you can start to choose something totally different with the whole spirits ghosts entity scene and mm -hmm. then you kind of become an invitation to talk to other people who would really like to have a conversation around it and they're not quite sure how. So um, I just wonder what sort of conversations you might have had, Sarah, with people who are curious and now know that you actually play with, with the unseen world and that it's okay and in actual fact it's a contribution to you. Totally. In fact, um, one of the stories I'll, I'll share is when I was on the plane home from my first set of Talk to the Entities trainings over in Amsterdam in 2015, I remember Shannon saying, you know, having done these classes, you're going to be having different conversations and people will be, you know, almost seeking you out because you energetically be the invitation to that possibility. I was like, okay, so I'm sitting on the plane and the gentleman next to me, I ended up getting chatting to him. It was my second leg back to Perth from um, the east coast of Australia. And I said, oh, what are you doing in Perth? He said, oh, we're, get, we're scattering my, my brother's ashes. And I was like, oh, out of my mouth straight away says, well, do you ever talk to him? Does he ever come and see you? And he goes, yeah, all the time, all the time. Yeah. And we had this chat about how his dead brother would come and visit him and chat to him. Yeah. And it was the most normal thing. And, and that's the thing that I love is like the normalisation of something that's been, okay, re re over the history made to be wrong, made to be scary. It's like what if that is more of a normal conversation? And the piece that I say to people who sometimes, mm. you know, are in classes is like, what would it be like if you died and everyone ignored you how would you yeah, be? yeah that's that's really cool yeah 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 and yeah. how hard would you have to work to get somebody's attention so i wonder you know how hard are the people that you've known who've passed over how hard are they having to work to kind of go hey i'm here i'm here mm -hmm. um you know how hard are they having to work to do that when if you were to go okay so what what is this is there something here that i'm ignoring 
And if I was just to ask a question, okay, maybe ask, okay, so who is this? Maybe it's just that. Who is this? And then maybe you get that, oh, okay, so maybe this is someone that I knew who has passed over. And yeah, would it be that weird to actually start a conversation? And I know a lot of people do talk to their relatives, their partners, their friends who've passed over. They do that. It's totally. just not something, not something we talk about out loud. And what if that, that could be more of the norm to actually totally. talk about it out loud? I was yeah. doing an Instagram live with a bunch of Russians the other day. Yeah. And one of them was just a free one. And I had the, the lady translating and we were chatting about talk to the entities and, and various things. And at the end of the, the Instagram live, I had one of the girls reach out to me and say to me, I can't believe this, but after so many years, I realized that my granddad's trying to be in, be in touch with me. And she said, he died 11, 11 years ago. And 11 years ago, I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety and I've been medicated ever since. Yeah. And she realized that part of the <clears throat> part of the piece of that puzzle was that this grandfather had been trying to get in touch with her yeah and the re yeah. the revelation and the sense of possibility she was just beside herself going oh my goodness <laughs> really yeah 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 there's total freedom there i think sarah and i know you and i both have qualifications in mental health and we've We've done a lot around the mental health scene. And now having done the Talk to the Entities classes, um, I get that we are able to share tools that are going to give freedom to all of those people who think that there's something wrong with them. And, and I love that. That's the part that I love more than anything is like, this is not like a subject that's taboo anymore. People are actually got this in a question behind their mind. A lot of people want to know what happens when I die. There's that yeah. curiosity. There's a curiosity about life, but there's also that curiosity about death. And if we if we can be the person that they get to speak to, or we can share these tools with other people who get to have these conversations, what different world can we create there? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I am. Um, sorry. Go ahead. You go. No, you go, Sarah. This is I, when I was living in, in Italy, I um, was living in an Italian family and sitting across the mother of the, the guy I was dating at the time and everyone in the village and everyone around the neighbouring villages knew she was crazy. She was the crazy woman that lived in that house. And I was like, oh, okay. So I sat across her conversing in Italian and we said something. And she said, what about your mum? And I said, oh, no, my mum passed several years ago. However, she comes and sees me. and we're in touch still, which she just doesn't have her body. She just, you know, comes and sees me. And she looked at me like really strange. And I was like, what's up? She said, well, the day my dad died, he came and sat on the end of my bed and he spoke to me and he does a lot of the time. And he said, and all the little, she said, all the aunties and all the uncles, they all like fly around the house and do crazy stuff. And people think I'm crazy. And I just said to her, I took her hand and I said, what if you're not crazy? What if you're just really aware? Yeah. And that there is like those are the conversations that I know we can have with people that may yeah. invite them to something totally different, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I was thinking today, right, Halloween, and it's like Halloween is the day when we're allowed to have some fun with all of this and have fun being scared and have fun dressing up. And I've got four children, grandchildren, as you know, and they're always very excited about Halloween and what they can do and how they can dress up and how they can scare each other. And I know you've been out today rollerblading with kids dressed up as a witch, and it's great fun. And and I was kind of going, okay, so what if we could, what if we could have this conversation with kids as though this is actually absolutely normal every day and it's not even that scary and in actual fact um my grandkids um i know they already have awareness of um the unseen world and um and when they're little it's it's very normal for kids somewhere along the line they buy the idea that there's a there's something wrong that if you believe in anything that you can't see, that you're meant to be scared of it. 
and it, it's they're the boss of you and I better be afraid and I better not do anything wrong. And I wondered today, like, what if we can actually start to have conversations with kids as though it were perfectly normal, which it totally. is, you know, exactly. and, and normalize it and, not, and, and let them know that there is actually nothing to be scared of, that they are actually always in charge. They don't have to be scared they're in charge they don't have to be scared of things that go bump in the night because they're the boss of that anyway correct i love and telling kids you get to be the boss with yeah, these guys yeah you let their boss around so it's like your dog you don't let your dog yeah. jump all over your bed and jump all over you you tell him to sit same with, yeah. the, same with the entity <laughs> yeah yeah right yeah yeah so did you see that today like, like you were with a lot of kids today mm-hmm and yeah. I know you were telling me that even though you were dressed up with a green face and a witch poo hat on, that they actually weren't that scared of you. Yeah, in fact, I was chatting to one of the, the, the storeholders that was standing near where I was standing with the kids and uh, I went and chatted to them and she said, I, the thing I find most strange is that none of the kids are scared of you, Sarah. And I realised, so I said, well, yeah, there's something that I do that allows that. And I get that's the energy that we can be when we're talking about ghosts is like invite people to, well, what if this is quite normal? What if this is not something to be scared of? What if this is actually just a conversation waiting to be had? Yeah. And it's not that significant. No, 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 no. I, there's, a, there's a small story when I was pregnant with my first daughter. So it was 22 years ago now. Um, mm. I was desperate for an ice cream. It was hot. It was summer. And I'd got on, to the, got on to this area where there were lots of people and seats taken and I really had to sit down. I was heavily pregnant. And there was this table with about 10 people sitting at it and there were two spare seats. And I just said to them, please, would you mind if I sat in one of these chairs? And I went to sit in one of the chairs and the little boy said, no, no, that's my friend sitting there. Can you sit here? <laughs> and one of the family members went, don't listen to him. That's just him and his imaginary friend. Yeah. And I sat down in the, in the seat. And I looked at the little boy and I said to him, I said, Does your friend, is your friend sitting here? He goes, yeah. I said, what's your friend's name? And we had this cute little conversation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, and I remember actually like some of them looking at me. I don't know if they could hear me. I didn't actually care because I'm like, wow, what if me sitting there having this conversation with this little kid invited him to know that he wasn't crazy, no. he wasn't making stuff up. He was yeah. actually just really aware of having a, a friend that didn't have a body that no one else yeah. could see. And what yeah. magical crap has it is did he have, right? It's yeah. funny. Yeah, I'm just aware now of all the people who might be watching this now or in the future that are going, yeah, I, I had a friend. I yeah. had a friend. Yes. yes. Oh, oh, maybe it was, oh, maybe it was a ghost. Maybe it was an entity. Wow. Yeah. It, yeah it's so exactly. common. That is so common. And yeah. what if we could allow that to be normal for kids and not to yeah. make that wrong or weird? And that somehow they're the weirdo that's got that imaginary friend. But yeah. what can we, we what can we also learn from the kids? Yeah. Oh, you know, yes. ha having less filters, having having no reference point for it to go. Well, okay, there's something sitting here. It doesn't have a body. I can still see it. I, I'm yeah, still aware yeah. of it. You know. Yeah yeah. 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 And parents actually asking questions about it. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. Glorious and saying, mm. wow, okay, how much fun are you having with your friend? And, you know, yeah. I've been there all the time and what else do you know and who else do they know? And Yeah. Rather than, rather than instantly dismissing it because it doesn't make sense to them. Yeah. And that's, I think that's what we, that people have done up until now. If they haven't been able to make sense of it, it didn't make sense of it, they didn't understand it or they didn't have a reference point for, well, well if it doesn't have a body, it doesn't exist that's that's this possibility that's available you oh, know cool. and sarah i do have to share this with you you do Please realize don't. you do realize that it's not that long ago that we did used to burn witches at the stake <laughs> <laughs> you're right <laughs> so prior to all of that it was quite normal and common to have that kind of um that kind of uh relationship with things that you couldn't see and and 
people that had passed over. And even now, I know in some some countries, it's still not that strange. I mm, think yeah. in the more westernised countries where the witches were burnt at the stake, mm -hmm. um, maybe there is still some fear around uh, people who have those capacities and those talents to to know that there is something there other than what it is we can see. And they're too afraid to acknowledge that. And I love that. Yeah. Maybe they got all of that information from school or church or wherever. Yep. And, and guys, if you're listening, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Exactly. You have and the big, the big piece to remember is like, nothing outside of you is greater than you nothing yeah nothing and you know i remember putting a post in one of the spiritual kind of groups once about talking to entities and they're like oh and they had all these weird reactions and i was like well actually i'm willing to be the boss so how's it yeah. get better you know it's fun mm -hmm. yeah 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 totally empowering yeah definitely totally and empowering. i think the, the the thing that i've seen you know, having had a close family member, my mum pass, and you know, I've you she's actually jumped in the car while we've been driving you and I and given you a what? message, and it's just what? like it's just like normal. Oh, mum's got a message for you. Oh, gee, okay, hi, thanks. Since I wasn't yeah. listening, at least Pam was listening, you know, and it's yeah, it's yeah, funny. yeah. And how comforting is that? My mum, my mother in law died fairly recently within the last six months, and that for me is now I've done these classes it's like well okay and so now what like now what relationship can we have now okay so you don't have a body totally and, you know what else is possible with all of that yeah I remember, there's no, I remember there's that. no finality to it exactly the last time I saw my mum physical in physical body um we spent a couple of hours together we were chatting and I could see she was exhausted. She was tired. Her body was really ready almost to leave. And the conversation that changed everything was I said to her, I said, Mum, what about if you, why don't you come and chase me when I'm rollerblading? Wow. You, know, you, can, you know you can come and see me. And yeah. her energy went from really aged and like really like dying to this uplifted, like she was like, oh, I can do that. I'm like, uh-huh. And I love that. Like that yeah. there is like, what if the death piece isn't the end? What if it's yeah. just a different, yeah. different possibility yeah. that shows yeah. up? Yeah. You know? Wouldn't that be great to to have a totally different reality with the death process? You know, 100%. instead of all the fear around it and, you know, um, that kind of finality around it all. Yeah, yeah, what if we could celebrate death and, and enjoy it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and yeah. these sorts of conversations, you know, people having these conversations, whether the people are here live with us, and if you are, hello, if you're going to be listening yep. later. Hi, everyone. On, you know, it's yeah. it's like what, what different possibility is available around death and around the entities and around ghosts. Yeah. And these conversations are going to be happening for the next few hours, aren't they, Sarah? They are, yeah. We're, we've started off here in Australia and we're going to be travelling around to different countries with different lives. Um, and Shannon O'Hara, creator of Talk to the Entities, will also be joining live too. Um, so please make sure that you catch some of the other facilitators. Uh, as I said, myself and Pam are here in Australia. Uh, we teach the Talk to the Entities introduction in the beginning class and there are people globally doing this. So if you don't speak English, there are probably going to be some translated versions of this too. All around the world. And Sarah, after we've finished, is going to hop on her broomstick and go around the world just in case to remind Correct. you. Correct. Yes, <laughs> yes. So if you wake up and you've got a green face looking at you, it's me. <laughs> no, just jokes. But, yeah, um, did you have anything else you wanted to say, Pam? I think we're done, Sarah. That was so much fun. And thank you, everyone, for being here and for listening to us. And um, thank you for everything that you've contributed. Yeah. And, and what, what if we could leave you with that question to maybe ask yourself, like if ever you've had that sense where you've done like a double take in the room or you've, you've smelt something like a flower and maybe there wasn't that flower in the room or you've got something brushed against your skin and maybe... You were wondering what that was. Maybe, just maybe, 
this is the possibility of being aware of ghosts. And yeah. what if it wasn't something to be scared of? What if it was actually quite the opposite? What if it could be one of the most beautiful, elegant ways of receiving? What a beautiful way to finish, Sarah. Thank you. And thanks Thank for you. being with me, Pam. Super Thank grateful. Thank you, Sarah. See you soon. All right. Trick or treat! <laughs> Hallo ihr Lieben und herzlich Willkommen zum Talk to the Entity Special mit Tanja Barth, Barth Vader alias und Dr. Nicole Hurter. Hallo. Ja, was machen wir hier? Das wissen wir auch nicht. Wie immer bei Access lassen wir uns überraschen. Und heute ist Halloween und... Habt ihr eine Idee, was Halloween eigentlich ist? Die meisten denken, das ist so ein komischer amerikanischer Brauch, den wir in unserer Kindheit nicht hatten. Und jetzt haben wir halt noch mal Karneval vor Karneval. <lacht> nicht wirklich, ihr Lieben. Und vielleicht habt ihr euch schon mal mit der Historie beschäftigt von Halloween. Und eigentlich kommt es von... All Hallows Eve, also vor dem heiligen, Allerheiligen Abend. Und ganz, ganz klassisch hat es eine ganz alte Tradition bei den Kelten und hieß damals auch Shamhain, was Gälisch ist und November bedeutet. Und traditionell ist es so, dass an dem 31.10. geglaubt wird, dass, die, dass die, der Schleier zwischen der physischen und der nicht physischen Welt am durchlässigsten ist. Deshalb hat man geglaubt, dass zu dieser Zeit immer die Geister zu uns durchkommen können. Und es waren nicht und die Amerikaner umgekehrt. und umgekehrt. Und es waren nicht die Amerikaner, sondern es waren tatsächlich die Iren, die dann auf die Idee kamen, sich zu verkleiden und die Geister zu erschrecken. Und mit den irischen Einwanderern in Amerika ist dieser Brauch dann nach Amerika gelangt und jetzt haben wir ihn wieder zurück in Europa. Haha, <lacht> und wie wird es noch besser? <lacht> genau. So. Und wir möchten euch einfach einladen, den Abend vielleicht für euch besonders zu nutzen, und euch nochmal zu besinnen, was ihr für Fähigkeiten habt mit Geistern. Nicole, was hast du denn für ja. Fähigkeiten mit Geistern? Gar keine. <lacht> Gar keine. <lacht> habe ich sehr, sehr lange gedacht. Und ähm, habe auch sehr, sehr lange dieses, ne, als Kind, ja, da war was. Ähm, man hat mit irgendwem oder irgendwas gesprochen, erzählen die Eltern. Aber das kann ja nicht wahr sein. Und oh, jetzt wird hier der Bath Vader. <lacht> ähm, was ich an dieser Zeit so interessant finde, noch lange bevor ich Access äh, gefunden hatte, war es tatsächlich so, nicht unbedingt Halloween, sondern um den 1.11. herum, ähm, habe ich immer mal wieder tatsächlich, kam mir in Gedanken, die Verwandten, die gestorben waren. Ganz speziell meine Oma. Und habe noch gedacht, komisch, Warum denke ich denn gerade jetzt an die? Und es ist tatsächlich mir erst im Nachhinein aufgefallen, dass es um die Zeit des 1.11. herum war, also um Halloween herum. Und irgendwann mit Access und so weiter und so fort. Und vorher hatte ich mich auch schon mit diesen ne, Samhain, die keltischen Bräuche und so beschäftigt, wo ich gedacht habe, wow, vielleicht ist jetzt im Moment der Vorhang wirklich dünner. Und wir können die wahrnehmen nicht, weil die sonst nicht da sind, sondern weil unsere Wahrnehmung für die Welt, die wir nicht sehen können, einfach geschärfter ist. Ist gar nicht geschärfter, was ist er? Wir, der Empfang ist einfach besser eingestellt. Wir haben unseren Radiosender besser eingestellt auf die Welt, die wir nicht sehen können. Und ich weiß, im ersten Jahr hat mich das so ein bisschen geängstigt und seitdem 
seit dem zweiten Jahr, seit mir das klar war, habe ich gedacht, wie schön eigentlich, wie schön, dass, dass die, die vor mir gegangen sind, gerade meine Oma, dass die an mich denken oder dass sie da sind und dass in der Zeit scheinbar auch eine Kommunikation ganz einfach möglich ist, was ich damals auch getan habe, ohne dass ich Talk to the Entities Werkzeuge hatte. Und dann ist das wie ganz von alleine so nach und nach weggegangen. Ich habe wieder ein ganzes Jahr gar nicht mehr an meine Oma gedacht. Kennst du sowas auch? So, dass mm. die Zeit besonders ist? Mm. Und hier ist ja auch das Werkzeug vielleicht angebracht, sich immer mal wieder zu fragen oder einfach in die Energie zu gehen. Alles ist das Gegenteil von dem, was es zu sein erscheint. Und nichts <lacht> ist das Gegenteil von dem, was es zu sein erscheint. Man nennt es auch die crazy phrase. Und und wie viele Mythen und Archetypen haben wir in Bezug auf Geister, Gespenster, auf Entitäten, welcher Form und Couleur auch immer abgekauft, was uns nicht erlaubt, das zu sein und dieses unendliche Wahrnehmen, Wissen, Sein und Empfangen zu verkörpern, was wir tatsächlich sind. Mhm. Alles, was das ist, ihr Lieben, mal Gottzillionen, zerstörten und kreiert ihr das jetzt bitte. Ja. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock on nine, shorts, boys and beyonds. Und wenn ihr jetzt alle gar keine Angst hättet mit Geistern und mit dem, was nicht sichtbar ist, was für Fähigkeiten hättet ihr dann? Wie könntet ihr das zu eurem Vorteil einsetzen? Und die Nicole hat scheinbar irgendwelche Geister im Hintergrund. Ne? Die wollen mitspielen. Also, mhm. klar. Ja, und was, wenn die wirklich mit uns spielen wollen? Also, wie du schon gesagt hast, ne, es kommt ja oft erstmal diese, diese alten Mythen, die, die Archetypen. Oh mein Gott, und ähm, ich kann es nicht sehen, dann kann es nicht wahr sein. Und wenn, dann habe ich Angst, der böse Geist. Aber ja, also, was, wenn es Spaß machen kann? Was, wenn hier überall um dich herum, um uns herum die Geistwesen sind, die einfach sagen, äh, hallo, du hast noch einen Körper, das finde ich ziemlich cool, darf ich ein bisschen bei dir sein? Und was für Gespräche können da zustande kommen? Das finde ich halt auch so faszinierend. Ne? Ja, und was ich auch noch fragen wollte, ist wirklich, welche Mythen und Archetypen hast du oder verwendest du, noch nicht mal abgekauft, sondern welche Mythen und Archetypen verwendest du, um die... Kommunikation, das Klären, das Empfangen und auch die Kooperation mit der nicht-physischen Welt zu vermeiden, die du tatsächlich wählen könntest. Mhm. Alles, was das ist, mal Gottzillionen, ihr Lieben, zerstörten und kreierte das jetzt bitte. Ja. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock online, shorts, boys and beyonds. Und vielleicht machen wir das Clearing auch tatsächlich einmal andersrum. Also welche Mythen und Archetypen, äh, Identitäten benutzen, die Entitäten um uns herum, die im Moment nicht verkörpert sind, um an dieser Nichtverkörperung und an dem vielleicht Spukgeist-Dasein äh, festzuhalten, wählen sie. Und alles, was das ist, liebe Entitäten, wollt ihr das alles zerstören und umkriegen? Ja. Right, one, good, bad, pop, pop, und ein Schutz, boys, and beyonds. Das hast du aber verwirrt, Nicole. Ja, also, äh, wir jetzt, was? Ja. was Geisterverwirrung. Ja. So, hä? was, wir? Ja, was, wenn ihr weitergehen könnt, was anderes wählen könnt. Und auch mit uns kooperieren können. Denn das ist ja auch was, was wir jetzt äh, ganz neu entdecken. Ne? Dass es nicht nur so ein, äh, ja, vielleicht gibt es sie, vielleicht sind sie da, okay, vielleicht existieren wir irgendwie friedlich nebeneinander her, vielleicht kann ich auch mal beitragen oder kommunizieren. Aber was, wenn wir kooperieren können? Miteinander. Was ist dann möglich? Ja, was sind die neuen Möglichkeiten, die uns jetzt nach dem Spurwechsel zur Verfügung stehen, die bislang noch gar nicht möglich waren. Und alles, was euch nicht erlaubt, dass sich das jetzt zeigt und ihr das wahrnehmt, erkennt, Zeit und empfangt, zerstörten und kreiert ihr das jetzt bitte. Ja. 
Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock online, shorts, boys and beyonds. Und heute ist ja nicht nur Halloween, sondern wir haben auch einen Blue Moon. Also oh. sehr selten, aber wahr, gibt es im Oktober zweimal Vollmond. Und das nennt man dann der Blue Moon. Mhm. Und was für eine mystische Nacht ist heute, die du dir zu Nutzen machst? Vielleicht möchtest du dich einfach noch mal besinnen, was du jetzt wirklich wählst, wenn du tatsächlich magisch bist. Ich meine, die Frage möchten wir dir einfach mal für heute mitgeben. Wenn du wirklich magisch bist, was wählst du dann? Zu verkörpern, zu verwirklichen und zu leben. Und alles, was dir nicht erlaubt, dass sich auch das zeigt und du das jetzt wahrnimmst, erkennst, bist und empfängst, zerstörst du und kreierst du das jetzt bitte. Ich muss ein ja. bisschen tiefer sprechen. <lacht> right and wrong, bad, pot and pop online, shorts, boys and beyonds. <lacht> genau. <lacht> genau, ich bin dein Vater. Ups. <lacht> Talk to the entities. <lacht> Ich hatte, ich hatte auch das Gefühl, dass Bath Vader jetzt präsent ist. Ja. Ich bin dein Vater. Ja. Genau. Wer weiß, Dann, vielleicht will mein Vater heute noch mit mir sprechen. Ja. ja, und was für ein Beitrag könnt ihr euch gegenseitig sein? Absolut. Ja. Das, was hm. jetzt noch fehlt zu dieser Zeit, ist natürlich die Maske eigentlich. Ne? Ja. Die wäre Aber, für Bath Vader. Die wäre sehr geeignet gewesen. Ich habe nur gedacht, ich habe keinen Bock auf Maske. <lacht> Nicht, wenn ich allein im Raum bin. Dann muss Nein. ich keine Maske tragen, um mich von mir selbst zu bitten. Genau. Das wäre jetzt noch die nächste Stufe. Ja. Genau. Und was ist da noch möglich? Was ich auch noch mal ganz spannend fand, da wollte ich auch noch mal mit euch drüber reden oder das euch, euch einfach mal sagen, weil die Iren, ich weiß nicht, ob sie ein paar Guinness zu viel hatten, kamen dann auf die lustige Idee, sich zu verkleiden und die Geister zu erschrecken. Und das Gleiche findet man ja auch im Kölner Dom. Der Kölner Dom ist voller Dämonen. Das sind lauter kleine, hässliche Dämonen, weil man damals wohl glaubte, dass man Böses mit Bösem vertreiben muss. Und es ist halt auch wieder so ein Mythos, an dem wir immer noch festhalten. Also welche... Mythen und Archetypen verwendest du in Bezug auf Entitäten, auf die geistige Welt, auf dein energetisches Team, die es dir nicht erlauben, den Beitrag von all diesen in Leichtigkeit zu empfangen. Mhm. Alles, was das ist, mal Godzillion, zerstörst und kreierst du auch das jetzt bitte. Ja. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock online, shorts, boys and beyonds. Und wer oder was können wir jetzt tatsächlich sein, wenn wir uns erlauben, über sämtliche Mythen und über die Verkörperung von irgendwelchen Archetypen, die uns nicht erlauben, ganz uns selbst zu sein, hinausgehen. Und alles, was das nicht erlaubt, Margot Zillion, zerstört und kreiert ihr das jetzt bitte. Ja, ein bisschen lang. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock online, shorts, boys and beyond. <lacht> <lacht> Mir wird es ganz schwindelig. Ja. Oh, ja, genau. Ja, was aber auch wiederum interessant ist, ne? auf der einen Seite haben die früher gesagt, gut, wir müssen die erschrecken, damit sie weggehen. Ja? Also ich habe Angst davor, aber ich muss sie erschrecken. Vielleicht haben die auch Angst vor mir. Interessante Ansicht. Ne? <lacht> äh, aber auf der anderen Seite gibt das auch wieder so ein bisschen... Ermächtigung natürlich. Ne? Also wenn ich laut bin und jemanden erschrecke, dann geht er weg von mir. Ähm, ist jetzt nicht, nicht genau das, wofür Talk to the Entity steht, aber doch natürlich auch für die Selbstermächtigung. Ne? Also welche Wahlmöglichkeiten, auch gerade wenn wir diese Mythen und Archetypen loslassen, haben wir mit und in Bezug auf Entitäten. Und alles, was uns nicht erlaubt, das wirklich wahrzunehmen, zu wissen, zu sein, zu empfangen. Und auch ihr Entitäten, die ihr jetzt da seid. Wollen wir das alles zerschönen und umkriegen? Ja. Right, one good, bad, pop, pop, golden, and shoots, boys and beyonds. Ja, wie lustig. Was man so früher, auf der einen Seite hat, haben wir früher ja die äh, Entitäten, die nicht sichtbare Welt, wie auch immer sie sich damals dargestellt hat, mit einbezogen. Ja, wir haben ja auch viel mehr. Ähm, 
die Geistwesen, die für die Ernte zuständig war und so weiter, die dann später zu Heiligen geworden sind. Ne? Also die heiligen Anbetungen waren ja auch spezielle Heilige zuständig für spezielle Ernten und so weiter mit einbezogen, hatten aber viel mehr Angst davor. Ähm, jetzt haben wir sie wieder ausgeladen, jetzt haben wir nur Angst davor. Und was, wenn es sich jetzt einlevelt und wir auf eben die Kooperationsebene wechseln? Ohne die Mythen und alles, was dahinter ist. Ja. Spannende Zeiten. Mhm. Und was ich gerade wirklich spannend finde, während du sprachst, Nicole, war wirklich für mich nochmal so ein ganz neues Level an Empfangen spürbar. Also da ist wirklich ein ganz starker Wunsch, uns beizutragen. Mhm. Ja. Und durch diese ganze Zeit, die wir jetzt gehen, durch diesen Bewusstseinsanstieg auf Erden, der manchmal die irrwitzigste Form annimmt, ähm, ja, wie viel leichter könnten wir es haben, wenn wir uns erlauben würden, noch mehr von der nicht-physischen Welt zu empfangen. Mhm. Also alles, was uns die nicht-physische Welt jetzt beitragen kann in der aktuellen Situation, was wir uns bislang nicht erlauben zu empfangen, zerstören und unkreieren, war alles, was wir bislang nicht erlauben, zu, alles, was uns daran hindert, das zu empfangen, was sie uns tatsächlich beitragen können. Ja. Alles, was das ist, mal Gott, Zillion, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pocker, nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Wie viel mehr Leichtigkeit, Freude und Herrlichkeit ist tatsächlich möglich, wenn wir uns erlauben, von den Wesen des Lichts und des Bewusstseins zu empfangen. Und das ist vielleicht auch nochmal ganz wichtig. Du musst nicht von allen Wesen empfangen, sondern schon wirklich die, die dem Licht und dem Bewusstsein beitragen möchten. So, und alles, was das nicht erlaubt, zerstören. Und kriegen wir das jetzt bitte wieder, rufen es jetzt, spüren es ab, heben es auf, annullieren es und machen es null und nichtig. Ja. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shots, boys and beyond. Oh. Mhm. Oh. Viel Ladung drauf. Mhm. Ja. Und welche Mythen und Archetypen verwendest du, um das Beitrag empfangen zu vermeiden und dir wirklich zu erlauben, diese Gleichzeitigkeit des Schenkens und Empfangens mit der nicht-physischen Welt zu sein, die du tatsächlich wählen könntest? Alles, was das ist und alles, was dir nicht erlaubt, da jetzt drüber hinaus zu gehen, zerstörst du und kreierst du das jetzt bitte. Ja. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. Ja. Und für dich heute Abend oder wann auch immer du das hörst, vielleicht, wenn du es heute hörst, wie genial ist das und auch die nächsten Tage, aber wirklich nimm mal für dich wahr, auch jetzt nach den ganzen Clearings, welche Wesen des Bewusstseins, welche Wesen des Lichts sind für dich da? Tragen dir bei. Tragen dir bei so oder so. Und wenn du es erlaubst und empfängst, können dir noch mehr und noch bewusster beitragen. Gerade jetzt in der Zeit und darüber hinaus. Und nochmal, die Tanja hat es eben schon gesagt und das Clearing gemacht, aber wie viel Magie ist für dich in deinem Leben möglich? Denn obwohl die Geistwesen da sind und sozusagen die Kommunikation eigentlich auch leicht ist und du kannst das auch definitiv, aber wie viel Magie ist das? Und wie sehr wird das als Magie in dieser Realität angesehen? Also was, wenn deine ganz natürlichen Fähigkeiten Magie sind? Bist du dann bereit, die Magie zu sein, die du wahrhaftig bist? Und ich glaube, dazu laden wir dich jetzt ein. Ja. Also welche Energieraum, Bewusstsein, Magie, Bewusstsein, Wahl, Magie, Wunder, Mysterien und Möglichkeiten kannst du und dein Körper jetzt sein? um die Magie zu verkörpern und zu verwirklichen, 
die du wahrhaftig bist. Und alles, was dir das nicht erlaubt, Margot Zillion, zerstörst du und kreierst du all das jetzt bitte. Ja. Widerrufst es ja. jetzt, spürst es ab, hebst es auf, annullierst es. Ja. Und machst es nur noch nichtig. Ja. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock online, shorts, boys and beyonds. Cool. Nicole, ich hoffe, es war ein Beitrag, was wir hier gerade gezaubert haben. Wir ich würden auch über eure Kommentare und euer Feedback freuen. Dürft ihr einfach drunter posten. Und ja, bis nächstes Jahr. <lacht> Spätestens, genau. Aber den Bauchweder, den sehen wir so schnell nicht wieder. <lacht> den seht ihr so schnell nicht wieder. Den gibt es maximal einmal im Jahr. <lacht> genau. Aber auch schön. Dann bis nächstes Jahr, Barf. <lacht> <lacht> Tschüss, Nicole. Tschüss, ihr Tschüss. Lieben. Schönen Abend. <lacht>
euh, dans, dans les escaliers, les portraits qui, voilà, qui disent bonjour ou qui interagissent. Et dès le moment où je les avais reconnus, on en avait parlé, et ben là, c'est comme s'ils avaient retrouvé un, un, un visage fixe, en fait. C'est wow. voilà, pas, pas l'expérience qu'elle avait prévu de, de partager, <rire> mais, mais voilà, c'est celle-là qui est venue. <rire> J'adore. Ouais. <rire> Moi aussi. <rire> Moi, combien de combien de d'attentes on a souvent de comment au fait euh, parler aux entités ou, ou les entités vont, comme, vont vont nous vont nous atteindre euh, et il y a tellement tellement de de façons différentes que si on si on choisit d'être alerte au fait euh, voilà qu'on a qu'on peut avoir ces exp ces expériences magnifiques. Et ce que j'ai adoré aussi, c'est ce que tu as dit que quelque part, quelquefois, c'est les entités qui t'amènent aux classes. Et ça, c'est vrai que les personnes, en fait, qui n'ont pas forcément entendu parler des classes, parler aux entités ou qui ne connaissent pas bien les classes, euh, eh bien, c'est une information qu'elles peuvent euh, avoir dans cet échange. C'est quand vous êtes attiré comme ça par ce type de classe, en fait, est-ce que c'est vous qui êtes vraiment dans la curiosité de ce que cette classe peut créer pour vous Ou est-ce que vous avez, en fait, déjà des entités, des choses en fait qui souhaitent déjà vous contribuer et qui vous amènent en fait à, à ces classes. Et je trouve ça intéressant d'avoir abordé ça sur euh, ça fait pas forcément sens en fait de choisir euh, cette classe ou d'avoir un intérêt. Quelquefois on peut avoir beaucoup d'idées sur les entités ou pas du tout. Et en fait si on se laissait porter par ce qui nous appelle, euh, c'est un petit peu ce qui s'est passé lors d'un dernier échange avec une personne qui m'a dit en fait euh, cette classe m'appelle. Il y avait vraiment cette énergie dont tu as parlé, Janik. Euh, je ne sais pas pourquoi et je voudrais remettre à plus tard. Et en fait, c'est comme si je ne peux pas. Il faut que j'y aille, il faut que je vienne. Et du coup, je trouve ça génial de s'écouter ou d'écouter de ces messages en fait, qui nous arrivent et voir la contribution que ça peut être en fait, à le choisir. Ouais. Wow. Et j'adore que tu dis là, c'est comme si je ne peux pas le mettre, euh, là, le mettre plus loin. C'est comme si c'était maintenant le moment. Euh, ça, c'est une expérience que moi, parce que parfois aussi, j'oublie encore, euh, ah oui, euh, de vraiment faire le, le travail, tu vois. Et, et je me dis, waouh, de plus en plus, en fait, eux, ils n'attendent jamais. Et si toi, tu continues à attendre, c'est souvent tellement inconfortable. Euh, et ça, c'est un des trucs où moi, je perçois souvent que mon corps, euh, ça ne lui fait vraiment pas du bien de, de ne pas reconnaître ça, de ne pas avoir ça dans le quotidien, mais, mais vraiment activement aussi. Parce que parfois, on a ces, ces trucs où, où ça devient un quotidien, et comme avec une relation, tu vois, quand ça devient un quotidien, ça devient un peu euh, là où on se dit, ah ouais, c'est un quotidien, c'est OK. Mais c'est plus cette magie où tu commences, où tu continues à créer, en fait. Euh, et, et aussi avec ces outils, une fois que tu as fait une classe, la magie est, est vraiment là aussi de, de choisir d'activement euh, tous les jours d'avoir ces énergies et d'avoir les entités aussi dans ta vie, d'une façon ou d'une autre. Parce que sinon, souvent, euh, je vois pour moi quand même que souvent, ça... Ça crée là ces, ces espaces où mon corps, il est vraiment euh, un peu comme ça. <rire> Et parce que le corps, lui, il n'arrête pas d'être conscient. C'est nous qui nous coupons de la conscience. Mais lui, il est là. Ah, oh, il y a ça, il y a ça. Et puis là-bas, t'as vu Et puis euh, tu sens ça Oh, et puis comme c'est grave ce truc-là. Oh, je ne veux pas aller là-bas. Euh, et, et tout ça, en fait, c'est des informations qu'on reçoit en permanence. Euh, et tout n'est pas en lien avec les entités. Mais... Euh, mais effectivement, quand on a signé pour être facilitateur, parler aux entités, en général, c'est qu'on a des capacités et quand on commence à les reconnaître, la vie devient beaucoup plus aisée et ça devient beaucoup plus facile pour nos corps. C'est d'ailleurs ça qui m'a amené à la conscience des, des entités. C'est la première classe d'entités que j'ai fait. Alors, je ne sais pas d'où ni d'Ève ni d'Adam on m'avait repéré pour me dire « Ah, oh, ça serait bien, faire... on aimerait bien venir à Dijon pour faire une classe, tu ne voudrais pas être l'hôte ?» <rire> c'est comme ça que, que je me suis retrouvé à faire une classe entité alors que jusque là j'étais là ouais mais je vais apprendre quelque chose découvrir euh, j'étais pas fermé mais je me disais bah, qu'est-ce qu'a accès ça va m'apporter d'autres et puis vraiment ce qui a été faramineux pour moi c'est de me rendre compte c'est une fois qu'on a fait cette, ces déblayages qu'on fait dans la classe par les entités hein, euh, on facilite un changement au niveau de l'énergie euh, en posant des questions en utilisant la formule de déblayage ou autre euh, mais j'ai remarqué que la moitié des douleurs, la moitié, et c'était énorme à cette époque, hein, euh, la moitié des douleurs de mon, de mon dos avait disparu, en fait. Et wow. je me suis dit, waouh, mais en fait, ça, toute ma vie, j'ai eu ces douleurs de, de, de dos, et je pensais que c'était lié à une mauvaise position, ou à un manque du fait d'être musclé, ou de sport, ou de... Et non, c'était juste ce que je cachais derrière moi, de ma conscience des entités, en fait. Et c'est fou, en fait. 
Personne ne nous dit ça ailleurs. Personne ne nous dit ça, mais, mais une fois qu'on le sait et une fois qu'on l'utilise, ben ça change vraiment des choses qui, qui s'expliquent et qui se résolvent autre, nulle part autrement, en fait. Waouh, ça, c'est génial. Okay. Et si, si, tu regardes, si, si tu regardes le live maintenant ou plus tard et tu as des choses qui se passent dans ton corps, quelle puissance est-ce que tu gardes derrière ton dos et qu'est-ce qu'il y a à regarder, en fait Qu'est-ce que tu commencerais à le regarder à... Ça Moi, j'inviterais aussi... vraiment les gens à, à être curieux d'utiliser vraiment les, les, les outils de base de parler aux entités. Est-ce qu'il y a une entité Oui Non enfin, C'est expansif quand je dis ça, ça s'illumine ou au contraire, ça se contracte. Euh, déjà, rien que ça. Euh, et puis, euh, après, euh, le... peut-être on peut donner le premier déblayage d'entité. De, de, oui, je pense. Hein. Bon, je vais partir du principe que oui. Je vais oui, autoriser oui. le droit. <rire> euh, non, tu pas jeté. <rire> pour, 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 dé, pour décoincer les, les, les entités qui ne bah, savent pas qu'elles n'ont qu qu plus de corps, par exemple, euh, on pose cette question. Entité, vérité, qui es-tu et qui étais-tu avant ça, avant ça, avant ça, avant ça, et vérité, qui seras-tu dans le futur Et ça, ça débloque l'entité la, la, qui est coincée dans sa position dans le temps. Bah, euh, je m'appelle Gisèle et je ne fais rien d'autre que Gisèle. En fait, ça se trouve, c'est Gisèle au moment où elle a quitté son corps, mais avant, c'était Arthur, c'était Bertrand, c'était euh, euh, Ephigénie. Euh, et puis, quand on lui pose la question, qui seras-tu dans le futur bah, Peut-être que ça sera... Euh, je ne sais pas, E.T. Euh, E.T. <rire> e de la <rire> maison. Euh, et donc, comme elle sait qu'il y a un choix différent, eh ben, elle ne reste plus au même endroit et cette énergie qu'on pouvait percevoir, elle part. Et, et juste d'essayer cet outil pour voir ce que ça transforme, ben, ça peut donner le différentiel. Parce que moi, je, moi je, comme j'avais vécu toute ma vie avec ces douleurs, je ne savais pas en fait que c'était la conscience des entités. Je ne me serais jamais douté que c'était ça. Ouais. Et c'est parce que je les ai utilisés que du coup, j'ai eu cette conscience que c'était des entités et que je pouvais changer quelque chose. Mais quand euh, vous avez été coincé toute votre vie, <rire> vous ne savez pas que vous êtes coincé. Hein, c'est comme si on, on marchait. Que vous êtes euh, coincé, euh, mais que vous ah êtes très coincé. J'adore. Marie-Sandrine, comme... bah, que tu es coincé, mais que tu n'es en pas coincé du tout. Es juste oui, ouais. Marie-Sandrine, c'était quoi ta première fois euh, euh, en fait, en fait euh, on, on s'est posé la question juste avant et en fait, j'ai eu une idée qui m'est venue et après, je suis arrivée à une autre conscience avant et encore avant et encore avant. Et en fait, c'est depuis notre plus jeune âge, en fait, où on a pu percevoir plein de choses. Et ce qui était intéressant dans cette question, c'est que je pensais en fait avoir perçu quand est-ce que ça avait commencé, mais ça avait commencé en fait depuis tellement avant. En fait, cette conscience d'entité, c'est comme si on, en fait, on l'a toujours eu, mais c'est à quel moment on s'autorise à la reconnaître. Et euh, c'est en ça que je trouve ces classes intéressantes, c'est que ça nous permet de reconnaître, quand on dit de remettre ce qu'on sait, c'est vraiment ça, et de, et de voir en fait qu'à ce moment-là, euh, ce qui s'est passé, où on pensait que c'était hyper rationnel, etc., où on s'est dit « non, j'ai dû inventer le truc », où je me suis fait un film, une image, etc., ben, en fait, c'était bien réel. C'est aussi, du coup, commencer à se faire confiance. Donc, c'est commencer à devenir plus curieux, c'est aussi demander d'avoir plus d'aisance, de plus avoir de peur et de plus avoir de fun. Et ce que je trouve intéressant aussi aujourd'hui par rapport à cette journée Halloween, c'est qu'autour d'Halloween, il y a tout ce côté très morbide, très noir, très peur, etc. Et qu'est-ce que ce serait en fait de sortir de ce rapport avec les entités, mais d'être vraiment dans le fun et de voir qu'est-ce que ça peut créer comme fun dans notre vie. Ça peut prendre la version dont tu as partagé Janik, mais ça peut être aussi cette interaction, se recevoir, ces, ces perceptions de contribution, exactement, oui. J'adore la... Et puis après, tu nous raconteras peut-être ta première fois, euh, Yasso. <rire> J'adore okay. ce, cha... ce, que, ce, que a... ce que Shannon a, a dit, qui est tellement un point de vue complètement différent. Il y a, il y a une personne qui récemment euh, euh, a quitté son corps et qui était facilitatrice par les entités. Et elle a fait euh, « Mais génial, félicitations en fait, euh, célébrons quoi !» Et, et c'est un point de vue qui est tellement différent que, qui existe dans certaines cultures. Mais si, euh, si, voilà, en fait, peu importe le choix qu'on qu fait de, de s'incarner ou d'être désincarné, ou... c'était une célébration, c'était amusant, et, et en fait, on découvrait la richesse de tout, tous les êtres qui existent, et pas juste euh, des, des êtres qu'on peut voir avec nos yeux, de notre espèce, et se limiter à ça, en fait. Wow. Alors, il y a ce d'abord. Il y a ce d'abord, on en a. Une histoire croustillante. 
<rire> Moi, ma toute première expérience, je pense que, que j'ai vraiment été consciente, c'était ma grand-mère quand j'étais petite. Elle venait toujours euh, quand je m'allais dormir. C'était marrant d'avoir cette perception. Mais ma mère, elle m'a vraiment reconnue. Ah, c'est comme si tu, c'est comme, euh, comme tu l'as décrit, c'est grand-mère. Et après, j'ai, j'ai plus jamais eu, au fait. Et à, juste que j'ai commencé Access. Et quand j'ai fait ma première fondation, le, on a fait le jour, la deuxième journée, on a parlé des, des entités. Et le soir, j'allais manger chez, euh, j'avais un, un date, ça se dit, un rendez-vous. Et je vais manger là-bas. Et je suis à la table et on est en train de mettre la table en place. Le gars, il est en train de cuisiner. Et je me dis, bon, je ne peux pas m'asseoir ici. Ce n'est pas possible. Donc, on tourne. Il dit, ah, peut-être que c'est le printemps, on va tourner la table. Donc, on tourne la table. Et on tourne la table, mais à 360 degrés parce que ça n'allait pas du tout. Donc, je dis, OK, laisse tomber. Je vais juste m'asseoir. On arrête. Et le moment que je m'assieds, on commence à manger et je n'ai même pas le premier bouche, truc dans ma bouche. Et je me dis, ah, mais en fait, c'est comme s'il y a quelqu'un qui est assis sur la chaise. Et il dit « Ah, peut-être euh, peut l'énergie de mon ex. » Il dit « Non, non, quelqu'un qui est mort. <rire> » Puis c'est sorti de ma bouche et là, je me suis dit « Oh, bah, bah ouais, ouais c'est ça en fait. » Et euh, là, donc en fait, c'était une, une femme euh, qui avait habité là avant, qui était décédée là. Mais bon, moi, c'était ma toute première expérience. Je lui ai dit « Bon, j'ai mon cahier dans mon sacoche euh, avec un, un déblayage. J'ai aucune idée si ça fonctionne oui ou non, mais on peut essayer. » Donc en fait, on a fait le déblayage. Et là, je, quand on a fini, j'ai dit, bon, si ça marche, elle devrait être partie. Et donc, je vais à la toilette quelques minutes plus tard et en une fois, elle est là. Et je me dis, ah non, ou bien je deviens folle ou bien j'ai la conscience d'entité, mais ce n'est pas possible. Je me dis, ok, cool, comment je peux, comment je peux savoir que je ne suis pas folle <rire> Et là, je lui, ai, je lui ai écouté et elle m'a donné des infos à propos du bâtiment. Et je dis, bon, ok, ça, c'est assez facile pour, en fait, checker ça sans être bizarre. Donc, je suis rentrée de nouveau dans le, chez lui et j'ai commencé à demander, bon, en fait, elle est belle, ta maison. Hein? Est-ce que tu as, as beaucoup changé les trucs <rire> Et là, il m'a dit, oui, oui, j'ai euh, déconstruit ça et ça et ça. Et je dis, ouais, t'as enlevé un mur par là-bas, ouais. Et il me dit, ouais, tu sais comment Bon, la nana, elle n'est pas partie. <rire> mmh. Et donc, ça, c'était ma première expérience. Et là, en fait... Euh, Bon, j'ai compris en fait qu'elle était à la recherche de, de son mari. Elle n'avait pas compris en fait que, que, que sa famille avait, été, avait quitté la maison une fois qu'elle était décédée. Et euh, bon, la conversation a encore continué une semaine plus tard où, euh, où elle était vraiment euh, près de moi pour, pour que je lui emmène où elle était. Euh, et à l'époque, j'étais dans la voiture. Bon, c'est tout au début, quoi. J'avais aucune idée que tu pouvais juste les renvoyer ou les envoyer où ils devaient aller. Donc, elle est là à côté de moi. Je dis, ah non, mais non, 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 ça, c'est trop bizarre. Je n'ai pas envie de ça. Et donc, je me suis arrêtée chez une, euh, une pompe d'essence. <rire> Et je me suis dit, je vais d'abord regarder s'il n'y avait personne. Après, j'ai ouvert la porte. Je me suis dit, mais non, tu te casses. <rire> Et c'est fini. Je n'ai pas plus d'informations. Ils doivent être quelque part ici, dans cette région. Je n'ai pas plus d'infos. <rire> Et ça, c'est... Euh... Ça, c'était ma première expérience, en fait, avec des entités où j'ai vu, waouh, tu vois, tu déblais et ça ne fonctionne pas. OK, quoi de très possible là Qu'est-ce qui requiert Quelle information est-ce que toi, tu peux recevoir et comment tu peux créer avec eux ensemble Mais au début, euh, franchement, je n'étais pas sûre. Là. Je pensais, ou bien je deviens dingue, euh, ou bien c'est vraiment ça. Et voilà, après, j'ai commencé à faire les classes parce que ça commençait à être difficile, surtout dans des relations. Et je travaillais beaucoup avec des enfants aussi. Et là... Euh, Ouais, c'était vraiment un espace qui ouvre tellement. Donc ça <rire> Waouh mmh. Et ah. du coup, ce que j'adore dans ce que tu partages et dans, dans ce qu'on se rend compte, en fait, dans ces classes, c'est que même quand on est facilitateur, c'est vraiment de l'exploration. On explore tout le temps, en fait. C'est-à-dire que c'est une conscience qui fait que s'ouvrir. Et si on est prêt à recevoir, si on est prêt... Euh, à accueillir ça, et ben en fait, ça devient de plus en plus facile, de plus en plus fun, comme je disais. Et ça devient... Enfin, euh, moi, je perçois vraiment un cadeau dans ma vie. Enfin, c'est vraiment... Euh, je reçois... Euh, c'est un espace euh, chaleureux euh, d'échange. Et euh, moi, ça a beaucoup ouvert sur tout ce qui est euh, vraiment le rapport à la nature, le, la, le contact avec la planète. C'est vraiment quelque chose qui m'accompagne euh, tous les jours et avec euh, qui je crée, avec pour qui je contribue. Et je trouve que... Euh, c'est vraiment le vrai espace. J'ai l'impression d'avoir vraiment trouvé le vrai espace, mon vrai espace, en fait. Waouh Et c'est cool ce que tu dis là, parce que tu vois, souvent, j'entends des gens, « Ah oui, je suis allée là, il y avait tellement d'entités, j'ai essayé de les déblayer. 
tu vois, comment ce serait pour avoir une réalité avec les entités où tu es comme tu es en voyage, tu vois, tu, tu vas dans un autre pays, tu ne vas pas chasser les gens qui habitent là, tu vas tu vas des connaissances, tu vas voir comment les choses fonctionnent là. Euh, et ça, pour moi, c'est vraiment, c'est délicieux de, de traverser le monde et d'avoir cette source aussi. Yannick. Non, j'allais dire qu'il y avait un écho, mais il a disparu. Ok. <rire> je vais ouais. faire ce que, ce que, ce que j'adore aussi, c'est que c'est tout le temps, vraiment tout le temps changeant. Tu disais, on apprend, c'est une exploration et c'est vraiment ça. Mais il n'y a pas longtemps, j'ai été dans une expo d'art et à un moment donné, je n'arrivais plus à voir. <rire> J'avais l'impression qu'il y avait un, un film devant mes yeux. C'était flou. Je, 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 je pleurais jusqu'à ce que je, je reconnaisse qu'en fait, c'était blindé, mais vraiment blindé d'entités de, de création, en fait. Apparemment, j'ai j'ai particulier avec ça. C'est-à-dire, il, il y avait une allée, euh, donc il y avait plusieurs allées, en fait, où il y avait des œuvres d'art, euh, que ce soit des peintures, des sculptures, etc. Et il y avait vraiment une allée où, traverser cette allée, il y, a, il y avait une, une masse mais d'entités de, 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 qui voulaient être créées, en fait, des, des, des wow. tableaux, des sculptures, des peintures, des... enfin, peu importe. Euh, et, euh, et ça a changé qu'à partir du moment où j'ai fait « Ah, waouh !» En fait, il y a juste beaucoup d'entités. Je vous ai vu <rire> Je vous ai vu <rire> Juste à reconnaître, quoi. Ouais. Euh, mais c'était hallucinant. C'était vraiment euh, une espèce de purée de poids, quoi. Alors, il y a Eva qui me demande « Est-ce que vous pouvez parler plus des relations et entités ?» Oui, on peut. <rire> Quoi Il veut d'abord. Ah. <rire> ben, je peux dire qu'en fait, euh, euh, comment dire, ce qui est marrant avec les entités et plein de choses, avec ces outils d'accès, c'est que des fois, tu as des problèmes dans ta vie et qu'en fait, tu vas essayer de les régler de façon rationnelle, du genre A plus B égale C, et en fait, ça ne marche pas. Et quand tu commences à poser des questions et d'ouvrir ta conscience et d'aller dans d'autres univers, notamment celui des entités, eh bien, en fait, tu peux changer des choses dans ta vie, notamment avec tes relations. Donc, en fait, il y a beaucoup à dire sur ce sujet, dans le sens où, euh, effectivement, dans quelle mesure les entités peuvent euh, être un frein à nos relations, à avoir des relations, à avoir de bonnes relations, à avoir de bonnes relations avec soi-même. J'ai envie de dire, ça peut aller un petit peu dans tous les sens, mais effectivement, euh, il y a un vrai sujet par rapport à ça et... Euh, un vrai, un, un, si je peux dire, un impact ou une vraie euh, euh, interférence que peuvent être aussi les entités euh, dans les relations. Ouais, moi j'ai beaucoup moi-même aussi, mais j'ai beaucoup de gens aussi que je connais qui, tu vois, quand tu as cette conscience d'entité que les gens que tu rencontreras, dans n'importe quelle relation, ça peut être amitié, ça peut être euh, relation sexe, euh, euh, qui seront parfois pas là pour ce que tu penses qu'ils sont là en fait. Et si tu si tu reconnais pas qu'ils sont juste là parce qu'il y a une entité qui veut vraiment qui veut vraiment être facilité en le ou euh... Euh... Oh oh, est-ce qu'il y a quelqu'un qui a pris la live Non. Non pas moi. Non non mais pas pas de oui, j'entends un écho, moi aussi, maintenant. Est-ce qu'il y a des entités qui veulent être connues <rire> Au revoir C'est un peu alloué. Je pense que c'est Eva qui a son endroit au sort. Comment ça devient encore euh, Oui, mais oui, ça peut vraiment être difficile. Ils ne sont pas là pour ce que tu penses. Oui, donc... Tu pensais que tu allais super avec un étranger et en fait euh, bah non tu vas parler de sa grand-mère parce que c'est <rire> parce que c'est le truc qui peut être abordé que avec toi parce que la plupart des autres personnes qui vont être capables de percevoir ça bah elles vont être très rares déjà puis elles vont pas forcément en parler et ouais <rire> oh, j'adore et c'est marrant comme, la... comme... alors vas-y vas-y vas non, j'allais dire comme souvent, on est, on est vraiment poussé. Quoi. Une fois, euh, on a covoituré avec mon, mon conjoint, un, un, bah, une personne qu'on connaît un peu, mais c'était dans un week-end avec, avec d'autres amis. C'était plutôt l'ami des autres personnes. Euh, voilà, on faisait la, le chemin en route euh, ensemble. Et, et j'ai vraiment été poussé pour, pour commencer la discussion <rire> par parler de ça. Et, et, euh, et, et euh, en fait, on, on, je ne sais plus de qui on a parlé, mais on a, par, on a parlé de quelqu'un qui était 
qui était mort, qui était suicidé, je crois qu'il n'y a pas longtemps, quoi. Et, et, et vas-y, vis avec ce genre de truc où bah, parfois les premières conversations qui vont sortir, bah, comme toi, c'est euh, « Ah bah non, en fait, je suis assis à la place d'une euh, personne qui est là et qui est morte, quoi. » Mais euh, en même temps, ça fait tellement de bien de pouvoir parler de ça ouvertement et librement parce que euh, c'est enfin, comme un éléphant qui est au milieu de la pièce et personne n'en parle. Ben, quand on commence à en parler, c'est quand même beaucoup plus facile de circuler. <rire> ouais. Et, euh, et c'est ça que j'adore avec, euh, avec, avec ces outils qui sont absolument... Euh, irrationnel et imprévisible en fait euh, cette conscience elle est irrationnelle et imprévisible et c'est ça qui est aussi magique hein. c'est qu'on est surpris à tous les coins de rue <rire> ouais. est-ce si que j'aime bien à... ouais, si on est prêt à avoir cette, bi... cette, euh... ouais, cette ouverture je vais plutôt dire que bizarre ouais. mais en fait c'est ça c'est que si on est prêt à être aussi bizarre qu'on l'est mais dans le sens où c'est aussi euh, on est bizarre en étant soi en ayant ses perceptions en ayant ses capacités euh, en reconnaissant des choses que des personnes ne reconnaissent pas ou ne sont pas prêtes à reconnaître. Si on se met plus en tort par rapport à ça, comme tu disais, où on n'attend plus que tout le monde reconnaisse ça pour le reconnaître, mais de se dire « Ok, j'ai conscience de ça. » Et en fait, euh, je n'ai pas besoin d'en parler non plus. Mais en tout cas, je ne me mets plus en tort et je n'essaie plus d'être comme les autres. Ça, c'est aussi super libérateur, je trouve. Oui, okay. exactement pour nous. Ça, c'est marrant. J'avais un client il n'y a pas trop longtemps euh, qui était chez moi. Il était déjà venu quelques fois. Et euh, un bout d'un moment, il y, a, il y a une entité et j'avais un peu, euh, je savais un peu l'histoire aussi qu'il y avait quelqu'un qui était mort euh, dans sa firme en route vers le travail. Et en une fois, il y a vraiment cette entité. Et moi, je suis là en train de donner les barres. Je dis, bon, OK, euh, je ne sais pas s'il va être prêt à entendre, mais et était vraiment là. L'entité était vraiment là, mais oui <rire> Je dis, bon, peut-être qu'on peut faire énergétiquement, on ne doit pas en parler. Non Je dis, oh, OK, OK, on y va et c'est cool parce que, bon, je, on, a, on a fait la session, j'en ai parlé, je lui ai posé des questions. Et bon, quand il est parti, je me suis dit, OK, bon, on verra, euh, on verra ce que ça donne parce que, voilà, on a ouvert des grands trucs là. Et euh, le jour d'après, en fait, il m'a envoyé un message, merci, parce que tu as vraiment euh, ouvert un, un espace que je savais toujours qui était là, en fait, depuis toute ma vie. Euh, donc, ce n'est pas que pour nous, en fait, que ça va être libérateur, ça va souvent être aussi pour les autres, cette reconnaissance de, waouh, ah, OK. Ça m'a donné les frissons quand tu as dit ça, ce côté, euh, qu'est-ce que ça ouvre quand euh, la reconnaissance de ça, ça peut vraiment euh, changer ta perspective des choses, de ta vie, de justement de revenir sur des choses où tu t'étais mis en tort et te dire que tu n'es pas si bizarre ou différent que ça. Et puis que toi aussi, tu vois la contribution que tu apportes aux autres, les autres qui sont prêts à recevoir et qui sont en retour. Enfin, je trouve que c'est vraiment, euh, vraiment magique comme partage. Et aussi pour, aussi pour les entités, parce que c'est cool, parce qu'après, bon, lui, il a une firme avec plein de, de trucs et des camions et, et, et toutes sortes. Et donc, après aussi, il m'a envoyé, ah, c'est cool parce que je vais acheter un nouveau camion et je vais mettre son nom, comme ça, il, comme ça, il est encore dans le business, parce qu'il voulait clairement contribuer aussi. Ah. Et c'était tellement vraiment, waouh, si tu, si tu as toutes ces entités aussi, qu'ils ont fait partie d'un business, qu'ils ont fait partie de ta vie, qui ne veulent, qu veulent pas forcément déjà euh, se transcéder dans quelque chose d'autre, mais qui veulent encore être présents et qui veulent contribuer. Et, Combien est-ce qu'on rejette ça, au fait, euh, si on ne reçoit pas Et une fois que tu vas ouvrir cet espace, et lui, il en parlait parfois, il disait, ouais, c'est comme s'ils sont toujours sur, comme des petits anges qui sont près de moi, mais c'était un peu une construction pour le rendre euh, euh, avalable pour les autres. Et là, quand nous, on a eu cette conversation, c'était comme s'il y avait vraiment cet espace pour respirer et de savoir, ah ouais, mais je le savais, ah mais je le savais, ça, et maintenant, ça fait sens. Et tu sais quoi, je vais te donner une place dans la firme parce qu'il est toujours là et il contribue. Et il va être le gardien, parce qu'il était mort sur la route, il va être la, le gardien de, de la route pour nous. Ah, et c'était un truc de « waouh !» Ok, cool. Ouais. Pouf ouais. On a le type de cadeau qu'on peut euh, créer et recevoir. Euh. Wow, merci pour ce partage. Ouais, le, ouais les types de cadeaux qu'on qu ait aussi. Hein. Tu vois, parce que parfois, tu diras « Oh non, je n'ai pas envie. » Alors, l'entité sera là « Mais oui Tu dois, je te pousse !» yeah. Yeah. Moi, je remarque que j'ai résisté tellement longtemps, en fait, à, à l'appellation de médium. Que, que maintenant, en fait, où je commence à reconnaître que pour certaines personnes, bah, ça leur permet de... Enfin, je veux dire, dire ça, ça, ça c'est un pont, en fait, sur ce qu'ils connaissent. Euh, et et c'est... Euh, j'ai encore du mal à dire que je le suis, mais en fait, euh, parce que pour moi, c'est tellement naturel qu'on on, l'est tous. 
potentiellement. Mais par contre, on n'est pas forcément tous prêts à l'assumer et à voir ce rôle et à vivre en tant que tel et à être reconnu pour ça. Euh, mais le médium, le chaman, le, peu importe, celui qui a cette capacité qu'on a tous, mais qui l'exploite euh, pour pouvoir faire le pont en fait, entre... Bah, j'ai envie de dire les différents endroits où euh, peu importe le for la forme d'entité euh, gravite et évolue, bah, il a de tout temps eu une place et un rôle qui était essentiel justement pour, pour régler des affaires qui n'étaient pas réglées, pour euh, créer plus, pour... Euh, euh, J'adore ce, cette, cette nouvelle spécialité qui, qui, euh, qui est apparue euh, là dernièrement, euh, hors de travail ou hors d'ouverture, où justement on remet en place cette... Cette, euh, ces, ces horaires de travail où quelque part on va dire ok c'est s'il y a des entités qui veulent communiquer et des gens euh, qui ont des choses à voilà à éclaircir à dire euh, bah on, on peut aménager cet espace où euh, bah on prend conseil on gère euh, on s'occupe pas que du monde des personnes incarnées mais de toute forme d'entité de, comment elles peuvent interagir et, et contribuer et comment aussi nous on peut être une contribution dans ce monde euh, et, et pour moi, ce qui est, ce qui est génial, c'est qu'avec les outils de parler aux entités, bah, on n'est pas dans un truc lourd, on n'est pas dans un truc significatif, on est justement dans un truc beaucoup plus fun, beaucoup plus léger, où, où la conscience de tous les, bah, toutes les formes de conscience, elles sont, elles sont incluses sans une notion d'hierarchie, de qui, qui guide qui, euh, qui est plus supérieur ou inférieur à qui ou à quoi. Euh, et, et ça, c'est rafraîchissant, en fait. C'est vraiment chouette. Et il était temps. Ouais. Et il était temps, c'est ça. Ouais, ouais. et peut-être aussi maintenant, parce qu'il y a, tu vois, on est dans une période intéressante aussi dans le monde. Il n'y a pas beaucoup de gens, dans le moment, il y a beaucoup de gens qui restent sur place, il y a beaucoup de gens qui meurent, euh, il y a beaucoup de gens qui choisissent de, de rester entre, euh, il y a beaucoup d'hôpitaux qui sont remplis, mais combien aussi est-ce qu'ils sont remplis euh, d'énergie au fait qu'ils sont là, que personne ne reconnaît. Euh, donc, ça peut être aussi une contribution parfois de te connecter juste à, à, ce que, à quoi tu peux te connecter. Donc, tu peux te connecter à un hôpital ou à, euh, à ta ville ou à ton pays et juste euh, déblayer même pour créer de l'espace. C'est même pas pour chasser les entités. Euh, L'année passée, j'ai fait 21 jours de, de déblayage d'entités. C'était trop cool parce qu'en fait, après quelques jours, tout le monde a commencé à comprendre. Waouh, on déblaye des énergies pour créer plus de conscience et plus d'espace. Ça n'a rien à faire à, à les foutre à la porte. Et ça devenait tellement cool parce que chaque jour, ça devenait une nouvelle aventure. Waouh, qu'est-ce qu'on va pouvoir créer aujourd'hui en déblayant les entités Qu'est-ce qu'on va pouvoir créer Et quoi si aussi avec cet outil, en fait, ça pourrait être à propos de la, de la création Qu'est-ce que tu peux créer avec cet outil Qu'est-ce que toi, tu peux créer avec cet outil Pour les gens qui regardent. J'ai aucune idée combien de temps on pouvait passer. Est-ce que c'était 30 minutes euh, Je crois que c'est bon, là. 30 je crois minutes. Que, je crois que le... Non. Malheureusement. Oh. On va devoir se quitter. Oui. C'est toute la journée. En plus, il y a plein, plein, plein de classes qui arrivent. Il y a Shannon qui est encore dans la classe du, du commencement. Mais euh, pour trouver voilà, tous les facilitateurs, tous les facilitatrices mondiales, je dirais, on va regarder sur talktotheentities.com. Euh, et là, vous pourriez trouver euh, qui, euh, qui, qui vous recherchez. <rire> Merci, merci tout le monde d'avoir été bon, en, en live avec nous. Merci pour vos messages, pour vos coucou, pour vos merci, pour euh, vos retours. Et euh, ouais, je me réjouis euh, de qu ce qui est encore possible au-delà de tout ce qu'on a imaginé euh, dans, ce, dans ce domaine. Ça souffre tellement et euh, comment nos choix créent tellement aussi. Donc, euh, merci à tout le monde. Merci à vous aussi. Hein. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Et nous, on reste. Bonjour à tous et à toutes. Alors, bienvenue pour une séance particulière. Aujourd'hui, je vous invite, je vous invite et j'invite une star internationale, encore méconnue, qui va peut-être révolutionner le monde entier parce qu'elle a à vous transmettre et à vous dire. On a organisé la réunion avec l'aide de la technologie. Et euh, j'attends de voir si elle répond à, 
Elle répond à mon appel. Bonsoir Valérie. Hello Angélique. Voilà. Aujourd'hui, j'appelle les esprits. Et j'appelle un esprit particulier. J'appelle un esprit particulier. Je vais appeler l'esprit de ma tantine. Préparez-vous. Le monde va rencontrer mon invité surprise. J'entends des bruits. Des bruits. <rire> Tantine <rire> Jano, tu es là Oh, bah ta bonne mine Oui tu sais que je suis très, très, très émue. Très émue. Mais moi très aussi. Très émue de pouvoir être en direct, enfin, et de pouvoir parler aux vivants. Ah, mais depuis le temps qu'on a organisé ça, quel plaisir. Oui. Voilà, enfin pouvoir profiter de la technologie pour faire voix à toi, Tantine. Oui, 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 à la télé Internet. À la télé internet, je suis en direct. Ah oui, c'est très bien. Je ne reviens pas, je ne reviens pas. Voilà, tu donc sais, euh, pour ceux qui ne connaissent pas, ah, je vais te présenter quand même au monde. Donc, voici Tantine Jeannette. Ginette, Ginette. Tu ne m'as pas oublié Jeannette. quand même. Ah ben, tu sais, euh, parfois, euh, euh, voilà, j'ai un peu tendance à regarder à travers, quoi. Pourtant, je te sollicite pas mal, hein, mon petit Jano. Ah oui, elle me casse, la pied, elle me casse les pieds, elle me casse la tête. Hein. Mais bon. je t'aime, je t'aime. Hein. C'est pas la question, c'est pas la question. Je sais, mon Jano, je sais, je sais. Je sais que tu m'aimes bien, mais là, je pouvais pas, je pouvais pas vraiment passer à côté de cette occasion de parler aux vivants parce que je suis tellement fatiguée d'essayer de leur parler et qu'ils m'entendent pas. Ben bah oui, oui, mais je comprends bien. Déjà, rien que moi, tu vois, la plupart du temps, mon regard te transperce, je passe à travers, je regarde le reste et puis je ne te vois pas. Ah, Ce n'est pas aussi facile que quand on a un corps. Hein. Non. Et tu sais quoi Moi, j'ai même pris ma montre pour être sûre d'être à l'heure parce que tu sais que pour nous, hein, l'heure, ça n'existe pas. Le temps n'existe ah oui. plus. Tu ne trouves pas Alors, que je suis comment... toujours aussi belle Ah, mais tu t'es même… Euh... Embelli, la mort te ah. réussit bien. Merci, merci. Tu as une beauté spectrale. Ah oh, je suis très touchée, je suis très touchée, mon Jano. Il y a comme une lumière astrale qui, qui se dégage de toi. Ça, voilà. Tu sais, on parle de la beauté diaphane de certaines personnes. Eh ben, C'est tout à fait approprié. Hein. Oui, oui, oui. Alors, Alors je, voulais profiter, que... oui. je voulais profiter de cette occasion pour dire à quel point là, euh, les grands esprits m'ont permis d'être visible aujourd'hui euh, par tous les vivants. Et j'en profite, j'en profite, j'en profite. Je sais qu'on n'a pas beaucoup de temps, mais j'en profite pour dire que vraiment, 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 si vous pouviez plus reconnaître notre présence et on est, on est désespéré à l'idée que vous ne nous voyez plus et que vous pensez qu'on n'existe plus. Alors qu'on est tout le temps là, on est tout le temps là pour vous et on voudrait tellement plus communiquer avec vous les vivants. C'est fatigant pour nous, tu sais, d'essayer de, euh, désespérément de, fatigue, de, de, de parler avec vous. Est-ce que tu sais ça ben, Je me mets à ta place, hein, euh, pas de bras, pas de chocolat. Quand les, bas, les bras passent à travers, c'est difficile de faire toc-toc, quoi. Ouais, ouais, ouais ça doit être frustrant, hein. Ouais. Est-ce que tu peux, mon Jano, dire comment moi je communique avec toi et quels sont les signes de reconnaissance Ah bah, hein, ah bah par Facebook. As... Oui, mais quand on n'est pas sur Facebook Live, comment, ah comment tu me fais Alors, voilà. Mais pour faire simple, la plupart du temps, comment je sais que Tantine est là Elle me prend la tête. Mais alors, quand je dis elle me prend la tête, c'est pas parce que c'est méchant. Hein. C'est juste, elle est là, elle est insistante et puis c'est 
c'est, 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 voilà, ça, ça, je, je sens cette espèce de tension au niveau de la tête. Alors, je ne sais pas ce que tu me fais. Peut-être que tu es présente. Peut-être que tu es là en train de passer tes mains à travers. Euh, mais je sais qu'il y a quelque chose. Je sais que tu es là. Et quand je dis, est-ce que c'est tantine Eh bien, ma tête, elle, elle commence à, voilà, à reprendre de l'espace. Ça va mieux. C'est comme si le fait de reconnaître qu'elle était là, eh bien, euh, ben, ça, ça coule, de, ça coule de sens. Euh, mais ce n'est pas tout le temps comme ça. Hein. Parfois, je crois que j'ai pris un coup de froid, mais en fait, <rire> j'ai la gorge qui gratte ou j'ai envie de tousser. Et euh, voilà, peut-être que ça dépend de l'endroit où tu me touches. <rire> euh, en fait, voilà. quand je veux te parler, dire quelque chose, c'est plutôt vers la gorge que je vais. Et quand je veux juste te dire que je suis là, je fais toc-toc sur ta tête. Ah, c'est pour ça. C'est pour ça. Oui. Et tu sais, je crois que j'ai remarqué aussi, il y a des fois où euh, juste tu veux me dire quelque chose et puis moi je refuse avec ma tête de nœud. Je ne veux pas le voir, je ne veux pas l'entendre. J'ai, j'ai des idées qui me passent dans la tête, mais je dis oui, oui bon, voilà. Et puis à un moment donné, ça, ça devient tellement intense au niveau de la tête, bah, je, je me dis tiens, qu'est-ce que j'ai, j'ai mis de côté et Est-ce que ce n'est pas toi justement qui me souffle des trucs et qui, qui, qui insiste pour que je, j'écoute tu sais, nous, euh, dans cet espace où on n'est plus dans la densité d'un corps, on voit tout ce qui se passe pour vous, les vivants. Et euh, souvent, on a envie de vous dire, non, non, prends pas ce chemin-là, prends plutôt l'autre. Écoute, là, ça va être mieux. À cause. Bon, c'est vrai qu'on peut insister un peu physiquement hein, pour que vous puissiez nous entendre. Sinon, hein, vous en faites qu'à votre tête, les vivants. Hein. Vous n'êtes ouais. pas très à, à l'écoute. À cause de la perception du temps, c'est ça. Ce n'est pas aussi linéaire. Voilà, exactement. Ouais. Mais Et toi, moi, t'es, si toi, tu veux, consciente. Pas... Toi, bah, toi, tu restes consciente là. Parce... Je suis consciente parce que j'aime bien les vivants. Et j'aime... je t'aime bien, mon Jeannot. Et je sais que tu travailles bien avec les entités. Alors, hein, j'avais envie de te donner un coup de main et de participer à, à, ce... à, ce... à, ce... à cette télé Internet. Hum. Parce que j'ai remarqué que toi, tu n'es pas comme le, le, certains autres fantômes, il y, y en a qui ne savent même pas qu'ils sont morts, en fait, hein? qu'ils n'ont plus de corps, ouais, ils restent là juste parce qu'ils déambulent, ils avaient l'habitude de faire ce qu'ils voulaient, mais c'est, c'est un peu coincé, quoi. Hein? Pas coincé au sens, euh, euh, pas ouvert d'esprit, mais au sens où ils sont coincés dans leur, dans leur bulle, quoi, dans, leur, euh, dans leur monde. Hein? Et toi, tu es ouais. bien là, toi. C'est vrai. Ouais. Ah. Ouais, 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 je suis bien là, je suis bien là toujours. Et, euh, mais je peux aussi monter dans la lumière et me reposer et être ailleurs. Hein. Tu sais, en fait, j'ai la capacité d'être partout à la fois. Et, euh, wow. Mais quand je veux insister auprès des vivants, euh, ben, c'est plus facile de communiquer avec un Janik, un Jano, mon petit Jano. Euh, qu'avec euh, Monsieur Landa qui est persuadé hein, qu'après la mort, plus rien n'existe. Ouais, bah oui, 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 moi j'ai toujours été un petit, peu, euh, un petit peu curieux de ce qui se passait euh, de l'autre côté. Eh ben, Ça m'a jamais parlé. C'est quand, quand, tu m'as, quand tu m'as dit je, je te ferai des signes quand, quand je n'aurai plus de corps, moi je, 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 savais, je savais qu'on allait rester en contact. Oui, absolument. Mais euh, c'est fabuleux, en fait. Et c'est pas triste. Mais alors, hein, est-ce, que tout, est-ce, que, est-ce que tout le monde a une tante, une, une tante, une tante Ginette Tout le monde a, a quelqu'un qui l'a perdu, qui croit avoir perdu et qui n'est pas perdu. Oui, hein, parce que ce, que ce que je vois, c'est que tu me files quand même des coups de main. Tu n'es pas la seule, d'ailleurs. Je ne sais pas forcément le nom de tout le monde. Mais il y a cette, cette énergie, cette, cette sensation de, d'avoir quelqu'un que j'ai connu, qui me connaît bien, qui est familier. Et puis, euh, quand je ne fais pas ma tête de mule, euh, ça, ça m'aide, hein, ça m'aide. Hein. Ouais, c'est vrai, mon petit Jeannot. Mais je trouve que tu progresses, hein. Tu progresses ah, beaucoup. Ah, super. Bon, c'est, c'est gentil. Tu as vu mes belles, mes belles boucles d'oreilles, c'est… Oh c'est ah, quoi c'est tes, c'est, yeux. Copine... c'est tes yeux c'est... c'est ma copine Odette qui me les a prêtés. Elle ah. est morte depuis plus longtemps que moi, mais elle a gardé des beaux souvenirs. Donc ça, c'est pour bien voir. 
C'est pour être belle à la télé, à la télé internet. Ah, alors ça s'appelle Facebook, hein, Ginette, euh, maintenant. Hein. Oh, mais tu sais, moi, je ne connaissais pas oui, ça longtemps. Oui, hein. oui, oui. Tu m'as demandé oui, d'être oui, là, je suis là. C'était le Minitel. Télé, voilà. Moi, moi j'étais à l'époque du Minitel. Hein. Oui. Ouais. Donc, euh, comment ça... est-ce qu'on peut donner, donner, euh, donner de la conscience aux gens pour pouvoir, euh, euh, pour pouvoir mieux vivre le fait d'avoir des, des gens qui sont de l'autre côté comme toi et, et qui ils n'attendent pas le 31 octobre pour pouvoir leur causer, quoi. Bah déjà, établir hein, des petits signaux euh, avec les personnes que vous avez aimées et qui sont de l'autre côté du voile et leur demander euh, voilà, comment ils peuvent se manifester. Et euh, souvent, on se manifeste autour de la tête des vivants. C'est plus pratique. Les acouphènes... Mmh. Euh, les maux de tête, euh, les, la gorge euh, qui gratte. Euh, ah, les acouphènes, c'est quand tu cries, ça. C'est quand vous êtes sourd, surtout. <rire> Moi, ça va, je ne suis pas trop sourd. Alors, peut-être aveugle de temps en temps, mais <rire> les acouphènes, j'ai voilà. pas eu. Encore. Juste la tête, juste la tête. <rire> ouais, ouais, c'est vrai qu'on n'est pas toujours très. On est un peu proche. Donc, même, tu sais, même nous, on ne se rend pas compte qu'on vous gêne. Hein. Si, vous ah bon nous dites, si vous ne nous le dites pas, bah non, on n'est pas dans vos corps. Et eh on n'a oui, plus oui, la densité oui. de votre corps. Ouais. C'est vrai, maintenant que tu le dis, que parfois je te dis, voilà, quand, quand ça, vraiment ça m'énerve, je n'ai pas la tête à ça, je te dis, euh, fous-moi la paix. Et euh, j'ai l'impression que tu t'écartes. Et ça va mieux. C'est exactement ça. C'est exactement ça. Moi, je n'ai ouais. plus la densité que tu as dans un corps. Donc, quand, souvent, quand je m'approche de toi, toi, ça te gêne. Mais moi, je ne sais même pas que ça te gêne. Alors maintenant, oui. entre, nous, entre nous, on est intime, Jeannot. Entre nous, on est intime. Donc, euh, ouais. on a plus d'habitude. Mais... Euh, euh, eh oui, mais parce voilà. que ça, ça j'ai aussi remarqué, une fois qu'on qu est intime avec, euh, avec quelqu'un qu'on a connu ou, ou même pas forcément qu'on a connu dans, dans cette vie où, où on sait qui c'est, mais voilà, comme toi, on va dire l'équivalent de notre Ginette perso, hein, notre tata Ginette perso, euh, l'entité, la, la présence qu'elle a pour nous aider… Euh, euh, bah une fois qu'on est ouvert à ça, euh, c'est un peu euh, la porte ouverte à toutes les fenêtres. Il hein. n'y a pas que, il a pas que les tataginettes qui sont La sympas, porte ouverte à toutes les voir. fenêtres, hein, ça me fait rire. Qu'est-ce qu'il a de l'humour, <rire> mon petit Jano Vas-y. Je ne connais pas là. cette expression. Oh, c'est mon époque. Ben non, je ne la connaissais pas. Je ne la connaissais pas. Je la connaissais pas. Voilà, c'est l'intérêt d'être avec les vivants de temps en temps. Tu apprends des nouveaux trucs aussi. Hein. Oh, mais ben, tu sais, euh, on se marre bien. Moi, je suis en pas. Hein. Ah, ah ouais. Oui. Bon. Ah ouais. Il faut nous, faut nous aider. On à... s'est bien rigolé, nous aussi. Hein. <rire> Toutes vos conneries. Ah, ça doit être très <rire> drôle alors. Oui, alors, je te disais, justement, quand, quand on est ouvert, il eh n'y ben, a, y a, y a aussi des, des gens qu'on ne connaît pas qui viennent nous voir. Euh, Est-ce qu'on euh, euh, voilà, est qu peut leur donner des, 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 des outils pour, pour, euh, ben, pour pouvoir gérer un petit peu le flux de personnes rentrantes, personnes sortantes, pour tous ceux qui, qui veulent nous rendre visite, quoi, en fait Déjà, pourquoi, pourquoi bah, on est aussi euh, conscient des entités euh, au quotidien Qu'est-ce qui, euh, qu voilà, qu qui fait qu'on est conscient en fait tu, tu sais dire, toi bah, Je crois qu'en fait, euh, on est conscient sans le savoir de tous les mensonges qu'on nous a fait avaler sur, un, euh, sur la mort et, et la mort, la vie est de la belle affaire. Hein on l'a vécu tellement de fois. Donc, je ne vois pas où est le problème. Mais on nous a tellement... Mais même moi, quand j'étais vivante, je croyais que je ne pouvais pas communiquer 
avec, euh, avec les morts. Donc, j'imagine bien, on est assez indulgent avec vous parce qu'on a été, excuse-moi, mais nous aussi, de notre vivant, on a été stupide et on n'a pas reconnu ah, que endormi, quoi. une contribution. Hein un peu comme, on est un peu comme endormi, quoi. Voilà, exactement. En fait, c'est souvent les vivants qui sont plus endormis que les morts. <rire> oui, c'est sûr, c'est sûr. Et alors, du coup, moi, j'ai envie de donner aux gens euh, ben, un outil pour qu'ils puissent savoir comment, comment savoir s'il y, si y a une entité. En fait, moi, comment je fais avec toi ben, Je demande, pas forcément si c'est toi, Ginette, mais je demande s'il y a un fantôme, un esprit, une entité eh c'est pareil qu'avec le, le, le mal de crâne, euh, même si j'avais pas mal à la tête, en fait, c'est comme, si, comme si je commençais à souffler, à me relâcher quand c'est le cas. Hein. Et je déduis que c'est le cas. Pourquoi Parce que il euh, ben, euh, y a un changement justement dans mon corps. Hein. Alors que si je n'ai pas cette prise de conscience, si je ne pose pas cette question, ben, je me sens tout contracté. Et des moments où je pose cette question, pouf, ça se relâche. Hein c'est ça mon Jano, c'est ça. Bah, ça va, j'ai bien compris alors. Pour toi. <rire> ouais, ouais, ce qui est lourd, ce qui est lourd, c'est jamais vrai. Hein. Ouais. Ce qui est léger, par contre, c'est expansif. Là, tout de suite, ça sonne mieux. Ouais, c'est ça. Alors, qu'est-ce qu que tu aimerais dire que, que d'habitude on dit jamais sur les fantômes, sur les esprits, sur sur la mort, tout ce que tu veux, sur le sexe, sur euh... est-ce que vous nous espionnez? Oui, mais en même temps, on se marre plutôt qu'autre chose, hein, en fait, la vérité. C'est qu'à vous regarder, on se marre. On se dit, oh là là, là 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 là, mais pourquoi ils se prennent la tête comme ça, les vivants On aimerait bien que vous soyez dans notre légèreté à nous, hein, parce que franchement, il n'y a, a pas de raison d'en faire tout un plat. Mmh. Enfin, okay. Quand tu dis Et... à vous, c'est à, à ceux qui, qui, qui ont pris conscience qu'ils étaient morts. Enfin, non, je parle, corps, vivants, je, je, parle, oui. je parle des vivants, là. Je parle des vivants. Je parle des vivants. Je dis, je, je dis qu'on se marre bien quand on vous regarde les vivants. Et on est, Et on la, est la abasourdi. Que, la légèreté que vous avez, vous. Oui. Ben, C'est la légèreté que vous avez, vous, vous, vous les esprits euh, qui n'ont qui plus de corps, du coup. Euh, mais qui avait conscience que c'est un choix, en fait. Oui, Parce absolument. Il y, y, y a ceux qui sont sortis de leur corps, qui ont pu et tout ça, et, mais, mais qui sont, comme on me disait, ils sont un peu coincés dans leur monde. À eux, ils ne sont peut-être pas très légers. Hein. Ils sont peut-être dans bah peut non, pas la, bah, le, le problème, la perspective, le, le recul que toi, tu as. Oui, c'est vrai. Et le, le problème, c'est qu'on ne peut pas les aider, nous, les, les, les morts conscients, on ne peut pas les aider. Il n'y a que vous qui pouvez détruire euh, ce, ce mensonge dans lequel ils sont coincés justement par les déblayages donc, euh, et en, en une fraction de seconde donc c'est vrai qu'on vous sollicite pas mal hein, euh, pour pouvoir faire ça ça ne vous prend pas de temps et c'est tellement simple et ça nous, ça nous soulage tellement et on a tellement envie de vous remercier euh, pour la contribution que vous êtes les vivants euh, pour nous quand vous êtes conscients oui, parce qu'ils sont, ils sont plus près de nous euh, avec notre corps qu'ils sont près de vous, hein, si j'ai bien compris. Parce que ben vous êtes moins attaché à la matière, pas. donc du coup, euh, c'est plus, plus facile pour nous. Nous, on est plus déjà oui. ancrés, on est plus près de leur vibration à eux. Quoi. Oui, et puis surtout, vous, vous pouvez les, les déblayer et nous, on ne peut pas. C'est sûr que tu ne peux pas Tu as déjà essayé Ben bah, oui, j'ai déjà essayé. Oh, c'est marrant ça Mmh. Non, c'est dans la densité terrestre qu'ils peuvent être déblayés. Ah ouais, d'accord, ok. Bon, bah on a du boulot, les gars, moi je vous le dis. Hein. On a du boulot. Donc, euh, en fait, la vraie, la vraie joie, c'est quand il y a cette, ce lien, cette communication entre vous et nous et qu'il n'y a plus de mensonges de la distance et puis que la, puis que, puis qu'en fait, euh, avoir un corps, bah c'est, c'est, euh, c'est un choix, hein, en fait. Et surtout ça. Et ne plus je, je en avoir aussi. Parce que, parce que je sais, ah, bah oui, c'est vrai, oui. Avoir un corps, pas de corps, bah tout ça, c'est un choix, en fait. 
Et je pense Absolument. que ça allégerait beaucoup de monde de savoir que que c'est pas obligé de rester hein, si c'est pas si c'est pas drôle ici en fait. Hein. Et puis ah bah si c'était pas avais... drôle, on viendrait pas non plus en fait. Hein. Mais moi j'en avais carrément ras le bol à la fin hein, de ce corps. Je suis très contente d'être dans la légèreté de l'énergie aujourd'hui. Et alors tu vas en reprendre un, tu penses un jour ou jamais Bah écoute. Très honnêtement, pas très envie, hein. Pas ouais, très envie dans un corps. C'est quand bon, même lourd. Qu'est-ce que tu bien Qu'est-ce que aimais bien dans ton corps, euh, dans le fait de faire un corps là, rétrospectivement Qu'est-ce que tu peux faire avec un corps quand tu peux pas faire bah, sans corps quoi Manger. Ah. <rire> tu reconnais la gourmande, hein Ah, donc c'est pour ça que parfois je je, je me dis si j'ai envie de ça, mais c'est pas mes goûts, hein. Ça me fait penser à toi. Tu ne t'emprunterais voilà, pas mon corps voilà, de temps voilà. en temps pour euh, une petite gourmandise. Et tu as remarqué hein, à quel point de temps en temps je te dis un petit macaron de chez la durée, ça ne te ferait pas plaisir Ah, <rire> c'est de toi ça. Bon, oui, ça va, on est, on est sur la même. Euh, on est sur la même. Euh, euh, comment on dit euh, en mince Longueur d'onde, mon petit jado. Euh, c'est ça. Merci, on est sur la même longueur d'onde. <rire> enfin, là, on est sur Facebook, mais apparemment, les longueurs d'onde, parfois, ça fluctue. Hein. <rire> C'est pas toi, d'ailleurs, qui vous oh, irait parfois, mes connexions Internet euh, et appareils et tout ça Oh, t'es pas trop, un petit peu seulement. Un petit peu. Un petit peu. C'est plus, fa... ouais. plus facile pour toi hein, de que de bouger des objets. C'est ça Voilà, voilà. Ouais, 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 ouais j'ai remarqué. Ouais, parfois, mais mes tu trucs, tu mon J'ai des messages. Euh, je me dis, mais comment ça se fait que ça bloque Et puis, je pense à toi et bizarrement, ça se débloque. Tu m'as démasqué, mon Jano. <rire> je te fais des petites blagues sur Internet et sur ton ah, oui, Facebook. Oui. Parfois, ton parfois Facebook tu aussi. Parfois, tu blagues. Ouais, ouais j'aime bien ça. J'aime bien te faire des blagues sur ton Facebook. <rire> bon alors, qu'est-ce qu'on qu qu leur dit parce qu'il ne reste plus beaucoup de temps Qu'est-ce que tu veux dire Soyez qu hein. joyeux et communiquez avec nous. Ah, mais c'est, tu sais, ils sont perçus un peu, un peu bizarrement les gens qui communiquent avec les entités ici. Hein. Mais on s'en fout des autres on s'en fout. On s'en fout. En tout cas, nous, on se marre bien. Alors, marrez-vous aussi avec nous. Plutôt que de vous prendre la tête. T'as une blague de fantôme à nous raconter Oh, ça ne me vient pas là, mon petit Jeannot. Ça ne me vient pas là. Mais hein... en tout cas, nous, on est prêts à se marrer hein avec vous. D'accord. Pourquoi t'en as une à nous raconter ben, J'étais en train de chercher. Euh, euh, ben J'ai la version anglaise, en fait. C'est un fantôme qui rencontre un autre fantôme et puis lui dit ben, Je suis triste. Euh, et puis euh, l'autre lui dit ben, T'as qu'à prendre un ascenseur. Ça va élever ton esprit. <rire> <rire> Mais l'autre, il n'était pas content. Il a dit, eh ben, si j'avais des bras pour pouvoir te frapper, je te, je te mettrais un coup de poing à travers. <rire> bon, mon Jeannot, je te fais la bise. Oui, ben, je pense que ça va être le temps de se, se, se laisser. Euh, je suis très contente de t'avoir revu en, 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 se, en semi chair avec surtout des os. Et euh, ouais. garde, ta, garde ta bonne humeur, je, je, je t'envoie des bisous. Euh, et puis, euh, voilà, incarné ou pas ouais. incarné, on se retrouve de temps en temps. Tout le temps, quand tu veux. D'accord, bah c'est réciproque. Il suffit, il suffit juste de claquer des doigts. Et je suis là. <rire> D'accord. Ben merci, Salut, merci mon beaucoup d'avoir été en, en, en direct pour parler au monde des vivants. C'est incroyable ce qu'on peut faire avec la technologie maintenant. 
euh, je me demande comment ça va devenir encore mieux que ça, alors. Yes Allez, bye bye, Ginette Ciao. Merci à toi Merci, Jano. Bonjour Bonjour à tous J'espère que vous allez bien. Aujourd'hui, ça va être enfin, depuis qu'on en parle, notre Facebook. Hello, hello Bonjour, bonjour Est-ce qu'il y a des Français qui nous regardent Donc Stéphanie est en train d'arriver. Si vous êtes Français, mettez un petit cœur, s'il vous plaît. Hello Hello je m... Alors, je vais regarder dans quel sens il faut que je me mette. <rire> ah, c'est marrant parce qu'on a... bon, bah... avait testé, ça fonctionnait, et là, voilà. Ah. Comment ça devient bon, bah, ça Bon, on va rester comme ça. Alors, alors, je vais rester comme ça. Cool. Yeah. Bonjour Stéphanie, comment ça va Mais bien, et toi, comment vas-tu Ça va, merci. Qui es-tu D'où viens-tu Oula. <rire> <rire> je vois qu'on a la même déco un peu derrière, tu vois. Je ne oh, sais pas du tout de quoi on va parler, en fait. Écoute, alors, je m'appelle Stéphanie Meyer, je suis facilitatrice certifiée Access Consciousness et je facilite la classe qui s'appelle Parler aux entités. Et toi, qui es-tu <rire> Eh bien, je m'appelle Angélique Bernard, euh, je viens de France à côté de la Suisse, et euh, côté Suisse, et euh, je suis aussi facilitatrice Parler aux entités. Et aujourd'hui, euh, on est ravis de, de pouvoir euh, avoir une conversation ensemble, en français, en français. Euh, autour des entités et, euh, et comment ça devient encore mieux que ça, quelle contribution est-ce qu'on peut être. Et du coup, je me disais tout à l'heure, ben, en fait, on est les premières françaises là, de la journée. Oui, d'ailleurs, je me dis qu'il fallait célébrer ça un petit peu. Ah. <rire> <rire> il, mo il manquait, il manquait l'ustensile, voilà. Ah ben bah, voilà, bah, là du coup, je, je, me, je me sens mieux. Donc Stéphanie Maillard, sorcière, et toi <rire> Aussi, pareil, voilà, je ne sais pas mon chapeau. Alors, du coup, on parlait de, de, de parler en français. Et, euh, et alors, j'ai déjà eu ces questions. Quelle langue, en fait, parlent les entités Du coup, euh, est-ce qu'elles parlent français Est-ce qu'elles comprennent l'anglais comment, comment ça se passe Et du coup, toi, qu'est-ce que tu aimerais dire par rapport à ça Moi, j'aimerais dire que, heureusement, que nous sommes tous des êtres infinis qui parlons énergie pour qu'on ait un espace pour se comprendre. Donc, si on leur parle depuis l'énergie, on communique. Exactement. Et, et du coup, c'est ça, en fait. La communication avec les entités, c'est euh, se permettre de recevoir, au-delà de cette réalité, euh, la communication et les énergies qui nous permet justement de, de tout recevoir et, et d'écouter les murmures des énergies qui nous entourent, dont les entités. Et, et moi, c'est vrai que ça m'a vachement éduqué euh, à écouter les énergies pour aussi écouter mieux tout ce qui m'entourait, dont les entités. Et comment ça devient encore mieux que ça Donc Comment est-ce qu'on pourrait aussi euh, ajouter ben, cette fête d'Halloween par rapport à, à tout ça euh, Tout à l'heure, je parlais un peu avec toi, tu me disais que tu, tu savais un petit peu ce, qui qu ce que c'était à l'origine d'Halloween, oui, etc. Je ne et suis pas une érudite sur le sujet, mais à la base, c'est une célébration celtique. Et on est le 31, et dans ce que je me rappelle, c'est que le 31, en fait, on fêtait les êtres de la nature c'était le jour où on célébrait les aides de la nature. Et je crois que le mort, les morts, c'était les deux. C'était une fête qui durait trois jours. Et euh, pendant ces trois jours, eh bien, euh, voilà. <rire> c'était euh, aussi une manière de euh, terminer avec l'ancien et recommencer avec le nouveau. C'était euh, une manière de passer de l'ancienne année à la nouvelle année et de recevoir la nouvelle année. Il y avait euh, quelque chose au niveau du recevoir qui était très présent. Mmh. Et aussi, ça me fait penser à ces cycles, en fait énergétiques qui sont aussi dans la nature, etc. Euh, et, euh, et du coup, il n'y a pas de fin, il n'y a pas de début, il n'y a pas de mort, il n'y a pas vraiment mmh. de, euh, de naissance. En fait, il y a juste euh, une énergie qui change et qui se transforme. Ouais. Donc, c'est pareil aussi euh, avec, avec tout, en fait, et avec nous. Donc, tout est vraiment énergie. Et si on pouvait vraiment donc, surfer sur, euh, sur les énergies avec une aisance totale, qu'est-ce qu'on pourrait vraiment recevoir, en fait, et des changements 
et, euh, et de nous en tant que contribution. Oui, et j'ai une phrase, de... c'est marrant, ça m'a fait pop-up, là. j'ai lu une phrase dernièrement de Dane qui disait « Nous sommes tous en devenir, il serait bon de le célébrer ». Et j'aime parce que il... nous sommes tous en devenir, en fait, c'est vraiment, en fait, on est quelque chose et on... ça ne s'arrête pas et il euh, n'y a pas de fin et euh, la mort telle qu'on l'imagine ou telle qu'elle nous a été décrite dans cette réalité n'est pas réelle en fait on a ce corps qui lui effectivement va retourner à la terre et euh, par rapport aux entités euh, mon rêve de, de demain ou du futur c'est de faire ça en pleine conscience tout le temps de le choisir, de ne pas être dans la conscience de, de, de ce choix et de ne pas créer la douleur, la souffrance pour pouvoir faire ce choix là et euh, de faciliter les entités c'est un pur cadeau c'est un pur cadeau parce que ça me facilite, moi, au quotidien, tout le temps. Alors, je ne sais pas pour toi, mais c'est moi que je facilite à travers ça. Mm. Oui, ouais, totalement. C'est vraiment un, un cadeau. Et, et ouais, qu qu'est-ce qu que, qu que plus de conscience des entités dans ce monde et reconnaître nos capacités, nos dons et, com et compétences qu'on a avec les entités et les énergies euh, pourrait être pour le monde et pour cette réalité, pour créer un futur totalement différent. Yes Et tout ce qui empêche cela, les amis, <rire> est-ce que nous allons tous le détruire et le décréer Right, on vote pas de Yes, génial <rire> <rire> Ouais, en fait, euh, euh, je ne sais pas pour toi, hein, mais euh, depuis petite, en fait, je capte ces énergies. Et depuis petite, en fait, il euh, y a ce moment où tu commences aussi à comprendre comment fonctionne le monde des adultes et tu refuses en fait, ou tu commences à, à te dire mais si cet adulte dit que je dois en avoir peur ou si c'est comme ça, il faudrait que je me coupe de ça. Et pour moi, les entités, ça a été euh, un endroit où je me suis dit, waouh, il est énorme cet endroit où je me coupe de ma conscience. Parce que je ne me coupe pas de la conscience que des entités, je me coupe de la conscience de toutes les énergies, de toutes celles que je pourrais recevoir en fait. Et la peur des entités, mmh. on en a parlé un petit peu, hein, la peur des entités euh, est un pur mensonge. <rire> ouais c'est ça. Et, et pour, faire, pour rebondir par rapport à Halloween, exactement, c'est que euh, à part, dans cette réalité, là, tout de suite, dans la manière où on fête Halloween, vraiment, euh, c'est euh, au travers de faire peur, en fait. Ouais. Bon, même si c'est fun dans le sens où mm -hmm. un peu comment les enfants le voient. Ouais. Mais aussi, il y a, y a toujours ces véhiculés par la peur, etc. Et finalement, dans Access, quand on, on voit que la peur, c'est un implant distracteur, euh, on se, pour cacher d'une puissance... Moi, je me demande qu'est-ce euh, qu que cette réalité a essayé de nous, nous, nous cacher de notre puissance en créant la peur des entités ouais. ou la peur autour de ça, la peur dans les films, etc. Ouais, ouais. Euh, qui, en fait, si vraiment aujourd'hui, on pouvait se re reconnaître nos capacités et aller au-delà de la peur, euh, quelle puissance est-ce qu'on pourrait actualiser, en fait, oh, yes. pour créer un futur ouais. totalement différent Et ce que je, ce que je capte aussi, c'est en fait, c'est tout un mode d'éducation, en fait. Parce que si on était éduqué ou si on n'avait pas perdu l'essence même de ce qu'étaient les entités, on n'aurait pas été chercher des réponses dans des endroits qui ne sont pas nourrissants pour nous. On ne va pas chercher des réponses dans des films d'horreur qui nous font peur. On va chercher des réponses où on va chercher en fait la connaissance vers des endroits qui, qui en fait sont vraiment nourrissants et qui nous amènent vraiment des outils. Bah là, moi j'ai une gratitude énorme pour cette classe parler aux entités parce que pendant 42 ans ou 43 ans, je ne dormais pas la nuit parce que j'avais acheté l'univers entier de quelqu'un qui avait peur et qui m'avait dit « Non, mais il ne faut pas regarder ça, en fait, c'est dangereux. » Et quand tu as le point de vue mm -hmm. que c'est dangereux, tu vas créer ta réalité avec ça. Et je me disais « C'est dingue, en fait. Ouais. » C'est la première fois que je rencontre des outils qui t'éduquent, en fait, qui t'éduquent à recevoir l'énergie, qui te permet, en fait, de ça. changer ça. Mm. C'est comme dit Shannon, « Let's edu educate, not meditate. » C'est vraiment les outils c'est renforcé, d'accès c'est renforcé ouais. en chacun à savoir ce qu'on sait. Et là, mm. c'est vraiment nous éduquer à redevenir congruents énergétiquement avec nos capacités et, euh, et, et réapprivoiser en fait tout ça. Ouais. Pour, euh, et, euh, et en fait, c'est un chemin sans infini et sans jamais... Il n'y a aucune fin par rapport à ça, mmh, tu vois. Ouais. Parce que c'est un cycle pour toujours plus de conscience et plus de... Ouais, ouais. En utilisant les outils, en utilisant tous les jours... Euh, Qu'est-ce que je sais à propos des entités, ouais, par ouais. exemple Juste ça ouais. Pour dire, parce que souvent on dit non, je sais pas, je, je sais pas comment communiquer, je... euh... <coughs> parce qu'en fait ça, reco... ça correspond pas à la communication de notre réalité et de la façon dont on parle, tout toi et moi, tu ouais, vois, ouais, avec ouais. des mots ou con concrètement. Et à chaque fois que tu dis je sais pas, ben, tu crées le point de vue de je sais pas où j'y arrive pas. Alors que si tu poses la question ouverte, qu'est-ce que je sais à propos de ça Si j'avais ma réalité avec les entités et la communication avec les entités, à quoi ça ressemblerait 
à chaque fois, elle t'ouvre la porte pour, pour ouvrir plus ouais. de soi et plus de ça dans, dans, dans ta réalité au quotidien. Ouais. Donc, c'est vrai qu'au début, bah, tu ouvres la porte et au quotidien, c'est toujours de plus en plus grand. Et je continue encore à utiliser ces outils et voir jusqu'où ma conscience des entités, elle peut encore devenir plus grande. Quoi. Ouais. Ouais. Et comment, <coughs> comment aussi, euh, moi, elles me permettent hein, d'apprendre, de, de reconnecter à ça, de reconnecter à ma capacité énergétique de communiquer d'arrêter de vouloir absolument communiquer tout le temps avec le mental et avec euh, toutes nos limitations. Là, des fois, en fait, je vois bien avec les entités, si tu n'es pas prête à baisser les barrières complètement devant quelque chose, si tu n'es pas prêt à vraiment recevoir ça de manière totale, euh, tu vas en fait chercher des réponses avec ta tête et contracter ton univers complet. Et les entités sont une invitation pour moi à obtenir, enfin à récupérer la conscience de énormément de choses. Et ça m'a permis aussi, ouais. tu vois, j'avais peur des araignées, eh ben, c'est en passant par les, les entités que je commence à défaire aussi certaines autres peurs qui ne sont pas réelles. Mmh. J'ai trouvé ça exceptionnel, en fait. Ouais. Ouais. Parce que ça t'éduque aussi à reconnecter à ton savoir et à faire confiance en ta conscience. C'est ça. Et que la seule chose qui nous protège, c'est notre conscience. Ouais. Et la seule chose qui t'en sépare, c'est ta tête. <rire> c'est exactement ça. C'est pour ça que j'ai mis un chapeau de sorcière pour me couper le cerveau. Oui, c'est ça. C'est ça. Ouais. Et, ouais, et, 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 et parler aux entités et reconnaître, tu vois, de, de, de reconnaître ce que tu sais au-delà du perceptible de la matière et de la logique, ça te permet de faire confiance à ton percevoir, savoir être mmh. et recevoir mmh. finalement. Donc ça te rééduque au quotidien avec ces capacités énergétiques innées que tu as. Et il euh, y a un truc que Shannon j'aime bien quand elle raconte, quand elle dit tout ce que les animaux ne peuvent oui. pas comprendre, c'est pas vrai. Ouais. Tu vois mmh. Et est-ce que les, les animaux communiquent oui, parce qu'ils communiquent de la même manière que nous. Non, ils communiquent aussi énergétiquement. Oui. Donc, et avec par aux entités, c'est reconnecter à cette communication énergétique, la télépathie en fait, dont on est tous capables de réaccéder. Et euh, donc, euh, quelles sont vos capacités, dons et compétences que vous avez avec la communication, avec les énergies euh, et avec les entités que si vous les que vous n'avez pas reconnues et que si vous les reconnaissiez, actualiserait une réalité mmh. totalement différente. Mmh. Tout ce qui permet pas ça, parce que vous voulez bien détruire. Yeah. Okay. Ouais. Right or wrong, good and bad. Okay, pas dans le nine shot, C'est génial parce que je suis en train de lire le livre de, Dane, de Gary euh, à propos de parler aux animaux, tu vois. Et en fait, mm -hmm. à partir du moment où tu n'as plus de point de vue avec quoi tu vas communiquer, tu commences à pouvoir communiquer avec chaque molécule. Et quand tu commences ça. à communiquer avec chaque molécule, en fait, tu vas te rendre compte en fait, qu'il y, y a... Par exemple, les animaux, ils ont ce, ce mode télépathique euh, un peu par image, tu vois et ils, ils vont t'envoyer toute l'information directe comme ça, sans trier. Parce, et nous, on va le recevoir en, en mode un peu, est-ce que tu peux ralentir Parce que moi, j'ai tellement posé de définitions, de conclusions et de, et de séparations entre les choses que je vais devoir te demander en fait, de communiquer avec moi d'une manière beaucoup plus lente. Et on est en train d'aller pour moi vers cette actualisation de l'actualisation totale en fait, de la télépathie. On est en train d'y aller. Et, euh, ouais, et ouais. merci à cette classe-là pour avoir remis, en, remis ça et d'avoir permis aux gens de déjà de reconnaître toute cette, toute cette capacité et c'est ce qu'ils savent à propos de la communication énergétique. Ouais. Ouais. ouais, parce que comme il dit souvent, et Shannon l'a dit souvent, c'est l'énergie ne ment jamais. Ouais, c'est ça. Tu vois, et ta tête ment toujours. Et, et du coup, commencer à, à écouter la légèreté ou la lourdeur, à écouter les énergies, ça va te permettre vraiment d'accéder là-dedans, ouais. à, à suivre tout ça et, et, et à suivre ce qui est vrai pour ouais, toi. Ouais. Parce que sinon, on se met en mode pilote automatique avec la tête. Et on, <rire> et on va que dans les conclusions, les projections, ouais. les jugements, les conclusions. Et c'est OK, tu vois. Mm -hmm. Qu'est-ce qu'il faudrait aussi pour utiliser nos limitations à notre avantage et reconnaître ouais. quand est-ce qu'on va là-dedans et poser une question pour choisir autre chose. Ouais. Et, euh, et en écoutant en, en, avec les outils par nos entités, ça aussi, nos, ça muscle notre muscle de la conscience et de la perception des énergies au quotidien. Donc, si vous avez vraiment fait déjà une classe entité ou si vous avez même lu le livre par nos entités, qui est juste là celui-ci de Shannon mm -hmm. O'Hara euh, ça, ça, ça va déjà en utilisant ces outils quotidiens ça va remuscler ouais. tout ça le muscle de votre conscience ouais. et c'est un chemin sans fin c'est vrai qu'il n'y a pas de stop en fait c'est infini et, et euh, du coup je... oui, on pardon. est dans le timing on est, on est encore un peu de temps ouais, ouais, ouais je suis entre... on, est en... on a encore 15 minutes mais non j'adore si. ouais. <rire> comme quoi le temps <rire> quelle donnée, euh... quelle donnée ouais. tu... 
Le, le temps passe tellement vite quand on a du fun. Oui, c'est ça. Et puis le temps <rire> n'étant pas une donnée réelle, en fait, on peut le, on peut le modifier et jouer avec comme on a envie. Ouais. D'ailleurs, les entités n'ont pas, pas le, la même conception que nous de l'espace-temps mmh. aussi. Ça, c'est un truc aussi qu'on qu pourrait parler. <coughs> et euh, et le, des fois, quand elles essayent de faire une communication énergétique, tu peux aussi leur demander de ralentir ou d'accélérer mmh. et, euh, et pas avoir de point de référence par rapport à ça pour euh, la, permettre la communication plus fluide mmh. et possible. Et du coup, je voulais te poser une question. Vas-y. Euh, quel est un ou plusieurs de tes outils préférés euh, de parler aux entités que tu aimes utiliser au quotidien et qui crée de l'espace pour toi ou quelque chose Qu'est-ce que si tu en avais un ou deux Alors je pense qu'il y en a plusieurs. Il y en a un quand je suis en, en... quand parfois je n'ai pas été gérée au fur et à mesure les choses et qu'il y a un amalgame d'informations et que ça devient assez inconfortable. C'est de quoi j'ai conscience ici de quoi j'ai conscience ici. Et dernièrement, j'ai expérimenté le point de vue intéressant. Si je n'avais pas de point de vue euh, à propos de rien, qu'est-ce que ce serait Et d'aller vraiment au point de vue intéressant, que j'ai ce point de vue intéressant, pour aller regarder. Parce que tu peux avoir plein de choses tu vois, dans, dans le corps ou, ou d'informations. Et est-ce que ça, ça c'est quoi Qu'est-ce que c'est À qui ça appartient Est-ce que c'est à quelqu'un avec ou sans corps Ok, entité. Et je peux aller, en fait, aller un peu, tu sais, quand tu es en mode amalgamé d'informations et que tu n'as pas géré, d'aller regarder, en fait, vraiment de quoi j'ai conscience, euh, à qui ça appartient et est-ce que c'est un corps ou pas. Voilà. Mm -hmm. Et puis, euh, ouais. après, franchement, a, je pense qu'il n'y a pas un outil que, du, du manuel que je mets de côté. Mm. Ouais. Et j'ai envie de rebondir sur un truc que tu as dit, tu vois, euh, poser la question si c'est une entité. Et ça, c'est vraiment un truc. Euh, important que j'ai envie de poser, enfin, de, de, de souligner. Ce que je vois aussi souvent, après, en fait, on fait l'amalgame de tout ce qui se passe de bizarre ou de tout ce qui se passe oui. où, où il y a quelque chose. Il y a la case entité. Oui, donc, oui. Ah, c'est une entité. C'est la faute des entités. Il y a un truc qui se passe. <rire> c'est la faute des entités. Ça, 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 ça doit être les entités, etc. Ouais. Et, ouais. et est-ce que ça, c'est est une question ou c'est plutôt une conclusion ouais. ou une projection ouais. Tu vois ouais. Donc, poser la question, ok, vérité, est-ce que c'est une entité Est-ce que j'ai conscience d'une entité, d'entité, de quelque chose, mm. euh, avec ou sans corps Tu vois ce que je veux ouais, dire ouais. Là ouais. Et, euh, et regardez si c'est léger. Si c'est léger, c'est ok. Et si c'est non, c'est next, en fait. Vous pouvez poser une autre ça, question. Euh, plutôt que, après, sinon, on a tendance à rentrer dans la conclusionnité aiguë ou même dans la paranoïa, qui fait qu'en fait, on n'est pas dans la conscience, on est juste dans les conclusions. Ouais. Et, euh, et ça, c'est vraiment aussi un truc super. Euh... Un, un, un truc qui m'a beaucoup aidé, c'est un jour quand j'ai compris que je n'avais pas à, à tout faire, en fait. Je n'avais pas besoin de faire tout des énergies. C'est-à-dire que ce n'est pas parce que j'ai conscience de quelque chose que je suis obligée d'en faire quelque chose. Je trouve que c'est important, en fait. C'est vraiment important. Parce que sinon, tu vas croire que tu es débordé. Évidemment, euh, si tu donnes rendez-vous à tout le monde en même temps, il y a bien des chances que tu sois débordé. Alors qu'en fait, tu peux juste avoir l'information de quelque chose. Ok, cool. Est-ce que c'est -ce est pertinent pour moi La question de Gary, pour moi, à propos de est-ce que c'est pertinent pour moi, a vraiment changé ma vie. Vraiment. Ouais. Ouais. Ah oui, oui, carrément. Ouais. Ouais. Oui, demander à recevoir aussi qu'est-ce qui va des entités, ce qui va être pertinent pour toi mmh. et, et ce qui va créer plus pour toi et pour le monde ouais. aussi. Euh, parce qu'en fait, c'est comme dans la rue, euh, il peut y avoir, euh, il va y avoir, euh, je sais pas, 10 000 personnes. Ouais. Euh, Est-ce que ça va être pertinent de parler à tout le monde ou d'écouter tout le monde ou d'être dans l'univers de tout le monde Tu vois ouais. Et euh, justement, pour ne pas te, te mettre euh, dans l'espace le, de contraction et, et d'avoir l'impression d'avoir trop d'infos recevoir qu'est-ce qui va être pertinent ici. Ouais. Et, euh, et aussi, une autre question par rapport à ça qui m'avait pas mal aidé euh, de parler aux entités, c'est quelle énergie, espace et conscience, mon corps et moi Quelle énergie, espace et conscience et choix, mon corps et moi pouvons-nous être pour faciliter, changer et transformer mm -hmm. toutes les énergies et entités avec une aisance totale C'est bon, ça. Tout ce qui ne nous permet <rire> pas ça. <rire> Est-ce qu'on veut bien détruire et décréer yeah. On va jouer un goût de battle, okay, pas quand on a une chose de Oui, parce que quand on le fait en même temps, moi je perds le. Ouais, moi aussi. Après, on l'a fait à deux, c'est cool. Ouais, vraiment, ouais. On a, on, est, on, est, euh... on a du potentiel, on a un potentiel énorme, on a des talents incroyables. Et parfois, on se croit submergé ou obligé, ou il faudrait que. Qu'est-ce qu'il faudrait pour qu'on sorte ouais. de tout ça et qu'on soit juste. Oh, bonjour, toi. Hey. Tu vois Ouais, c'est ça. Et. Par exemple, bah, ce matin, là, j'étais en fondation et, et puis euh, je disais, et si on pouvait poser une question, tu vois, à chaque fois que tu dis, euh, tu es en train de dire, ouais, je sais pas, ou je sais pas communiquer, mm. ou, 
ou, ou je sais pas ça, tu vois, et si tu pouvais poser la question, qu'est-ce que je sais à propos de ça ouais. Parce que finalement, est-ce qu'un être infini ne pourrait ne pas savoir quelque chose Non. Il y a des autodidactes qui arrivent à apprendre plein de choses sans avoir appris quelque chose avec la tête dans cette réalité. Ouais. Et, et c'est ça, en fait. C'est quel autodidacte es-tu que tu n'as pas reconnu Donc, En posant cette question, qu'est-ce que je sais à propos de ça euh, À propos des entités, à propos de la communication avec les entités, à propos de comment mon corps perçoit les entités euh, et les reçoit, ça va te permettre à chaque fois d'ouvrir une porte ouais. plutôt que de la fermer et d'invalider ton être ouais. à chaque fois que tu dis « je ne sais pas » ou « je ne peux pas ». Tu vois. Oh, moi, je, je, je vous propose un outil génial que j'utilise souvent, c'est dès que tu as le mot problème qui vient dans ton univers, demander quelles sont les possibilités. Changer le mot problème par possibilité. Effacer le mot problème et mettre quelles sont les possibilités là. Je trouve que c'est... Wow, et tout ce qui empêche cela, wow, John Goodbye, Pod Talk, Online Shows, Boys and Beyond, si tu commences à changer l'énergie même de tes mots et de ta demande, tu vas commencer à pouvoir recevoir des choses dont tu n'imagines même pas enfin, possible pour toi en fait. Donc, vraiment, changer l'énergie du problème. OK, ce n'est pas un problème. Il y a des possibilités là-derrière. Mmh. Ouais. Comme dit Dane, euh, l'univers, c'est un buffet à volonté et on passe oui. notre, bi... notre vie au pied du buffet à dire <rire> qu'on crève de faim. Ça. <rire> et en fait, les outils d'accès, ça te permet d'accéder justement jusqu'au buffet et de reconnaître que tu as la capacité oui. de créer ta vie à partir de tes choix oui. et tes actions et des questions, etc. Et après, tu deviens l'outil et tu deviens aussi l'outil et le déblayage de par aux entités. Euh, parce que tu redeviens congruent énergétiquement avec ton énergie de l'esprit du percevoir, savoir être et recevoir, du coup, tu redeviens l'outil dans, dans, dans plein de, de situations. Donc, et tu reconnectes le créateur de ta vie et plus le spectateur. Mmh. Donc avec les entités, c'est exactement ça. Quand tu commences vraiment à, oui. à les utiliser, tu les deviens. Et vraiment, ouais, tout ce qui empêche que tu deviennes les outils, plutôt que de les utiliser et de les mettre à l'extérieur de toi, c'est vraiment... Euh... Je dis tu, hein, je vous tutoie tous. <rire> c'est vraiment, euh, vraiment de se dire, mais en fait, qu'est-ce qu'il faudrait pour qu'un jour, pas, je ne sois pas dans l'utilisation de l'outil, mais que je, suis, je sois tous ces outils, toutes, toutes ces énergies qui sont disponibles, en fait. Je deviens le déblayage. Quand je, quand je pratique le déblayage et que je le pratique et je le reçois, et plus je le reçois, plus je le deviens. Et moins tu as à bosser et moins tu auras d'efforts à faire. <rire> Donc, si ça peut vous motiver. <rire> c'est ça, ouais. C'est ça. Et comment ça devient encore mieux que ça euh, Je regarde un petit peu le temps. Oui, oui, oui. Oh, mais alors, il, nous en, il nous reste encore euh, 8 minutes. Ok. Euh, ouais, 6 minutes. C'est à moi de te poser <coughs> une question, alors euh, Ouais. Vas-y. Euh, quel est ton outil préféré Je suis originale. Hein. Quel est ton... <rire> Je me suis dit que j'aurais une question originale. Donc, quel est ton outil préféré <rire> Euh, je crois déjà que j'en ai un, donné un tout à l'heure, la facilité de changer et transformer mmh. toutes les énergies entités. Euh, J'ai envie de dire vraiment, poser la question au quotidien, quelles sont mes capacités, dons, compétences que j'ai avec les énergies, avec les entités, la communication mmh. avec les entités que je n'ai pas reconnues et qu'est-ce qu'il faudrait pour que je les reconnaisse et utilise à mon avantage et tout ce qui ne permet pas ça, ce qu'on veut bien détruire et créer. Yeah, you're right, wrong, good, bad, 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 online, short, boys and beyonds. <rire> et du coup, ça devient vraiment une aventure euh, et une exploration euh, de tous les jours mm. euh, recevoir de plus en plus euh, ce que tu es et ton aisance avec ça. Parce que finalement, on a tous, tu vois, aussi des capacités complètement différentes. Donc c'est vrai que c'est pas parce qu'il y en a un qui va les entendre ou les voir ou qui arrive à, tu vois, ou les sentir avec le nez ou quoi que ce soit. Que toi tu vas avoir la même chose en fait mmh. ça peut se traduire d'une façon totalement différente dans ton corps et avec tes sens ah, donc euh, vraiment c'est réouvrir ce que, ce que toi comment est-ce que tu tu es en fait ces énergies là et euh, comment est-ce que tu les perçois dans ton univers avec ton corps mmh. on a tous des corps différents donc on va tous avoir des sensations différentes ouais. et les percevoir différentes ouais, <coughs> ouais génial bah, merci en tout cas. Bah, merci à toi, merci, ça fait <rire> un plaisir. Et euh, en fait, moi j'ai envie de remercier cette journée vraiment et de me dire waouh, en fait, euh, je vais encore un peu parler de deux secondes, mais c'est vraiment, il oui, y, y, y a cinq ans, je ne pouvais parler de ça à personne. Et aujourd'hui, mmh. quand je vois ça dans ce groupe, j'en ai presque l'arme aux yeux, je me dis waouh, <rire> vraiment quoi d'autre est possible et, et regardons juste. Ce que, ce, que, ce que tous on a, on a fait pour être là et pouvoir en discuter de manière complètement libre en fait, 
d'avoir cette aisance-là. Mmh. Et merci à Shannon et à, à tous ceux qui ont contribué à Access Consciousness d'avoir créé ça et d'avoir mis de l'aisance, du fun et de l'amusement avec ça. De plus en faire ouais. un, un truc lourd dingue. Et je me dis, waouh, là, ouais. on a 24 heures. Il y, a 20, il y a tous ces facilitateurs du monde entier qui viennent sur, des, sur un groupe Facebook où il y a 10 000 personnes et on fait ça. Je me dis, ouais, ok. Merci, merci, l'univers. <rire> <rire> merci. Ouais, ouais, ouais c'est vrai que c'est vraiment un choix et un engagement d'avoir aussi cru en ce que l'on ouais. savait et, ouais. et d'être allé vers ce qu'on savait qui était possible. Euh, et pouvoir tous être là, tous ensemble ouais. euh, et créer ça, c'est euh, vraiment super, quoi. Et euh, et je trouve aussi ça fun d'aller regarder quand tu... les Japonais ou oui. les Chinois qui parlent. J'adore. Si tu te mets à connecter ouais. l'énergie, tu captes l'énergie en fait. C'est ex exceptionnel. Ouais, c'est ouais. ça. Ouais. C'est vraiment, c'est vraiment fun. Et euh, et, et qu'est-ce que, ouais, qu'est-ce que vous savez à propos de la communication Donc mm. n'importe quel, euh, mm. qu'est-ce que vous pouvez recevoir de tous ces gens qui parlent du monde dans toutes les langues du monde entier en fait mm. euh, Qui pourrait être une contribution pour vous en fait Qui ouais. pourrait aussi vous inviter à reconnaître que l'énergie c'est votre c'est votre euh, première communication, c'est la communication de base mmh. qu'on avait tous eue euh, en, en même en naissant. <rire> Donc on a tous ça. Ouais. Et euh, on pourrait encore parler oui, des oui. il va falloir qu'on y aille. <rire> on va laisser la place aux autres pour <rire> pas qu'ils soient. Euh... Parce qu'il y a encore plein de trucs qui m'arrivent, je me dis on pourrait parler de ça et de ça et de ça. Donc... <rire> oh, puis combien on a la conscience du futur de ceux qui vont, de ce que les autres vont partager et oui. <rire> Donc merci, merci pour cette, euh, ce partage et merci à vous tous d'avoir été là et à tous ceux qui m'ont regardé tout à l'heure. Merci. Yes, merci à tous. Je vous fais des gros bisous et euh, à quelque part dans oui. le monde pour une classe d'accès <rire> ou avec Shannon ou par le ouais. Donc gros bisous. Gros bisous. Ciao, 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 ciao. et merci. Merci, ciao, ciao. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, I think, because we're in all parts of the world. Welcome to um, this 24 hours Halloween um, party on the Talk to the Entities um, page. Let's see if I'm on the right one. Let's see if people are hopping on. Um, just to check that I'm on the right page. Hi, hello. Am I on the Talk to the Entities page? <laughs> It's all going good. I think so. Um, so, wow, what an adventure. And I would like to start um, with thanking all the facilitators that have been part of this, but also all of you. Thank you for joining um, these 24 hours of wonderful um, videos and information. And um, for me, Talk to the Entities have been such a gift. Um, And yeah, I wonder, are there any questions that you would like to um, address? Ah. Let's see, am I in the right group? I'm a little bit doubting now. Is everything good? <laughs> oh gosh, am I? Is this good? Like, can somebody confirm that I'm in the talk to the entities group? I'm so sorry for this. Um, And thank you so much, Shannon O'Hara, meanwhile, um, for this amazing tools that you share with the world. Um, so my name is Yasadara. I am a Talk to the Entities facilitator. And um, for the moment, I'm actually in St. Petersburg um, to facilitate. I just did an intro yesterday night, which was amazing, where we talked about these tools. And um, one of the questions, hi, everybody, that, okay, yes, okay, thank you, <laughs> that um, was asked in, in the class was about, do I need to believe um, in these tools? Because... Um, Sometimes it seems like I'm going a little crazy. And um, I thought that was actually a great question. And a lot of us have, when you start with like dealing with energies that are invisible, how often um, do we buy actually that we are going crazy or maybe we are going crazy because we see no one else actually allowing themselves to have access to that. Um, so 
one of the questions I would like to ask you is like, um, how many realities have you been aware of in your entire life um, in regards to entities that were actually crazy? And with crazy realities, I mean, like, if you have the ability to, um, as a kid, to be aware of entities, um, and it's just normal to you, how much is it actually crazy um, to have all these people around you that pretend as if it's not there? And cray cray, it's like cray cray. <laughs> so, but how how often when you hear enough, like, no, that's not what's going on. You're wrong. Um, what are you talking about? Stop being afraid. Um, whatever people have maybe been telling you, you start thinking that you are like cray cray or you are crazy. Um, so one of the things I really love to do, um, certainly in these introductions, but also in sessions, is to start destroying all the non-realities, realities that you've been buying from other people. And what is that? For example, if you have... Um, a mother or a father that didn't want to deal with that at all. Hello, everybody. Um, how much like to actually maybe get their love or maybe to fit into the family and like to do everything that's that's valuable for the family. Did you now start to adopt their reality and how much smaller is that than what you could choose to have? So can we just destroy and create all the non-realities that people create as their reality that you've been taking on and now like kind of became your reality where you maybe now want to get out of or you want to change it, but still these like patterns maybe are still somewhere flying through your universe. Right, wrong, good, bad, book, nature, it's boys and beyonds. Yeah, I see Alison. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here um, with me. Um, and this is really in these two and a half day classes. And then there is the advanced class that Shannon O'Hara facilitates. Um, oh, Celine, people wonder why talk to the entities. So what, what do they mean? Like, I need a little more information on that question. Um, where you get access to discovering like what's real and true for you and if there's one area where i've seen where you cannot trust anyone but you it's entities because how often will you perceive certain energies will you perceive certain entities and you will look at someone else and ask them like did you see that and they will be like nope they didn't see anything i like i didn't see it um, and I just had it a few weeks ago, even I was in the room with several people and something was going on with the lightning. And I was like, oh, I was like, guys, do you see that? And they were like, no. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. Okay. So who's there? So how many times have you been aware of things? And you asked to others, like, do you see it too? Or do you feel that too? Or, um, have you noticed? And they will be like, no. And did you still? acknowledge like oh that's funny well i did or did you start doubting you right wrong about football all nature's boys and beyonds and what if doubt is actually one of the major um things like that will screw you over like you cannot have doubt and awareness like in the same in the same room they just don't date well together. So um, a lot of these like um, tools will also invite you to stop doubting and to start trusting you and your knowing. Why would we talk to the entities? What's the purpose? Okay, thank you so much for that question, Celine. Um, yeah, why would you? <laughs> and it's actually um, why is um, if you if you look at at children, do you notice children that that start asking like? Why, why are the trees green? Why do dogs bark? Why is, um, you, you have to look at, okay, so if I wonder, like, why should I talk to entities? Um, is that actually a generative question? <sighs> or is that a question that keeps you running into circles? And so when I ask, when I ask you, is that a generative question? Like, 
a generative question for me is a question that you ask and that will start opening up more awareness that will start giving you a different um it will open a different door for you and not give you like a reason and justification for why you should and why you shouldn't and reason and justification and awareness <laughs> also don't date that well together <laughs> so how many of you have been choosing a lot from um trying to find the right reasons and justifications and then if you had enough reasons and justifications why to choose something or why to reject something that would be the base of your choices now if you are wondering like why should i talk to entities like why should you what if you'd start asking like huh so if i if i would actually open that door what will that create what will that create for me what will that create for my future what will that create for my body what will it create for my children if you have them? And then you don't have to start looking for answers coming up. But what if you could start, like, just ask that question and then be quiet. Just shut up and wait. <laughs> and just allow yourself to like, oh, okay, so I asked myself that question now. What do I perceive? Am I getting more relaxed? Are things getting more light? Are things maybe opening up? Um, and so if I don't choose it, what's that going to create for my future, for my body, for my children? And just see what is creating more space for you. Because like I've seen a lot of people and I've done a lot of classes lately where I got to talk with people about awareness and choices and what I've seen myself do a lot, but also others, is that we try to look for the right choice. Um, and even like our awareness, like we talk in access about light and heavy. And um, what I've seen a lot of people do, hello, <laughs> is that we have decided that light is good and like heavy is like wrong. So everywhere you've decided that light is the thing you should choose and heavy is the thing you shouldn't. So now you're actually going to filter your awareness if you would really like something or if you wouldn't, which is still actually not doing awareness, but it's doing judgment, just finding the right choice. Can we destroy and uncreate that? Right, wrong, or back, or nature's boys and beyond. So with these tools, if you ask yourself, you want to actually start looking at, oh, what's lighter for me? Oh. And lighter is not necessarily what you should choose, but it's just actually as an infinite being what you are. You are light. Now, how many choices do you make that are actually heavy? And it's the same with entities. Like when you ask questions like, oh my God, I'm so scared or I'm so this or I'm doubting myself. You can just ask yourself, okay, is this light? Or when I say this, is this actually heavy? Is this a lie that I bought from other people? To me, it's like talking to children. The longer you ignore them, the louder they speak until it becomes unbearable. What if there's not, what if there's something else possible? Yeah. And like my experience is like you cannot convince people to do whatever. So I'm just going to invite the persons, the people who are asking this question, like just start seeing like what, what is, what can it create for you? What are the possibilities here that you have not been asking for, maybe? And um, like entities are not different than people. Like they are, some of them are fun and some of them are naughty and some of them are sexy and some of them are like hilarious and some of them are like awful and some will come to like make your life horrible. <laughs> It's the same with people. So how do you deal with people? And um, people sometimes think like, oh, the way I deal with those kind of entities is so like, it's just entities. And then when you start asking them, like, how do you deal with people that come and wake you up at night? Uh, would you allow that? Mm, no. 
I lately had a had a had someone who asked like that had been waking up with like um blue spots on her body and um it I, like it was just like what, what would you do if people w if like someone with a body would actually um engage with you in in the way an entity does with you right now would you stand there and watch or would you just like step it up and just be whatever energy it would take to change that so entities um i say are a major invitation for you often to step into more of you and if you have had like entities that are like cray cray around you or that do all kind of stuff um these tools and you having like no point of view in the best scenarios but as little points of view as possible will just allow you to see what's going on and to handle things with more ease so what have you made to talk to the entities hi good morning hello bonjour tout le monde and the other language i cannot hola <laughs> um what have you made talk to the entities mean that it doesn't have to mean right runker bapa portal nine shirts boys and beyonds and um what if it could be a space where you're actually invited to not hide any more of you even if nobody's willing to hear it where you don't have to pretend that the things you perceive are not real maybe they're just not real for the people in this reality but what if that was different for you and um there are so many amazing facilitators around the world and i think we have so many at the moment that maybe there's even like a class every weekend like somewhere around the world i'm not sure about that um and there's so many beautiful um material on the talk to the entity site but also on this page um a lot of facilitators often share um their experiences also a lot of people share their experiences um so I think it boils back down to where I started where someone yesterday in the class asked me why should I believe in this? And my question was like what if you didn't have to believe in anything? What if you didn't have to believe in anyone? What if you could stop believing? Like what if like <laughs> So all the belief systems you've been buying into, you've been creating maybe in other lifetimes, you've been selling um or you're still looking for um wow can we destroy it and create that right we're going back for photo nature is boys and beyonds everywhere you're looking for the right thing to hear so you will finally have all your ducks in a row can we destroy it and create that right we're going back for photo nature is boys and beyonds what if there's nothing to believe and what if there's only you your awareness your perceiving your being you're knowing and you're receiving that will allow any being with or without a body to get facilitated through you and with you and when i say through you it's actually through the energy the space and the consciousness that you be as an infinite being into a greater possibility and that is very different with the access consciousness tools and with these talk to the entities tools i would say it's all about facilitating greater possibilities in the world so what you think when you're facilitating someone else or when you're aware of something with someone else what if that absolutely didn't matter to them it's about what question what if it it's about what if it was about like what question can i ask here what question can i be here that will allow a greater possibility for me for the entities and if you're like if you have like um um a practice or a clinic or where you work with people where you facilitate people what question can you be what question can you ask that will allow them to start looking at how they are creating their life So when you have entities in your life 
this is not an accident. It's not an accident. Even if they're very intrusive, even like whatever they show up like, um, we all create our lives. We all create our realities. So now what, like sometimes like when, when, when it's very intense, the entity awareness, um, I've been working with kids also a lot. And um, sometimes they knew but they refused to use these tools. They refused to clear. They refused to actually step it up and do the work, which sometimes might mean if you have a lot of... Um... Hey, look, oh, stop believing. Is that a tattoo you require? <laughs> um, like, if you have a lot of entities around you or you have had a lot of demons around you, what capacity do you have? They don't end up accidentally in your universe. So what capacities do you have um, that you've not been acknowledging and that if you will not actually choose to have that awareness, to look at that, to be with that, um, that might start like throwing off in the different direction. And um, I've seen some people where it became very destructive, not because the entities were very destructive, but just because they um, didn't take actually what it took. They didn't do what it took. They didn't be, is that English? <laughs> what it took to change that energy. They would rather hold on to um, suffering, being pathetic. I cannot do this. Why is it happening to me? Why, why, why? Rather than stepping it up and just looking at, okay, so is there a potency here? Is there a power here? Is there a choice I've made? Who am I being when I'm suffering entities? Right, work of effort, but all nature, it's boys and beyonds. And what energy, what space, and what, conscious, what consciousness will I and my body will have to choose for this to change. And sometimes like that might take like a bit of work from you or a bit of time. Um, and what if time was actually a construction and not relevant and you were just willing to do whatever it took so you will have you as the infinite being that you are and not only for this lifetime with this body but like for ever right wrong good bad book portal nature it's boys and beyonds so entities do not end up accidentally into your universe no they don't i'm sorry <laughs> well i still have to meet the first one that had like an entity accident i had an entity accident <laughs> suddenly i ended up <laughs> on cloud uh what has changed for me since the entities oh gosh well so first of all like i started with like bars and foundation and um after i did my second day of foundation with kapana raguraman um like about like five years ago i think i had a date and i end up um at this person's place and he was cooking and i literally had the feeling i cannot sit on this chair it's not working so we started like turning around the furniture we turned around the table and after turning it around like 360 degrees um i could still not sit there but i was like okay never mind let's just start eating and <laughs> so we start eating it at a certain point i'm just like it seems like somebody is sitting on a chair um and like the guy was like oh is it like the energy of my ex-girlfriend i'm like no it's a dead person and i was like i'd never said that before it just like came out of my mouth and I was like, oh, this is maybe not like, mm. um, so I was like, oh, okay. Well, I learned like this clearing thing in foundation. I don't know if it works, but like we can do it. Let's see if it like, is, did someone die here? And he's like, yeah, actually the former owner, she died here. And I was like, oh, okay. So let's do it. Like, so, and I just basically had the clearing statement. I think someone else will probably have, um, explained it here before or just uh said it but it was like okay so who are you who are you before that who are you before that who are you before that and who will you be in the future so what are you what are you before that what were you before that what were you before that and what will you be in the future what is your job what was your job before that what was your job before that what was your job before that and what will your job be in the future you can go now you can take your luggage and your magnetic imprinting with you 
And that's it. Right, wrong, good, bad, but all nature is boys and beyond. So and I looked at him and I was like, I think we're good. Like, if this thing works, I think it works. She'll be good. And so 15 minutes later, this is how I started with Talk to the Entities tools. <laughs> Just use it. Like, you know, like, whatever, right? And 15 minutes later, I was at the toilet and um, suddenly I perceived that entity is there and she started like complaining to me and I'm like, Jesus Christ, either I'm going totally nuts now. Like, you know, like there is something talking to me, but I don't really think that's true. Um, and she started nagging about that she didn't like how we changed the house. And I was like, so either I'm going crazy or uh, this is an entity awareness and this thing really works and it exists. And I'm like, and in that moment, I, I just had the idea like, oh, but actually it's really, it's really easy to check in this reality because she's nagging about the house. She's just not pleased with how the guy changed the house. So I pull up my pants, <laughs> go back from the toilet with flair. And so I get back to the table and I just start this engaging, interesting conversation. Like, wow, I really love your apartment. Did you do a lot of renovations? And he just says, yes, I actually did. I was like, huh, did you take a wall away there? And he's like, yes. I'm like, oh, she's not gone actually. <laughs> she's still here and there was where I didn't conclude like oh my god these things don't work but I just started asking questions so um hmm like is our family still alive and he's like yeah I think they moved somewhere to the south of the country and I was like oh huh it seems as if she's still hanging around and looking for them um so sometimes entities might hang around still because they they don't realize they're dead or they don't realize that actually time moves on through this reality. And sometimes like wherever the reality was, people will move on. So her husband moved on, her kids moved on. They weren't living anymore in that place, but she was still waiting for them to come home. And like sometimes that might create interference in your household because um, your kids might be aware of it or maybe you have a new date. <laughs> She's aware of it. She goes crazy in your house suddenly. So um, it was very funny because I thought it was done after that experience. And one week later, I was actually driving from um, the city where he lived um, to where I lived. And suddenly I perceived that entity again, but in my car. And I was like, this is like, now I'm like, this is really over the top. So I was like, so what do you want? And that entity was actually really, really enthused because she energetically kind of got that I could take her to like kind of the space where she could like keep on looking, but maybe more precise kind of or like more in the area. And that was in the moment where I realized like I'm actually driving through the area that the guy described where the family um, moved to. And so I... Um, in that moment, I didn't really realize that you can just ask them <laughs> to go. So I literally stopped at a gas station. I opened my door and I said, like, your destination is totally reached. Can you please leave? And <laughs> bye bye. And I looked around. I was like, oh, my God. And I closed the door and I just moved on and I never um, saw her again. So this this really happened. I'm really glad that I have a very normal looking body. <laughs> But this is how entity communication sometimes goes. And isn't it like a great gift actually for, for that being or for those beings that you can be that space of wonder and no point of view and just be like, oh, sure. Well, oh, is that what you want? I can kind of help you. Um, well, if this is what you're looking for, here you are, go. Uh, but clearing didn't work there. so. Um, a lot of people that get these tools that I meet, they have somewhere bought that if you have an entity in your world, um, these entities want to be cleared. So if you have, and I, I have seen a little um, like video of Shannon, <laughs> thank you. Um, and and she, she talked about like, right? Like the three things you can do with entities is like either clear them, communicate or receive or a combination of the three of those. Um, so what you really want to ask and not assume is like, Hey, what do you want? Do you want to be cleared? Do you want to communicate? Do you want to receive? 
and you don't have to figure it out what if you can just ask the question and then just like open up a space and just start playing like oh is it clearing or is it first some something else because if you're going to clear things that don't want to be cleared entities that don't want to be cleared you're just going to be work hard and hard and hard and hard and hard and access is not hard like if if something is hard what if you can start wondering like is this is this access consciousness or is, am i am i just making things hard so everywhere you've learned to make things hard can we destroy and create that to finalize this right wrong or back of bottle nine shirts boys and beyonds and i would say um please Follow what you know. Don't believe what people say because you will get what you require to strengthen your being, to strengthen you, not only for this lifetime, but for maybe many after that and for all the beings around you with and without a body through following what you know and not through following what other people say that you should choose or that you should know. Um, that's not going to work. So um, thanks again, everyone, for um, being so present on this page um, this last 24 hours. All the videos will stay here so you can have a look. Um, thank you, Shannon O'Hara. And I know she would like to thank you also. So through this, um, thank you from Shannon as well. Thank you to the magical Talk to the Entities team. Um, like... Uh, these girls have been all night long, like switching behind the scenes um, to make sure we were all awake, we were all ready. So um, thank you so much for what you're creating with us um, and personally with me as a facilitator. Um, I know there is a lot of energy that you put into Talk to the Entities um, to make things create in the world and to bring this entity, Talk to the Entities, further in the world. So thank you for watching um, and please check out www.talktotheentities.com um, where there is a lot of free content, there are blogs, there are clearing loops that you can buy um, and check out also there is a page there where you can find all the brilliant facilitators. We have them in all sorts of colors and languages so you can just choose um, what's gonna like create for you now in the future. Um, my name is Yasadara Romero Fernandez and um, thank you so much for watching guys. And if you have okay. Привет. Дислексия. Это так можно на русском теперь, да? Ой, у нас сегодня у нас сегодня что, у нас Хэллоуин даже? <laughs> Мы наконец... Ребятки, в этом сегодня году... Сегодня можно веселиться с ними. Да, сегодня надо веселиться. Сегодня день, день тьмы, как бы. <laughs> вот. Всякая нечисть вылезает, нам нужно веселиться. <laughs> вот. Сейчас по всему миру идут разные трансляции, там, на 20-25 минут, на разных языках. И так как в этом году у нас пополнение нас всех на направление разговор с сущностями. Вот мы с Катюшей решили откликнуться на этот призыв. Шенна на команды провести какой-нибудь эфирчик по этому поводу и поделиться какими-нибудь моментами, потому что я, например, веду класс. Сейчас. Я в костюме. Покажи Кто хочет наряд, помолиться, покажи. можете обращаться. Я патрис. У меня Библия есть. Я с ней хожу сегодня. <смех> вот, на самом деле, да. Эм, очень интересно сегодня, кстати, идет день, то что очень много сущностей просто вылезает, и сегодня удесятирилась эта штука забавная по поводу того, когда ты разговариваешь про сущности. Они сначала пытаются, поймай, поломать технику, их чистишь, <смех> отпускаешь, увольняешь там и так далее. Ребят, за, 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 за дверь, пожалуйста. А потом, когда ты даешь больше осознанности в зал, и они получают, соответственно, больше осознанности, потому что много людей пришли с сущностями, и сущности их привели, потому что сущности нужно осознанность с этого класса. И начинаются такие прикольные моменты, когда ты говоришь какую-нибудь умную мысль, знаешь, такой такой, вот это. И, знаешь, там моргает электричество, там ребенок чихает, или какая-нибудь, мне нравится в последнее время, это какие-нибудь кофеварки вот эти вот, которые бойлеры там стоят, они начинают быстро работать, такие там, на несколько секунд, о, 
мир со мной согласен. В этом плане очень забавно. У тебя что там происходит? Ты тоже какой-то класс ведешь? Uh, я веду, да, свой класс инвалидация. Uh, я хочу небольшой кусочек рассказать, вот, что вообще для меня такое это направление и что такое для меня взаимодействие с сущностями. Uh, благодаря тому, что я стала заниматься этим, я не просто стала более осознанно в этом, это стало чем-то очень естественным. Вот что если вы все могли бы посмотреть на то, как мы делаем это неестественным? Мы почему-то игнорируем вот этот мир духов, который живет рядом с нами прямо сейчас, каждое следующее мгновение, и мы прям не там. И есть куча точек зрения, в которых, которые мы взяли с детства, о том, что это ненормально видеть, это ненормально взаимодействовать с этим, это должно быть страшно или как-то плохо, и куча других идей про полярности и про то, как вы должны на это реагировать. Самая забавная вещь, что когда мы начинаем разговаривать на все эти темы, это становится весело, это становится легко. У нас есть куча историй абсолютно у всех о том, как мы это делаем, и они все объясняют, почему в нашей жизни происходит то, что происходит, как они происходят. И это правда весело делать это. Это способности, которые есть у людей. У меня был один шикарный класс, пришла женщина и сказала, ты знаешь, у меня нет никаких способностей с этим, я не знаю, что я здесь делаю, что-то меня привело. Она говорит, единственное, что я хотела бы рассказать, она говорит, вот, ну, как бы, что я замечала у себя, да. Например, говорит, у меня 10 лет назад умер отец, и он никуда не делся, и он до сих пор живет вместе с мамой, она его видит, они все время разговаривают, они каждый вечер вместе ложатся в кровать, клеят обои, делают дома ремонт. Это нормально. Что если для вас станет нормальным что-нибудь еще? Вот. Или она рассказала другую историю, что она ехала по дороге и видела аварию, и видела, что лежит тело человека, и он бегал вокруг своего тела. Вот. Она увидела это и подумала, может быть, он не может туда войти. И она попробовала его засунуть туда внутрь тела, но он не очень туда входил. Она сказала, что она не знаю, что с этим делать, и оставила его. И после этого она говорит, у меня нет никаких способностей, я ничего про это не знаю. Мы делаем себя глупыми, мы воспринимаем это как всего, но прям не знаем об этом. Что если бы вы запросили знать, что бы, блин, поменялось, насколько веселой бы стала ваша жизнь, если бы вы стали смотреть, что происходит в мире духов, а они там весело живут? Слушайте, насколько поменялась бы жизнь, если бы мы позволили себе осознанность и способность нанимать сущности, клеить обои? Мне очень понравилась эта идея. Что если... Слушай, а он там нет, он, как ты говоришь, обои клеит. Может, его это, он там, по чем берет-то, может быть? У меня знакомые спрашивали, может, ремонт провести? Да, на самом деле, вот как раз сейчас перед обедом как раз эту тему заканчивали по поводу, что если мы... Что если мы откинем тему, что это даже не то, что это нормальная тема там, а что если это вообще не там? То есть, что если вот тема сущности вообще, это не потусторонняя тема, они просто здесь сейчас, у вас просто, знаете, как я когда в горах ходил, знаете, солнцезащитные очки, они такие, знаете, в желтизну отдают. И у меня все горы, в общем-то, в моей памяти, они такие, знаешь, полуповерхность Марса. Такая желтовато-красноватая земля. А снять невозможно, потому что очень слепит, как бы, да, такие мгновения. То есть то же самое. У нас просто есть очень много фильтров, которые мы себе придумали, которые мы покупаем просто в тоннами в детстве. Более того, у нас же есть целое, ну, целое направление в СМИ, там, в фильмах, в книгах, которые нам просто продают. Для чего продают? Потому что очень много мифотворчества. Там, где много мифотворчества, там, где мы не запрашиваем ясность о чем-то, там нас очень легко напугать. Там легко вызвать эмоции, там легко еще что-то. То есть там, где у нас, там, где мы выбираем неосознанность чем-то, не знаем что-то, да, не выбираем это, то там э, есть возможность нам еще больше нагнать незнание. И незнание порождается незнанием, закидывается незнанием, и у нас получается такой ворох проблем, которые мы покупаем как реальность. То есть, ну, если 100 человек сказали о том, что сущность – это только какие-то паразиты, которые вылезают из телевизора, там, <laughs> девочка, которая хочет меня постоянно убить, там, или все, все, там, они злые, все пытаются, там, охотиться за вами, да, то есть в темноте не бывает ничего хорошего. Что если это не так. То есть мы купили очень много, и сейчас много разного, что в детстве мы э, смотрели как фильмы. Я могу сказать то, что я любил фильм ужаса в детстве вообще просто, да, до ужаса, а потом спать не мог. Почему? Потому что, когда я начал разбирать, разбираться с этой осознанностью, я когда-то увидел простую вещь, что я был, когда был ребенком, я меня вообще перло, меня просто, я не знаю, нельзя было отодрать просто за я все равно смотрел. 
И у взрослых была жесткая точка зрения, что я не буду спать. И я оправдывал эту точку зрения тем, что я не спал. Но когда начал смотреть, вот уже вот буквально да, с этими классами, когда разбирал это в людях, я в себе это тоже увидел, что я считал не то, что этот фильм ужасов, а то, что этот ужас, это фильм ужасов для родителей, для родственников тогда был, потому что я был совсем маленький. И чтобы угодить кому-то, мы часто получаем, покупаемся, подстраиваемся под их страхи. Под точки зрения, под их страхи в том числе, потому что точек зрения страхов у людей огромное количество. И то, чтобы быть сыном, быть хорошим сыном, соответствовать им энергетически. То есть это даже не то, что я такой, так, надо бы соответствовать. Нет, мы автоматом это делаем, то, что любим своих родных, и постараемся их вылечить и так далее. И ты начинаешь оправдывать, и они укрепляются в этом ограничении, потому что, ну, вот, не спишь пугаешься, страшно же. Что если это не страшно? Что если вы являетесь самым большим, самым могущественным, самым страшным, ужасным, ужасающим и скручивающим все, что возможно? Что если вы самое сильное существо во Вселенной, которое может общаться с любой сущностью? И это у сущности проблемы могут быть общения с вами, а не у вас с ними. Что если мы позволим себе легкость и силу там, где мы считаем нашу самую большую слабость? И вот этот момент, эти примеры очень здоровские, потому что мне очень нравятся эти люди, которые... Мне пришла... У меня была девушка, которая сказала, слушай, у меня такой вопрос. То есть люди такие, знаешь, там, я их там верю в них, хочу видеть, там, знаешь, еще что-то, что потребуется. Знаете, я унылое говно, я не умею, да? А женщина пришла, мне очень понравилось. У нее докторская диссертация, и она такая, у меня другая проблема. Я их вижу, но я в них не верю. Что мне с, ней, что мне с этим делать? Вот. И такие очень забавные штуки которые люди считают, что у них нет талантов. То, что я замечаю на классах, не только по сущностям вообще, у человека, у которого талантов просто, знаешь, рок изобилия, с него просто прет, он считает, что он ничего не умеет. Сколько из вас считают, что вы ничего не умеете только потому, что вы думаете, что все, что вы умеете, умеют все остальные? Что ваше восприятие равно восприятию всех остальных? Никто не воспринимает сущности так, как вы. И никто не умеет то, что умеете вы. Вы умеете это в единственном экземпляре. Что если вы единственный в своем роде, в своего вида? Готовы ли вы быть первым своего вида? Или вы пытаетесь подстроиться под всех, кто пытается быть... Ну, не знаю, все с такими руками все есть, да? А все остальное мы просто списываем на глюки, на еще что-нибудь. То есть вы приходите в любое помещение... Просто сейчас, да, вы, вы вспомните, вы приходите в любое помещение, и вы его ощущаете сразу. Каждое помещение для вас разное. Вы приезжаете в лес, вы приезжаете на море, вы приезжаете в горы. Вы ощущаете сущности сразу там. Просто задайте себе вопрос, что вы ощущаете, ну, почему для вас по-разному ощущаются разные места. Энергетика разная, сущности разные. Нечто разное, и оно нечто с вами взаимодействует сразу. Что если вы позволите себе просто, начните с этой осознанности, просто что если вы просто признаете то, что вы знаете? А еще вы сущность, вы тоже Ой, сущность. Неожиданно. Как мы исключили себя из этого всего. И да. Если мы позволяем себе знать себя и воспринимать себя, и быть собой, быть тем, кем мы являемся. Вы пытаетесь быть правильным человеком, но вы тоже сущность. И когда у вас не будет тела, вы будете такой сущностью, вот, у которой не видно через тело. Да? Вы будете какой-то другой. И, и это неплохой. У меня есть чудесный пример а, с моим ребенком. А, он дал мне колоссальную просто осознанность о моем восприятии сущности. Мне казалось, что это легко для меня. О, боже мой, я 20 лет работаю с людьми, да я все про это знаю, да боже мой, значит, как бы, да? да. Мы знаем, как все прогнать и все остальное. Но я взяла с собой ребенка, который боится спит по ночам уже 6 лет, и ему надо спать с кем-то, держа его за руку. И я попросила дать мне на классе больше осознанности о том, как я это сделала. О, я при, прям преуспела. А, когда в детстве он начинал плакать, я думала, что с ним что-то не так. И я так переживала, и я тоже прям с ним плакала. И он просыпался по ночам, и он кричал совершенно сумасшедшим голосом, и мы не могли его разбудить. И это длилось часами, и это была жуткая жуть. И когда я рассказала эту историю на классе, мне спросили, что ты решила? Я говорю, я попросила мою подругу, которая видела, чтобы она посмотрела, что там произошло. И она мне сказала, что он ходит в нижние миры, что он приходит с сущностями, что это его так детское тело реагирует на всю эту энергию. Бу -бу -бу. Короче, что я, она сделала? Она типа закрыла ему вход в нижний мир, почистила его от сущности, и он тут же замолчал. И это сработало. Мы делали так несколько лет. 
чтобы он не кричал по ночам. Это работало. Я рассказала эту историю, и первый вопрос, который мне задали, что ты решил? Я говорю, я решила, что он кричит, потому что он боится сущностей. Или потому что его тело тяжело с сущностями. Меня спросили, он кричит, потому что ему страшно, или он кричит сущностям, потому что зовет их играть? И вот что было делать с этой осознанностью? То есть это абсолютно меняло картину, это был абсолютно другой взгляд. Я говорю, ну допустим, хорошо. Когда ему стало 2-3 года, он видел их, он мне все время говорил, мама, я там вижу скелет тут, я вижу там это. Я ему говорила, не бойся, ты что, у тебя такие волшебные мама, папа, ничего с тобой не случится, мы же всегда рядом. Поэтому я удивляюсь, почему 6 лет он спит со мной за руку, да? Я же всегда рядом. Вот. И ну, да, да, да. что забавного в этом, это то, что я решила посмотреть туда, потому что то, где он мне показывал сущности, я их тоже видела. И я взглянула туда, и я увидела там, и это было на даче, и там у меня такое большое поле с лесом за домом, и я увидела, что все это пространство наполнено сущностями, они все пришли. Но выглядели они не очень, прямо скажем, не вот прям вам херувимы с крылышками. Но их было колоссально. И у них был один вопрос ко мне. Почему ты не получаешь от нас? И этот вопрос абсолютно перевернул мой мир, потому что я тогда увидела, до какой степени я заключена внутри полярности хорошего и плохого. И есть прям прекрасные создания с белыми крылышками, с ними можно, или какие-то очень мудрые старцы, которые больше не в теле, с ними тоже можно. А вот с такими нельзя ничего. И с тех пор это стало весело, потому что теперь я могу со всеми взаимодействовать. И неважно, как они выглядят, они могут выглядеть как угодно. И это кое-что изменило для моего ребенка, потому что э, я спросила его, слушай, если бы ты признал, что они тебя слышат, о чем бы ты хотел их попросить? Он сказал очень просто, я хочу, чтобы вы не приходили страшными, и чтобы вы не беспокоили меня по ночам. Что если у вас есть выбор, вы можете настроить, когда у вас будет выглядеть эта система, и им не придется пока проявлять себя через те кошмары, которые у вас есть. Ну, как бы там они порылись в ваших мозгах, нашли образ фильма ужасов из детства, да, и началась эта карусель. Что другое возможно, что мы еще не рассматривали, и что, если это правда, очень легко. И это осознанность о том, кто вы такие, и как вы взаимодействуете с миром, которая может быть легкой, которая может быть расширяющейся постоянно, потому что что-то еще будет проявляться, и вы что-то еще сможете. Сколько раз мы все говорили, что мы не знаем. Я этим летом была на Байкале. Мы приехали, было темно, я ничего не видела. Утром я вышла, и я иду, и я понимаю, что со мной говорит каждый камень, каждое дерево, озеро, скала. Ну и как будто вы псих просто, да, и с вами все разговаривает. И я подумала, что со мной что-то не так. Ну как бы, что я не знаю, как себя здесь вести, это же такое особое место, надо, наверное, как-то аккуратно там подстроиться, никого не обидеть. Вот, и я понимаю, что я в этот момент себя странно вела, когда я пыталась под это подстроиться. Но я абсолютно игнорировала ту радость, которая есть в сущностях, которые вышли, ну, как бы знакомиться со мной, общаться со мной. И каждое место, в которое я прихожу, там тоже есть сущности, и они тоже выходят знакомиться со мной. И это забавный момент, кто вы такие, что они приходят к вам. И что, если с вами все так? Нет, все, все неправильно. С этим Кстати, это очень хорошо. В новых местах знакомиться, прям вот толково. Ко мне нет, я нормальный человек. Хлеб Я нормальный падра. Всех, 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 всех. Слушай, это забавно, потому Мы были на Байкале, и знаете, это. Знаете, я с другой точки зрения подойду. Это может быть очень утилитарно, потому что когда вы не отрезаете свою осознанность о сущностях, вы можете с ними не то чтобы управлять, мы не об этом скорее говорим, а создавать, общаться со всем миром. Весь мир может быть живым. И это было удивительно, когда мы приехали на Байкал, это было очень холодно, невозможно было ничего фоткать, потому что обжигал ветер руки сразу так, что... А мы еще приехали такие... В... Мы же на Бали собирались, <laughs> на Бали, а вот, а поехали на Байкале. И мы были в таких маленьких курточках, такие все замерзшие. В общем, и на самом деле, насколько это просто, когда ты просто поговорил с ветром, и он просто затих, и все охренели от этого момента. И все, и началась тишина, солнышко вышло, какие-то потрясающие вещи... И когда ты запрашиваешь, ты не отвергаешь осознанность, которую тебе могут дать сущности разные. Опять же, наша точка зрения создает нашу реальность. да, и вот То, что ты, конечно, говорил. Мы часто воспринимаем их, которые не имеют вообще формы, цвета, ничего. Мы 
их сами засовываем часто, они не имеют, пол, не имеют прохода к нам дойти, кроме как те образы, которые мы купили. А это как раз книжки, фильмы, страхи, да, и они, ну, как бы для них нет точек зрения часто. Они такие, ну, вот так я могу перед тобой проявить. Окей, а что ты от меня бежишь? Что не так-то? Я же твой собственный образ, как бы, ну, через твою систему координат с тобой разговариваю. И когда ветер стих, я понял, что что-то еще, что еще возможно. И пока я был один, смотрел на эту шаманку, гору, еще что-то, я просто спросил у Байкала, а что здесь еще есть интересно, что сейчас возможно? Потому что, ну, как бы такое было время, что вроде ничего не посмотреть. Было странное ощущение, что есть, есть, есть интересные места. Я такой, хорошо, покажи. И подходит просто наш чувак, который наш возил, муж, мужчина местный, который на Альхоне там. Он говорит, слушайте, давайте я вам сейчас интересное место покажу. Наш гид был против. Она такая, нет, нельзя, там все такое. Нельзя ездить по Байкалу. Два дня как отменили, короче. Он нас привез в места, которые видно, вот эти пещеры, такие прям вылизанные, прям какие-то потрясающие сталактитные за льда. Их видно вот буквально там в год, там, ну, может, я не знаю, недели три, да, может быть, там, не знаю, месяц. Вот, и мы там походили, пофоткались, потрясающе просто, оно пол течет, но еще льди, льдинистое, какое-то безумно гладкое, и там идет вот этот прекрасный прозрачный, который ты смотришь, он там вниз на несколько этих метров видно, знаешь, такой бирюзовый. Я такой, блин, вообще спасибо, там, Байкал и все остальное, то есть, и а, были очень интересные моменты, сущности просто могут давать а, классные моменты в плане времени. То есть мы, мы потом из, а, полетели в улан -Удэ. И от улан уже поехали, там, часов пять ехали до Байкала. И когда нам, у нас было время четко ехать, потому что это потом было видно, что четко ехать надо было, то есть лед просто, а он там несколько метров, там, десятки метров толщиной в этот момент, он просто треснул прямо перед ногами у нас, который сказал просто уходите, вам пора ехать. Треснул огромный толщин, да. И потом, мы когда поехали, мы поняли, что если бы у нас, ну вот, мы бы вот после этого не поехали быстро, а было прям четкая мысль, то есть пора ехать от трещины и пора ехать, все сослось. Мы бы опоздали на самолет. То есть что если мы можем позволить себе... В страх мы, наверное, наигрались просто. То есть можно бояться, продолжать, конечно, а можно это использовать для создания чего-то более классного, более веселого, более эффективного в нашей жизни. Что если все может быть вам полезно? Что если... Ну, уже много-много раз эти сущности э, меня будили, сущности мне подсказывали, куда идти, еще что-то. То есть это часто как такие, знаете, инсайты. Сущности общаются через язык энергии. То есть часто мы ставим наш язык проблемой к общению с тем, что говорит просто на другом языке, на энергетическом языке. Сущности, как и весь мир, в общем, как и дети до определенного возраста, общаются через энергию, через прямое, как бы, прямую, прямую передачу осознанности. И так, так взаимодействует и лес, так взаимодействует ваша одежда, которая часто хочет быть на вас одета. И в этой одежде вы чувствуете себя потрясающе весь день, и вам говорят потрясающе, что вы потрясающий весь день. Часто же мы руководствуемся логикой, а потом происходит то, что мы называем не тот день, не наш день, еще что-то. Слушаем ли мы осознанность? И что если мы позволим настолько расширить наш мир, что позволим даже невидимому глазу мира, а кому-то видимому, быть вкладом для нас. Вот это очень интересный момент. И, ну, это большая тема вообще сущности. То есть много болезней может уйти от этого, потому что много болезней связано с сущностями. Много сущностей хотят быть с нами, не хотят быть с нами. Есть сущности, которые нам вредят. Есть сущности, которые нас могут исцелить, помочь там что-то подсказать. Это как с людьми. Есть куча людей, с которыми вы выстраиваете отношения. И то, что, Катюш, ты говоришь, да, то есть это то же самое у нас с людьми. То есть вот этих я буду принимать, а вот эти что-то как-то выглядят оборванцами. Я что-то не буду, не буду с ними взаимодействовать. Не так вы, ребят, выглядите. То же самое с сущностями, да. То есть мы воспринимаем каких-нибудь махат, ну, там еще кого-нибудь, ангела, фархан. А вот эти, ну что там осло, что с вас взять? Скелеты, где бабло? А что мне нравится? Они люди говорят, я общаюсь типа с мертвыми. Я говорю, как ты себе это представляешь? Ты идешь на кладбище, выкапываешь тело и общаешься с мертвым телом? Разве сущность может быть мертвой? Для людей уже это какой-то инсайт. Я говорю, а ничто не мертво там. Что да, это же, это же огромный фильтр. Смерть начинает пугать их, но они, правда, не мертвые. Да, да, это, это же как раз-таки... Поэтому у них потом описание такое, то есть с кем общаешься, с мертвым, как выглядят? Ну, как мертвые. То есть сразу вот так, да. 
что если ничего не умирает, все постоянно. Алхимия это естественное состояние мира. Все просто трансформируется. Ваше тело, после того, как вы его отпустили, оно трансформируется на что-то еще. И ваше тело формируется из чего-то еще. А безграничная сущность, она никуда не девается, она не рождалась и не, не умирает. Вы просто меняете тело, меняете локацию, что-то еще делаете. Вы, вы так ночью делаете, вы вылетаете постоянно из тела и играетесь где-то. Вопрос, помните вы об этом или нет, это большой вопрос. И все. Это естественное состояние, наша естественная способность. Прямо сейчас ощутите своих родных, близких. Вы что-то ощущаете. Если вы только тело и нет ничего за гранью видимого тела, то вы не можете ничего ощущать. Но если есть энергия, и вы безграничная сущность, то вы можете ощущать кого угодно прямо сейчас. Мгновенно. И это, это просто потрясающая по красоте, может быть, вселенная, намного превосходящая все, чему нас учили, чего боялись, чего отвергали, что пытались скрыть. Опять же, наши родители, близкие, знакомые, другие люди, которые нас окружают. Что если мы можем выйти за пределы ограничений, которые... Есть просто в обществе, есть просто у разных людей, есть у тех же самых людей, которые тоже видят, как и мы, воспринимают, и могут намного больше. Но тоже боятся. Именно боятся не сущностей, а успеха в этом, что они начнут воспринимать больше, чем другие. О чем я буду говорить с этими людьми тогда? Я же нормальный. И мы пытаемся быть нормальными, именно отрезая себя. Да, это как патология, когда ты можешь. Да. Да, 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 это патология, да. Все для нас патология, <смех> это когда я могу, да. Вот, вот это можно отпустить прямо сейчас. Я бы отпустил, ты как? <смех> <Давай>. <смех> Хорошо. Отпускаем это же. Какой ненормальный <смех> должен быть? И как это может быть, да? правда, весело для нас? Ну, то есть э, все, 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 что сверх нормы, люди всегда будут называть, ну, всегда, да, то, что мы видим просто по факту в этой реальности, это либо не, ну, это степень защиты, либо ненормальность, да, либо юродивость, либо защита с обвинением, гневом, либо еще чем-то. Каждый раз, когда вы показываете людям больше, многие из них могут по этому поводу очень так пригореть и пытаться защищаться от большего. Мы сами постоянно этим занимаемся. Ну а что, если мы позволим себе быть хоть чуть-чуть больше, на шажок в осознанности больше? Комфортно, без срывов, без э, каких-то, знаешь, надрывов. Что, если это может быть еще, еще что-то? Что, что, какой шажок осознанности, который позволит мне создать что-то еще? Создать что-то большее с тем, что я считаю возможным для меня? Что еще вы можете включить в свою жизнь, что, что создаст совершенно другую реальность, создаст больше возможностей, создаст больше легкости, теплоты, единства, общения с людьми и с сущностями. Мне очень нравится, я закончу свой монолог по этому поводу, а мне очень нравится, что такая, такой момент. Как бы вы хотели, чтобы к вам относились после того, как вы оставите тело? Хотите ли вы, чтобы вас боялись, избегали, не видели, избегали вообще какой-то осознанности? Хотели бы вы такое? Я бы нет. Что если мы можем быть осознанностью, которой мы являемся и в теле, и за пределами тела? Mm -hmm. Вот так вот. И что если это что, правда есть может быть легко mm -hmm. и правда может быть весело и очень интересно? Это делает жизнь правда интересной, потому что это способ проявить yeah. удивительные вещи и увидеть, насколько живой мир вокруг вас, и сколько есть возможностей, на которые мы вообще никогда не смотрели. Ваша это семья, то, что вы называете семьей, она намного больше, чем несколько людей, которые живут в вашей квартире с вами. Или которые, я не знаю, там, связаны с вами какими-то узами. Что если бы вы позволили себе воспринять всех, кто является вашей семьей? Сколько заботы вы могли бы получать? Сколько вдохновения в этом могло бы быть? Такая большая энергетическая вещь. Что? Повеселились сегодня. Сегодня Повеселились. мы день мертвых. Все живы. А, да? День да. Сегодня да? День мертвых. Что если сегодня суббота? Прекрасная полнолуние, кстати, очень красивая. Что, что мы можем сегодня изменить, чтобы изменить точку зрения на 
разные праздники, на разные проявления, разные страхи в мире с легкостью. Все, где мы это создали, все, где мы это поддерживали, можем сегодня отпустить. Я очень благодарен, что у нас сегодня какой-то эфир такой у нас получился. И спасибо Шеннонской команде. Одите. Круто. Вот. И что еще возможно? Катюш, тебе хорошего дня, хорошего класса. Спасибо тебе тоже. Спасибо вам огромное, что вы нашли время побыть с нами. И что возможно для вас сущностями, если вы перестанете игнорировать это. Спасибо вам. Всем пока-пока. Пока-пока. Jujo, lepo zdrav sem skupaj na ta Halloween večer. Jaz čakam, moje ime je Ana Umanovič in se vam javljam iz Slovenije in čakam, da se mi pridruži Goga Pečnik. Upam, da nam rata, kaj bi bilo potrebno. Goga, evo. Hello, hello. Julia, koga kako nam gre? Evo je še mi čeka, no. Dodajam jo. Kako ste, kako preživljate današnji večer? Zdaj ne je že ful pozno, zdaj ne. Je še ni, evo jaz imam mal hecam se s tem Facebook live-om. Evo. Evo, Goga wants to be in my video. Approve. She's adding. Hello, hello, Goga. A si tu kaj? Sam, sam, evo, končno. Hello. Lepo zdrav Prago. Mi zve so tako, jaz sem v Sloveniji, jaz sem v Crknici. In Goga je trenutno, a si v Pragi. Jaz sem pa v Pragi in se opravičujem, če bo imela kakršne koli glasne entitete, zato sem se tudi malo maknala, ker kjer sem je zelo glasno. Bilo pred parimi minutami in svi se, da ne bom niti mogla vstopiti, ampak sem se zmenila z entitetami, da jih pošljajo stran. How does it get better? Točno to, ja. Skratka, vsi lepo ste povabljeni v temu Facebook live-u, da tako mi dve nima veno bene posebne agende ali pa neke forme in strukture, kako bo ta najim Facebook live zgledal. Tako da, please, prneste vsa svoje vprašanje. Mislim, dajte jih v chat motor in gremo se pogovarjati v to smer, kamor si želimo, kamor si želite iti. In mi dve, s čem bo ve začele med tem, ko čaka ve na vprašanja? Ja, opažam, da sploh moja slušalka ne dela, tako da jo lahko dam dol. Jaz nimam slušalk, tako da trenutno sem sama v stanovanju, naj bi bilo tiho, upam, da bo tiho. No, jaz pa nisem v stanovanju, ampak smo v enem takem kraju v Pragi, kjer je kar frekert, tako da zato sem se omaknala. S čim bi začele? Pa deva začeti z eno temo, ko se mi zdi, da jo najmanjkrat, ko se pogovarjamo o entitetah, obravnavamo in to je prejemanje od entitet. V bistvu, z entitetami delamo vedno tri stvari, jih čistimo, komuniciramo z njimi in pa prejemamo. In tukaj ima več eno vprašanje od Maruše. Če te lahko prekinem v mes, ki se bo nadaljevalo na to temo prejemanja, je, kako ste začele vi dve zaznavati, oziroma kako ste začele zaznavati entitete, kakšni znaki, posebnosti in tako dalje. A boš ti začela? Lahko. Jaz sem v bistvu še prej, predno sem začela z Access Consciousness, sem se ukvarjati, že bila malo čudna in sem vse čas bila zainteresirana za ta svet. Že kot otrok sem v bistvu brala knjige o ezoteriki, 
velik brala o reinkarnaciji, verjela sem v prejšnja življenja in pot me je tudi tako peljala, da sem še pred eksesom bila zainteresirana zelo za svet angelov in sem se izobrazila za angelsko terapevtko, potem pa še sem tudi postala mediji, tako da meni je ta svet pogovarjanja z entitetami od nekdaj bil blizu in me je tudi zelo zanimo in sem se izobraževala na tem področju še pred eksesom. In v bistvu Talk to the Entities je bila prva stvar, ki sem jo šla specializirati, ker je bilo to nekaj mojega. Kaj pa ti? No, jaz sem pa malo drugačno zgodila v zvezi s tem. Jaz pa tako, v bistvu, ko sem spoznavala Access, ne vem, koliko časa je to nazaj, pa moje nek pet let nazaj, ko sem bila na svoji prvi bar z delavnici in pol, ne vem, na temeljih in na 3D body klasu in tako naprej, Vsaki, v bistvu, ko smo se pogovarjali o entitetah, je bilo meni tako, ah, kaj te entitete ljudje uporabljajo za to, da se izogibajo neki svoji odgovornosti v življenju. Nekako sem, vedno sem imela, ne vem, en tak zelo zanimiv pogled v vezi s tem, da ljudje vedno uporabljajo te neke duhove in entitete za to, da ne ravi v bistvu pravzeti odgovornosti za svoje življenje. Ali pa zmer se mi je zdelo tako prelaganje, nečesa na nekaj zunanjega, kar nima neke fizične oblike, kar nima neke, ja, neke pač neke strukture, nekaj, kar bi bilo zelo oprijemljivo in sem zelo, zelo živela na tak način, da sem se te temi zelo izogibala oziroma jo izredno zavračala in hkrati... Kot večina ljudi. Kaj? Kot večina ljudi, a ne? Kot večina ljudi vsekakr, po moj se vas bo dost najdel v temu. In to je bil eden izmed zadnjih seminarjev, resnično tako v eksesu, ki sem se jih jaz udeležila, ali pa vedno sem nekaj tako, kaj bo meni ta seminar do prinesel, zakaj bi se izpoh tega seminarja v bistvu udeležila. In hkrati, a ne, vedno imamo to zaznavo nečesa, ki je kako bi rekli v tej realnosti, doskrat slišimo besedo paranormalno ali pa gre onkraj res tega vidnega, otipljivega, onkraj tega, o čemer se spoh smo voljni pogovarjati. In meni bil ta svet, vedno mi je bil zanimiv, ampak hkrati sem se toliko delala napačno v zvezi s tem, da karkoli vem o tem ali pa da bi karkoli smela vedeti v zvezi s tem, da sem se tega na široko in dolgo izogibala. In potem preprosto več zavedanja, ko imaš o vsem, ne moreš se izogniti preprosto svetu entitet. In če se že pogovarjava o temu, kaj so sploh entitete, mogoče bi malo o tem povedala, pred da nadaljujem o tem, kaj so sploh entitete, Goga, boš ti povedala o tem v katerih entitetah se pogovarjamo. Seveda, seveda. V bistvu vse je entiteta. Tudi ta lešalca, ki si jo zdaj dvignala, je entiteta. Jaz sem zdaj videla eno entiteto, ki me je čudno gledala, bila je v telesu, ko je prišla noter skoz vrata, ker se pač pogovarjam v drugem jeziku, kot se oni. Skratka, vse, kar ima neko definicijo, formo, strukturo, je entiteta. Jaz v tem življenju se zdaj opredeljujem kot goga, ženska, mama, hčerka, sestra, ljubica itd. itd. Cel kup definicij imam kaj sem. In če bi jaz zdaj recimo umrla na tak način, oziroma moje telo, če bi umrlo v takih okoliščinah, da bi bila v nezavedanju, da bi bila recimo zadeta od drog, alkohola ali pa da bi umrla v kakaj nesreči, ko se sploh ne bi zavedala, da nimam več telesa, bi enostavno se definirala kot vse to in bi imela cel kup vseh pogledov, ki sem jih imela za časa življenja, še vedno. Tako da entitete, ne glede na to, da nimajo telesa, ne pomeni, da so bolj pametne od nas in da so sposobnejše od nas. Ja, in ena stvar tukaj, če jo lahko dodam ali pa preprosto, veliko ljudi živi v tem pogledu, wow, smrt je moja rešitev ali pa če umrem, 
bom dejansko postal neko razsvetljeno obitje in se bom odrešil vseh problemov in vseh pogledov, point of view, ki jih imam. In ogromno živimo iz tega stališča, ko da je smrt neka končnost ali pa ko da nam smrt da neko odrešitev in veliko ljudi se niti ne zavedo, da preprosto, ko umremo, ko našo fizično telo umre, a izginejo naša stališča, izginejo naši pogledi ali v bistvu ostanemo kot energija, prostor in zavedanje tam, ker smo pač zapustili preprosto svoje telo kot bitje. In jaz sem videla tako darilo tega, a ne pač začeti zaznavati ta svet ali pa začne preprosto prejemati ta svet in ga videti iz enega mesta dopuščanja, pa tudi sebe iz enega mesta dopuščanja. Preprosto, ne vem, en tak prostor se mi je ustvaril, ko veš, da wow, pač tukaj v tem telesu, na temu planetu, v temu trenutku lahko spremenimo svoje zavedanje, preprosto zato, da imamo drugačne izbere, tudi pol, ko mogoče nimamo več telesa ali preprosto, ko greš naprej in si izbereš drugačne stvari, drugačen svet, druge izbere. In vsi tisti, ki misel, nis, a ne, mene tako, mene je ful eno darilo od tega, ne vem, sveta zavedanja in preprosto pogovarjame z entiteta, mi ravno to, da, hej, kakršno zavedanje, si volen biti tukaj in kaj če se načne, kaj če je to zavedanje nekaj, kar imaš zavedno in nekaj, kar odneš s sabo in prav tako ne zavedanje, ki ga odneš s sabo in z njim mogoče ponavljaš ene in iste stvari, v katere si večno pač ujet in zaklenj. In mene tako... Ena stvar, ki si jo omenila, sorry, ko te prekinjam, ena stvar, ki si jo omenila, pa veliko ljudi, ki naj jo bo gledali, verjetno, a ne, Fajn je, da veste, da vsakič, ko zdelate barse, postanete vedno bolj zavedni. Se vedno bolj zavedate sveta okrog sebe in če ne želite, če želite še naprej ignorirati svet entitet, tako kot večina ljudi, se temu težko izognete, če prejemate vedno več barsov ali pa če vodite delavnice barsov, zato ker s tem, ko vsakič, ko prejemete barse, se vam nivo vsega, vašega lastnega zavedanja dvigne. Tako da bi nadile mogoče kak clearing. Vsi tisti, ki se ustrajno upirate zavedanju entitet iz razno raznih zanimivih pogledov, zelo so prišle druge entitete sem, ja, so glasne, ja, da vam bojo na kakršen koli način entitete škodle in vas je tega strah in vsi drugi moteči vsadki, ki se aktivirajo v besedi entiteta, bomo vse to zdaj razverljavili, priklicali, razdrli, odpovedali, te bomo porekali, vrnili nazaj v ničini in razgradili krat godziljen skozi vse čase prostore, dimenzije in resničnosti. Zdaj pa lahko ti podem pokaš. Pet pot, pot, online shorts, boys and beyonds. In tudi, ko če se vprašate, hej, koliko se moramo poneumiti, ker praktično bo meni izkolik nezavedanja moramo delovati vsak dan, da preprosto zanikamo obstoj toljkih drugih entitet ali pa biti ali pa duhov, kakorkoli pa že ne vem, nekdo to imenuje. A se zavedamo, koliko v bistvu se moramo pretvarjati, da smo človeški, kar vsnici nismo, da lahko verjamemo, da smo edini tukaj v vesolju ali pa edini tukaj na planetu. A bi bilo volj vse to, kar je, uničiti in razgraditi. Right and wrong, good and bad, potem pa, ko ne šoč, boys and beyonds. In kaj bi se zgodilo, če ne bi več tega sveta preprosto odrezovali od sebe, ampak bi ga začeli vključevati in preprosto prejemati od njega. In kar bolj ste se odločili, da prejemanje je, ali pa da prejemanje ni, ko vse to, kar je vničmo in odkreramo. 
I vse vaše projekcije, pričakovanja sodbe, zavrnitve, izračune, algoritme, laži, agende, izume v zvezi z besedo prejemanje. Right and wrong, good and bad, potem pokol na šolc, boys and beyonds. Ja, in tudi prašnicima z besedo, ne vem, entitete, z besedo duhovi, prikazni, ogromno tega imamo, noro zdramatiziranega in vse to smo pridobili iz filmov, iz teresničnosti, iz medijev in tako naprej. In veliko imamo strahu in enih dvomov, preprosto v svoje lastno vedenje o tem, če se vse zavedamo, zato ker je tam strah in strah nas distraktira konstantno do tega, da bi bili lahko vse, kar smo, do svoje dejanske potenčnosti, do moči tega, kar vsak izmed vas je. Tako, sposobnost o entitetah, mi dve zgogo ni sve čist nač posebnega, da lahko komunicira. Deva se dela, da sva deva se dela. Ja, deva se ful pretvarja, ni zaš tako nekaj ful posebnega. Zato, ker so ful neke hude facilitatorke, tako tudi entities. Ljudje, kaj če bi si dovolil in preprosto dopustili to zmožnost za znave, vedenja, prejemanja in bitja skupaj z entitetami, kar česnici smo. Vse, kar nam to ne dopušča, vse bo sad, ker ste naredili to grozno, obupno ali pa strašljivo ali pa v nekaj, kar morate vedno dvomiti konstantno, lahko vse to, kar jo nič me nadkreiramo. Right and wrong, good and bad, potem pa okolnej šolc, boys and beyonds. In še eno stvar si zanimivo zdaj povedala, v bistvu, kaj če dejansko vsi ljudje, ki se temu opirate na vse kriplje, imate eno veliko potenco na tem področju spodaj. Exactly. In vse, kar vam preprečuje, da bi stopli v popolnosti v to svojo lastno potenco in bili popolnoma potenci, brez, da bi vas ta realnost lahko kontrolirala in vas manipulirala, ali boste vse to sedaj uničili in razgradili, krat godziljen? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, pol, no in šolc, pojs in beyonds. Kaj vi veste v zvezi z entitetami, kar zavračate ali pa zanikate, da veste in če bi si dovolil vedeti, bi to ekspanziralo vaš svet, vašo resničnost, radost in lahkotnost, ki jo imate lahko s sabom in s celim svetom okrog vas. Right and wrong, good and bad, potem pa okolne šolc, boys and beyonds in kaj če dejansko bi na ta način pomagal ne sam človeštvo, tudi zemlji? Kaj če v bistvu s tem, ko ne stopate v svoje lastno zavedanje, škodujete planetu? Ker zdaj je čas, dragi moji, ne moramo se več pretvarjati. Ne. And no pressure about that. Ampak tako, ask yourself. Mislim, da je to del priročnika, ki je Peter Pan napisal, vsakič, ko ne verjamemo, da obstajajo vile na tem planetu, umre ena izmeh teh vil, kar lahko prevedemo v druge besede. Vsakič, ko zanikate svoje vedenje, koliko stvari, koliko kolikšen del planeta v bistvu umre s tem. In s tem tudi umre del našega bitja. Ja. Ja. In vse, kar je s tem prišlo na površje, bomo vse to uničili in razgradili krat godziljen. Ja, right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pa, ko ima in šolc, pa in sem jonc. In ta drugačnost vas in vedanje o tem, Ne glede na to, kako je sojeno, ne glede na to, kako je narejeno kot vdaško, grozno. Kaj, če bi si bili voljni to lastiti nazaj, si vzeti nazaj in preprosti imeti to in uživati v tem in začeti prejemati od tega? Zdaj, kar smo bili narejeni za napačno, za to, kar veste, ali pa kar ste vedli kot otroci, Kaj bi bilo potrebno, da si vzamemo to nazaj in preprosto bi bili voljni to imeti? Ja. Kaj je magic? Kaj je wrong, good and bad, potem pa okolne šolc, boj se bi onc. In ker se pogovarjamo o entitetah, a nekako smo kot otroci v bistvu zaznavali entitete. 
Lahko greste nazaj, 30, 40, 50 let nazaj, ne vem, koliko je vsak star tukaj, ki je na tem Facebook live, ampak koliko ste se zavedali nekih energij okrog sebe in ker ste začeli o tem govoriti in ker noben okrog vas ni bil voljen tega slišati ali pa vedeti neč o tem in so vam rekli, daj vodi tiho, ti si neumen, you're crazy, shut up. Smo v bistvu kupili to in smo rekli, ok, neumen sem, nimam pojma, z mano nekaj narobem in zato, da se bom lahko čim bolj prilegal v tej resničnosti, da jih bom ugajal, da jih bom ustrezal, da bom začel vrjeti temu. Torej vse je tako, kar vidim, da je v tej realnosti, vse je tako, kar živijo moji starši na način, kar živijo moji starši in moja okolica. In koliko smo na tak način prosto odrezali, čez vse, kar smo vedli, od majega. In kaj to vse... Ja, in v bistvu, to, kar zdaj govoriš, je dejansko življenje v tej resničnosti. Ja. Prva stvar, ki jo naredite s tem, ko začnete se pogovarjati z entitetami, je, da ste tukaj čudni, da ne pašete več v to resničnost. In to je v bistvu darilo tega, In kaj če je vsaka vaša napačnost? Tukaj se lahko navežemo na entitete. Vsaka vaša napačnost, ki ste jo naredili povezavi z entitetami, ena izmed vaših največjih potenčnosti in moči, ki se jih niste nikoli do zdaj priznali. Vse bo se odkjer niste voljni zaznati to, vedeti to, biti to in prijeti to in prijeti sebe v svoj svet in svet neskončnih možnosti, lahko vse to, kar jo nič vam odkriramo. Right and wrong, good and bad, potem poko, ne šolc, boys and beyond. Ja. Dej, poglej še, ker jaz ne vidim, če je še kako vprašanje, mogoče v četu. Grem nazaj, da bo gledam. Drugače vas bom pa jaz malo ta čas zabavala. Ali tukaj je eno vprašanje od Uršule, ki je bilo že nek minut nazaj. Jaz vem, da imam ful kapacitete z entitetami, pa se mi zdi, da je šele... Ti pa jaz ne. Pa se mi zdi, da je ful malo orodi v tok tudi entiti v zvezi s kanaliziranjem entitet in njihovih sporočil. In si totalno izberam več zavedanja z njimi. Kanaliziranje entitet je nekaj, kar s čim se je začel, ek se skonče s nes pred davnimi skoraj 30 leti. Če tako pogledamo, če Geri ne bi bil pripravljen se pogovarjati z entitetami, ek se se ne bi bilo. Hkrati pa je treba vedeti, da kanaliziranje je prepuščanje entitetam kontrolo nad telesom in s kanaliziranjem delate entitete včasih, ne bom rekla vedno, močnejše in bolj potentne od sebe. Tako da pri kanaliziranju vsem je treba malo biti previden, kaj kanalizirati, kako in kdaj. Ja, oziroma biti v zavedanju tega, pač koga kanaliziraš, oziroma kaj če je... Guga, Guga je zginila. Kaj če so entiti, kaj če dejansko ste vi najbolj potenčna in najbolj dominantna entiteta v svojem vlastnem svetu, kaj če ne rabimo nikogar drugega, ki je mogočnejši od nas, bolj potenten od nas, ampak bi preprosto začeli prepoznavati, hej, kaj če sem jaz tisti, ki v sebi, kaj če sem jaz nekdo, ki ima dostop do neskončne zaznave, do neskončnega vedenja, do neskončnega bitja, do neskončnega prejemanja. In vse pol so od, kjer ste naredili nekoga veličasnejšega od sebe, kogarkoli je to, kjer ga koli boga, kjer ga koli boga, katere koli vere, a bi bili voljni vse to, kar je vničiti in odkrirati. Right on, good, bad, pot, 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 nine shorts, boys and beyonds. In zdaj bom jaz poskušala goga še enkrat dodati, Mogoče nam je, mogoče ima slab internet, v glavnem goge ni več. 
eno zavedanje, skratka, ki ga dobimo v povezavi, oziroma ki ga lahko, eno zavedanje, ki ga lahko prejmete na seminarju Talk to the Entity, se je ravno to, da kaj če bi si dovolili biti vi nekdo, ki lahko ve, kaj je najboljše za vas, znava, kaj je najboljše za vas, preprosto je nekaj, kar je najboljše za vas in ve, kaj prejeti nišče drug, ni tisti, ki lahko to naredi na mesto vas, boljše kot kar vi sami. Evo, Goga se nam bo nazaj pridružila. Evo, dodajam jo. Hello, hello. Na jo zgleda dobro, gledaj, ne? Welcome back. Lahko zaključimo v bistvu, ne? Kako na ma greš časovno? Jaz pa nimam ta čas. Čak, ki bom pogledala. Pet minut je še do konca na inga slota. Uršela je nas stala ena moja najboljša, oziroma ena moja prijateljica, na primer, kanalizira tedanska angelska sporočila in vedno za dane tematiko mojega tedna, ampak za me so stvari tok subtilne, da jih včasih ne zaznam. Ona pa s temi orodi preko angelov jih. In jaz sem rao, da je podem pok. Kaj? Uršula, podem pok. Ja, pa če sem lik pred tem, ko si ti zginila, sem govorila o tem, hej, kaj če je, ne vem, pač recimo seminar, tako tudi en tudi resnično povabilo v to, da si volim vstopiti v to, da si ti najbolj dominantna entiteta v svojem svetu in ti veš najboljše, če si volim vedeti. In veliko krat dajemo toliko pomembnosti tem drugim ljudem, da preprosto in... Ne sem ljudem, ne sem ljudem, ne? Ampak tudi to robim, če v bistvu sam jaz povem svojo lastno izkušnjo, jaz sem uporabljala karte angelske leta in leta in leta, delala readinge, ne? V bistvu se začneš zanašati na stvari izven sebe, ko da one vejo boljš kot ti, ne? Na mesto, da... In da se mi začne okrerati tvoje življenje. Tako, ne, in v bistvu, ko ti začneš, pa pre... To, kar si na začetku rekla, sprejemati odgovorno za svoje življenje. Vsaka odločitev je tvoja lastna, ne zanašaš se na bitje okrog sebe, da ti bojo pokazala pot, da bojo to vnotretje. Vse si lahko neke stvari tlakuješ, uporabljaš orodja, samo hkrati pa za vse stojiš sam od zadnjih in si najpomembnejša entiteta v svojem življenju. In pol ne rabiš več nobenih pri pomočku nobenih, drugi stvari, mislim, lahko se s tem potem igraš, pa zabavaš, ampak ne dajš jim tiste pomembnosti več. Komu ali čemu ste dali v svojem življenju takšen pomen, da ste s tem izgubili svojo zmožno zaznave, vedenja, bitja in pa prejemanja? Vse to, kar je krat vodziljen. Please, 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 would you be willing to destroy and uncreate all of that? Right and wrong with the bad pot and pork on their shorts, boys and beyonds. In napisala se pa res, tudi jaz sem karte ful uporabljala, zdaj se pa vprašam, kaj jaz vem. E to. In v bistvu lahko začnemo kanalizirati vsi karte z tistim, kar mi vemo, ampak ni v bistvu to. Se v bistvu smisel je v tem, da ko se zavedamo, rastemo. Ne? In v enih obdobjih smo dejansko rabili ta orodja in pripomočke, zato da smo prišli do tle, kjer smo. In hvala tu. In to ni napačno. In dejansko, ko deluješ iz prostora zavedanja, nišče in nič ni prav in nišče in nič ni narobe. In je pol samo vprašanje, hej, kaj jaz vem o tem in kaj si dejansko je želim ustvariti kot svoje življenje. A si vedno želite med Jezusa Kristusa ali pa Ganiša ali pa ne vem, kjer ga Boga, da vam bo vedno povedal, kaj delati in kako delati, ali si želite med sebe, ki se vprašate in tvoje lastno vedenje, hej, what would be fucking fun for me. Ana, mislim, da naj upreganjajo. 
Mislim, da mora iti. Ja, v tuj, ker bo interes za take zadeve, lahko imava vsak teden v skupini pogovarjajte se z entitetami, take le pogovore. Ja, lahko lahko ne bo eno prej. V glavnem, di meni vas, ta vaša želja potem pokrejralo veliko, tudi najem v svetu, tako da, če imate to željo, let's do that. Ja, hvala vsem, ki ste bili tudi. Hvala vsem, pa se vidimo, ko se srečamo. Yes, thank you. Hvala. Vivejte Halloween. Bye, bye. Čau. Oh yeah, 大家晚上好，呃，非常感谢大家参加这一次的这个雨林对话，啊、呃，万圣节的这个特别的一个派对，呃，这一个呢是，其实你会看我呢，其实就是我的头会看两个不同的方向，因为其实现在我有两架手机，这一个节目呢，其实它是在 Facebook 上面直播的，而我特地呢，在用另外一架手机呢，在开 Zoom 给在中国的学员，因为。在中国，好多学生是上不了这个 Facebook 的，所以呢，啊，欢迎大家啊！所以你看，灵体这回事呢，同样是鬼节，在西方的世界呢，万圣节是一个大家去庆祝、去玩的一个一个一个一个节目、一个日子。但是在华人的世界呢，呃，这个鬼节呢是非常的不同的。华人的世界呢，鬼节是非常的有这种恐怖的这种气氛的。大家一想到鬼就觉得哦，有鬼出来了。你想一想，华人的鬼节的时候呢，大家是怎么样的？可能啊、呃，晚上不敢出门，晚上可能不止晚上不敢出门，一整天可能就是疑神疑鬼，觉得好像哪里会有一些灵体会害你等等。但是你看，在西方世界呢，这个是一天的日子呢，啊、呃，好多的这些大人小孩呢，一起可能有好可爱的这些灵体的装扮，鬼的装扮。各种妖魔鬼怪装扮呢，是出来玩的。所以你的观点创造你的实相，我们有多少的观点呢？让灵体这一回事呢，对我们而言是恐怖的，是你不敢去玩的一样东西。你看，如果你对灵体有这些这些观点的话呢，你提到鬼，提到灵体，你就怕了，你就觉得啊、哦，这个东西还是少提为妙。所以我们有多少的观点让灵体这回事呢？它它总是一个你不敢提。你害怕啊、呃、的一样东西，所有带出的这一切，从你比天晓得的更多倍。你是否愿意摧毁永远不再创造 ？Right, wrong, good and bad, p a r k and part, all nine shots, boys and beyonds。所以有什么无限的可能性呢？可以让我们一提到灵体的时候呢，它是这一种好像一种欢庆，一个一个佳节呢。但今今晚呢，呃。有些人可能以为这个是一个一个课程，其实今晚不是一个课程。其实我想要的就是呢，怎么样可以让我们和灵体一起呢，是欢乐的去度过这一个这个日子呢？所以啊、呃，在收看的每一位，或者在之后你们才收看的，这样吧，有多少的灵体是想今晚跟你一起参与这一个万圣节，要跟你一起度过这个欢乐的？这个半小时的 ，OK， 让这些灵体呢围过来，围过来，围过来，围过来，靠近你，靠近你，靠近你，更多，更多，更多，更多，更多，更多 ，OK。像你就会觉得，好像整个空间好像多了好多的一些东西，就像我现在的房间里面呢，我突然间觉得拥挤了好多。呃，你看，其实它并不是一个可怕的事情。再更多，再更多，再更多 ，OK， 来吧，想玩的都来，想玩的都来，都来，都来，都来，都来。<咳> OK， 然后呢？你还是过得很好的。你看，其实一点问题都没有。有一个人说开心，啊，对的，这个其实可以是一个很好玩的东西。然后呢，现在我们呃做相反的，所有这些灵体，呃，非常感谢你们来陪我们一起玩。现在呢，你们可以先离开，离开，离开，离开，离开。OK， 全部离开，离开，离开，离开，离开，离开，给我们一点空间，给我们一点空间。有一个人说退开点，别影响我吃饭。<笑>他是不会来跟你抢吃的，你你放心吧，他不会跟你抢吃。呃，你要吃呢，你必须有身体，你没有身体的时候你是不能吃的。所以趁你还有身体的时候呢，好好的吃吧。<笑> OK， 离开离开。有没有发现到，忽然间这个空间变大了？嗯
，突然间好像没有那么拥挤，没有那么沉闷的一种感觉了。所以你看，如果你只是说来来来来来来来，他们就来了，然后你说离开离开离开离开离开，他们就离开了。啊，这是为什么呢？是因为灵体非常的可怕呢？呃，灵体比你更有力量呢？还是其实你是非常的有力量的，但是你一直以来都不承认的。你看，你叫他来他就来，你叫他走他就走，你其实是非常有力量的。但是我们一直呢都不相信我们的力量，我们都相信呢是灵体比我们有力量。哦，一个人说 “You are so cute, thank you。<笑>” OK， 所以呢，现在呃，把所有这些。对我们不是贡献这些灵体，这些不是来参与一起玩的灵体呢，叫他们先离开离开，或者有些时候我会开玩笑说滚。OK， 在我我在中国教雨林对话的时候呢，有些时候我就说灵体们滚，然后全班的学员就吓到了，哦、你怎么可以这样子？好像好像是一个非常不应该的一件事情，因为大家的想法就是你这样子会不会得罪了灵体？你这样子叫他滚，等下他会不会生气？你看，如果你还是认为灵体是。呃，它是一个比你更强大的东西，能够害你的样东西的话呢，当然你就会怕。但是你看，如果你你不把它当成是一个不同的东西的话呢，你要怎么样都行。所以你在灵体这一方面呢，能不能够让你自己允许你接下来的这个可能二十分钟呢，是为所欲为的？你要怎么样都行啊！你要说滚 ，OK 都行。所以灵体们，嗨，这些。啊，不打算和我们一起玩的，也不是贡献的灵体们呢，先离开。我们介绍有好玩的东西，然后呢 ，OK， 想参与的灵体们，围过来吧，围过来吧，围过来吧。OK， 你们都做到了，就是在线上的，在 Facebook 或者是在 Zoom， 在中国的学员，你们都做到了。OK， 让更多的灵体围过来。哦，还有台湾的学员。OK， 阿、哎、姨，我看到一些，啊。然后呢，我有一样东西想让你去尝试一下的，就是刚才你已经可以让很多的灵体围绕着你靠靠近你，你觉得啊无所谓了。那现在呢，同时间让好多的灵体呢来抢你的专注力。所以现在跟你周边这些灵体们呢，这些来贡献来一起玩这些灵体呢，就说哎灵体人、灵体们、灵体们，现在呢给你们一个好玩的东西，我要你们抢我的专注力。OK， 要求他们想尽各种各样的办法呢，让你去注意到他，所以可可能他们之间会有一些的呃，也不能说是竞争吧，也可以说是竞争。OK， 有一个人说头开始痛，嗯、啊，这个时候你要跟灵体说，灵体，灵体，灵体，不是这个方式，不是这个方式，啊哈，有没有一些比较好玩、容易的方式？嗨，有些人说 hello， 灵体用一些好玩的方式来引起我的注意。然后呢，我不知道你那边的感受是怎么样的。我现在呢，我觉得背后有一些人好像、呃、要把我拉了过去，有好多不同的感觉。就是如果现在你看我保，我尽量保持我自己不动的话呢，可能我眼神看一个方向的话呢，然后我说灵体们，呃，抢我的专注力吧，快点。呃，然后我我是发现到我很难呢去专注一个点的，我就是觉得我好像要看别的方向。OK， 然后有一个人说想吐。OK， 你们对灵体有多少的这些观点，让你是不能和灵体一起玩乐的？灵体的出现总是要给你带来一些麻烦、一些问题、一些不舒服、一些不舒适的感觉的。嗯，所有这一切，从你比天晓得的更多。被你是否愿意摧毁，永远不再创造 ？Right, wrong, good and bad, pop and pot, all nine shots, boys and beyonds <咳>。有一个人说说什么了？呃，左右，左右。呃，所以我猜可能你的意思是觉得好像左边有东西吸引你，右边有东西吸引你，左边、右边、左边、右边 ，OK， 把这一切再放大 ，OK， 不止左右左右，前后前后 ，OK， 上面下面上面下面，让这些灵体呢，从每一个不同的方向呢，让他们尽他们所能来引起你的关注，引起你的注意力。有没有发现到现在这一刻呢？你是？觉得头脑里好像有好多不同的东西，好多的想法，好多的，总之就是让你不能专注。所以这个其实呢，今天当然这个是我特地这么做的，呃，我推这么做呢
。其实，当然，我非常的确定呢，这个东西对你是没有任何的伤害的，百分百没有。除非你先有这些观点，认为灵体会害你，你的观点创造你的实相。那当然呢，现在我们还可以玩什么东西呢？呃，在玩之前，我先想说，就是我们平常的日子呢，有些时候也会经历这种现象，就是觉得好像有你很难专注。所以很多人这个时候就会评判自己，就会觉得我是不是精神有问题？呃，我是不是有这个什么注意力呃，这个缺陷等等？为什么我不能专注？有，现在给你一个问题，有没有可能呢？其实就是你觉察到了好多好多的灵体，有没有可能呢？就是，呃，有好多好多灵体呢，想要呃得到你的关注呢？当然，灵体他会想要得到你的关注呢，他会有他自己的一些用意，有可能。呃，他好玩，他纯粹是想让你知道，哎，我就在这边。也有可能是，呃，他有话想告诉你，也有可能是他想贡献一些东西给你。所以今天在这一个万圣节呢，呃，一是这这回事呢，一是还有灵体的事件呢，可以为你带来些什么贡献呢？我在去年的时候呢，哦，有一个一个外国人说你好，嗨，跑啦。你好，<笑>我非常有趣的，我发现到有一些好多的外国人都在收看我这一个中文的这个直播，然后我猜他们应该也是，嗯，听不懂的，但是，哎，你好，就大家一起来玩 ，Hello， even you don't speak Mandarin， Hi， 啊，所以平常我们都有这种的经历。我上一次在好多个月前的时候呢，我一次我开了一个这个这个语林对话的一个公益课，是关于金钱的，然后当时有些学员呢上。就是听一个简单的一个小时公益课之后呢，他就有好多的这些，就有一些额外的一些收入出现了。所以灵体其实它是可以对我们成为是贡献的，它可以呢，呃，以一些很神奇的方式呢，就是把一些你想要的东西把它变出来呈现给你。所以刚才我们玩的第一样东西就是让它抢你的注意力。现在呢，我们玩第二样东西吧。呃，灵体们，灵体们，灵体们，这些灵体。对身体比较有滋养的这些灵体呢，靠过来，围过来；其他的这些，靠一边，靠边站吧。OK， 你们靠边站。对身体比较滋养的那些，呃，对身体有特别能力的，或者可能他喜欢你身体的这些灵体，靠过来。OK， 大大家都做到了。然后呢，现在呢，玩些刺激一点的，要求这些灵体们呢。给你一个按摩啊<笑> ！OK， 放松下来，放松，放松，放松。啊哈，放松。啊、呃，有一位学员，你问我，请问你开 online class communication with entities？ 呃，我目前没有开，我过后可能会有开。你你我有开的时候，你应该会找到我的。<笑> OK， 现在呢，记得放松。所以刚才我一说灵体碰你，灵体跟你按摩的时候呢，那些浮现出来的所有的这些恐惧、害怕，觉得这个是错误的，这个是不应该的，呃，所有这一切，不管你从哪里买入这些谎言、这些屁话、这些各种观点的，让灵体不能跟你一起玩的，你是否愿意摧毁永远不再创造 ？Right, wrong, good and bad, pop and pot, all nine shots, boys and beyonds。呃，有一位学员在 Facebook 上他说在腿部按摩，啊哈，要不要玩刺激一点，往大腿内侧按摩？嗯<笑> ，OK， 当然你不敢的，你就别这么玩。<笑>这一群是我认识的，所以我知道，呃，他没有这个问题。OK， 呃，让我我本身呢，我觉得好像就是被肩膀呢有一些的啊、哦，一种感觉在在在按摩。然后有一个人说啊、呃，在中上面说在胃部按摩，啊、呃。他跟你按摩呢？其实你看，我们的观点是觉得按摩都是外在的，有没有可能他可以跟你从内到外的按摩呢？<笑>按摩你的内脏、你的肠胃，<笑>有没有这个可能呢？记得放松下来，放松。你越放松呢，你的这一个屏障越少，你对这个这些灵体世界的贡献的接收就更轻松，所以。当然，这一刻可能是你第一次接触，然后我就给你一个这么好玩、这么刺激的一个挑战，呃，但是今天是万圣节，我们都是为了好玩，所以，当你一发现到你，你开始发现到你的身体开始紧绷的时候呢，觉得好像，觉得好像不太对劲的时候呢，就是你已经有一些观点，你在这一刻呢
尽可能减少了接受，所以把所有的这些你的屏障这些围墙呢降下来，再降下来，就算你觉得已经没有了，你觉得我已经很没有屏障了，其实还有再降下来啊。当我一说再降下来的时候呢，有没有发现到其实还可以再降下来的，还可以再减少的？这就是我们有好多的屏障是我们都不知道的。你的这些屏障呢，就是让这些灵体呢，平常它不能跟你一起玩，不能贡献给你，不能跟你按摩 ，OK， 不能给你按摩，不能给你由内到外的按摩 ，OK。现在呢，啊、呃，有没有发现到，我说降下降下几次之后呢，你整个人都开始比较放松下来了 ，OK。所以，呃，灵体围绕着你，你也玩了。按摩你也试了，你还想要玩些什么呢？<笑>啊，有谁有些什么不同的一些想玩的东西吗？你可以给一些意见。你有一些点子的话，可能我就跟你，我就带领你这个过程。哦、啊，一个人说按摩内脏还有点兴奋呢，因为这个东西是很好玩的，平常不可能有人可以跟你按摩内脏的，除了灵体，没有其他的这个可能性。如果有的话，欢迎你告诉我。啊、uh, ，OK， 有一个人说开关灯啊，灵、哦、体也绝对有这个能力的。呃，灵体呢，他你要他实际上碰一些东西呢，碰一些实体的东西是是比较难的。然后如果他碰你呢，其实他也不是真正的碰得到你，但是他是给你一种感觉呢，好像就是如果可能，他是一种感觉，他不是一个实际上的一个碰。但是如果你要灵体呢，去。干扰这一些啊电子的东西，比如说开你的电视机、关你电视机、跟你传播到、开你的空调等等，它是比较容易做到的。所以你看，我们一般上很多这些所谓的鬼故事呢，通常是怎么样？就是啊、呃，可能你在看戏看到一半，你在追剧的时候，突然间不，你的电视节目没了，或者他要你的专注力的时候呢，你的灯突然间闪一闪，闪一闪。OK， 我不确定现在你周边有没有灵体呢，是能够做到这一点的。呃，但是首先我们要要做一样东西，就是呢，要求这些灵体玩归玩，你不要干扰我们的网络，不要干扰我的 Facebook， 不要干扰我的 Zoom。<笑> OK， 好，在灵体这一方面呢，呃，不是在这些灵体呢，对于这些电子产品有能力，呃，玩一玩，陪你玩一玩这些灵体呢 ，OK， 要求他们留下，其他的那些离开。哦、oh, ，有一个人说 Hi from Australia. Hi, thanks for watching, and I hope you understand what I'm talking about. <笑> or be transliterate. OK. 然后呢 ？OK， 现在留下的一些灵体是可能对这电子产品是比较好玩的一些。现在呢，呃，让他们尽他们所能呢，呃，干扰你的这些电子产品吧。可能你的灯。你的你的电视，我不晓得会不会你的你的灯可能突然间闪烁闪烁。<笑> OK， 允许允许允许，所有你对这一方面的怀疑，呃，你让他们无法跟你以这种方式来玩的呢？你是否愿意摧毁永远不再创造 ？Right, wrong, good and bad, part and part, all nine shots, boys and girls。所有你们还是带着恐惧的，还是觉得好像不太对劲的？呃，放心吧，这因为就也就只是这个半小时之后，你你可以不需要理这一切。<笑> OK， 呃，有没有灵体可以玩你的你的这些电子产品的？我目前这现在这一刻我感觉不到，可能我这里没有。呃，如果你们那边有的话，你们可以让我知道。我还记得前几天的时候呢，有一天我在餐厅的时候呢。啊、呃！突然间有一个灵体，他他想要跟我沟通呢，而且这个灵体能力非常的强，他就让整个餐厅的那个灯就闪了闪了一下，然后他一闪的时候知道啊、哦，原来是你。然后我跟他说：“你再弄多几下。”然后那个灯又闪闪闪，然后跟他说：“停。”然后他就停了。OK， 你想想，如果有这种能力的话，是会不会是很好玩的一样东西呢？哎、呃，所以你们有谁有这一个、这一个这些这种现象吗？感觉上好像这一个、这一个、这一次这个游戏，没有、没有，好像没有人做到，或者是有可能你没有发现到呢。OK， 这个因为对他们来说其实也是一个挑战，他未必能够做得到的。没有的话不要紧，因为我们玩别的东西吧。
那现在呢，有多少的灵体呢？呃，呃我们玩一玩金钱吧。OK， 我相信大家最喜欢的是这一点。OK， 这么多灵体里面呢，这些这么多的灵体里面，呃，最有在金钱方面最有能力的这一个留下，其他的靠边站。OK， 闪远点。然后呢，我们简单快速。呃，可能又粗暴的方式呢，让灵体跟你简单的沟通一下。所以这一个在灵在金钱方面非常有能力的这个灵体呢，啊、呃，如果他可以给你一个金钱的觉察，或者可能他可以给你一个不同的一个观点，那会是什么呢？啊哈，降下你的所有的屏障，看看有没有一些念头突然间蹦出来。有没有一些想法跳出来？可能他给你的就是很简单的一句话。他说：“妈的，其实钱很容易赚的，干嘛你要把它搞得那么复杂、那么困难呢<笑> ？”OK， 有有没有？所以有一些突然间一些新的想法跳出来的，你可以分享，就是你可以打出来，就是那些灵体让你突然间明白了些什么东西。我记得之前做这个有一次，我做这类似这样的一个练习的时候呢，然后。那些灵体其实就会让你知道，其实这个东西是你把它搞得太复杂了。我是指金钱这一方面，所以你看，金钱这个东西是非常有趣的。我们对灵体好多的评判，我们对金钱也有很多的评判的时候呢，那他在金钱方面就很难可以去贡献你一些不同的东西。所以今天你能不能够，就是接下来这十分钟吧，我还有不止不到十分钟了，我还有大概啊七分钟、六分钟左右。呃，把你所有这些，你对金钱的这些不肯接收呢，先抛一边。OK， 如果你还是很讨厌接收金钱，你在这个节目结束之后呢，你再把你的问题重新带回来，那个是你的选择。那现在呢，把你的这些屏障放降下，把你的这些不肯接收先丢一边，然后让那些灵体，让不是那些刚才那一个最有能力在金钱方面最有能力的这一个呢，陪你玩一玩。啊哈，他可以教会你些什么东西呢？呃、uh, ，而且当你第一次，其实你平常都有跟灵体在接触、在沟通，但是现在这一个呢，可以说是一个比较正式的。你第一次，如果你没有上过语音对话的话，这个可能是你的第一次跟他直接接触呢，你会觉得头脑里好像有一些想法，但是你很难去明白他，很难去抓摸到底他要表达的是什么，他就只是好像头脑里有一些东西。所以这个其实就是灵体在跟我们沟通的一种方式，它其实呢是非常的快的，因为它是能量，啊、呃，你懂与灵对话的时候呢，其实你的能量的觉察会提升，因为你可以从能量去明白它是什么，这个是非常好玩的一回事。呃，你们有没有谁有一些东西可以分享的呢？呃，看看，就是哦，一个人提问就是呃。能不能把我昨天买的彩票号码在今天全部被开出来？你以为灵体有那么厉害吗？这个是华人好多这种这种观点，就是我们看这些呃电影的时候呢，或者我们民间这些这些故事、这些传说呢，都是呃可能有些人去求神拜佛拜某个灵体，然后呢希望可以发财，这其实是一个非常。有趣的一个一个做法，你先相信了灵体可以，但是你不觉得你自己可以，你觉得灵体在这方面比你更有能力，其实它不一定能的，啊、呃，你要知你要知道，就是就算他有这个能力，不代表他要帮你。今天你有能力可以帮很多人，但是不代表你要帮那些人，所以你有没有能力是一回事，你肯不肯是一回事。那现在呢？有一些灵体可能他有能力，但是他不肯帮你。那有一些他想帮你，但其实他做不到。你要知道，就是灵体这方面，你让他帮贡献给你的时候呢，你不能有这个期待的说哦 ，OK， 你去把彩票的这个结果改一改，他还没有那么那么厉害呢。<咳>呃，然后一个人说最近家里水龙头坏两次，什么情况？呃，问你自己。就是我们很多时候会觉得，就是有什么东西有问题呢，都觉得是灵体，呃，不一定跟灵体有关系的。就算你家里确实有灵体，也不代表它跟灵体有关系。就是你知道吗？就是
我们很多时候推给灵体，那个灵体可能他是路过的，然后他觉得我我确实有存在，但是你现在不能说你家水头水龙头坏了是我的问题，所以他是冤枉了。现在我要帮灵体伸冤，在这个万圣节我要跟灵体伸冤了，要告要起诉你平时诬赖他呵呵，把所有的罪名都推了给他了。你要知道，灵体它像我刚刚说的，它对于这些电子东西是比较容易干扰，对这些实体的东西它是比较难做到的。啊，然后还有一个人说什么呢？就是能问到自己是哪个灵体转的吗？如果提问后是轻的，其实是可以的，但是呢，大多数人是做不到的，因为你有太多的观点。如果你已经相信你的前世是谁，你相信某个。呃，很伟大的人在前世，一个是一个可能名人，一个很伟大的一个人，你非常的希望你的前世是那个人的话呢，你这里已经有些期待，已经有些先入为主的一些观点，你的这个提问呢，绝对是不正确、不准确的。我告诉你，我还曾经有人来找我做个案的时候呢，他跟我说他是秦始皇转世。当我遇到这种情况的时候呢，我不知道我是应该要笑呢，还是我要忍着，然后人家是付费找你做个案的，然后你要，你要，你还要演的啊、哦、，OK， 秦始皇。<笑>所以呢，大家会有好多不同的观点。呃 ，Gary 就是 S S 的创办人，他还有说过，他有好几个个案呢，就是他这么多年累积下来的，有好几个人找他做个案呢。这些人都讲他的前世是某个人，是同一个人。请问那一个人怎么样可以分身分成五个人呢？<笑>是不能的。所以我们在这一方面有太多这些我们期待的这些结果。你希望你前世是谁？我这里呢？我剩最后一分钟，我很简单的要表达最后一样东西，就是呢，不管你前世是谁，那这个都不重要，你要看你今生是谁。就算你前世是皇帝也好，你前世是百万富翁、千万富翁都好，看你这一世是谁，你前世有多少钱，跟你这一世其实是没有关系的。嗯<咳>、呃，至于你怎么样把那些钱变过来，那那个是另外一回事，那个是一个很大的一个主题。但是呢，很多人。把过去看得太重要了，觉得哦，我过去是谁谁谁，不重要。这一刻，这一世，你选择是谁，所以你是如何的把你的过去和你的前世，或你前世是谁，看得如此真实重要有价值，让你不能好好的在这一世创造你想要创造的各种各种的可能性。各各种的财富等等，所有这一切，从你比天晓得的更多倍。你是否愿意摧毁永远不再创造 ？Right, wrong, good and bad, pop and pot, all nine shots, boys and beyonds。你跟说 Hi from Medan. Hi. Uh, in one hour, no, in about another thirty minutes, I will be doing another one in English. 啊、uh, ，我只是跟他们说呢，在多半小时呢，我会再开一次这一个节目呢，但是只是在 Facebook。这一个是英文的，所以我做两场，中文和英文。我的时间段结束了，所以呢，就就讲到这里，谢谢大家，希望你们玩的开心。OK， 所有的这些刚才跟你们玩的灵体呢，散会，散会，欢乐时光过得总是特别快，拜拜。I'm actually live because I've been having some technical difficulties. I'm live. Somebody joined. Welcome everybody. What an exciting, like, incredible stretch of talk to the entities. Facebook Lives has this been? I think we just came out of Latin Latin hour or two, which that was really fun.、Um, hi everybody. I'm Shannon, and what an honor and a privilege to be here with all of you. I want to personally thank. All of the Talk to the Entities facilitators who came on and did this, I am so blown away and touched and grateful and excited that this is something that gets to live in the world.、Um, you never think when you're like a 19-year-old weirdo that hundreds and thousands of people out in the world are going to be inspired by. Thanks, babe. Are going to be inspired by. The weird shit that you're capable of. So I'm really grateful to be here with all of you, and welcome to talk to the entities Halloween style and Halloween talk to the entities style.、Um, I always do a Facebook Live at Halloween because really this is the talk to the entities holiday, and、um, 
had a crazy idea, you know, sitting at lunch in uh, Bucharest, Romania one day, actually doing Toxie Entities beginning class there a few months ago. And I was sitting there with a couple of people and got a crazy idea to do 24 hours of Talk to the Entities Facebook Lives. And I'm so glad that we made it happen. And I really, really, really want to thank my staff for supporting this, for the beautiful women who work with me, who got this off the ground and have been there every step of the way making this happen. Thank you guys so much. Um, so how does it get better than this? Um, I have little to no idea what anybody other facilitators have been talking about. Um, and I know that I've, I've tuned in for a few minutes here and there throughout the day. Um, and we're gonna be going for another, how many more hours is it till midnight? If it's six right now? Six. Six more hours, we have six more hours. <laughs> here we have one of the Talk to the Entity shirts going on behind me. Um, I should have put one on for you guys, sorry. I was a little bit behind schedule, so, and I had some technical, <laughs> There's an <laughs> and now for my portion of Facebook Live, Max is going to do a Talk to the Entities t-shirt song and dance. Um, so cool. So what do you guys want to create? So I love to create with everyone who's here. And so what I would really love is to create a world where we didn't have the separation and division between us and beings who don't show up like normal people. So something that I started getting years into facilitating talk to the entities was how many beings exist in our world and how much we basically function as a society with a huge amount of prejudice against. And I had so much freedom from engaging with entities, clearing, communicating, and receiving that I really wanted others to get the kind of freedom that was possible there too. And really, I see that I have succeeded based on what has gone on here today in this Facebook group. Um, hearing what the talk, other Talk to the Entities facilitators have to say, the clarity that they have, the awareness that they're willing to speak, and each and every one of you who's shown up on this Facebook group for this topic. Um, we had a increase of over 2,000 people into the Facebook group for this, and that's, to me, a good sign that the world is hungry for something different, and that's where you come into place. It's like, if you're here tonight, what do you know? I'm sorry, excuse me, this evening, it's this evening in San Francisco, California. I know it's not tonight for a lot of you guys out there in the world. So if you're here now, what is it you know that you've been pretending not to know or denying that you know um, and using all sorts of reasons and justifications to not know? So all the reasons and justifications you've been using to not know, will you destroy and uncreate them, please? Whatever that looks like, whatever that takes. Thank you. Right, wrong, good, battle, nine, pod, puck, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Is being aware considered cool and awesome, or is it considered wrong and weird? And how different, if you were willing to acknowledge what you know, how different would that make you from your friends, your family, and all the other people walking around? So how different are you that you never acknowledge? And what if being aware of entities was only a small part of the universe of awareness that's available for all of us? So what treasure and gift of awareness have you refused to acknowledge exists for you and everything you're doing to refuse, to reject, and to refute the gift that awareness wants to be for you. Will you destroy and create all this, please? 
right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, puck, shorts, boys and beyonds. So far too long have people used fear as a reason and justification against awareness and definitely against entities. Um, we were just staying in, sorry, let me get to that story in a minute. So everybody else's fear that you bought in regards to entities that isn't your problem, that was somebody else's problem, do you really want to make that your problem? So everywhere you're making somebody else's fear, resistance, and inability to the spirit world your reality when it isn't your reality. When you destroy and uncreate that, right and wrong, good, bad, all nine, pud, puck, shorts, boys and beyonds, And if you no longer had barriers to hearing the voices of those that don't have bodies like ours, to seeing those who don't have bodies like ours, and to knowing those who don't have bodies like ours. How did I start that sentence? I got lost. What would a world be like where we included all beings? And that's really what I'm aiming for now with Talk to the Entities. In the beginning, it was, in the beginning, Talk to the Entities was like my own personal survival mechanism. It was, I was either, so I'll tell my story super briefly if any of you guys don't know it. Um, if you've read my book, Talk to the Entities, you know it well. If you haven't read my book, Talk to the Entities, and you're interested in this area, I strongly suggest you check it out. Maybe someone could um, do me a favor and put a link to the Talk to the Entities book in the chat. It's in, I think, seven languages, including English, and it will be in Portuguese next year. Um, I was one of those kids that heard voices, saw stuff moving all over the place, um, <laughs> you know, and I was really lucky that I grew up in a household with Gary Douglas, who is the founder and creator of Access Consciousness. You guys probably know Gary if you're here. If you don't know Gary and you don't know Access even, I'm really happy that you got here. Um, and I, you know, we don't live in a world that supports and educates people who have entity sensitivity and entity ability. In fact, what goes on mostly in the world is we medicate and institutionalize people who hear voices, which is a huge invalidation of spirit ability. So everywhere that you've invalidated spirit ability, everywhere that you've allowed anybody else to invalidate your spirit ability, and everywhere that you don't actually want your spirit abilities, will you guys destroy it, uncreate it all, please? Right, wrong, good, battle, nine, pod, puck, shorts, boys, beyonds. And I feel like a huge amount of what I did with Talk to the Entities in the very beginning was, it was like, I was either going to die, because that's what happens a lot with people who have a lot of awareness in this reality is they aren't supported to know what they know. In fact, oftentimes we're told that we're wrong and we live in a world that does not empower knowing. In fact, we live in a world that's mostly interested in hiding, secreting, and pretending that we don't know. I don't fucking know why because no one's having a good time. So, so I sort of got to this point in my early 20s when I was using access that I came to a threshold where I either had to acknowledge that I was talking to entities. And that's this really interesting logistical phenomenon. Like people know they're talking to entities and know they're aware of entities, but like they don't believe that they're aware of entities. It's this weird um, conflict that people function from. It's like, what do you know that you don't believe in? And what do you believe? You know, it's like, so what is it that you know that can now supersede all of the doubt that you've bought from this reality? So all the doubt you're using to limit, to separate from knowing. Will you destroy and uncreate it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shorts, boys and beyonds. And so I... You know, as a kid, I heard a lot of voices and saw a lot of stuff, and it didn't wasn't anything for me. I thought that's just what reality was. And then as a teenager, I 
knew somewhere that it was wrong, that it wasn't normal. And I did my best to turn off that, that awareness in my world. And please be aware that you cannot actually make awareness go away. You can only go, thank you, Anna Jordan, for putting that link there for the Talk to the Entities book. You cannot make awareness go away. You can only go unconscious to it. And the way in which you go unconscious to awareness or um, not have to be aware of what you're aware of is by limiting and eliminating huge parts of your being. And so as a teenager, I was a mess. I was trying to fit in. I wanted to be normal without even really thinking cognitizing that I wanted to be normal, but I knew I wasn't like my friends and people were not talking about the stuff that was going on in my universe. And I used a lot of drugs. And by the time I was in my late teens, I was suicidal and I really wanted to kill myself. And Gary, my stepdad, finally kind of tricked me into doing access. And I hadn't wanted to use access before then because I didn't want to do like the weird stuff my dad does doing. But I finally started getting my bars run and he would, I would call him up like in tears, like a mess. And he would, after 20 minutes of talking to me, but what he was actually doing was the beginning of the access verbal processing. And he would run processes on me like I'm running processes on you guys today. And by the time the conversation was over, you know, I couldn't even remember what I was upset about when I first called him. And so after enough of that, I started realizing like I was getting happier and I wasn't as depressed and I didn't want to kill myself as much. And I started choosing and seeking out more access. And bit by bit, it became clear to me that I desired what access had to offer. And so I decided to drop out of arts. I was going to art school at the time and I dropped out of art school and I was really choosing access, even though I had no idea what that meant. I was so young. And so I was 21 or something like that. And I was home in um, my apartment at the time in Southern California. And so many entities filled my house that I literally couldn't see the other side of the room. And it was a tiny, it was a small apartment, but I literally couldn't see the other side of the room. And I knew it was ghosts and I freaked out. And I called my dad and I was like, oh, my house is full of entities. And he's like, that's great. And I was like, no, it is not great. This is weird. I don't want to be a freak. So everywhere you guys have shut off the gift of awareness to separate, no, let me do this instead. Everywhere you've shut off the gift of awareness, pushed away the gift of awareness, judged the gift of awareness as a way of maintaining normal, average, real, and the same as everybody else, will you destroy and uncreate it all, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, pock, shorts, boys, neons. And so I forced that the ghosts away, the entities away, and I shut, I slammed the door shut. And what happens for so many of us is when we perceive an entity or a room full of entities and we have that like shock reaction and we like force a barrier up and like slam the door on the awareness, you actually limit what you can receive. And it's so lethal to a being to have barriers but we live in, but having barriers is like what's considered normal. But are barriers normal? Or are barriers actually a sign of a sickness? And so I th threw up massive barriers to what I was aware of and didn't think about it again. And I was, and I was out at my parents' house three months later and in that three months between when all my house filled up with ghosts to the point where I couldn't see the other side of the room and I was at dinner at my parents' house, my life got horrible, like really hard. And I was like bored all the time and I was really sad and my body didn't feel good and I felt really lost. And I'm complaining to my dad, my life, blah, blah, blah. And he said, well, what did you refuse to do? And in that moment, I saw and I got that I had refused to talk to the entities and I saw how detrimental that was to me and how talking to the entities was a gift and an ability, not a curse. And I had thought it was a curse. So everywhere that you have bought that talking to entities is a curse and is evil or creepy or judgeable in some way, will you revoke, recant, rescind, renounce, denounce, destroy, and create? Who, 
everywhere you bought that, everywhere you made that real and true, and everywhere you sold that as real and true. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pud puck shorts, boys and beyonds. And so in that moment, standing in my parents' kitchen in Southern California, I think I was 20 or 21, I don't even remember, I said yes to talk to entities. And I had no idea what it was going to be like. I just knew I had to find out. And so I opened the door. And it took about seven years of grappling with seas of awareness to develop what we have today, which is the Talk to the Entities curriculum. And what is in the Talk to the Entities beginning class is the absolute 100% how-to guide to deal with all entities in every single way they show up. And it's a phenomenal class. And the thing that's such a trip about it is like literally the manual's this thick. And it's like literally every single tool, process, awareness you need to handle every single ghost that is in the world. And that's because the spirit world isn't this big, mysterious, weird, difficult phenomenon. It's actually quite manageable because it falls into the natural awareness arts. And if you're good at life, you're like good at dealing with entities. If you're not really, if you're like really like horrible communing with pe communicating with people and you don't want to deal with stuff, you're probably going to be like that with ghosts too. But the thing is, what do you want people to think about you when you don't have a body anymore? And so I really look at like all the propaganda that people function from and buy about the spirit world, propaganda from religion, propaganda from movies, propaganda from their parents, from their families. That's simply propaganda. It's actually not real and true because when you actually start saying hello to the spirit world, you basically find a bunch of <laughs> lost people and people who died on drugs and great beings of light and demons and nature spirits and people who want to care for you and gift to you and contribute. It's like so much. So everything that doesn't allow you to have that much whether your mom wants you to or not. Will you destroy it and create all this, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shorts, boys, and There's a question. When you don't have a body, can't you just choose to go somewhere else? Yeah, <clears throat> of course you can. But you have to look at, it's like, how good, at people are choose how good are people at choosing in life? However intelligent or kind or mean or smart somebody is in life is pretty much what they're going to be like without a body too because you don't die. Fact. In fact, you've had trillions of lifetimes. So everywhere you're pretending that you're the entity called whatever your name is, <laughs> ah, we all destroy it and create it, please. Right, wrong, good, bad, all nine, pod, puck, shorts, boys, and beyonds. So there's so much to learn and there's so much to get. And there's like a lot to unlearn about what it's like. Basically, no one's ever been taught what's actually going on in the spirit world. And in, in fact, you're encouraged like never to look at it. So most people are just like inept from lack of engagement. It's sort of like, You've been told sex is bad all your life. So, but then like when you have sex, you're like, wait a second, that wasn't as bad as they told me it was going to be, you know, or maybe for some of you guys, you were told sex was bad all your life. And then you had that so much as your point of view that sex was bad for you, but you have to start to look at what your reality is. And that's really the first thing that Gary started teaching me was he's like, okay, so like, what are you aware of? And once I got over trying to be normal, I had access to this incredible spirit kingdom that has gifted me in ways that I never realized was possible and supports so many of us in ways that so many of us have been taught to resist. And I would love to have a world where all beings were included. 
and not judged. Um, so yeah, okay. So I'm just looking at some of the questions that you guys are writing in over here. Um, actually, I don't, I don't see any other questions besides that one about when people die, can't they just choose some, to do something else? Um, so let's do this. So all of the, actually, what do you guys want to do? If you want to ask some questions, no stupid questions. Oh, someone's like, I love you, Shannon. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, if you guys want to ask any questions, no stupid questions, I'm here for you guys. I get that this is an exciting topic, but really maybe sometimes a weird and confusing one. So I really would love to get where you guys want to go. We've got another half an hour. I gave myself a big fat one hour chunk amongst the sea of facilitators. So um, I'm really here for you guys. I wonder what you guys want to know um, and what will make your lives easier, please. Okay, here's a question. Do you assist them to make it to the other side? Um, well, there isn't really another side. That's the thing. Entities are all around. Like, we live in the same world as them. We just pretend like we don't. There isn't another side. That's the point I'm trying to make. Like, we just, we just use barriers to pretend like they're not, we're like there's not spirits all around. Um, there's more disembodied beings on the planet than there are embodied beings. So I'm just going to slightly rephrase your question. She says, do you assist them to make it to the other side? I'm a facilitator and I facilitate. So I'm not assisting, I'm facilitating, meaning the entity is going to make the choice. And if I'm facilitating you, I'm facilitating you to choose whatever you want to choose. And that's how the entity clearing questions work in Talk to the Entities and Access Consciousness, which, by the way, those clearing questions are ones that Gary developed who are you? Who were you before that? Who were you before that? Who were you all before that? Who will you all be in the future? What are you? What were you before that? What were you all before that? What were you all before that? What will you all be in the future? And what is your job? What was your job before that? Mm. What was your job before that? And what was will your job be in the future? Those are the three main basic fundamental entity clearing questions that we use that Gary developed and they are how you facilitate entities to choose because you're basically asking them who are you and they're like I'm Shannon O'Hara and then they're like and then you're like who were you before that and it gets them to look at their last lifetime oh and who are you before that oh and then they it gets them to look at they had another lifetime and who will you be in the future is the question that gets them to recognize that they have a choice and they don't have to be stuck in the identity and entity that they are currently stuck in. And that's what goes on a lot of the time. It's of this weird phenomenon where you, we like, we tend to think that like entities are like smarter than we are or more powerful or omnipotent or something. I'm not really sure where that rumor got started, but it's like so not true. I am, um, it's, there are so many people that are so unconscious that when they die they're st and they're still unconscious so there's a lot of beings walking around without bodies who don't even realize they don't have a body anymore and so there's that kind of an entity that's like unconscious and then there's also the beings who hang around because like they feel un com incomplete with something or they want to tell someone they love them before they go or they need to accomplish something before they go um all of which can be facilitated quite easily. So yeah, I mean, I facilitate them to make another choice. However, I will state this. I only deal with entities when it makes my life easier and when I'm getting paid for it. And I wanted to clarify this because many people think that once they start talking to entities or start being aware and open up the door, to entities that it's like a 24 seven overwhelming flood of information and constant work, which it can be in the initially because you're like out of shape, but it is not something it's like you always have a choice and the having a choice is different than resisting because resisting doesn't actually accomplish anything. It doesn't achieve anything except you being at the effect of and never really getting 
to deal with what needs to be dealt with. So my point is, I don't really care if entities are around as long as they're not bothering me or making my life more difficult. For example, my husband and I were just staying in Big Sur, California, which sort of has like a history of like being like a really like alternative place and like a lot of like hippies were living there in like the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, like like crazy people just like living up in the mountains and cabins. And we and artists and stuff. And we stayed in this like really like bohemian, sort of like interesting, hand built like mountain cabin. And at first when I got there, I was like, this is so cool. Like it's so beautiful and and nature all around and the redwoods and um but we were both like, this is cool, but something feels weird here. And we stayed there for, I think we were even there for four nights. And by the fourth night, I was like, I can't wait to get the fuck out of here. And I did not like it there anywhere. But I couldn't really place what was going on. And I asked a ton of questions. And I, like, did ran a lot of processes. And nothing really changed it. Anyways, we left today. And about, I don't know, somewhere in the car ride, over a three-hour period, it, like, clicked that the man who had built the cabin who I, the woman who showed us around the cabin when we got there had made reference to um, Mary's deceased husband. And Mary was the one who was renting out the cabin. So Mary's deceased husband, she just made a quick reference to him and we went on to the next thing. But I realized that he was still hanging around the cabin and he had been a drug addict. And as soon as I realized that, it was like all my charge came off the cabin. It was like I no longer was stuck in how weird it felt there. I knew what was going on. And you would think since I'm like an entity master and I've been facilitating entities for so long and empowered so many people to do so that like I would get it like instantaneously. And for whatever reason, like I couldn't get that actually until after the fact. But at least I got it. And so... If I had realized that when I was staying there, I would have cleared the drug and al drugs and alcohol from him because that's what you have to do with people who die on drugs or alcohol. You have to you have to destroy and uncreate all the drugs and alcohol, right, wrong, good, bad, all nine, pod, puck, shorts, boys, mans, because you can't actually deal with an entity who's like on drugs still. Like really, literally, you'll feel like there's no communication. And I think that's a lot of reason why I didn't actually get what was going on because he was so unconscious that he wasn't really talking to me like a normal entity. Like, when a normal entity says hello to me, I, like, get it. But when a drug entity is there, it can be a lot less clear. So if I had realized this when I was there, I would have used the tools that we have in the Talk to the Entities beginning for clearing drug and alcohol entities. And then I would have, like, basically gotten him to go and cleared him. Um, and that would have made my life a lot easier. And then... So I only deal with entities when it makes my life easier and when I'm getting paid for it. It's not something that I see as my responsibility because I have um, billions of entities who want to come to me all the time just because I can hear them. And I'm like, you know what? Like, if you're not going to pay me and if you're not going to listen to me, I'm not going to talk to you. So I have a choice and I'm very good at organizing the entities and I am also very good at being the boss of the entities because sometimes entities can be very rude and um, like people. <laughs> so I just wanted to state that for some reason. I guess somebody needed to know that. Um, okay. I see some questions about some stuff that I'm not going to get to. I'm just continuing reading through you guys' questions. Can I talk about the spirits of nature? I would love to. Every orchid has its own insect that pollinates it. So, um, like, literally, fact. <laughs> Every single orchid, and I think there's, like, thousands of species of orchids, and it has its own individual unique insect that pollinates it. And the insect looks like exactly like the orchid. It's like fascinating. You should go Google it if you guys are interested. Um, and every natural species, tree, shrubbery, flower, mountain, river, ocean, etc., is stewarded by natural spirits, beings that live 
and work with the energies of the earth. And our ancestors have known them through many different names, depending on the culture that we come from. And we are now currently living in an earth devastation time on our planet. And so we live disconnected from earth. Therefore, we not know the spirits of the earth. However, our back and back ancestors had to live in close connection with earth and knew the spirits of the earth because they couldn't shut the door. They couldn't turn on the air conditioner. They couldn't turn on the heater. Their life depended on being aware. And so, sorry guys, the phone in my hotel room is ringing for some reason. And so as the trees are cut down and as the energy of the earth is disrupted and nature is ruined, the spirits of the earth go into extinction, just like the animals of the earth are going into extinction. And I'm sorry about the sad story. What energy can you contribute with your body to the earth? And what beings in the trees and the water can you receive? When you receive, when you acknowledge an entity, excuse me, acknowledgement is the, like receiving light. It's like the, uh, it's like a step on the path to receiving. Receiving is the superpower. Acknowledgement is the exercise you do to build up your receiving superpower muscles. So every time you invalidate yourself when you're aware, for example, like when you're, when you're talking to your friend and their face keeps on changing and you think you're crazy, that's an invalidation of what you're aware of because they might have a bunch of different entities talking through them. Or when you see like a figure in the door or when you hear voices or when you dream of a relative who's deceased, that's, you're not making that up. That's actually happening. <laughs> so when you invalidate it, it actually diminishes and weakens your muscles for perceiving, knowing, being, and receiving. Every time you acknowledge, ah, oh, yes, I'm aware. Like, for example, the story I just told about that cabin in Big Sur and the drug addict guy who built it who was still hanging around, very unconscious. Um, I acknowledge that. And in that acknowledgement, my strength for awareness increases. Now someone's at the door. I think someone's coming to pick up my husband's shoes. Um, so when you acknowledge a being, like imagine if you like everyone was ignoring you all the time and you were like trying to gift to them. In fact, how many gifts have you been trying to give that have been rejected? How do you like it when you're rejected? And so with the nature spirits, since everybody pretends like they don't exist anymore, they sort of like don't get to play. And that's how nature spirits thrive, is through playing. And so if you will receive and acknowledge when you see the glitter in the tree, when you see the light in the water, when you know they're there, you're not a fucking crazy person, you're an aware person. Relax. Enjoy. Don't think. Here's an interesting one. It... So if you are good at choosing in this life, you can just choose to not come back to this plane of existence. Well, that wasn't totally a question. Um, I wish you'd put that into like a real question. How about this? If you were an infinite being, Aurelia, what would you choose? Okay. Um, so there's a lot of questions coming in sort of like I think about earlier things that I've said so I'm going to have to jump around a little are there are there tips and tricks that you can give with what can feel like panic or intensity with awareness of entities yes great question um, ba -ba 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 it only feels like panic and intensity because you're number one out of shape 
Number two, <laughs> because there's something you're not acknowledging. As soon as you acknowledge what's going on, there will be peace. So you know you've gotten the right thing when all of a sudden there's like peace in space. So with entities, um, the thing that there's like this phenomenon where like even after people do the talk to the entities beginning class, they don't actually like clear and communicate with entities. But you actually have to use the tools and get to work um, for this to really work for you. Ah, I actually can't scroll back to see the questions. Why is that? Oh, no, I can. Ah, no, I can't. I lost that question. I don't remember what she asked. I guess, like, who gives a shit if it's intense? But I don't remember what the question was, and now I can't find it again. Oh, yeah, see, mine gets stuck. So there's another one on this theme. Why being aware of demons makes my head really hurt? Because you're resisting being aware. Duh. Nothing needs to hurt. How much pain, suffering, intensity, trauma, and drama are you using to prove that you're aware? Rather than having the feather touch that awareness can be. Would you believe it if it was easy? Or does it need to be hard to be real? Someone asks a question, are entities aware they don't have a body? Some of them are, some of them aren't. Someone's asking, and they go where? That's actually a really interesting question. Some get another body, some go to other planets, some just become space. Infinite energy, as we all are. Once you, okay, if you think about it right now, like, Think about the identity that you think you are, your name, your gender, your nationality, etc. When your body dies, is that who you are? Or are you infinite energy without definition? And if you had no definition, what could you choose? And everything that doesn't allow you to perceive no be and receive that, will you please destroy and uncreate it? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, poc, shorts, boys, and beyonds. What would be the, I'm reading another question. What would be the best advice for someone close who has this ability? Uh, I, do they want advice? I mean, I would not give advice unless someone's asking. And if they are asking, I would get them a copy of my book. Okay, cool. Sorry, guys, I'm just reading some more of these questions. It's interesting. I usually can see shapes of animals or humans in things like chairs, wood, art, stone, and in the sky. Are they entities that, are, that appear to be facilitated? Victor, you have to, no, you have to ask. So um, one of the really important, most easy tools for ent dealing with entities is you first have to ask, like, is this an entity? And then you'll, then you'll know. This is a cool question. If we all keep our personalities when we don't have bodies, how do we get our personalities in the first place? Well, I would say that like, I'm not really, I'm not saying that like we all keep our personalities, but a lot of the time people don't really change when their bodies die. That's what I see a lot of the time happening. But sometimes people do change. That being said, where do we get our personalities? We get our personalities by duplicating our family. We get our personalities 
by decisions and stuff that we created in past lifetimes. And we are, get our personalities because we are is essentially who we are. So the less sort of like decision, judgment, conclusion that you have, the more your natural essence, the expression of your being exists, the more uh, judgments of yourself you have, the less your natural exist essence exists. Um, your personality comes from the choices that you make. And oftentimes, scarily, because we duplicate and copy the people around us. Cool. Someone's asking, Shannon, when do you come to Brazil to do a class and talk to the entities? Um, I know, that's a really good question. I would love to do a Spirits of the Earth class in Brazil, actually. Every time I try to come to Brazil to do a talk to the entities class, really, I can't come. Like last time I tried to come, I couldn't get in because, <laughs> because of a visa problem. So um, I'm doing talk to the entities in Mexico City in March 2020. So if you want to come and have some amazing tacos, come to Mexico City or join us online or something. And I get Brazil has a huge demand and I'm grateful and I'm willing to come and I'd love to create some more great stuff in Brazil. Um, Sorry, I'm just going through tons more of these questions, seeing what actually applies right now. <laughs> also, I mean, you guys get like, that we can't really dive into everything as extensively as required here in the time that we have, but that you should definitely go to a talk to the entities introduction and beginning class. Like we've got facilitators. I mean, I think that we all together speak over 70 languages. So it's like language should not be an issue and money should also not be an issue because I'm sure if you ask for the money to show up, you might just have a friendly entity help you out. So this one about, are there any tips and tricks for when you feel panic or intensity with entities? My attention keeps getting really drawn there. So what I would suggest, yeah, my tip would be to ask what you're aware of and push your barriers down. Like you really need to push your barriers down. And maybe panic and intensity is like an entity awareness sign. Um, I used to have paranoia when entities were around and I thought I was just like fucked up all my life. And then and this is actually a story in my book. I was at a party in Australia a lot of years ago and um, it was on a golf course. The party was at a golf course and the road the golf course is on is, was called Murdering Creek Road. And this is where there had been like huge like Aboriginal massacres. And I don't even know why they would leave the road named that, but they totally did. And Anyways, so I was at this party and like as the night was going on, I was getting weirder and weirder and more paranoid and more paranoid and I felt like everybody hated me and like I could not get comfortable no matter what I did. No matter how much I drank, no matter how much I tried to be friendly, I like was fucking weird. And, and like super paranoid. Like I paranoid that everybody hated me. That's what I was always paranoid about. Like everybody hates me. Like the sky is falling. And so I finally decided I was just going to leave because like I like couldn't enjoy myself. And as I was walking out the door, a f acquaintance of mine walks by and she jokingly says to me in like an Aboriginal Australian accent, like want to come outside for a cigarette. And I didn't smoke at the time, but I knew I was going to go with them. So I went with them and it was like three ladies and they were smoking and I was sitting on the curb out in the parking lot. And all of a sudden, I became aware of like about 75 Aboriginal spirits standing there looking right at me. And I was like, hello, hi. And I said hi to them. And I was like, you guys can all go. That was like my initial response was like to tell them they could leave. And they just all turned around and walked away. And my paranoia completely vanished. And that was the last time I ever didn't acknowledge what that paranoia was because up to that point I had been paranoid, socially paranoid all my life. And I thought I was fucked up, but it wasn't actually me being fucked up. It was me being aware of entities. So whenever I would have that 
ex that very specific feeling of in paranoia, it's always entities. So that's why you have to get very clear and honest with yourself about what your entity awareness signs and signals are, like a headache, like panic, but don't get all fucking trauma drama into it. Just be like, ah, there's an entity awareness signal. Cool. Okay. Are there entities around? Who's trying to talk to me and get out your toolbox. And if you don't have your toolbox of clearing, communicating and receiving from entities, that's where the beginning class is going to come in handy. Um, and I mean, I've said the entity clearings on here even, so you could just go back, re-listen to this, write them down and use them. So that's a free tool. Um, and like we're constantly giving away free shit. Like I am like really want everyone to have the tools to make their lives easier. So we have tons of free resources. If you guys, um, I've got a free membership that's called free membership that's open for another week. I'm closing it down and I'm changing some stuff and I'm going to reopen it as something different soon. But in there is a free talk to the entities class um, and a bunch of other cool stuff. Like there's a there's a couple of body classes and like some cool videos on perceiving, knowing, being and receiving. Um, and you should get it because then you get like a talk to the entities class too, like a free one. And I think I like have other stuff like on YouTube, like there's a free introduction, like there's a bunch of stuff, like it's everywhere. So um, you just need to use your tools and get to work. That's the thing. When you notice you're having an entity awareness sign, like, don't stop there. Like that means you actually have to get to work and do something about it. Sorry, you have to actually get to work and do something about it. You can't be a lazy, dramatic person. <sighs> so there's some really cool questions that came in. Here's when I'll address. So sometimes it's hard to differentiate between sensations that are mine and those that are from others. What could help this so that it isn't an overwhelming? Would an infinite being be overwhelmed? Could an infinite being be overwhelmed? And I tell you what, like I thought I was overwhelmed a lot in my life and my dad would always be like, stop it. <laughs> would an infinite being be overwhelmed? And every time I recognize, no, an infinite being would not be overwhelmed. And then I would step up and become greater. So, Caroline, would an infinite being be overwhelmed, my friend? Nope. So what finite pile of shit do you believe you are that allows you to be at the effect of and impacted by other people's insanities? I'm willing to destroy and create all that, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pod poc shorts, boys and men's. However, this does bring me to the statement that awareness is actually easier than resisting it. It's just that none of you guys have a reference point for what awareness is. And as soon as you like open up to how aware you are, you're not really met with a world that's supporting that awareness in you. But I'm here to support that awareness in you. And please recognize that like awareness isn't bad and being more aware than others is a gift, not something to be pushed away. Um, okay. So I'm not really sure how much more we have. Um, I'm not really sure how much more we have time for right now because there's such incredible stuff in here that ooh, it, there's a, some bigger conversations in here too. Um, and I hope you guys have seen some of the talk, met some of the talk to entities facilitators that have already been on. There's going to be more on till midnight California time. So this is just going to keep on rolling. And um, all of these videos will be available later as well after the fact. So you guys can go and, you know, have a big binge of talk to the entities, um, educational Facebook lives and hopefully create something easier for all of you. And I get that this topic of awareness and entities seems like this big, massive, weird, uninformed universe. But I really, please hear me, you already know. You know you're not inept. Your being is capable. If you ask a question, the universe will show you how. If you... Uh, 
Yeah. Hey! Tudo bom? Como pode melhorar? Como pode melhorar? Oi! Olha eu estava aqui, eu tava aqui esperando para ser adicionada. Ninguém me adicionava. Eu estava aqui há dois minutos ouvindo vocês falando, me mandando mensagem, eu abanando, pulando. Ah, é? Soltando charuto. Uhum. Bem-vindos! Como vão, crianças? Então, é, estamos aqui nessa live do, do Conversando com Entidades para a gente conversar um pouquinho em comemoração ao Halloween. Como pode melhorar isso mais ainda? Adoro. Não, ah, assim, não, que eu entenda, não que eu entenda de bruxa, mas olha, assim, quando eu faço assim, você vê, quem, quem lembra vocês? Que personagem lembra vocês? Eu acho que eu já história? vi isso em algum é, filme, é. André. Ela usa uma roupa preta, ela usa uma roupa preta, e ela tem sempre, eu não achei a xícara de chá que ela usa para tomar, é. mas ela, eu vou fazer de conta assim, que isso é uma xícara de tu... chá. Pois é, André, é? você está tomando vinho branco agora, não seria um chazinho, alguma coisa? É, deveria ah, ser um tô... chá, né? A Morticia Adams toma chá, né? É. Então, assim, não que eu entenda alguma coisa. Eu procurei um vestido preto, mas eu não, não. achei. Mas eu achei que eu podia só mostrar o cabelo, assim, o narizinho afinado e o queixinho para cima, tava tudo bem, né? Meu filho perguntou, qual é a fantasia de Halloween que tu vai usar, mãe? Tu vai fazer o de Halloween? Eu disse, vou usar um nariz fino, Essa. um queixinho grosso e o cabelinho preto, assim, da Morticia Adams, fechou todas. Aí ele não entendia. Isso é julgamento. Disse, não, meu amor, isso é o que é. É diferente. <risos> isso é uma consciência, entendeu? Ou seja, em vez de uma... Assim, né? Em vez de uma fantasia, vamos simplesmente ser hoje. Sim, Qual é a fantasia exatamente. que você vai usar? Estou usando fantasia sim, titia. Exato, olha aqui. <risos> Estamos sendo, está sendo hoje. Como pode melhorar? Como podemos, e como podemos ter mais diversão com as entidades, na é verdade? Para mim, eu gosto muito de ver toda essa parte do, do conversando com entidades, da interação com entidades, de uma forma divertida. Eu escolho me divertir com isso. E isso é muito bacana, porque cria um monte na minha vida e eu sempre tenho companhias visíveis ou não para poder me divertir com elas. Né? A gente fazer da vida uma, uma, uma diversão contínua. Mas como ah, que é para vocês isso? O legal é que para ti sempre são visíveis. né? O interessante é isso. Se os outros estão vendo ou não, não faz diferença. Exatamente. Eu tipo assim, com quem você está conversando? Joffrey? Você não, você não conhece o Joffrey? Joffrey aqui? Joffrey, não Joffrey. Joffrey, fala com eles. A coisa mais legal é quando você diz assim, mas Brito não está vendo que não tem ninguém. Eu disse, como não tem ninguém aí? Tô aqui no maior papo, tô, tô aprendendo pra caramba como não tem ninguém aqui, só porque tu não tá vendo. Não quer dizer que não tem, né? Fala sério. Você sabe o que eu acho mais divertido? Às vezes eu vi as pessoas dizendo assim, mas eu tenho medo de ficar sozinho. Eu disse, como assim? <risos> Aonde tu pode ficar sozinho desse mundo? Essa então, foi a melhor. Acho que você não eu tá também. reconhecendo. É, que a gente fica, fica brincando, que a gente está sempre dentro de uma sopa de letrinhas, porque você sempre tem um monte de entidades perto de você, é uma questão de escolher reconhecer, de escolher saber, para poder começar a se divertir mais um pouco. O que, que sabe, essa entidade é, pode dizer para você, né? É, uma coisa que a gente repara muito é a dose de significância que as pessoas colocam, que às vezes uhum. impede essa diversão de chegar, né? Quer dizer, se a gente puder falar de inclusão e escolha, e tudo isso realmente foi algo divertido, quer dizer, uma capacidade, uma potência, amigos diferentes, né, vamos dizer assim. Não julgue seus amiguinhos, mesmo Exato. que você não esteja vendo. É, é tão normal, tão normal incluir os amiguinhos, né, os com corpos e sem corpos, não vejo diferença nenhuma. Você diz que tudo é escolha, então, André? Claro! Ah, e eu super legal. escolho a inclusão. Não é, um, não é um dos dez mandamentos, não, exclusão? Eu não faço exclusão, gente. Nem, nem dos com corpos, nem dos sem corpos. Eu incluo todo mundo. <risos> Mas, assim, festeria geral. E o legal agora da quarentena, olha só. O legal da quarentena é o seguinte. 
que os amigos sem corpos, pelo menos, não precisam usar máscara. Aí tu sempre sabe quem eles são, né? Ah, Veja verdade. pelo lado bom. Porque Gente, chega a pessoa lá com máscara e não sabe se é o inimigo, se é teu inimigo, se é um assaltante. <risos> né? A pessoa chega pra falar contigo e tu pensa, putz, quem é essa pessoa? Daí tu dá oi assim, né? Tipo, super sei quem tu é, né? Tu não faz a menor ideia de quem é a pessoa, mas super sei quem tu é, né? E aí tu... Oi, amigo! Dá, oi, tudo bem? Oi, amiga! Nossa, que bom te ver! <risos> aí a pessoa dá mais até uma pra isso, a pessoa já tem ouvi a risada e reconheci, né? Então, assim... Tipo assim. Tipo, né? Tipo assim. Aí, os amigos sem corvos, pelo menos, não estão de máscara, né? Daí tu já sabe quem são. <risos> né? Mas assim, ontem me perguntaram, ontem me perguntaram se eu já tinha mandado limpar minha vassoura. Eu disse, gente, nada sobre bruxa moderna. Pensa, né? a gente eu me usa... desloco para muito longe. Eu já de uso pó. jatinho, eu já uso jatinho mesmo, entendeu? <risos> Eu já uso o Jati, já uso um carro, inclusive, que acabei de comprar ele para me mover mais rápido que pensa. Sentar em vassoura era antigamente, quando não tinha conforto, né, Cíntia? Já imagina o meio da A gente terra. escolhe, né? <risos> tipo assim, vamos combinar é, eu... que a gente escolhe o conforto. Então, assim, já sou bruxa moderna, amiga. Já sou bruxa, assim, que já descobri, né? Milhagem, inclusive, sabe? Já sou <risos> das companhias aéreas. Né? Entidade vassoura, milhagem. Assim, Super amiga. É. De vassoura, tu não pode estacionar, por exemplo, na sala VIP, né? Dos aeroportos. Então, assim, eu já sou uma bruxa mais moderna, né, gente? Eu já sou aquela bruxa, assim, que... né? Pra que que eu vou, vou mexer no caldeirão? Eu faço pó de pó aqui. Muito mais ah. divertido. E funciona é, muito mais muito rápido, mais vamos combinar. É. Muito Nessa coisa de ficar rápido. mexendo com <risos> significância, Olha. vamos combinar que escolhe facilidade. Eu Digamos tenho a linha que... do Harry Potter, né? Eu tenho, porque eu fui, eu fui no castelo do Harry Potter com as crianças, daí eu comprei. Mas, assim, eu tenho uma varinha muito mais legal que a do Harry Potter. Na verdade, eu tenho cinco varinhas em cada mão. E quando elas resolvem começar a mexer, gente, fazem cada mágica muito mais legal. Que a Vada Kedavra, é muito longa a palavra. Fala um nove, só aí, ó, já resolveu. Já resolveu. <risos> né, gente? Adoro. Fala sério. Assim. Percebe é a evolução das poções mágicas. Agora é só comandos, palavras, perguntas e fica tudo muito mais rápido, mais fácil e ainda mais divertido. Como pode melhorar tudo isso ainda? Olha só, pensa. Pensa o tempo que tem que fazer. Olha só. Hoje em dia, tempo, embora seja um construto dessa realidade, pode ser usado para criar muita coisa, né? Especialmente grana. Né? Então, assim, o tempo que eu vou ter que tá mexendo poção, uhum. macerando lá as ervas, fervendo no caldeirão para liberar, pá, 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 pá. eu já puxei energia, aí tem que ir lá fazer a poção repelente, né? Para quê? Pode pó aqui na porcaria toda, gente, muito mais rápido. Aí eu vou fazer atração, poção atrativa, não era assim? Então, para que eu vou fazer poção atrativa? Bobagem, puxa energia, uhum. rapidinho. Tô lá dirigindo, puxando energia, não perco tempo. Aí, <risos> tem que fazer a poção aquela para engravidar. Para quê? Faça um processinho corporal rapidinho. Restauração uhum. da impregnação, por exemplo, olha aí. E tem aquele bagulho, <risos> aquele, tem aquele bagulho, né, gente? Fala sério, tem aquele bagulho da escolha, né? Ah, é uma coisa muito boa. Né? Tu, conhe tu conhece, sério, assim, em todos os teus anos de bruxaria... Tu conhece alguma poção, algum caldeirão, alguma coisa que substitua isso? Eu ainda não, não conheci. Então, assim, eu Nada. de verdade assim, sou uma bruxa moderna. Mas você sabe é. que, como você falou de moderna, muitas das coisas que a gente agora aprende a receber mais e se permite receber mais, também facilita esse lugar de escolher. Quer dizer, e toda poção que a gente pode ser, fazer aqui, visa facilitar essa coisa da escolha, essa mágica, essa exclusividade de, sabe, que todos os dedinhos podem facilitar juntos, mas no final da conta, das contas é o que vira a chave, é o que faz a poção realmente atualizar o que busca. Exatamente. E sempre trazendo contribuição. 
né? escolho contribuir e escolho receber contribuição, mas você tem realmente algo que você pode escolher. Pode também não escolher, né? O que se requer para que você possa realmente acessar a facilidade e a leveza e a diversão de um universo completamente diferente? E tem, tem uma que coisa que é legal agora, né? Tem uma coisa que é legal agora, né, gente? Que a gente não é mais queimado na fogueira. Isso é uma coisa legal também. É, é Olha, leve, né? Fica bem mais leve. O que, cara, pensa? Pô, não Falando em modernidade, roupa. né? Né? Pô, não fui comprar roupa com a Cintia em Paris, né? Não fui comprar bolsinha com a Cintia. Eu e a Cintia, a gente não foi na Louis Vuitton comprar bolsinha para pegar fogo, né, gente? Fala sério. Não é não? Vamos é. combinar. Não? Vamos combinar, não cara. Combina. Fala sério. Fala Já que sério. agora tudo modernizou, então como seria a gente incluir isso também, né? E é. permitir que a energia se, se espalhe por todos os, os cantos do nosso ser, do nosso, da nossa sociedade e criar uma, um mundo de mágicas. Como seria se a gente falasse agora sobre um mundo de mágicas nessa sociedade moderna e um mundo de escolhas com mais... Sabe aquelas três palavras que eu mais gosto de tudo isso? Facilidade, alegria. E qual era a terceira mesmo? Sexo. É um negócio que quase ninguém gosta. Não era sexo. <risos> Desculpa, errei. <risos> Adão, gente. Desculpa. É que eu cheguei em Porto Alegre hoje, depois de vários dias. Sabe ah, como é que é? Ah, tá. Eu achei, ok. Eu achei por um tá segundo justificado. que estava lendo meus pensamentos, André, mas agora foi sentido. Agora foi sentido, né? <risos> Aliás, vocês percebem como isso mas tudo gera um fato também... de alegria, não é? E... O que, Fábio? Como isso tudo gera um espaço de alegria? Tudo que a gente Com fala certeza. sobre o corpo, ter corpo, não ter corpo. E um dia como hoje, onde as pessoas estão inclinadas a, a brincar um pouco mais com toda essa questão, e se a gente puder também ser o convite de valorizar aquilo que faz o nosso corpo se sentir melhor, né? ser mais feliz. Quanto a gente se permite se agradar hoje, ter essas facilidades, essas modernidades e ainda assim ser o espaço de mágica que cada um de nós é, né? incluindo os carros novos, as bolsas caras, as viagens. Aliás, vamos, vamos pedir mais viagens, gente? Eu não sei vocês, mas está tá na hora, né? Ah, tá, né? Fala sério. Agora, agora. Agora, por favor. E assim, o que mais é ser uma bruxa, ser um bruxo, sabe? Para mim, ser uma bruxa é ser tu, é ser a diversão e reconhecer a tua magia, reconhecer a mágica que tu é no mundo e te divertir que... com isso. É, você sabe que agora... Quando tá você... Um é preci... O quê? Agora ficou sério. A tua mãe. É. Ela, tá falando, ela tá usando a voz sexy dela. Isso. Né? Tipo assim, vamos todo mundo agora falar coisas Sim. interessantes com a voz sexy. É. Então, eu escolho a diversão também, você sabe, André. Eu escolho super muito. É que assim, se o negócio de facilitadora não der certo, não. se o negócio de facilitadora não der certo, eu arranjo um emprego no telesex, entendeu? Mas, André. Por que excluir? Porque a gente não pode incluir também, já, né? Eu ainda tenho... Eu, Fábio, a minha agenda está disponível da meia-noite às duas da manhã. Tá vendo só? Para que dormir? Então. Eu Jura? Gostei. Porque eu, eu, eu vou dormir às duas da manhã, então a minha agenda já está tomada até às duas da manhã. Todos é. os dias. É. Você ainda tem esse horário? Poxa, que luta, hein? Pois é. Eu, literalmente, nesses dias agora, eu estou experimentando uma agenda um pouquinho mais inclusiva de dia e noite, onde as coisas meio que, às vezes, vão um pouquinho... Ficam meio misturadas. E, como você falou, realmente essa mágica de ser a inclusão, de ser o que cada um de nós 
é, se permite ser hoje, além de todos os conceitos e definições, e se aquilo que a gente é, ouve ou chama de bruxaria, na verdade, agora é a nossa habilidade de ser essa mágica, e uma coisa, que coisa mais mágica do que ser essa alegria de viver, essa alegria de estar presente, de curtir o nosso corpo, a modernidade, a mágica, a facilidade com as coisas. Não é maravilhoso é isso? É a mágica da consciência, né? A, a consciência da... inclui tudo e não julga nada também, que é o mais divertido, é você poder incluir tudo, estar presente com tudo, né? todas as coisas, independente do que você... Né? do que as outras pessoas têm ponto de vista a respeito disso, mas incluindo tudo, não julgando, e você passa a ter muito mais possibilidades. É a tal da consciência, né? Eu já vou falar ah, disso é em um lugar. Para tudo, para tudo que agora deu tchutchu. Tu quer deu dizer tchutchu. que eu posso incluir tudo e destruir todo o julgamento da minha vida e ser quem eu sou? Uau! Essa é a mágica. Na verdade, quanta mágica a gente acessa só por parar de se julgar, né? Se a gente pudesse Nossa. brincar de só hoje, assim, não vamos se julgar por nada hoje. Quanto a gente aumentaria o nosso nível, a nossa escala, a nossa posição, o nosso acesso a toda essa mágica, toda essa alegria de ser? Não que eu me julgue. Se você não se julgasse, o que, que você julga que é impossível, que você não dá conta, que não tem como, que se você cortasse isso disponibilizaria todo o universo, Tô completamente diferente, com muito mais prosperidade, muito mais sucesso, muito mais alegria, diversão. Então, julgamento, realmente, a gente meio que, tipo, escolhe diferentes. Ah. <risos> quer, dizer, quer dizer que a gente pode ter escolha, a gente pode não se julgar, não dar significância, ser livre e ainda criar... Gente, essa live tá reveladora hoje, né? Fala sério. É tipo... Bombástica! Essa live tá acabando... Essa live nunca tá falou sobre isso essa, essa live tá acabando com a realidade previsível, né, gente? Fala sério. E para quem, quem acha que a gente tá só nas palavras, deixa eu perceber o que vai vir depois ainda, depois de assistir, assistir hum. toda essa esse espaço se abrir em algum lugar, sabe, essa alegria, começar a permear o mundo da pessoa e começar a perceber, uau, mas então tem outra solução. Ah, então dinheiro não é o problema. Então eu posso escolher? Hã? Né? Ah. Mesmo, mas mesmo na Será que agora, não pode, será que sabe? agora o pessoal vai sacar? Né? Se, vamos, vamos. Vamos realmente escolher que as pessoas possam perceber a facilidade do processo. Mas na quarentena pode, Cíntia? Pode. Eu permito. <risos> yeah. ah. Opa. Mas, se Ufa! Gente, se a gente fosse Ufa. falar em quarentena, nossa, o pode e o não pode foram totalmente redefinidos na minha quarentena, pelo menos. Uhul. Depois da, reunião, depois da reunião do maestro ontem, eu não sabia mais nem meu nome, né? Então, tá tudo certo. <risos> ai, ai. Ainda e tem assim, isso, né? Ontem. E assim, Quando foi ontem? <risos> aquele dia, sabe? Aquele dia. E assim, o quanto será que as entidades que estão aí nesse momento estão dispostas a contribuir com a gente? Quanto saber a gente, a gente deixa... Vamos agora modular. Quanto saber a gente deixa... Ah, é, a gente esqueceu da voz sexy. Porque ficou enterrado junto com a voz sexy... Não, junto com as entidades. É. O conceito, o conhecimento, a realidade, além dessa realidade que a gente pode ter orgasmicamente. E o quanto receber você exclui da sua vida porque você não está disposto a receber de todas as entidades sem julgamento. Sem Agora julgamento. sua vez, Andra. Sem julgamento. <risos> então, agora, eu escolho. Ah, deixa... Falta 30 segundos. Deixa eu falar, né? Deixa eu falar com você. Peraí, peraí. Coitada, ela eu... nem falou ainda, não, né? É, eu nem falei. Nem com você, não. Vamos lá. Deixa eu me concentrar aqui, vai. 20 segundos para... Então, agora, eu escolho receber de todas as entidades 
uma Isso. mega contribuição. Que presente Isso. nós podemos receber Isso. hoje. Isso. Receber. Isso. Hoje. Receber. Hoje. Receber. E de todos. <risos> Como pode melhorar? <risos> Ah, ah, gente, delícia. acabou a nossa live. Olha só, essa live tão triste, né? Que a gente quase nem riu. Foi. Tá acabando. Chorando. É assim, foi uma live, né? Tá acabando, porque daqui a pouco vão vir nos correr daqui. E uhum. a gente tem mais lives ainda. E te achando daqui a pouco. Perca. Uhum. Hoje tem mais festa. Gratidão a todos por estar com a gente. Aí. Gratidão Beijo a grande. todos aqui. Beijos. Beijo. Beijo. Ai, gente, nós começamos a nossa transmissão do especial de Halloween do Toque de Entities aqui no grupo do Facebook. Gente, gratidão. Desculpa toda essa essa coisa que teve assim que o do, do horário do Robson, que daí acabou que eu e a Andra começamos, né, devagarzinho, mas o que mais é possível, gratidão a todos vocês. E conversando sobre entidade, gente, meu assunto favorito, inclusive eu trouxe uma fantasia para mostrar para vocês, a minha fantasia de Halloween. <risos> minha fantasia de bruxa é essa, né, como pode ser mais divertido tudo isso. E, gente, o quanto que nós estamos evitando o assunto de entidades e o quanto que as pessoas ainda não estão percebendo a mega contribuição, a mega expansão, que é o conversando com as entidades nas vidas das pessoas. Então, quando eu tinha, né, tipo assim, comecei com Axis e tudo mais, eu tinha um mega ponto de vista de que esse negócio de identidade era pra gente maluca, sabe? Essa coisa assim, tipo, nossa, de tudo do Axis, o que eu menos me interessa é esse negócio de identidade. Geralmente, quando você fala assim, isso daqui eu não gosto, isso aqui eu tenho medo, isso aqui eu não, não quero mexer com isso, tem uma potência ali, tem uma capacidade que você é, que você não está disposto a ser. E nessa época, eu não tinha a menor clareza a respeito disso. Então, foi passando, me tornei CF, e aí numa conversa com a Simone Castro, a gente, ela me explicou o que era o Conversando com as Entidades, eu falei, gente, mas espera, né, isso daqui me pareceu interessante de alguma forma, fiz a minha primeira classe, e o meu mundo expandiu completamente mais uma vez. Primeiro foi no Fundamento, depois do meu primeiro Conversando com as Entidades, e eu fui perceber o tanto que eu não era doida. Assim, doida eu sou, não é? Assim, o tanto que eu sou esquisita, mas o tanto que isso é uma capacidade e é uma qualidade que eu sou e não um defeito ou um problema. Não é algo que eu, que, eu, que eu realmente tivesse que esconder, mas algo a se desenvolver. É uma potência, né? É, uma, é, é um presente, é um dom. É, uma, é algo que faz, faz a minha vida muito mais expansiva, muito mais alegre, muito mais divertida, o que mais é possível que a gente não considerou ainda. E aí eu falei, gente, esse negócio é muito bacana. E comecei a usar as ferramentas do Conversando com as Entidades no dia a dia. E uau, quanta facilidade isso me trouxe. Mas assim, de uma quantidade imensa, coisas que você falava assim, não, isso não tem como resolver. Aí você, pera, deixa eu experimentar usar a ferramenta e o negócio abre, expande imensamente. E não é só no seu dia a dia de casa, mas usa a ferramenta no seu trabalho para expandir as suas classes, para expandir o seu negócio. Né? Onde que a gente está evitando a contribuição que as entidades desejam ser na vida da gente? A gente tem um ponto de vista de que entidades são só pessoas que já morreram. Espíritos. Né? Assim, minha avó que... Ou o que mais é possível, a televisão traz um monte de ponto de vista, né? E várias outras instituições e o que mais é possível, trazem muitos pontos de vista interessantes a respeito de entidades de uma forma negativa, do tipo, 
o demônio, ou a entidade, ou sei lá, qualquer, entidade, qualquer bicho que seja, vai puxar o meu pé à noite, e eles são mais poderosos, e eles são mais incríveis do que eu. E na primeira classe já, eu comecei a me conscientizar, como a André falou, que eu sou a entidade dominante da minha vida. E que não tem capiroto, não tem demônio, não tem espírito, não tem entidade nenhuma que seja mais assustadora do que eu, se eu posso garantir para vocês. Né? Fico até brincando nas classes, eu falo assim, gente, porque quando chega no universo dos, dos demônios, é a mãe do demônio, vai botar o demoninho para dormir, né? aquele cobertorzinho de lá, bem sofre, né? com todo aquele... Né? Aí ela fala assim, meu, meu filho, eu vou desligar a luz. E eu falo, não, mãe, não desliga a luz, não, porque eu tenho muito medo da Cintia vir aqui me mandar embora. <risos> desse jeito, né? Tipo assim, a gente brinca, mas não é brincadeira. Então, assim, onde que você ainda tá caindo na pegadinha de que você não é mega pastor poderoso, como você sabe que é. Porque lá no fundinho você fala assim, caramba, eu sou poderoso, mas eu não conheço pessoas que são poderosas. Então você acaba indo para o médio, para o mediano, para poder caber dentro daquilo que você conhece evitando ser o esquisito da consciência que você verdadeiramente é e se divertir loucamente com isso e fazer dinheiro e atualizar uma vida de prosperidade para você. Né? O quanto que as entidades podem contribuir com a sua vida e não só as entidades, é, pessoas que não têm mais um corpo, mas as entidades negócio, a sua entidade carro, a sua entidade casa, a sua entidade trabalho, a sua entidade cidade, onde que você não está recebendo das entidades que desejam contribuir com você? Então, onde que você não está, de repente, recebendo a contribuição do seu trabalho? Né? Criando um monte de situações interessantes, sendo que bastava baixar as barreiras e receber teu trabalho, ou começar a fazer perguntas, né? lidando com aquela entidade, que não é porque não tem um corpo, mas ela é uma entidade, porque ela é uma energia que pode ser definida. Toda energia que pode ser definida é uma entidade. Então, um poema, uma ideia, uma árvore, um macaquinho, um sapato, tudo são entidades. Você é uma entidade que tem um corpo. Né? Existem entidades que não tem mais um corpo, tipo minha mãe. Minha mãe é uma entidade que hoje não tem mais um corpo porque ela escolheu ir embora há uns 15, 16 anos atrás. E você acha que é por causa que minha mãe não tem mais um corpo porque eu não bato papo com ela? Às vezes o pessoal fala assim, ai, Cíntia, vai todo mundo sair, você vai ficar aí sozinha em casa. Eu falei, não, não vou ficar em casa não, tô conversando com o Geoffrey aqui, tipo, né, Geoffrey? Então, cara, então assim, gente, é todo um grupo de amigos que você não está considerando que você tem disponível para bater um papo, para fazer perguntas, tipo, conta aí, Robert Waldson, quem, quem faz, já fez classe comigo conhece o Robert Waldson, conta aí, Robert Waldson, uma coisa que eu não sei, né, você não considerou isso? Ou conversar com a sua classe de barras, ou conversar com a sua cama, por exemplo, eu converso inclusive com as formigas aqui de casa porque eu falo assim, gente, olha o negócio é o seguinte, tá demais, eu acho bom vocês começarem a sair, porque se vocês não saírem eu vou ter que chamar o dedetizador e aí não vai ser divertido para vocês e você acha que elas não vão embora? Elas vão embora. Então, na irracionalidade e na diversão, você pode transformar a sua vida e deixar de viver uma vida de medo, de... É, de menos para viver uma vida de abundância, uma vida de plenitude, né? Usando as ferramentas do conversando com as entidades. É genial, é genial. Realmente é divertidíssimo quando a gente começa a usar as ferramentas nas classes e as pessoas falam assim, tipo, não tô acreditando que o negócio funcionou. Eu falo, desculpa, foi mal. Sua vida ficou mais fácil? Desculpa aí, cara, eu, porra, não era minha intenção. Eu, inclusive, eu gosto muito de nossa chinelada, né? O pessoal do grupo Chinelada Quântica já sabe que eu sou muito fã de uma chinelada, mas sua vida ficou mais fácil. O que mais é possível, né? Tipo assim, nada que um anel da Vibara não resolva. Eu, né? Aceitamos. Aceitamos todas as contribuições do universo. 
inclusive fazer perguntas ao universo, que também é uma entidade. A gente se percebe a expansão disso tudo, percebe como que isso é grandioso. É uma quantidade imensa de amigos que você ganha. É... É eliminação de uma quantidade imensa de implantes distratores. Os implantes distratores não é de trator, tá? É distrator, de distração, que te tiram da consciência. Então, os implantes distratores, eles vão te levar sempre para medo, raiva, ódio, acusação, vergonha, culpa, remorso. Se pegou nessas pegadinhas, fala, opa! Ah, peraí que eu lembrei que a Cíntia falou isso, tudo que isso representa, destrui, desfrio, certo, errado, bem, mal, pode falar todas as nove, curso, garoto, feliz. Quem não conhece, esse é um enunciado aclarador do Access Consciousness e você pode procurar mais informação a respeito disso em www.theclearingstatement.com que aí você vai ter uma explicação linda e mágica sobre essa ferramenta fantástica do Access Voltando para as entidades, né? Então, assim, você está aí achando que você está sozinho em casa e, de repente, tem uma galera aqui contigo. Né? Você acha que está sozinho. Está sempre, sempre tá rolando um Big Brother. Então, você se acostuma com isso. Vamos dizer que o Big Brother que está rolando com você não seja divertido para você. né? Então, Ah, não. O pessoal estava dizendo aqui que eu achava que eu tinha perdido a conexão, mas eu estou aqui. Estou aqui. O que mais é possível? Vocês, né, tipo assim, vocês vão ter que continuar me ouvindo falar as nisso aqui. Mas umas nisso de consciência. Então, é, você foi para o medo, né? Pode poque. Está ali no seu cantinho. E de repente começou a perceber um monte de, vamos dizer, coisas dessa realidade de angústias de medos, de paranoias, de raiva, de... Né? Sabe quando você, tipo assim, tá tipo... Parecendo o diabo da Tasmânia? Isso. Você simplesmente pode usar uma ferramenta muito simples, genial, que é o processo de limpeza básico das entidades, que a Shannon disponibilizou para todo mundo, com assim, uma generosidade incrível, e é muito difícil, mas vocês prestem atenção que um dia vocês vão ter que vão conseguir aprender. É uma, uma fórmula muito complicada, tá? Vou falar para vocês, só prestem atenção. É o seguinte, você tem que fazer as perguntas. E assim, quem são vocês? Quem foram vocês antes disso? 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 E você vai ficar repetindo quem foram vocês antes disso, até você perceber que a energia mudou. É uma coisa bem sutil, pequenininha. E você vai lá. Quem foram vocês antes disso? Quem foram vocês antes disso? A energia mudou. E quem vocês serão no futuro? Certo, errado, boi, mal, pode, pop, todos os nove cultos, garotos e além. Muitas vezes você vai, fazer, vai perceber que a energia muda completamente. Por quê? Você permitiu que aquelas entidades que estavam ali junto de você que elas pudessem escolher diferente. E não é assim no tipo, chama a entidade, vai embora daqui, entidade, sai daqui, capiroto. É no tipo, olá, entidade que não tem mais um corpo, que também é um ser infinito. Que tal você fazer uma escolha mais grandiosa, se conscientizando de que não é porque você não tem mais um corpo, que você tenha que ficar preso a essa definição de você. Não é porque você não tem mais um corpo que você não possa escolher um outro corpo. Ou ir para a luz, ou ir para outra dimensão, ou qualquer outra coisa que seja divertida para você. E é isso que o processo de limpeza faz. Ele traz consciência e clareza para que a entidade escolha diferente. Para que a entidade escolha mais grandioso. Então, aonde você estava ali, que você estava percebendo um monte de peso e um monte de confusão no seu universo que não era teu, e não necessariamente era de uma outra pessoa com corpo. Muitas vezes eram as entidades que estavam ali ao redor de você, não porque elas que queriam o teu mal, não porque elas queriam te encher a paciência, não porque elas são seres né, sem noção, elas estavam ali porque ela, de alguma forma, percebeu que você era a contribuição, que você, de alguma forma, poderia ser a consciência que iria 
unir, que iria possibilitar no universo delas algo mais grandioso. E você simplesmente, pela disposição de parar um segundinho, desligar o seu celular, desconectar do mundo externo e trazer a sua consciência para todos esses seres que estão junto de você e rodar esse processo, você simplesmente abre espaço para que vários seres possam ter facilidade no universo deles, para que eles não precisem estar mais presos nessa realidade. Então você, na verdade, é um, um você está dando alforria a um monte de entidade que está presa aqui, simplesmente porque não tem clareza que morreu, ou porque não sabe como é, sair desse espaço de eu me defino dessa forma, eu, Cíntia, loira, Brasileira, casada, arquiteta, facilitadora, blá, 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 e perceber que, uau, já foi tantas outras coisas, posso escolher diferente de novo. E elas vão embora. E aí o seu universo fica mais leve, o universo delas fica muito mais expansivo, e você foi uma super contribuição. E além disso, que eu falo sempre para a galera, o que se requer para que já que você foi uma contribuição, que você requeira do universo um presente. Toda contribuição que você fez, exclusiva, eu gosto muito de presentes. De presente é uma coisa linda. Então, assim, toda oportunidade que eu tenho de pedir por um presente, o que mais é possível que a gente não considerou ainda. Não é verdade? Então, universo, pela contribuição que acabei de ser, requeiro receber. De que forma isso vai vir? Não interessa. Quando que vai vir? Não importa, desde que venha. Na verdade, se você se coloca na disposição de ser contribuição para outros seres infinitos, que contribuição eles também não podem ser para a sua vida antes de ir embora. Porque uma coisa que você ainda não se conscientizou é quantas pessoas que não têm mais um corpo que estão por aqui nessa realidade sem ter clareza de... Né, até que, não, que morreram, né? E elas morreram guardando um dinheiro, ou um tesouro, ou um dom, ou uma facilidade, ou qualquer coisa que seja. E elas têm um ponto de vista, talvez, não estou dizendo que todas têm, né? são possibilidades. De que elas têm que entregar isso para alguém antes de poderem fazer uma escolha grandiosa. Né? Aí o que, que a gente faz? Eu! Olha, <risos> pode depositar em mim toda essa contribuição que a gente aceita, recebe e se diverte com tudo isso, então você aumenta o seu receber por estar consciente do universo das entidades. O que mais é possível? Ah não, mas aí virou muito fácil. Vai ser muito fácil. É facilidade, alegria e glória. Né? Então assim, mais uma vez, desculpa aí de estar tá criando mais facilidade para o seu universo. né? O que mais é possível? Eu virei a chata do que mais é possível. Antes eu falava assim, gente, não fica repetindo isso. Nada, repete. Repete um monte. Que quanto mais você repete o que mais é possível, quanto mais você repete, né? tipo, como pode melhorar, mais melhora. Né? O que se requer? Então, essa é uma, uma, uma ferramenta que eu gosto muito, a limpeza básica de entidades, né? o processo básico de limpeza, que é quem é você, quem foi você antes disso, quem você vai ser no futuro. E você pode usar também o que é você, o que foi você antes disso e o que você vai ser no futuro. Porque muitas vezes as entidades elas não são quem, elas são o um quê. Então uma entidade carro, uma entidade cafeteira, uma entidade quadro, uma entidade empresa, uma entidade classe de barras, ela é uma entidade o quê? É, e o que se requer para que você também facilite essas entidades? Em casa a gente tem uma cafeteira, que ela é muito temperamental. É, é, o nome dela é Priscila. Então, assim, ela, quando ela não deseja funcionar, amiga, é fogo. Porque, assim, o pessoal daqui de casa, que quando faz curso aqui em casa, eles já viram isso funcionar. Sabe aquelas, aquelas maquininhas que abre assim, você bota a cápsula e fecha? Pois é. Aquela, aquela gavetinha não abre nem por um decreto. Tipo assim, você... Pode puxar o tanto que for, o troço não abre nem por decreto. Aí o que, que eu faço? Bota a mão nela, roda o processo básico de entidades, a limpeza de... É, o que é você? O que foi você antes disso? 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 Até a energia ficar leve. E o que você será no futuro? Certo, errado, bem mal, pode falar com as nove coisas, garotos, excelentes. Eu abro o gavetinho e funciona. O pessoal fica de cara porque funciona, cara. É um troço incrível. Então... 
a minha cafeteira tem um ponto de vista. O meu quadro de casa tem um ponto de vista. O nome dele é Geraldo. O Geraldo ele é, muito, ele é muito generoso. Inclusive, foi uma amiga minha que já fez a classe de conversão com entidades, artista plástica, que fez o quadro e ela deu o um nome para o quadro de ondas. Só que quando ela trouxe o quadro que botou na parede, nossa, aquele negócio foi tão leve, foi tão incrível. E eu olhei para o quadro e falei, ok, vamos conversar com o quadro, conversar com a entidade. Eu falei, oi, tudo bom? Aí ela falou assim, não, o nome do quadro é Ondas. Aí ele olhou para mim e falou assim, meu nome é Geraldo. Eu, oi? <risos> Geraldo? Meu nome é Geraldo. Eu falei, ok, Geraldo, tudo bom? Ela falou, não, Cíntia, o nome do quadro é Ondas. Eu falei, cara, ele acabou de me dizer que o nome dele é Geraldo. Então, o nome dele é Geraldo. Então, eu chamo ele pelo nome e com todas as classes a gente puxa a prosperidade do Geraldo para o nosso universo. Onde que você não está escolhendo receber o ouro das coisas? Onde você não está escolhendo receber a facilidade que a sua casa deseja ser para você? Ou que o seu sapato deseja ser para você? Ou que a sua vozinha deseja te trazer? Né? São todas entidades e a gente não... Hum, a gente não se separa delas, a gente inclui tudo, a que se trata de incluir tudo, julgar nada. Né? Inclusive, quando você perceber que alguém está te julgando, porque está conversando com o carro, porque está conversando com a maquiagem, porque está conversando com a roupa, você bate a barreira e recebe o julgamento. E você ainda ganha mais dinheiro. Como pode ser mais divertido, né? Cada julgamento que você recebe é interessante do ponto de vista, você faz 5 mil dólares a mais naquele ano. Para cada julgamento que você recebe, que você resiste ou reage, ou que você ali concorda, aí você perde 10 mil. Então, presta atenção. Né? Tipo assim, o que mais é possível? Como pode ser mais fácil receber o julgamento das pessoas por conversar com as entidades? Todas elas. Né? Com o Joffrey, com... Né? Com tudo, 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 tudo Com o seu corpo, que é uma entidade também Com, gente, infinitas possibilidades Você não está sozinho em momento nenhum Que tal você se conectar com os seres de mais consciência Que desejam ser contribuição para a sua vida? São entidades também Pode não defini-los, você pode chamar O que você quiser chamar Isso daí é o de menos O nome que você dá é o de menos, mas se conecta com essa energia grandiosa, recebe, recebe de tudo, de tudo, sem, ah, sem julgamento, né? Onde que nós falamos muito hoje, assim, no universo de, é, de não discriminar as pessoas, que tal se você também não discriminar mais as entidades? Elas desejam fazer parte da sua vida, elas desejam a contribuição que você é, elas desejam a potência que você é, então, vamos largar do medo, vamos largar da vergonha, vamos largar desse monte de implante de trator que é só pegadinha, só mentirinha dessa realidade e assumir as rédeas da nossa vida para poder ser tudo que a gente pode ser. E se essa é uma potência que você é, e todos nós somos essa potência, todos nós temos essa capacidade, o que se requer para que você agora comece a sua jornada de uma vida mais expansiva, mais incrível, mais divertida, como você jamais imaginou antes. Tudo que se requer é que você esteja disposto a ser. A ser o quê? Você. O que mais é possível. O que mais é possível. Gente, eu adoro. Esse é um assunto que eu me divirto loucamente e traz tanta expansão. Tanta expansão, que assim, eu começo a falar nisso, eu começo a emocionar, mas não no choro de, 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 de manipulação, mas de gratidão. De gratidão por tudo que essas ferramentas têm criado na minha vida. Por todas as infinitas possibilidades, por toda a beleza, por toda a facilidade, por todo o esplendor que existe no meu universo, por toda a consciência que eu, que eu incluí ao incluir o universo das entidades. E você? Vai continuar fingindo que não é? Vai continuar fingindo que não percebe? Vai continuar fingindo que não sabe que tem uma galera aqui do lado que de repente está ali, tipo, só? Contribui comigo, contribui comigo. 
contribui comigo, você tipo, não, ai, nossa, deu um jeito no meu ombro, que coisa horrível, deu um jeito no meu ombro, e a galera tá ali, contribui comigo, contribui comigo, contribui comigo, aí você vai no hospital, faz todos os exames e não aparece nada, aí eu, contribui comigo, contribui comigo, contribui comigo, e aí eles falam, bursite, nossa, gente, a bursite é uma coisa que ninguém explica, é uma dor horrível, e de repente você começa a fazer os processos de limpeza de entidade, dor, <risos> E aquela doença que você achava que era uma doença vai embora. Não estou dizendo que vá, né? Mas o que se requer para que você comece a experimentar uma possibilidade diferente no irracional que você não estava considerando antes? Gente, é muito divertido. Muito, 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 muito. Deixa eu dar uma olhada aqui, porque acho que daqui a pouco... É hora do pessoal entrar um outro facilitador. E quando for, então assim, o meu horário daqui a pouquinho está chegando ao final. Mas não é o último em português. Às nove da noite, hoje, Norma Forastieri e Sandro Donizete vão estar também arrasando aqui nas lives em português. E às dez horas da noite, Xena Rara, a diva das divas das entidades, estará ao vivo com todos nós. Em inglês, mas... Por que você não fala inglês ou não entende? Gente, o que se requer para que você abra o computador e receba a energia dessa mulher, que é um luxo? Vamos combinar que aquela mulher é tudo, gente. Aquela mulher aceita esse tudo, até qualquer sinalada que vem do lado de lá, super mega contribuição, sempre é. Né? Então, crianças lindas, muita gratidão, muita mesmo. Abra um espaço no seu universo para poder incluir essa parte de você e incluir o universo das entidades. Muita gratidão, muita por todos vocês. Um beijo enorme e a gente se encontra logo, logo, em qualquer classe de conversando com as entidades, nas classes da Xenon, porque eu escolho estar junto com ela e tudo que ela inventar, o que mais é possível. E vamos incluir mais facilidade, mais alegria, mais prosperidade em tudo que a gente faz. Experimenta. Não acredita em mim? Experimenta. <risos> o que mais é possível? Feliz Halloween. Feliz semana. Feliz final de semana. Muita gratidão, gente. Muita, muita mesmo. Um beijo grande para vocês e tchau, tchau. <risos>
foi transformado em El Dia de los Muertos, no Dia dos Mortos. A igreja trouxe o dia de todos os santos, que era em 13 de maio, para 1 de novembro. E assim se celebrava a morte, a santeria, né? Mas nós bruxos continuamos comemorando. E a gente usa essas fantasias, capas e tudo isso para afastar os espíritos que estavam soltos. Então, o Halloween também é a festa dos espíritos. E como melhor comemorar a festa dos espíritos com um Halloween do mundo inteiro no site de Talk to the Entities? A maravilhosa e fantástica Shannon O'Hara, que é a criadora de Conversando com as Entidades, nos fez esse convite e está o dia inteiro, a noite inteira, vão ser 24 horas, celebrando o Halloween. Aqui no Brasil, depois de mim, o maravilhoso Sereno vai entrar. Depois nós temos a Cintia Rondelli, temos a Norma Forestier, temos um grupo de pessoas. O Sandro vai entrar com a Norma também. Então, assim, todo esse grupo de facilitadores fazendo e celebrando o Halloween com você. Mas... Você já reconhece a bruxa ou o bruxo que você é? Ou você ainda está resistindo e lutando contra isso? E mais, qual é a sua habilidade com as entidades? Oh, falou entidades, eu tenho que sair correndo. Não, gente. Para nós, no Access, nós temos uma visão que consciência engloba tudo. Até as entidades, tá? Hoje, por exemplo, eu estava o dia inteiro facilitando uma classe de conversando com as entidades. Deliciosa, maravilhosa. As pessoas amaram. Se elas não amaram também, elas não me disseram para mim. Elas disseram que amaram, então eu entendi que todo mundo amou, né, gente? E assim, tudo que tem uma memória energética, vivo ou não vivo, animado ou inanimado, é uma entidade. Então, assim, o meu fone de ouvido, né, é uma entidade e eu posso me comunicar com ele. Ah, quer dizer que ele vai sair batendo papo comigo, eu já ia fazer uma DR. Não, eu falo com ele aquela língua, a língua universal, a língua básica, a língua que todo mundo fala. Às vezes esquece que fala, mas todo mundo fala que é a língua da energia. Eu me comunico com o meu fone através da minha energia. Eu contribuo com ele, ele contribui comigo e nós ficamos felizes dessa maneira. Eu me comunico com o meu telefone, eu me comunico com o meu carro, com a minha casa e também com entidades que estão no corpo, porque nós todos somos entidades num corpo e, óbvio, com aquelas entidades que também já não estão mais num corpo. Porque, fala sério, quantas entidades não têm mais um corpo que estão na nossa volta? Milhões, bilhões. E tem muita gente que me pergunta assim, ai, André, eu tenho medo de fazer essas coisas de entidade aí, né? Porque isso, isso não é de Deus. Ei, ei, quem disse? É super. Porque vocês sabem... Na minha opinião, o cara mais axis que já existiu nesse planeta foi um amigo meu. A gente é super íntimo. O nome dele é Jesus Cristo. Vocês já ouviram falar dele? O cara fazia perguntas. Ele dizia para não julgar o próximo. Né? Atirar a primeira pedra quem nunca pecou. O cara era axis. Ó, oh, tua fé te curou. E mais, tudo que eu faço, você faz. O cara usava a frequência, ele tocava nas pessoas. E ele era aquela contribuição. Que cara mais axis que isso? Não existe, então. Todos os lugares que a gente acredita que não, que não pode ser. Axis não é religião. Axis é um conjunto de ferramentas que te empodera ao que tu já sabe. Para te trazer de volta esse conhecimento. Para te trazer de volta aquela bruxa que tu é maravilhosa. Que faz aquele monte de mágica. Que por algum motivo aí se perdeu, se afastou um pouco. Mas como seria agora a gente reivindicar todo o nosso poder, toda a nossa magia, aclamar isso, possuir isso de volta? Vamos fazer isso agora? Essa energia de criação, de geração, de atualização, de tudo que é leve e gostoso para mim, agora. Esse é 
o meu convite para a festa de Halloween. E se a gente não precisasse mais lutar, brigar, se esconder? E se a gente pudesse se comunicar com o mundo dos espíritos, sem esse véu que nos separa, eles lá e eu aqui? E se todos nós voltássemos a fazer parte do todo? E se os espíritos da Terra pudessem voltar a contribuir conosco, com a nossa vida, com o nosso dia a dia? E se nós pudéssemos voltar a contribuir com eles? Ai, mas eu só sou eu. Não, você não é só você. Você é você, um ser fantástico, maravilhoso, incrível, um ser infinito, com infinitas possibilidades, capacidades, habilidades, e que só por ser você pode mudar o mundo. E todos os lugares que você ainda não reconhece a potência que você é. Vamos destruir e criar isso agora? Uh! Vocês que a minha varinha se emocionou, ela saiu voando, varinha volta, faz favor. Eu até vou deixar ela aqui do lado, né? Então, assim, todos os lugares em que nós não reconhecemos a nossa magia, a gente pode convidar isso para vir agora para nós. Dois, três, quatro. E como seria um mundo aonde todos os seres, num corpo, fora de um corpo, interagissem, interagissem com amorosidade, com gratidão, com os elementos da intimidade, se honrando, sabe, em total permissão. Como seria nós estarmos hoje celebrando o Halloween sem briga, sem luta, sem um impondo para o outro o seu ponto de vista e tudo pudesse ser só o um interessante ponto de vista? E se todo esse medo que nós compramos e tornamos reais e verdadeiros fossem só um interessante ponto de vista? Então, em todos os lugares que nós estamos separando as entidades, separando o mundo dos espíritos de nós e rechaçando, renegando a nossa habilidade com eles. A gente pode agora destruir, descriar tudo isso, por favor. Certo, errado, bom, mal, pode parar, todos não ficam desgarrados e além. Como seria nesse Halloween a gente convidar a doçura como seria se as balas que a gente entrega no Halloween fossem balas de gratidão? E como seria se nós nos tornássemos o convite para tudo isso no nosso planeta? Que contribuição nós podemos ser? para o nosso planeta, agora que nós estamos reivindicando a nossa magia. Como a gente pode aproveitar a diversão, as crianças brincando, a alegria do Halloween para ser uma energia de contribuição para nós, para nossas vidas e para o nosso planeta. E tudo que não estiver nos permitindo isso, a gente pode destruir e descriar agora, por favor. Certo, errado, bom, mal, pode parar, todos nove, cultos, garotos e além. E todos os lugares que a gente jurou, prometeu, fez votos de que nunca mais, jamais a gente ia ser aquela potência, aquela bruxa maravilhosa que a gente é e que nunca mais ia ser a magia que a gente é, porque aí a gente realmente ia somar muito com o planeta. A gente pode destruir, descriar tudo isso agora, rescindindo, revogando, retratando, rechaçando, reclamando, renunciando, denunciando, espando, destruindo, descriando. Certo, errado, bom, mal, pode parar, todos nove, cultos, garotos e além. O que se requer para que nós sejamos o convite para mais, o convite para a unicidade, o convite para as pessoas deixarem a briga, deixarem a luta e se darem conta das possibilidades. 
Eu acabei de chegar da Costa Rica, eu tava na classe de sete dias lá com o Gary Day e o nome da classe foi o que mais me chamou a atenção. O nome da classe foi o meu primeiro convite para a classe. O nome da classe é End the Fight, Create Possibilities. Termine a luta e crie possibilidades. Uau! Olha só o que é esse nome, olha o convite. Toquem agora na energia desse convite, na energia dessa classe. O quanto a gente passa a vida da gente brigando, brigando para mostrar que a gente está certo, que tudo tá, tem que ser assim, que eu tenho a razão, eu tenho a certeza de que eu estou certo e o resto do mundo está errado. Ou ao contrário, está todo mundo certo e eu sou sempre a errada. E aí a gente entra para aquela caixinha, né? Aquela caixinha da realidade previsível em que a gente fica todo mundo do mesmo e todo mundo igual. Mas é verdade, nós somos todos iguais. Olha, nem irmãos gêmeos univitelinos que nasceram no mesmo ovo, que tem o rosto igual, o formato de corpo igual, tem a mesma impressão digital. Pelo menos a impressão digital deles é diferente. Então, o quanto nós somos diferentes, o quanto nós somos a potência e não estamos reconhecendo isso. Porque a gente quer ser igual a todo mundo. Aí eu quero ser normal. Normal? O que, que é normal? O que, que é o padrão? Não é só mais uma definição. E como seria a gente estar tá fora de forma, estrutura, definição, controle, linearidade e escolher o mundo das possibilidades, da criação, da abundância, da magia, da comunicação aberta com tudo e todos. Tudo que não nos permita ser, saber, perceber e receber esse mundo agora. A gente pode destruir e descriar, por favor? De certo e errado, bom, bom, pode parar todos os nove cultos, garotos e alenses. A gente já tem que controlar o tempo, porque meu maravilhoso amigo José Robson Sereno já tá aqui assistindo essa live e ele vai entrar daqui a pouco, então, assim, né? Se não, começa a falar e esqueça da vida, porque eu quase não falo, como vocês percebem. Tanto que uma das minhas funções no Axis é ser tradutora, né? Porque eu não gosto de falar, quase. Então, em todos os lugares que a gente calou a nossa voz e agora a gente está pronto para trazer essa voz no mundo e ser a contribuição para o mundo, a gente pode reivindicar isso, possuir essa força, essa energia, a nossa voz de volta e realmente sermos a magia que nós somos, Tudo que não estivermos permitindo fazer essa escolha agora, a gente pode destruir e descriar? Certo, errado, bom, mal, pode parar todos os nove cotos, garotos e além. Será que o Halloween é só a festa que as crianças botam uma fantasia? Ou a gente bota uma fantasia, bota lá a roupinha preta? Eu, já, eu não preciso botar o chapéu, né, gente? O meu chapéu já é preto, tá vendo? Já nasci com ele assim. E a gente bota isso e sai pra rua pra brincar de trick or treat, doce ou travessura? Ou será que o Halloween é uma ideia que vem há milênios e que vem mantendo acesa não a fogueira do bonfire que eles queimavam lá na época dos celtas, não. Mas vem mantendo acesa a chama do nosso ser infinito. Vem mantendo acesa a nossa magia, o nosso poder, mesmo quando a gente esqueceu dele. Mesmo quando a gente resolveu dizer assim, agora dá uma apagadinha aqui na consciência e os próximos 500 anos eu vou dar uma descansadinha, esse negócio está consciente está meio cansativo então eu vou fazer outra coisa vou me esconder, vou começar a criar umas cacas na minha vida né, para não lembrar do que eu sei e aí a vida estava lá né? aquela mesmice, aquela coisa que está indo, mas não está indo e de repente chega essa coisa que coisa é essa? Essa coisa é o Axis. 
E ele chega na nossa vida com esse convite para nós sermos nós e mudarmos o mundo. Com esse convite para possibilidades, para uma realidade além dessa realidade. Esse convite para nós relembrarmos quando a gente tocava em alguém e curava. Quando a gente sentava e interagia com o outro. Quando a gente não se alinhava com as mentiras que a gente comprou nessa realidade e simplesmente era. E o convite do Axis é para reacender isso em ti, é para te empoderar. E Talk to the Entities, conversando com as entidades, é uma especialidade que traz isso. É uma especialidade que te convida a esse mais. Nós temos facilitadoras de conversando com as entidades no mundo inteiro. Nós temos muitos aqui no Brasil. Pessoas fantásticas, incríveis, com uma capacidade maravilhosa de fazer perguntas, de contribuir. Porque ninguém está aqui para ajudar, tá? Se tu tem essa ideia de, ah, eu quero ajuda, não. A ajuda cria uma dependência, um vínculo, uma carga. Não, a gente está aqui para ser a contribuição. Contribuo contigo. Eu te faço perguntas. Eu não te desempodero. Eu te convido a mais. O que, que é mais, Andrea? Mais é ser tu. Mais é acessar o que tu sabe. Não é o eu valido teu saber. Eu vou te dar as sete chaves para o paraíso e vou validar o teu saber. Não, eu não sou a tua guru. Ninguém no Axis é o teu guru. O Axis não tem deuses. O Axis tem pessoas maravilhosas que trazem ferramentas que podem te tornar o ser maravilhoso que tu já é. Podem te fazer acessar aonde tu te limitou e dizer, não funciona mais para mim isso. Mas sem julgamento. Não funciona mais para mim, ok. O que, que eu posso fazer aqui que vai criar a vida que eu estou escolhendo? Ah, se eu criei caca, ok, criei, legal, eu me divirto, eu brinco. Eu brinco com todo mundo, quem me não é sabe que eu brinco, que eu sou uma fantástica criatora. Eu criei um monte de caca na minha vida. Fiquei seis anos doente, lá com hernia, depressão, querendo morrer, aquela coisa básica. Hoje, a minha vida é totalmente diferente. Hoje eu viajo o mundo. Eu, de agosto para cá, estive em dez países. Eu estou traduzindo, eu estou criando classes, eu estou facilitando, eu estou... Tô... Às vezes, a minha avó diz que eu virei uma orcaholic. Não, eu me divirto fazendo o que eu faço. Eu faço o que eu faço me divertindo. Eu trouxe de volta alegria para a minha vida. Porque andar assim, ó, não estava mais funcionando para mim. Eu já sei que aquilo não funcionou. E ok, e hoje eu dou risada daquela criação. Porque eu sei que fui eu que criei aquilo. Eu criei aquela caca. Ótimo, criei. Já descriei também. Sobrecriei isso e criei uma outra vida. E eu posso fazer escolhas a cada 10 segundos. Oi. Ah, legal, tá funcionando. Continua. Não tá funcionando? Tchau, bênção. Até nunca mais. E aí eu pergunto pra você. Faz de conta que a gente é amigo, né? E eu começo a te ligar. Daí hoje eu te ligo cem vezes. Pra te dizer bom dia, pra dizer boa tarde, pra dizer boa noite. Pra... Nem sei que tanto assunto eu teria pra cem vezes, né, gente? Mas faz de conta, né? Que eu te ligo cem vezes. Tu já tá com dor de cabeça só de ver o toque do telefone com o nome Andrea, tu já quer jogar o telefone na parede. Tu não vai pegar e vai dizer, vai, tica, tá, Andrea? Vai arranjar o que fazer. Como diz uma amiga minha, vai fazer terapia. Terapia de louça pra lavar, né? Por amor. Aí, ok. Pra mim, que te liguei cem vezes, tu me mandou caminhar. Por que que tu deixa aquela entidade vir e ficar assim em ti? Por que que tu deixa aquela entidade ficar do teu lado até tu não aguentar mais de dor de cabeça? Por que que tu deixa aquela entidade te acordar às três horas da manhã? Ei... Eu não deixo mais. Eu? Imagina, minha hora de dormir é sagrada. Ninguém acorda. 
Se eu vou jogar um, tap, um sapato na cabeça de quem vier me acordar de madrugada, eu também vou dizer pra entidade. Uh -uh. Olá, Maria Fernanda. Então, assim, eu vou dizer pra entidade, não, querida, aqui, nesse espaço, não. Uh -uh. Olha, eu tenho um horário de atendimento, tá? Então, assim, quer bater papo comigo? É naquela hora. Porque eu descobri uma coisa. Talk to the Entes me ensinou uma coisa. Eu vou contar pra vocês o que é essa coisa. Eu descobri que eu, eu, sou a entidade dominante da minha vida. Uau, esse é o momento uau. Agora todo mundo que tá em casa faz o uau. Tá, eu sei que todo mundo sabia já disso, só eu que não sabia. Mas eu descobri a minha primeira classe de Talk to the Entes. Claro que a gente tá rico, né, Juliana? Juliana, desculpa, a gente está super rico. Alguns ainda não atualizaram essa riqueza. Mas riqueza é ser, né? Então, beleza. E aí, eu descobri que grande parte das cacas que eu criei é porque eu não sabia dizer não. E eu achava que todo mundo era melhor, todo mundo era mais, todo mundo sabia mais. Né? Mentira, gente, tá? Mentira. Não é porque eu tô dizendo, não é porque a Xena falou, o Gary falou, não, use o seu saber, pergunte o que é leve pra você. Ferramenta do leve e pesado tá aí, é de graça, ninguém nem precisou pagar por ela, olha que lindo. E aí, quando eu descobri que eu sou a entidade dominante da minha vida, uau, eu posso criar qualquer coisa na minha vida. E foi aí que eu realmente comecei a escolher criar a minha vida. Juliano, eu escolho expandir todos os dias. Uma pergunta que eu faço todos os dias é que escolhas eu posso fazer hoje que vão criar o futuro que eu estou escolhendo para a minha vida e para a sustentabilidade do planeta? Eu adoro fazer essa pergunta. E tem uma outra ferramenta. Essa é uma das minhas ferramentas favoritas. E ela me ajudou muito a salvar minha vida. E tem até um app. App é aquele negócio, para quem não sabe, que eu sou, eu sou meio lerda com tecnologia. Mas aí me ensinaram. App é aquele negócio que tu pega o celular e vai lá na lojinha do celular. O celular tem uma lojinha, gente. No meu telefone é um azinho que chama Apple. Mas tem outro que é um Gzinho do Google Store. Mas é tudo lojinha, tá? Daí tu vai lá na lojinha e baixa de graça o app do Ru das desbilontio, a quem é supertense. E esse app vai ficar bipando lá para te lembrar de perguntar. Para cada pensamento, sentimento, emoção que tu tá comprando de todo mundo, tu pergunta a quem é supertense. E isso, essa ferramenta mudou muito a minha vida, porque eu era meio assim, vou contar, eu era meio tipo Bob Esponja de tudo que não prestava dos outros. Na verdade, na verdade, eu tô dizendo Bob Esponja porque eu tô sendo elegante, que eu tô numa live no site mundial do Talk to the Entities, tá? Porque na verdade eu era tipo assim, o lixeiro mesmo, sabe aquele tonel de lixão assim, que todo mundo joga tudo e é porcaria dentro? Eu era aquilo, gente, vocês não têm ideia, né? Eu era assim, tipo, lixeiro do mundo. E aí, eu comecei a descobrir que, uau, eu sou a entidade dominante, vamos limpar essa porquê. Usei a minha vara mágica com meus dez dedos. Sabe qual é a minha vara mágica? Certo, errado, bom, mal, pode, pode. Todos nós ficamos desgrados. E além disso, essa é a magia. É o abacadabra do Axis, né, gente? É who does this belong to, Mariana? É a quem isso pertence em inglês. Tá? E aí, assim... E aí, quando tudo começou... Ó, oh, peraí, a Siri tá buscando já. Siri, não busca. Não busca nada. Eu falei pra vocês que eu faço as coisas loucas. A Siri tem pessoas. A Siri é uma entidade própria no meu telefone, né, gente? Óbvio, tô falando de entidade. A Siri quis... Uh, chamar, né? Se se não falas português, teremos muitos facilitadores que estarão nascendo também em espanhol. Muito de pronto, Ella White estará entrando, e Helena, e Diego, todos estarão também juntos aqui. Sim, sí, teremos outros. Permaneça e mire quem estará. Graças, Klaus. Então, assim, a gente vai 
E a gente começa a usar isso e aí a gente começa a se dar conta de quanta caca a gente compra dos outros. Aí sabe aquela dorzinha de cabeça que tu já tomou a aspirina, não passou, daí tu foi pro Dorflex, não passou? E se essa dorzinha de cabeça não foi tua? Ah, pois é. Essa dorzinha de cabeça normalmente não é tua. Mas isso é um assunto para uma outra live. Mas quando tu tiver essa dorzinha, tu pergunta a quem isso pertence, a quem isso pertence, a quem isso pertence. E depois tu me conta. E se quiser fechar com chave de ouro, certo, errado, bom, mal, pode pôr todos os nove cudos, garotos e além. Gente... Gratidão por terem estado aqui. Continuem aqui. Agora o Sereno está vindo. A gente vai continuar em português. Tem mais um monte de facilitadores. Uh, eu não sei se é às nove ou às dez, porque eu estou meio perdida em fuso, mas assim, a Shannon também vai estar tá fazendo a live dela. Vai ser em inglês, mas se tu não fala inglês, não tem problema. Entra e recebe a energia, que essa mulher é maravilhosa. Então, assim, gratidão por todos vocês terem estado aqui. E... O que mais é possível a partir de agora? A partir de toda essa contribuição que os facilitadores de Talk to Dentes estão esperando ser. Beijos para todos vocês e a gente se vê por aí. Sereno é contigo! Olá! <risos> Qué gusto tenerlos a todos. ¿Cómo, Bienvenidos. ¿Cómo están? ¿Cómo están? Nosotros estamos un poco en todo porque estamos saliendo de una clase de tres días de cuerpo la primera mañana acá en Puerto Vallarta. Sí, muy contentos y el cuerpo muy agradecido. Y los, bueno, tenemos aquí para comentarles de nuestras aventuras con entidades. Hoy siendo 31 de octubre, en donde muchos lugares festejan Halloween. Aunque para nosotros en México es el primero y dos de noviembre, el día de muertos, pero tiene una energía bien distinta. Muy Halloween diferente. es como, para mí siempre era como esta broma, este entusiasmo de disfrazarte, de verte diferente, de a lo mejor ponerte el disfraz que nunca te quisiste poner, que siempre te quisiste poner, pero que te rehusabas poner. Y día de muertos sí es más bien como esta ceremonia un poquito más. Seria. De honrar a los muertos. Ver, ten seriedad, ten respeto por los muertos que están. <risa> o por los cuerpos que ya no están Claro, y ya sea que estés divirtiéndote con esto de Halloween o también estés eh, interactuando con las energías de esos seres queridos que ya murieron y que son días para honrar, o tal vez ni siquiera estás inmerso en esa cultura y simplemente estás aquí por saber más, bueno, pues tenemos algunas aventuras sobre entidades que compartir contigo. Una de las cosas que recuerdo muy claramente es que de niño solía jugar en panteones con mis primos. Era tan fácil, <risa> era tan diferente. Y, y ya desde entonces yo ya tenía esa interacción con, con la muerte en sí. No solamente con espíritu, sino con la muerte también. Eh, por lo que no había miedo, no, usualmente no era tanto de miedo. Cuando estábamos ahí en el panteón, recuerdo mucho que encontramos uno, un, un costal de huesos, porque la gente cuando entierran, eh, los encargados cuando entierran nuevos muertos, por así decirlo, tienen que sacar a los anteriores. Ya se te acabó tu lugar aquí, por favor. Sí, gracias. atrás. Y me acuerdo, a ver, yo, por curioso, ir a tocar los huesos, y parece que esa entidad me siguió hasta la casa. Entonces, cuando duermo esa noche, empiezo a sentir como alguien empieza a tocarme el hombro, como si alguien quisiera hablar conmigo. Y en ese momento no tenía tanta claridad de, de, de una imagen, por así decirlo, pero sí la sensación física. Entonces, eh, primero entré al miedo. Fue como, ¿qué es esto? ¿Por qué me está tocando el, el aire? Pero al final, eh, tan solo la percepción de que había alguien ahí, fue como, ah, esto debe de ser por lo que hice hoy en el panteón, ¿no? Entonces, esta, este ser estaba, de hecho, perdido. Hay muchos seres que, a pesar de que llevan mucho tiempo ya muertos, que sus restos siguen ahí o que ya se desintegraron, siguen ellos pensando que siguen teniendo un cuerpo. Entonces, este ser parece que no estaba muy consciente de eso y tan solo pedirle que o hacerle una pregunta para darse cuenta a ellos que no tienen un cuerpo. Eso fue una súper contribución, donde literalmente fue un agradecimiento, fue como un abrazo que me dio el corazón y dije, hmm, qué interesante, esto no lo había sentido ni con una persona cuando me abraza. Muchas veces te, esa gratitud que tienen estos seres por haberles dado esa contribución, esa pregunta, 
reconocimiento. El reconocimiento, ¿no? tan solo saber que están ahí, es como una, es un alivio para ellos, es un alivio para ellos. Y eso fue tan gratificante que mi cuerpo se estreció y simplemente se, des, se desvaneció. Muchas veces podemos transformar esa realidad de percepción de entidades tan, tan solo a reconocer a los seres. Mucha gente en clases dice, es que llegan, me aturden, me espantan, siguen ahí, no, no se van, hacer. no sé qué hacer. Tan solo a veces abrirte a reconocerlos y decir, wow, ahí estás, te percibo. Ni siquiera es un te veo o te escucho, es un te percibo que va más allá de ver, de escuchar. Te reconozco. O La sea, sensación. como de saber que está ahí, punto. La sin sensación. tener que hacer nada. Pero ellos sí lo, lo saben, lo saben y lo reconocen de ti. Entonces, cuando ¡fum! ellos finalmente pueden hacer algo diferente. ¿Y para cuántas cosas ten, pensamos que tenemos que hacer en lugar de nada más ser? Claro. Porque en este caso es como, sí, si puedo identificar que ahí está alguien, a lo mejor no me está pidiendo hacer nada en específico, sino simplemente el, wow, sí me vio, sí me escuchó, sí me escribió, sí. ok, gracias, ya puedo ir a hacer algo diferente, puedo elegir algo distinto. Para mí, cuando yo tenía unos 15 años, estaba pasando por una época súper difícil. Mi hermana tenía eh, cuatro años de haber muerto. Mis papás lo estaban pasando súper rudo. Era como puras discusiones en la casa. Y estaba muy agobiada. Yo también pensaba que tenía que hacer como mucho para que las cosas estuvieran más en cámara. Como de, entre mejor hija sea, entonces voy a alivianarles la carga a mi papá de todo lo que está, de todo lo que está pasando. Y me acuerdo haber estado sentada en la computadora, literalmente, haciendo tarea de biología, no, era secundaria, así es que tendría, sí, como 14, 15 años. Y de pronto, de la nada, de estar contestando un cuestionario, lo que fuera en la computadora trabajando, sentí como si un remolino nutritivo, cariñoso, amoroso, expansivo, relajador, simplemente entrara en mi espacio. Fue súper como precisa la sensación de aquí estamos. Y entonces de pronto fue como, jamás había tenido una experiencia similar y entonces era una información tan clara de, ella Alba, número uno, no está sola, número uno, todo va a estar bien, número tres, aquí estamos contigo. Y fue en punto coma cinco segundos de tener toda esta energía, de tener toda esta información, que me conmoví tanto, porque también era como si estuviera... ¿Saben? Era como este cobijo que realmente necesitaba que alguien más me lo dijera porque, insisto, no lo estaba pasando bien. Y fue como, wow, no tengo idea. En ese momento no pude definir, pensé como, es mi ángel guardián y no era como, no, no se siente como mi ángel guardián. Entonces, que son como seres, en ese momento hubiera dicho, seres iluminados, pero claro. de no tampoco. Ahora, después de años, y gracias a las herramientas de Access, sé que era mi equipo de trabajo diciéndome, no estás sola aquí estamos contigo, todo va a estar bien. Y entonces, para mí simplemente me conmovió tanto que obviamente fue como mi cuerpo también se relajó por completo y empecé como a soltar mucha de la carga, muchas de las obligaciones que me había como puesto encima de ahora tengo que hacer esto y esto y esto, sino simplemente fue como, hey, qué padre es no tener que tener las respuestas, no tener que responderle y resolverle la vida a mis papás. Ok, no estoy sola, sé que hay alguien más que está percibiendo y que está consciente de qué es lo que está pasando a mi alrededor y sé que me pueden mantener también de alguna manera. Entonces me pregunto para cuántos de ustedes también han tenido a lo mejor una experiencia así que no se han permitido de reconocer. ¿Y qué tal que hoy, en este Halloween, en este 2020, pudieran hacerse? Sí, no todo tiene que ver con miedo, con horror, con el concepto de muerte, de sufrimiento, de terror sino también puede ser algo muy amable, como eso que acabas de platicar, Alba, que, te corrige, que inclusive tú llegaste ya a percibir en algún momento, pero quizás no tenías esta información, quizás no tenías esta conciencia de que puede ser alguien que tú conoces que esté ahí contigo. Exactamente. Hola, Elena. Y Elena White, Hola. también en vivo, acaba de entrar. ¡Yay! ¡Hello! Perdón, es que el internet y yo no, hemos estado, no estamos siendo muy amigos el día de hoy. ¿Qué más es posible? Pero ahora sí. sí, estamos platicando de, bueno, varias cosas, ¿no? Como el reconocimiento de este, este saber que hay alguien contigo que de repente puede acobijarte, que de repente solo requiere reconocimiento, puede transformar esa realidad y que no sea algo como de miedo ni de terror, sobre todo en estas fechas de, de Halloween y Día de Muertos, que hay muchos conceptos sobre, sobre eso, ¿no? 
¿Y la otra parte? ¿Se quedaron congelados? No. No. <risa> te escuchamos. Te vemos si te vemos bien. Ok. Y la otra parte interesante es cuánto le damos valor a lo que nos muestra Hollywood, a de cómo deben verse las cosas en lugar de lo que sabemos nosotros. Es decir, ¿cuántas veces? Hay un ejercicio que me encanta en hablando con las entidades, que es esto como de permitirte ser tocado por una entidad. Y nos imaginamos siempre que va a ser tipo exorcista o poltergeist, ¿no? ¿Y qué tal si puede hacer algo suave? Si puede hacer algo delicioso, delicioso, si puede hacer algo amable. Y lo único que nos evita tener ese tipo de extraordinaria eh, interacción es nuestra mente, que está así como llena de imágenes de, de Hollywood o del país que tú seas, ¿no? O de los cuentos, las leyendas de terror. Sí, hay referencias, millones. Sin embargo, esas referencias no son información que realmente está ocurriendo. Es una versión exagerada, ¿no? De cómo se puede mostrar esa interacción. Y eso es lo que genera más miedo, en realidad. Eso es lo que nos lleva a creer que así es. Pero, ¿tú qué sabes? Y sobre todo como por la violencia que siempre en Hollywood vemos. ¿no? Como que siempre te están tratando de atacar o siempre están tratando de quitarte algo. ¿Qué tal que eso justamente nada más es Hollywood? Y solamente es una de un montón de posibilidades distintas de las interacciones que puedes tener con seres sin cuerpo. ¿no? Sí. Porque aparte de todo hay muchos seres sin cuerpo, no nada más hay uno especial, así como hay seres humanos buena onda, lindos, amables, gentiles, hay otros que quieres darle una patada en los ojos a los cinco segundos de conocerlo, y igual pasa con los seres sin cuerpo. Sí, ¿qué se trata ahora de honrar esa, esa energía de que no es, no es algo malo, no es algo incorrecto, no es algo de terror, sino saber que en algún momento nosotros vamos a elegir también dejar ese cuerpo y que vamos a elegir diferentes cosas. Todos podemos elegir eh, hacia dónde ir, cómo ir, <ríe> en dónde estar, dónde no estar. Estuvo padrísimo. Hace un par de días una eh, señora que hace access desde hace un buen tiempo nos escribió en un chat y dijo, oigan, ya llega el hospicio, es aquí donde elegí morir. Les digo que tenga total facilidad para desencarnar, para hacer la transición. Y me encantó porque Dane le mandó un video en donde decía, ¿qué tal que puedes empezar a elegir crear tu futuro desde ahorita? Empieza a pedir energéticamente lo que quieres vivir después o lo que quieres experimentar después. Ya sé que quieras regresar y tener un cuerpo acá o no, pero empieza a pedir por la energía de lo que quieres, de lo que vas a querer cultivar. Y fue como, wow, realmente qué tan dinámico puede ser nuestra demanda que desde ahorita, si ya tenemos claridad de, hey, esto va a pasar sí o sí, tarde que temprano, desde ahora que puedo pedir para crear eso en donde yo pueda estar también mejor, ¿no? más tranquila, más contenta. Y nadie nos habla en esta realidad de eso. Nadie nos dice, ¿y qué quisiera hacer después de dejar tu cuerpo? Es como <risa> incierto, inf no información. Eh, y bueno, lo dejamos. Podemos ir cambiando de, de punto de vista definitivamente. Hoy puedes tener un punto de vista de lo que quisieras ser o hacer después de dejar tu cuerpo. Y justo en el momento antes de dejar tu cuerpo va a ser algo totalmente diferente. Tú lo vas a saber en ese momento. Hay una parte adicional que me encanta en lo que es la tradición mexicana, esta cosa de interactuar con nuestros antepasados. ¿Qué tal si que cuando muere alguien simplemente cambia la forma en que es tu relación y no los pierdes para siempre? Claro. ¿Qué tal si, si consideramos que esto no es nada más como una, cómo será, o sea, algo que se hace normalmente, o que es un tradición. cuento, o es una tradición, o una leyenda? ¿Qué tal si te das permiso de crear una nueva relación con aquellas personas que, con las que tienes cariño y simplemente dejaron su cuerpo? Y percibe en este instante, percibe a esas personas que tienes tanto cariño y ya no están en cuerpo, y fíjate, simplemente con reconocerlas, ¿cuánto puede cambiar? ¿Qué tal si no estás separado solo porque no tienes cuerpo? Y si y no, no te pusieron chinitos, que no, no, no. No hicieron bien el ejercicio, tache. Y no tienes que esperar a un día especial para eso. No tiene que ser 31 de octubre, primero 2 de noviembre. Es en cualquier momento. Y es con cualquier tipo de entidad. No claro. tienes nada más que pensar en seres que tuvieron un cuerpo de humano y ahora ya no están. Porque también mascotas están incluidas. Exactamente. Así muchas cosas más. Ayer que iba bajando del avión en Puerto Vallarta, en, en el túnel, literalmente saliendo del aeropuerto, vi a un gato, pero no había ningún gato y fue como de... Oye, hay una entidad de un gato cruzando el puente. Ok, gracias por decirme que aquí había un gato. Chao, espero que encuentres un cuerpo más divertido. Que fuerte, pues, claro. Que 
De hecho, hay mucha gente que anda paseando con sus mascotas sin cuerpo por todos lados. Si los extrañan, pueden pedirles que les digan, oigan, si están aquí o okay, que puedes encontrar otro cuerpo, puedes encontrarme en otro cuerpo, por favor, estaría divertido si es que quieres. Que también todos tienen una elección, inclusive los animales. ¿Qué más? ¿Qué más queremos platicarles? Pues, tener mayor facilidad con el recibimiento que no tiene, vamos, que el ejercicio que Elena compartió ahorita, que puede sonar muy simple, pero que si tú de verdad te permites, te das ese permiso de, de abrir tu cuerpo, de no tener barreras, de no tener miedo, aunque sea un poquito, es una forma de recibir que ni siquiera te imaginas. Puedes pensar, es que nada más es el ejercicio para poder recibir contribución de entidades, pero en realidad no solamente vas a recibir contribución de entidades, estás realmente abriéndote a mucho más que solo entidades. Y ese recibir va, puede mostrarse en dinero, y ese recibir puede mostrarse en cariño, y ese recibir va a mostrarse de muchas formas. Ojo, no estoy diciendo que de las entidades viene esto, sino que es la puerta a recibir en general. Que de hecho es de lo que estaba hablando Elena, ¿no? En cuanto bajas esta idea de que estamos separados y de que yo estoy aquí sentada y entonces no puedo recibir del sofá en que estoy sentada, o no puedo recibir de la columna donde tenemos la laptop, o incluso de la laptop. Bueno, es una <risa> Sí. Entonces, este concepto que tenemos acerca de yo estoy aquí y él está allá, ¿cuánto podemos recibir incluso de esto? ¿Cuánto de esto te puede sacar nada más una sonrisa porque se ve chistosísimo? En lugar de ser esta cosa seria, terrible, horrible. Claro. ¿Cuántos de nosotros justamente este miedo a lo desconocido lo hemos hecho algo incorrecto? ¿Cómo sería más bien abrazar el misterio de posibilidades que está atrás de eso? Y que a lo mejor no es tan complicado, pues simplemente ya no tienes cuerpo y ahora puedes elegir estar sin cuerpo durante un rato y volver a encarnar o simplemente te fundes en la unicidad. Y qué tal que puede ser así de simple en lugar de algo súper tortuoso de voy a estar reencarnado 20 mil veces hasta que el agua bien. Que ese es un concepto también súper polibudense de tengo que perfeccionarme en lugar de reconocer que está bien de mí, que no estoy bien de este ¿Y qué sabían los ancestros, no? Al menos a, ahorita estamos en México y es en donde se celebra aún más, digamos, dominantemente el Día de, la, de los Muertos, que es, viene de los ancestros, de ese reconocimiento de que no murieron. Es una energía que cambió, punto, como lo dijo Elena, ¿no? Y, y saber que siguen presentes y saber que te pueden contribuir. No todas las culturas hablan de eso y no hay tanta facilidad en relación a la parte en cuanto a esto, ¿no? Sí. Hablando de esto, hay otro tipo de energías que también tenemos muy presentes, que son todas estas energías, sobre todo en Halloween, no tanto en, en Día de Muertos, que son como las hadas, los gnomos, los enanos, todos estos como espíritus de la naturaleza que tienen un lugar tan importante en todas las culturas y que actualmente ya que vivimos en las ciudades, se está perdiendo esa conexión. Entonces, ¿qué tanto podemos también aprovechar estas épocas para pedir ampliar nuestra conexión con los espíritus de la naturaleza. Ahorita que estamos al lado del mar, ¿cuánto, todos los espíritus del agua, ¿cuántos están ahí para contribuirnos esperando tal cual nada más que los reconozcamos, que los que nos queramos vincular con ellos? Y en lugar de eso, nada más estamos así de, ¡ay, no! ¡Ay, qué bonito está el agua! <risa> Hay demasiada gente en el agua, no puedo recibir del agua porque hay demasiada gente. Nunca ha pasado, ¿verdad? No. Nadie ha dicho eso. Sí, tendemos a recibir de una manera superficial, en realidad, tan solo juzgando por lo que vemos, cuando en realidad podemos recibir y recibir mucho más de lo que no vemos, inclusive. ¿Cuánta información está más allá de lo que hemos decidido que no entendemos o porque no lo escuchamos con nuestros oídos de estos dos? Puede recibir, que para mí ha sido un regalo. Cuando mi abuela murió, me acuerdo que Justo estaba hablando con Claudia acá, no me preguntó, oye, ¿cómo estás? Porque fue como todo un proceso. Y traía un dolor de cabeza, pero un dolor de cabeza horrible. Entonces Claudia me empezó a hacer preguntas y me dijo, ok, ¿hay algo de información que te está tratando de dar? Y yo, sí. Y entonces me empezó a hacer preguntas. Y a lo que llegamos, ella murió con muchísima medicación, porque estaba muy adolorida. Entonces lo que fue como simplemente me estaba pidiendo ayuda, oye, ¿me puedes quitar todo el excedente de drogas, todo el excedente de medicamento que mi cuerpo tiene? Porque literalmente es una transición, por eso me encanta esta palabra, es simplemente un cambio. 
como que le hemos dado mucho peso y hemos hecho muy significativa la palabra muerte, ¿no? Se murió se y entonces no vamos a volver a saber de él cuando en realidad, sí, nada más que son energías que se muestran ahora de forma distinta. Y ya en cuanto hice eso, en cuanto pedí que se eliminaran, que se disiparan, todo fue mucho más ligero. Y entonces yo me dio un mensaje para un par de familiares y ese mensaje y voilà, el dolor de cabeza empezó a disminuir en cuanto empecé a reconocer toda la información que estaba resistiendo que se estaba presentando en mi cuerpo como dolor de cabeza. ¿Cuántos de ustedes han tenido una experiencia parecida que no han reconocido? Me encanta lo que dices. Quiero decir que tu cuerpo te da información no solamente a través de los ojos, o sea, no solamente a través de los ojos, también a través de la piel, de los, de, 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 de los órganos internos. Sensaciones. Hmm. Interesante. ¿Será que por eso tenemos un cuerpo entero y no nada más un par de ojos? Exacto. <risa> <risa> y que no, nada más tenemos cinco sentidos. En realidad tenemos un montón de formas más de recibir la información de toda la naturaleza y de todos los seres que están aquí. Me encanta eso. Entonces, ¿cuántos sentidos estás desechando o desdeñando en tu, en tu, de tu cuerpo? ¿Por qué no te los enseñaron en la escuela? Te tomaría para cambiar el sistema educativo. Ah, no, perdón. Open dreams, open dreams. Otra, otra cosa. Sí, creo que es otra cosa, perdón. Con la posibilidad. ¿Qué tomaría? Justo en la comida estábamos hablando de una eh, técnica que se llama visión extraocular, en donde le enseñan a los niños a leer con los ojos cerrados. Y eso, literalmente, por lo menos yo conozco varias escuelas en México. Entonces, si eso es posible, me pregunto cuánto más fácil pudiera ser el recibir la información y la capacidad que también tiene nuestro cuerpo de dar información si reconociéramos que está. ¿Y sabes qué es lo interesante de ese método, Alba? Que lo único que hacen con los niños es enseñarlos a vaciar su mente de juicios y de, pre, de, pro, de proyección. Es decir, literalmente el curso se trata de, ok, ¿eso es, un, eso, ¿eso es algo cierto o eso es una proyección, es una expectativa, es un juicio, es algo que estás pensando o es algo que sí es? Y en el momento en que se vacía de todos esos puntos de vista, es cuando dejan de necesitar los ojos para saber lo que hay alrededor. Claro. No vayan a intentar este método en su casa por su cuenta. Tienen que ir al curso, si no, no lo van a aprender. Obviamente. Pero, ¿y, ¿y qué tal si empezamos a reconocer que la barrera entre lo visible y lo invisible es solamente, digamos, inventada, enseñada? Sí, es algo que vamos formando con todas las definiciones, como la definición de la muerte. ¿Cuántas definiciones tienes de muerte que no te permiten recibir, recibir de, los muertos? de los muertos? Pues creo que eso es todo. Pues sí, parece que es parece todo. Parece que, que es la información que queríamos dar el día de hoy. Les agradecemos mucho a todos los que están viendo esto en vivo y a todos los que verán en el futuro cuánta más facilidad y gozo podemos tener en recibir de todas las energías, más allá de las definiciones que tenemos de lo que es apropiado, correcto, usual uh -huh. o inusual. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos. Gracias. gracias. De este mensajitos y comentarios también. Los agradecemos muchísimo. Que no Hasta se la vayan. Próxima. <risa> Bye. Chao, chao. ¿Qué tal amigos? Los saludo con muchísimo gusto. ¿Qué más es posible? De verdad, para mí es un, es un honor estar aquí con ustedes compartiendo herramientas de Talk to the Entities, una clase que a mí me encanta, de verdad. Es una clase que ha creado muchísimo para mí. Y bueno, este especial que de verdad Shannon creó, el grupo de, de Hablando con las Entidades para todos nosotros, para compartir las herramientas y para clarificar tanta información a veces equivocada que tenemos sobre, sobre este tema, sobre entidades, espíritus y fantasmas. Así es de que yo estoy fascinada, fascinada de verdad, gracias a las personas que se están conectando. Les comento que estoy en la Ciudad de México en primer día de una clase y casualmente hoy estuvimos viendo este tema de entidades. 
y, y cuánto de verdad cuando... Bueno, yo les voy a contar un poquito de mí. En el 2017 yo tomé mi primera clase de Hablando con las Entidades. Fue cuando me certifiqué, de hecho, me certifiqué en Viena. Y, y realmente yo siempre lo platico en mis clases. Las entidades me llevaron a esa clase. Las entidades eh, hicieron todo todo lo que se tenía que hacer y hasta lo que no para que yo estuviera ahí. Y, y de verdad, desde ese momento en el que yo me convertí en facilitadora certificada de, de entidades, me abría unas posibilidades que, que de verdad en mi mundo no, no había conocido. Cuando realmente reconocí todas las habilidades, las capacidades que, que yo tenía. Entonces, mi invitación para ti el día de hoy también es que tú te reconozcas, que tú reconozcas todas esas habilidades que has tenido por ahí, guardaditas, escondidas, porque quizá nadie en tu familia las valida, porque quizá tus amigos te juzguen de loco, de loca, y entonces... En este espacio tan bello, tan amigable, tan amable, donde tú te puedes expresar, donde tú puedes realmente exponer, estoy yo aquí ahora, de verdad, me encantaría eh, tus preguntas, no sé qué preguntas tengas acerca de este tema, mientras no lleguen las preguntas, bueno, yo voy a estar hablando, me encanta hablar, las personas que ya han tomado clases conmigo, ya saben que me encanta, es un tema que me fascina, este tema de hablando con las entidades. Y, y bueno, también voy a estar uh, haciendo aclaradores, facilitándolos. ¿Qué es eso que les gustaría? ¿Qué pregunta tienen ustedes el día de hoy acerca de entidades? Y el día de hoy yo tuve un regalito por ahí. Les compartí un audio precisamente eh, para, para que ustedes comiencen a, a estar un poquito más presentes con estas energías y se abran a este espacio de, de recibir ¿Ok? Entonces, bueno, vamos a hacer unos aclaradores y todo, la, todas las proyecciones, expectativas, conclusiones, juicios acerca de las entidades. ¿Estarías dispuesto, dispuesta el día de hoy a destruir y a crear todo esto? Uf, acertado, equivocado, bueno, malo, podipoc, todos los nueve, cortos, chicos y más allá. Y de verdad, ¿cuánto te has juzgado? ¿Cuántas vidas llevas juzgándote por, por ser consciente de entidades y que esta realidad ni siquiera lo valida? Entonces, en todas las vidas donde has funcionado desde el juicio de ti acerca de las entidades, ¿lo destruirías y descrearías? ¿Multiplicado por un dios y yo en todas las dimensiones y realidades? ¿Acertado, equivocado, bonitos nueves, cortos, chicos y más allá? Y bueno... ¿Qué tanto también, ahorita que comenta alguien del miedo, qué tanto de verdad, cuántas vidas tenemos funcionando desde el miedo? Y no nada más con entidades, en todo lo que estamos creando. ¿Cuánto de verdad, cuántas vidas más te gustaría estar deteniendo tus creaciones por el miedo? Entonces, todos los implantes distractores que estás eligiendo con entidades, los destruirías y descrearías multiplicado por un diosillón. Acertado, equivocado, bueno, malo, podipoc, todos los nueve, cortos, chicos y más allá. Me voy a desconectar de internet de otra, de aquí de mi um, iPad, porque al parecer me está marcando baja resolución, pero ya, eso ya está. Y vamos a, vamos a pedir a todas las entidades cibernéticas atrás, atrás, más espacio, por favor. Esta es una herramienta que de verdad a mí me encanta. Siempre cuando estamos con temas de, de entidades, con clases en línea, Comenzamos a tener como estas, este tipo de situaciones a veces. Entonces, ¿cómo sería bajar nuestras barreras? Bajemos barreras y simplemente vamos a decirle a todas estas entidades atrás, atrás. Y bueno, alguien hacía una pregunta sobre, sobre miedos. A mí me dan miedo las entidades. Ok, fíjense que pasa algo muy curioso. Con, con el miedo, que realmente cuánto hemos estado nosotros funcionando desde este implante distractor. ¿Y qué quiere decir esto? Que simplemente es algo que te está distrayendo precisamente de accesar a tus capacidades, habilidades y potencias. ¿Cuánto de tus habilidades y capacidades con entidades están encubiertos, están ahí tapaditos con este miedo que estás eligiendo? Entonces, entonces... 
A mí, de verdad, me encanta tocar este tema porque pasa algo muy curioso cuando en la clase, ¿cuántos de aquí ya tomaron la clase? Estoy viendo varias personas conectadas que han tomado la clase conmigo, de verdad. ¡Wow! Gracias, gracias por estar aquí acompañándome. Estoy súper contenta. Eh, ¿Y qué ¿Cuánto ha cambiado nuestro universo a raíz de que con estas herramientas de la clase de Hablando con las Entidades, el comienzo, comenzamos a deshacer, a destruir y descrear todos los implantes distractores? Entonces, bueno, volviendo al aclarador, eh, ahora con esta nueva información, si es que no has tomado la clase y si es que es la, en la primera conexión que tienes de estos Facebook Lives que están desde... Desde las 12 de la noche, que ya están varios facilitadores cada media hora, y Shannon hace una hora que estuvo en su live, la verdad, súper potente, maravillosa mujer, creadora, a la cual yo estoy súper agradecida, eh, y cuánto estamos funcionando desde el miedo. Imagínate que estás en tu cama, en la noche, ahí ya acostadito, tapadito, y de repente, ¡fum!, un ruido, ¡ah! ¿Qué hacemos? ¡Ay, me tapo! ¡No quiero saber nada! El corazón, tum, 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 las manos sudando. Y de verdad, ¿cuánto estamos cortando nuestra elección con la elección del miedo? Entonces, en todos los lugares donde estás apagando tu conciencia en favor de los implantes distractores del miedo, que te están impidiendo elegir algo diferente, estarías dispuesto o dispuesta el día de hoy a destruir y descrear, disipar y liberar todo esto por toda la eternidad, en todas las dimensiones y realidades. ¡Wow! Acertado, equivocado, bueno y malo, podipoc, todos los nueve, cortos, chicos y más allá. Yo les comento que esta clase de Hablando con las Entidades el comienzo, hagan de cuenta que se van a poner la capa de los superpoderes. Después de tomar esta clase, no nada más, ya no va a haber miedo a entidades, ya no va a haber miedo absolutamente a nada. Y entonces, ¿qué crees? No hay límite. ¿Qué es eso que ya definiste que es el límite de tus creaciones? Con entidades, con tu futuro, con tu presente, con cualquiera de tus realidades. Entonces, en todos los lugares donde le pusiste un límite a tus elecciones en favor del miedo, lo destruirías y descrearías, multiplicado por un diosillón en todas las dimensiones y realidades. Acertado, equivocado, bueno y malo, podipoc, todos los nueve, cortos, chicos y más allá. Y sí, de verdad, eso fue lo que pasó conmigo y eso es lo que yo siempre comparto. Eh, yo era una persona sumamente miedosa, a pesar, a pesar de que yo tenía estas habilidades con entidades, estas capacidades, yo obviamente las tenía como enterradas en lo más profundo de, de, del baúl de todas mis herramientas. Y bueno, yo era una persona súper insegura, súper miedosa, aparentemente. Aparentemente lo digo porque de verdad, ¿cuántas mentiras hay ahí? ¿Cuánto nos hemos comprado que somos miedosos y que somos inseguros? Entonces, en todos los lugares, en todas las dimensiones, vidas, donde tú estás funcionando, has estado funcionando desde este implante distractor, ¿estarías dispuesto o dispuesta el día de hoy a destruir y descrear? Acertado, equivocado, bueno, malo, podipoc, todos los nueve, cortos, chicos y más allá. ¿Y de qué eres consciente con entidades? ¿De qué eres consciente que no has estado dispuesto a ser consciente? Porque has comprado muchísima información de las revistas, de las películas, de otras personas que han distorsionado toda esta información. Y de verdad, cuando tú te abres a recibir, cuando te abres realmente, cuando funcionas más allá del miedo, ¿qué está ahí disponible para ti? ¿Qué es eso que está disponible para ti con entidades que no había estado disponible precisamente por estos implantes distractores de miedo que habías estado eligiendo. Todo lo que te impida reconocer tus capacidades infinitas de recibir de entidades, ¿estarías dispuesto o dispuesta a destruir y crear todo esto? Multiplicado por un diosillón en todas las dimensiones y realidades. Uf. Acertado, equivocado, bueno y malo, podipoc, todos los nueve, cortos, chicos y más allá. Y también, ¿cuántas veces nosotros hemos abandonado eh, esta intuición, estas capacidades y habilidades psíquicas con entidades porque lo hemos hecho equivocado, 
porque creemos que estamos locos, porque no hay muchas personas con las que nosotros podamos validar todo esto para empezar nuestra familia, ¿no? Y por eso es que de verdad este espacio que se abre con esta clase de Hablando con las Entidades es algo maravilloso, es un gran regalo, porque precisamente esta es único, no soy la única loca. <risa> Habemos muchas personas con estas habilidades y capacidades y aunque tú no lo creas, tú que me estás viendo, que crees que tú no... Sí, todos los que están aquí, que están haciendo como que ustedes no tienen habilidades, ¿cómo sería si el día de hoy estarían dispuestos, dispuestas a reconocer estas habilidades? Y veo aquí varias personas conectadas que estuvieron conmigo en la clase del fundamento y aparte es, han estado conmigo en entidades que habían dicho, yo todas las clases, pero entidades no. Y cuando han estado en la clase y de verdad han reconocido todos estos regalos, wow, se abre un universo totalmente diferente. Y bueno, el día de hoy me gustaría regalarles, me gustaría regalarles un ejercicio energético, de verdad, eh, para dejar ir todo eso donde nos hemos estado alineando a, a los juicios de los demás, donde nos hemos estado alineando al miedo, ¿ok? Entonces, eh, Jessica pregunta, ¿qué pasa con las creencias religiosas donde dicen que es malo hablar de entidades? ¡Wow! Todo, todos, todos los proyecciones, expectativas, juicios, conclusiones que hemos llegado nosotros precisamente por todo lo que hemos comprado de iglesias, cultos, universidades que han hecho malo, equivocado, distorsionado el comunicarse con entidades, el hablar con entidades, estaríamos dispuestos, dispuestas el día de hoy a destruir y a descrear todo esto, multiplicado por un diosillón en todas las dimensiones y realidades, acertado, equivocado, malo, podipo, todos los nueve, cortos, chicos y más allá. Wow, ¿qué más es posible? Y sí, ¿cuánto de verdad la religión nos ha llevado a este espacio para controlarnos, no? Para siempre desde ese implante distractor del miedo, de la culpa, de la acusación y cuánto nosotros hemos estado funcionando también desde este espacio, ¿no? Por todo eso que nosotros también hemos visto que la, que la gente hace. Entonces, ¿cuánto de todo lo que tú has comprado de entidades, espíritus, fantasmas, ni siquiera es tuyo? Está ahí y a lo mejor ni siquiera lo escuchaste a nadie. Así llegó, telepáticamente, energéticamente, todo fue implantado y ahí está, y ni siquiera sabes de dónde llegó y ya lo estás viviendo, ya lo estás haciendo, ¿ok? Entonces, todos los implantes distractores de culpa, acusación que compraste de la iglesia, de tu religión, de cultos, todo esto estarías dispuesto, dispuesta a revocar, rescindir, retractar, renunciar, denunciar, destruir y descrear todo esto en todas las dimensiones, realidades, por un diosillón. Uf, acertado, equivocado, bueno y malo, podipoc, todos los nueve, cortos, chicos y más allá. Y si llegan en estas fechas las personas que se han ido, precisamente el día de hoy que lancé mi audio, hablé yo precisamente por, en México tenemos una tradición en estos días que es Día de Muertos, y de verdad cuánto hemos nosotros hecho malo, equivocado, eh, incorrecto mi, y con miedo a la muerte. Entonces, cuánto hemos parado nuestra creación, porque ya estamos esperando la muerte, ¿no? Todo lo que esto es multiplicado por un Dios y yo, lo destruimos y descreamos. Acertado, equivocado, bueno, malo, podipoc, todos los nueve, cortos, chicos y más allá. Y realmente, ¿qué tal si solamente vamos a cambiar de vehículo terrenal? ¿Qué tal si un ser infinito de verdad muere? Y todas las mentiras que hemos comprado sobre la muerte, <risa> lo destruiríamos y descrearíamos. Acertado, equivocado, bueno y malo, podipoc, todos los nueve, cortos, chicos y más allá. ¿Qué tal si esos seres que se fueron de este cuerpo, con este cuerpo, están ahí y simplemente están en otra energía? Y son precisamente esas entidades, espíritus que están ahí, solamente que ya no están con su cuerpo físico. ¿Y cuánto, cuántas entidades están ahí deseosas de contribuirnos? ¿Cuántas veces, como les decía, escuchamos el ruido y ¡ay, me tapo, no quiero saber nada! Y resulta de que es un familiar, es alguien que se quiere comunicar contigo, que te quiere contribuir, que desea ser facilitado. 
y, y, y tú ya lo hiciste mal o incorrecto, imperfecto, porque ya definiste de acuerdo a lo que, a lo que es tu concepto de entidades desde, desde esta realidad que eso es malo. Entonces, ¿cuántos regalos están queriendo entregarte estas entidades que no habías estado reconociendo? Y es precisamente por eso que, que me gustaría hacer este ejercicio energético con ustedes eh, sobre reconocer, reconocer que cuánto desde otras vidas venimos funcionando desde, desde los miedos y también cuánto desde otras vidas ya traemos habilidades y capacidades con entidades y no lo estamos reconociendo. Entonces, si puedes, si no vas manejando, si estás en un espacio tranquilo y si no, bueno, este video se va a quedar ahí, tú lo puedes eh, accesar en cualquier momento y si puedes en estos momentos cerrar tus ojos, bajar tus barreras y cuánto esas barreras, la mente, el estrés, el miedo nos están alejando de elegir algo totalmente diferente con entidades. Entonces, baja tus barreras, baja tus barreras, cierra tus ojos si estás en un espacio donde los puedas cerrar. Simplemente relájate. Y haz un escaneo energético, no tienes que visualizar absolutamente nada, no es visualizar, simplemente conéctate con las energías de tus vidas pasadas, conéctate con estas energías en donde tuviste que esconderte por tus habilidades con entidades donde era algo malo, complicado, incluso donde fuiste encerrado, encerrada, mutilado, sacrificado, por mostrar habilidades psíquicas. Y todos los sistemas de secuencias trifásicas conectados a estos eventos traumáticos, cómo sería el día de hoy disipar y liberar, destruir y descrear en tu universo, sistema y en todas esas vidas, todos los códigos de asimilación en todos los lugares, en todas las vidas donde estás codificado con miedo a entidades, espíritus y fantasmas, estarías dispuesto el día de hoy a revocar, rescindir, retractar, renunciar, denunciar, destruir y descrear todo esto, multiplicado por un dios sillón, en todas las dimensiones, realidades, vidas pasadas, acertado, equivocado, bueno, malo, podipoc, todos los nueve, cortos, chicos y más allá. ¿Cuánto de tu miedo a entidades era una codificación de otras vidas? Todo lo que esto es, multiplicado por un diosillón, lo destruimos y descreamos. Acertado, equivocado, bueno, malo, podipo, todos los nueve, cortos, chicos y más allá. Y bajamos más nuestras barreras, bajen barreras, bajen barreras. Le voy a subir aquí volumen. Espero que ya me escuchen mejor. Dulce María, si me escuchas mejor, avísame. Y bueno, ahora nos vamos a ir. Seguimos conectados en esas vidas. Y después de destruir y descrear, disipar y liberar todas esas memorias de dolor, de escondernos, de ser juzgados por ser brujos, brujas, todos los sistemas de secuencias trifásicas conectados a esto, destruir y descrear, disipar y liberar. Acertado, equivocado, bueno, malo, podipoc, todos los nueve, cortos, chicos y más allá. Todos los implantes distractores de miedo, culpa, acusación que compraste de otras vidas 
que trajiste a esta realidad, que no están creando absolutamente nada contributivo, estarías dispuesto o dispuesta el día de hoy a destruir, descrear, disipar y liberar. Acertado, equivocado, bueno, malo, podipoc, todos los nueve cortos, chicos y más allá. Y bueno, ¿cómo sería ahora, así con tus ojitos cerrados, que estás con ojos cerrados? <coughs> Conéctate y... a esas vidas donde tenías estas habilidades, estas capacidades psíquicas con entidades, espíritus, fantasmas, y reconoce que están ahí. ¿Qué tomaría que en esta vida reconozcas una, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco vidas donde tú Tenías estas habilidades, las desarrollabas, las disfrutabas y contribuías con ellas. ¿Qué tomaría? Recuerda, no es una visualización, simplemente percibe esas energías. Percibe las energías de esas vidas. ¿Y cómo sería traer esas energías a esta vida? reconocerlas, integrarlas en esta realidad contigo. Todo lo que impida esto, multiplicado por un diosillón, lo destruirías y descrearías. Acertado, equivocado, bueno y malo, podipoc, todos los nueve cortos chicos y más allá. Todo lo que te impida reconocer de lo que eres consciente que rehúsas ser consciente, lo destruirías y descrearías multiplicado por un diosillón. Acertado, equivocado, bueno y malo, podipoc, todos los nueve cortos, chicos y más allá. ¡Wow! ¿Qué más es posible? Poco a poco podemos ir abriendo nuestros ojos. Vayan abriendo sus ojos y si lo cerraron. ¿Y qué más es posible? ¿Y cómo puede mejorar? ¿Qué habilidades con entidades no habías estado dispuesto a reconocer? Todo lo que esto es multiplicado por un diosillón, lo destruyes y descreas. Acertado, equivocado, bueno, malo, podipoc, todos los nueve cortos, chicos y más allá. Poco a poco vamos abriendo nuestros ojos y platíquenme cómo les fue con este ejercicio, platíquenme qué tal. Qué rico, ¿no? Qué rico reconocer que ahí están las habilidades, ahí están la conciencia. Y cuánto hemos renunciado. Gracias María Fernanda, gracias Diego, de verdad. Eh, cuánto está ahí energéticamente y, y por estar en la mente hemos también, nos hemos hecho equivocados, ¿no? con estas energías, entonces, cuánta expansión, así es, cuánta expansión, eh, y bueno, recuerden las preguntas, eh, gracias de verdad, eh, bueno, muchas veces la conciencia a veces no es tan cómoda, va a haber ocasiones en que vamos a tener algunas intensidades, bueno, ¿qué más es posible?, ¿qué tal si si es parte a veces de ser consciente, ¿no? Entonces, yo te diría, Delia, de que eres consciente, que no quieres ser consciente, que estás rechazando ser consciente. Todo lo que esto es multiplicado por un diosillón, lo destruirías y descrearías. Acertado, equivocado, bueno y malo, podipoc, todos los nueve cortos, chicos y más allá. Mi Glenda, wow, ¿qué más es posible? Tres vidas liberación, de verdad, sí, cuánto, cuánto este ejercicio nos lleva a reconocer la energía que somos y la energía que somos capaces y todo lo que podemos crear. Parte de lo que me interesaba compartir este ejercicio con ustedes es hay muchos regalos con entidades. Muchos de ustedes ya sé que ya tomaron mis clases. Eh, tengo una clase que es Dinero y Entidades donde vamos más allá del miedo con entidades eh, y es parte de esos regalos. ¿Qué están queriendo regalarte las entidades? Como te comentaba hace un rato. 
que por esos implantes de miedo no, no, has, no has podido recibir. ¿Cuántas veces? Ni siquiera. Y ya no estoy hablando de entidades, espíritus y fantasmas. Gracias por todos sus comentarios, de verdad, gracias, gracias, gracias. Eh, y cuánto muchas veces no somos ni si, no estamos dispuestos ni siquiera a recibir cuando alguien nos dice, oye, qué bien te ves. Entonces, perciban, después de este ejercicio, abran su corona, bajen sus barreras un poco más y de verdad perciban esas entidades que están ahí queriendo de verdad regalarles su energía, contribuirles. Y si quieren, vuelvan a cerrar sus ojos y simplemente reciban estas energías. Si hay algún proyecto que está por ahí pendiente que a ustedes les gustaría, simplemente reciban estas energías de estas entidades que están deseosas de contribuir. ¿Y cuántas vidas, de verdad, cuántas vidas tienen estas entidades deseando regalarnos? Y nosotros, cerrados, cerrados. Sin embargo, hoy... Gracias por abrirse a este espacio, por abrir su ser, por bajar sus barreras, por estar en permisión, por estar listos, como dice Klaus, gracias, listos para recibir, listos para hacer el regalo que ustedes son y cuánto ustedes también pueden contribuir a las entidades. Esto es un regalar, recibir, regalar, recibir, porque así como recibimos, también nosotros les estamos regalando, regalar, recibir. Entonces, todo lo que nos impida hacer esta energía de regalar, recibir, lo destruimos y descreamos. Acertado, equivocado, bueno, malo, podipoc, todos los nueve, cortos, chicos y más allá. Saludo a las personas que están en diferentes partes del mundo, de verdad, y a las personas que se están conectando próximamente, pues ya en dos, tres semanas, voy a estar en Mérida, Puerto Vallarta, Santana, California, eh, a veces ya me, me pierdo de, de las ciudades que estoy, pero bueno, me pueden encontrar en redes sociales, Elma Galván CF, en YouTube estoy compartiendo muchísima información también, Instagram, de verdad, qué más es posible, y, y, y no nada más yo, tantos facilitadores que estamos contribuyendo con nuestras energías. Eh, y yo les doy las gracias por estar jugando aquí conmigo, por estar en este espacio. Eh, voy, a, voy a cerrar ya porque... Después de mí siguen otros facilitadores. Estoy súper agradecida con ustedes por haber estado el día de hoy aquí conmigo jugando con estas herramientas y qué tomaría a los que no conozco en persona algún día por ahí que lleguen a alguna de mis clases y los que ya tomaron clases conmigo. Estoy de verdad agradecidísima con ustedes de que estén aquí acompañándome en este día, en este en este evento que de verdad está siendo tan contributivo, tan divertido también eh, y, y que realmente cuánto nos podemos contribuir con todos los facilitadores, cada uno desde su perspectiva, desde sus experiencias, desde su saber. Entonces, bueno, ¿qué más es posible? ¿Cómo puede mejorar? Gracias, los veo muy, muy pronto. Un abrazote. Besos. Hola, ¿cómo están? Hola, hola. Feliz Halloween. Feliz Halloween. Feliz Día de Brujas. Feliz Día de Brujos para todos. ¿Cómo están? Bienvenidos a este especial de Día de Halloween de 24, 24 horas aquí en el grupo de Hablando con las Entidades. Talk to the Entities, y cómo somos tan afortunados de tener estas, este día de brujos y de brujas donde podemos hablar de esta magia y de esta conciencia que es, y este regalo que pueden ser las entidades si nos permitimos que sean. Así que he estado viendo a algunos de los maravillosos facilitadores de Hablando con las Entidades, a Shannon, que estuvo aquí, eh, hablando de muy diferentes temas y muy diferentes ángulos de lo que es Hablando con las Entidades. Quizá ustedes hayan visto todos, quizá hayan visto algunos nada más, 
eh, o quizá los vayan a ver, los que no han visto todavía, los vayan a ver en, en el futuro. Hola, Isabela, hi. Así que gracias por estar aquí y continuar con esta fiesta de brujos y de brujas y de cosas sobrenaturales. Y hablar con entidades es uno de estos temas que en esta realidad es muy juzgada por ser algo sobrenatural. Y por este juicio de que es algo sobrenatural, muchos de nosotros no elegimos estar en este espacio donde puedes recibir, donde puedes recibir contribución, donde puedes crear con entidades. Y creamos esta separación tan grande que muchas veces eh, encontramos una separación que a veces usamos el miedo para separarnos, a veces usamos la culpa, a veces usamos la vergüenza para separarnos de esta capacidad que todos tenemos. Hablar con entidades es una capacidad que absolutamente todos tenemos porque entidad es toda aquella energía que tiene una definición. Así que cuando muchos de nosotros tenemos el punto de vista que hablar con entidades significa únicamente hablar con eh, fantasmas o con, lo, con un, un ser que en algún momento tuvo cuerpo y ahora no tiene cuerpo, ¿no? Y esto crea un montón de resistencia porque entonces estamos en este mundo sobrenatural y nosotros, sobre todo todos los que estamos aquí, somos súper, su, súper naturales. No sobrenaturales, sino súper naturales. Lo más natural que podemos encontrar en el universo somos nosotros, seguramente, ¿no? Y nunca, queremos, nunca nos permitimos el elegir absolutamente todo, todo lo que somos y todas las capacidades que tenemos. Y entonces creamos esta separación tan interesante. Pero aquí hay quizá algo que nos pudiéramos estar preguntando. Si yo me separo de la posibilidad de comunicarme y crear con entidades, ¿cuánto me estoy separando de mí? Porque tú eres una entidad también. ¡Ay, ya sé! ¡Es horrible! <risa> tú eres una entidad también. <risa> Entonces, cuando creas esta separación, no es solamente, bueno, no quiero eh, tener comunicación o, o crear con estas entidades que antes tuvieron cuerpo y ahora no tienen cuerpo y entonces son un fantasma. Tú te cierras a las posibilidades de percibir, de crear y de comunicarte con cualquier entidad. Y tú eres una entidad. So, ¿Cuánta separación? ¿Y qué has usado para esta separación que has creado entre tú y tú? Y así asegurarte de que no seas tan extraño, tan raro y tan sobrenatural como para hablar con entidades. Wow. Y este gran regalo que es hablando con las entidades, que estoy infinitamente agradecida con Shannon, porque ella ha creado, con Shannon O'Hara, creadora de estas... Eh, de esta especialización, de estas herramientas especiales para comunicarnos con las entidades, porque ella ha creado este, este espacio donde todo esto que es sobrenatural, todo esto donde no se habla en otros lugares sin que haya un uh, ah, no, o lo que sea que hagan, ella ha creado este espacio de permisión donde podemos explorar esta, esta capacidad que todos tenemos, porque todos tenemos esta capacidad. Todos tenemos esta capacidad. No hay nadie que no pueda comunicarse con entidades. So, ¿cuánto, 
es esta capacidad que tú tienes y que has negado que tienes. Y que serías capaz de destruir tu vida para defender el que no lo tienes, el que no tienes esta capacidad. So, todo lo que esto haya sido, pues cámbialo, destruye y descrea. Haz, ¿qué tal que puedes crear, elegir una cosa completamente diferente, abriéndote a las posibilidades? ¿Y qué tan afortunados somos de tener un espacio donde están todas estas herramientas y las puedas usar no solamente para hablar con entidades, sino para salir de esta confusión, de estos puntos de vista eh, religiosos, de estos puntos de vista eh, esotéricos, de estos puntos de vista de New Age, de lo que son o no son entidades, o cómo te puedes comunicar, o qué tan difícil es, o cómo son las entidades y el poder que tienen sobre ti y el poder que tienen sobre tu vida. ¿Qué tal que no tienen ningún poder en tu vida? A menos de que tú se los des. Y eso también es una maravillosa elección que en cualquier momento tú puedes cambiar y elegir algo totalmente diferente. ¿Cuál puede ser el regalo de conciencia que hablar con entidades o el abrirte a la posibilidad de comunicarte con entidades, de crear con entidades, de percibir entidades y no hacerlo significativo? ¿Sí? Porque para, imagínense, imagínense que hay muchísimas, no imagínense, sepan que hay muchísimas más entidades que personas con cuerpo en este planeta. Entonces, si tú creas una resistencia a este hecho, ¿sí? si tú, echa, tú, tú tienes toda esta resistencia a las entidades y es, hay muchas más entidades que personas en el planeta. ¿Cuánto estás usando esa resistencia para mantenerte en reacción por lo que percibes? Es como si yo tuviera resistencia a las personas y de repente viviera en un metro de Nueva York o en un metro de la Ciudad de México, o en un metro de, una, de París, ¿sí? Donde hay muchísimas personas que usan el metro y hay horas donde hay tantas personas en ese vagón que literalmente no puedes respirar porque no hay espacio suficiente para ti. Y que yo estuviera todo el tiempo en juicio porque estoy entre muchas personas en ese, en ese vagón de tren, de metro. Y entonces además estuviera castigando mi cuerpo por estar tan pegada con tantas personas en ese metro. No voy a desaparecer a las personas en el metro, pero puedo empezar a elegir algo que me cree facilidad para no solamente crear un espacio donde yo esté cómoda con estas personas, miles de personas en el metro junto conmigo, pero además podemos crear esta conexión donde me pueda comunicar con ellos y a lo mejor crear espacio para cada uno o a lo mejor nos vamos a poner de acuerdo en las horas en que nos vamos a encontrar o en los que no nos vamos a encontrar. Quizás si bajo mis barreras entonces pudiera tener información suficiente como para tener más facilidad en mi vida. En lugar de de todas maneras seguir en el metro porque estoy vivo en el metro, pero estar sufriendo todo el tiempo porque estoy percibiendo personas en el metro. Ya sé que suena como un poquito tonto, pero a veces tenemos esta reacción con las entidades. Es tanto nuestro rechazo que quisiéramos que desapareciera, pero no van a desaparecer. Quizá lo que requerimos es educarnos uh -huh, y entonces crear más facilidad en tu vida. Y hablando con las entidades es esto, educarte en un tema que ya conoces, que tienes capacidades de, conscientes para ello y que has negado quizá toda tu vida y has juzgado quizá toda tu vida 
Y ahora puedes educarte de tal manera que tengas una conciencia que te cree facilidad con todas esas entidades que van a seguir presentes en tu vida. Y quizá ahora puedas encontrar un espacio donde tú puedas seguir creando tu vida con facilidad alrededor de esas entidades sin ninguna reacción y sin tener que alinearte con absolutamente nada de ellas. ¿Qué regalo pudiera hacer esta, esta disponibilidad para estar presente con entidades? No ignorarlas y estar presente con ellas. Porque ¿cuánto te ha funcionado el estar, tratar de ignorar algo que está ahí que tú sabes que es verdad? ¿Cuán estúpido te tienes que volver para ignorar algo que es totalmente real para ti y que lo estás percibiendo todo el tiempo de diferentes formas? Quizás si tú le preguntaras a tu cuerpo cómo es que percibes entidades, pudieras tener claridad la próxima vez que estás con entidades y puedas empezar a ver qué espacio es posible para ti con ellas. <coughs> Más allá de tenerlas que sacar de tu vida o ignorarlas o excluirlas. ¿Cómo podrías incluirlas sabiendo que están ahí? Y tener facilidad con ello. Y quizá no tengas que hacer absolutamente nada. Quizá no tengas que comunicarte con ellas o hablar con ellas, como yo estoy hablando contigo o con esta computadora que también es una entidad. Estoy hablando con una entidad que es una computadora. ¿Qué tal que tú pudieras estar en este espacio donde estás dispuesto, aunque sea a reconocer, a reconocer, que están ahí y no ignorarlas. ¿Qué podría crear en tu vida el que estés dispuesto a esto? Y si hoy cambiaras solamente esto, si has estado en resistencia con entidades y hoy pudieras cambiar solo esto, el no resistirte, el no ignorarlas, el no juzgar que estén ahí, solamente permitirte reconocer que sabes que están ahí, y no ignorarlas más. Porque ¿cuánto de tu vida tienes que ignorar para ignorar una energía tan grande como es la cantidad de entidades que hay? ¿Qué tan, qué tan insensible, qué tan eh, imperceptible pueden, puedes hacerlas como para ignorar que existen cuando hay tantas? ¿Y qué otras cosas te permitirías empezar a reconocer que percibes, que sabes, que recibes y que eres? ¿Cuánto se expandiría tu conciencia? ¿Cuánto se expandiría tu recibir? Si en algún momento de tu vida recibieras, estuvieras dispuesto a recibir algo tan juzgado como entidades. Pues si pudieras cambiar eso hoy, y a lo mejor, y a eso te invito si nunca lo has hecho, ah, solamente está dispuesto y hazte esta demanda de hoy estoy dispuesto a reconocer las entidades y dejar de ignorarlas y dejar de juzgarlas. No tienes que hacer nada. Quizá solamente con reconocerlas, mucha de tu vida <coughs> tenga mucha más facilidad de lo que has tenido hasta ahora, mucha parte de tu vida. Así que esa es mi invitación hoy de, si puedes empezar a reconocerlo, bajar tus barreras totalmente y permitirte percibir y permitirte reconocer que hay entidades y que no todas están ahí ni para contribuir y tampoco están ahí para no contribuir, solamente están ahí. Si te abrieras hoy a ese espacio y ya después, si tienes más herramientas y tú eliges comunicarte con ellas y tú, tú eliges crear con ellas y ser, permitir que contribuyan a tu vida o no, eso quizás sea más adelante 
y elijas una clase o elijas leer el libro maravilloso de Hablando con las Entidades que escribió Shannon, o elijas alguna otra cosa que cree para ti mayor facilidad. Pero mi invitación es eso. ¿Qué tal si dejas de ignorar lo que sabes? ¿Qué tal si dejas de ignorar lo que percibes? ¿Qué tal si dejas de ignorar lo que sabes que puedes recibir? Y que dejas de ignorar ese mundo que no está tan separado de ti, que es parte también de tu realidad, aunque siempre quieras estar en una realidad que no es tu realidad. ¿Qué tal si en tu realidad, esa realidad que funciona para ti, las entidades también están presentes y las reconoces? Y les puedes decir, hola, ya sé que estás aquí, solamente hola. Sí, sí, ya sé que estás aquí. A lo mejor este no es el momento para hacer nada más. Voy a buscar a alguien más. Pero es que, hola, hola. Sí, ya te reconocí. No te voy a ignorar, ni voy a ignorar mis, mis capacidades, mis habilidades para percibir, recibir, saber y ser. Esa es mi invitación. Y... No sé si alguien tenga alguna pregunta. Mm, gracias, gracias por estar aquí. Wow, gracias, gracias por estar aquí. ¿Qué más es posible? Cuando empezamos a recibir a las entidades. Y yo les puedo contar que cada vez que tengo la maravillosa, eh, el maravilloso honor de facilitar una clase de hablando con las entidades, ya sea la clase de dos días o ya sea la introducción o ya sea una clase de alguna especialidad de hablando con las entidades, es algo de mi vida se expande y crece. Si yo me permito recibir más, si yo me permito percibir más, no solamente se va a mostrar en las entidades, se va a mostrar en mi dinero. Se va a mostrar en mi habilidad de percibir el gozo de esta encarnación. Se va a mostrar en muchas otras cosas que quizá yo he dejado de percibir por estarme cuidando y filtrando de no quiero percibir entidades, eso está como demasiado loco, soy, soy loca pero normal loca, o soy rara pero rara normal, no quiero ser tan anormal. Cuando todo quizá sobre ti es mucho más allá de lo que en esta realidad es normal. ¿Qué tal si eres todo lo sobrenatural que tú sabes que eres? Lo reconoces y lo abrazas. Y bueno, espero que esto... Eh, ay, de Río Grande, gracias. ¿Alguna vez tuviste alguna charla con alguna entidad interesante? Wow. <coughs> He tenido muchas charlas y qué, qué bueno que haces esta pregunta porque no es, a las, con las entidades no te comunicas con palabras. Sabemos que nuestro primer idioma no son las palabras, no es el, el lenguaje que hablamos, es la energía. Y esta es la forma con la que tú te comunicas con una entidad. entidad. Es como te comunicas, por ejemplo con eh, las plantas que hay en tu casa. Tú quizá les puedas hablar a las plantas, pero las plantas no te hablan en tu idioma a ti. Sin embargo, tú percibes la energía de las plantas. Sabes si requieren agua, si están contentas, si requieren sol. Lo mismo con las mascotas. Tampoco tú les puedes hablar y al mismo tiempo percibir la respuesta o lo que ellos te están diciendo pero no lo hacen con tu idioma, lo hacen con la energía, ¿sí? Es de una manera telepática la comunicación. Entonces, las charlas pueden ser muy diferentes a cuando charlas con una persona que tiene cuerpo, porque nosotros tratamos de poner toda esa energía en palabras y ellas no usan las palabras. Entonces, ¿qué tal que la comunicación con entidades, es totalmente diferente a lo que ya decidiste que puede ser. 
¿Y cuál es tu manera, tu forma, tu estilo, tu energía para comunicarte con las entidades con total facilidad? Sí, sí, Silvina, ¿qué tan sobrenaturales podemos ser hoy y cada día? Abrazando todo lo más allá de lo natural que eres, todo lo mágico, todo lo, toda la conciencia, todo lo que tú sabes que es posible, que puedes crear, que puedes cambiar, que puedes sobrecrear, simplemente con tu elección. ¿Sí? Gracias. ¿Sería hablar con entidades, hablar con los animales? Es una forma. Es una entidad con cuerpo, ¿sí? Entonces, y, y como decía al principio, yo soy una entidad con cuerpo, pero soy una entidad también. Tú, cada uno de ustedes que están aquí, que tienen cuerpo, también son una entidad. Un marav una maravillosa entidad con un maravilloso cuerpo. Um, ¿Se pueden ver o escuchar? Bueno, ¿tú qué sabes de que se puede? Se puede, tú puedes. Tú sabes cómo, o quizá no requieras eso. Hay personas que pueden hablar, que pueden escuchar, que pueden ver, y, que, y algunas que no. ¿Qué es lo que tú sabes y cuáles son tus capacidades? ¿Ok? ¿Qué más es posible? Muchas, muchas, muchas gracias por estar aquí. Gracias por estar en este especial de 24 horas en todos los idiomas que se puedan imaginar. Y gracias por seguir este especial, gracias por estar abiertos a recibir las herramientas de un grupo de locos, de muchos locos, cada vez somos más, que hablamos de hablar con las entidades. Y que tomaría que mucha más gente tenga conciencia de esto y en lugar de medicarnos, eduquemos y en lugar de hacernos los locos, aprendamos y recordemos lo que sabemos y entremos a la conciencia que realmente somos. Muchas gracias, feliz día de brujos y brujas, brujos y brujas, feliz Halloween, nos vemos después, bye bye. Good morning everybody, well, whatever time it is for you, for me it is 7.37 a.m. Happy Halloween from a very sleepy talk to the entities facilitator. Sorry for moving around so much. Give me a second. I'll get settled. So I thought that I was going Facebook Live tonight at 7.30 p.m. Hi, Tatiana. But it's not. That's not my time slot. It was 7.30 a.m. and I just woke up. So you guys are getting a very sleepy me. <laughs> Good morning. Hi, Christian. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Lydia. Hey, Eva. Hi, Mariana. Nice to see you guys. Hi, Sakshi. Ooh, baby. Hi, Anora. Hi, Kalpana. I literally just woke up. So, let's talk about ghosts, shall we? <laughs> good morning. Good morning, good morning. Well, for some of you, it's the afternoon. Um, cool. Where do I even start? If you just woke up, where would you start? Well, first of all, you know, if you guys have any questions about anything regarding entities, please ask me because that's really going to help me. Um, nice to see you guys. I'm sorry I'm late. Goodness. Okay, cool. Um, I guess I wanted to start out by saying like, I'm a new Talk to the Entities facilitator this year and This is a choice that I avoided and <laughs> rejected for about five years. Hey guys. Um, yeah, literally for about five years. I took a Talk to the Entities intro class like five years ago when I was brand new to Access Consciousness and then I proceeded to like make the rest of these classes irrelevant to me. This is not relevant to me. <laughs> And I would say the, this, this um, I don't know, this class, these, these entities, these beings have changed my life and introduced me to more of me. Um, and I see your question, cool. Than any other series of classes I've ever taken. So if you guys haven't yet taken a live Talk to the Entities class, you've got to get to one. I've got uh, four or five of them starting all over the world. Um, hi. <laughs> Nice to see you guys. Welcome to, it's very early in the morning and I just woke up Facebook Live. Yeah. 
Cool. Um, okay, so Anora asked a question. If you guys have, I'm not new to entities. That is such a good point. No. So let me say that that's a great point that I'm not new to entities. I have, um, I've been aware of entities my whole entire life. In fact, I grew up in a religion. It's kind of a blender religion, actually. Um, but I knew about fairies and angels and all the beings of light from when I was a very, very, very little girl. And um, we were told in my in that religion, it was, it's a very tiny religion, actually, a little sect, a little cult um, out of the United States, that we were just told that we were different and to expect to be different when we went into the outside world. And so I, I grew up from when I was tiny, just knowing I was going to be weird. As soon as people laid eyes on me, I knew I was going to be weird, which was such a gift because I never expected anybody else to know what I knew. I never expected them to see the angels or the fairies or anything. And and then um, when I was around 16, I started going to a really big Christian church. And so to go to one church from another church, you have to give up your beliefs. And so I gave up my beliefs in, you know, reincarnation and being, you know, other beings and started like casting out demons and, uh, I guess calling on angels if we were going to do that, but it was more about, I don't know, getting out, getting the evil out of us and, and spreading the word of Jesus, you know, but there was still this underlying knowing about the beings of light. And I, you know, in this, in becoming a big charismatic evangelical Christian, uh, was, there was a big focus on casting out demons, and I just knew that demons weren't that relevant. And it turns out, they're not. Um, you literally just clear them and they're gone. Go back to from whence you came, never return to me, my body, or this reality. Go back to from whence you came, never return to me, my body, or this reality. Go back to from whence you came, never to return to me, my body, or this reality. That's how significant demons are. Um, so, <laughs> I, I say all that to say that that entity awareness is something that um, when you have it, you just have it. Uh, the tools of talk to the entities are really to empower you that you know and that you're aware and that there is no one or anything greater than you. And um, I'm going to go back. I'm going to scroll back down through. <laughs> Hi from Lebanon. Absolutely. Spirits are amazing. I'm not new. Okay. So Anora asked, what is possible with receiving cash and actual stuff from entities? Cool. Um, some of this, you guys, I'm still playing with, you know, I, I would not, I'm not going to consider myself an authority. So it's not, I'm not going to give you an answer, but what is possible for receiving stuff and cash from entities? I have been really playing with since taking all these classes this year with just asking the entities to contribute in the way that they can. And one of the things Shannon has us play with a lot in her classes is um, to ask for something and then look for where it shows up because it never shows up the way you think. And because entities don't have bodies, they use people with bodies. And so I've been really, really playing with every single morning. I do an energy poll and I include my team and I include the beings of light and I ask for them to touch me and for them to contribute to me in whatever way they can. And I've never felt more, happy or in communion with all things, I guess would be the right words. I want to say connected, but that's not actually true. Connection is not actually real, but communion and no separation from anything is a reality that's choosable. And including them in my awareness every single day has, has created something different for me. So I would just say, ask them to show you what that is. Like what is receiving cash and things and how do they contribute? And start asking to, to know and to recognize the way that you perceive and receive from them, because that's going to be different for each one of us. Um, hi, you guys. I'm just looking through. I'm so glad to see you guys in my no makeup. Good morning, state. Okay, Shebra. Hey, Crystal, can I take the class and post that still decide not to work with them if I choose not to? I'm aware of them. However, my encounter's been a little heavy once. I'm confused about this choice. Well, here's the thing, you guys. 
Um, you can do whatever you want. You, uh, <laughs> So, so everything that doesn't allow you to know that you can do whatever you want, right, wrong, and bad, 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 all night, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Um, the other thing I'll say, though, that if you do not, one, acknowledge that you have a capacity and you choose not to use it. The thing about having a capacity is it's like you have the capacity to breathe. If you choose not to breathe, um, your body will die. And this is, this is what happens with our capacity with anything, with our capacity to heal, for example. One of the things we talk about in foundation is that you have, if most like, we ask, who here is a sexual healer? Almost everybody raises their hands. We're almost all of us are sexual healers, are healers of some sort. Well, the thing about having a capacity for sexual healing is when you do not acknowledge that you have it, you are at the effect of it because your body will do it whether you go along for the ride or not. So the same is true of entities. You have a capacity with entities. And if you do not acknowledge it and you are unwilling to be generous with that capacity, you will be at the effect of it. And I can tell you that 100% of the time is true because since, especially since I've taken all these classes and my awareness has like, when you take these entity classes, your awareness just goes through the roof about entities. Um, I now have to be even more diligent and even more present with what I'm aware of because you're aware. You can't get rid of that. It's like trying to carve out your eyeballs. You have eyeballs. They work. Um, you're aware. And so what are you aware of? What is it? What can I do with it? Can I change it? How do I change it? You're aware. What is it? Entities. Okay, cool. Um, can I change it? Yes. What's required? Uh, how about clearing? Yes. Okay. Communicating? Yes. Okay. Both. Right. You have, you have to then begin functioning from question and choice or your life is going to be fucking miserable. If you ignore your awareness of entities, your life will not be as easy as it could be. And that's just true. So you can either be freaked out by it or you can be mighty. You can be scared or you can be mighty. And it's an, it's, it looks like, it doesn't really look like a different choice on the outside, but it will feel like a different choice on the inside. And, um, so yeah, so do what you want. But if I were you, I would look at, if I don't choose to use this ability, will my life get any easier? Yes or no. If I do choose to use this ability, will my life get easier? Yes or no? Yes. And, and I want to speak to as well, like the gift that you are to the spirit world by choosing to take up the challenge of who you truly are. Most people go into fear instead of the potency that they have available. You have a potency available with beings without bodies that if you'll use it would be a gift to the, all the beings without bodies and a gift to you. So I would say everything that doesn't allow you to take up the challenge of who you truly are, first of all, um, maybe right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all in shorts, boys, bands, maybe everywhere you've judged, yeah, that. The challenge of who you truly are is something you can never choose, then destroy and create all that. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all in shorts, boys, and beyonds. This ability is a gift, it's not a curse. And I think there's still a lot of us that think, have the point of view that awareness is some sort of burden to bear. It's not a burden. It's an empowerment of everything that we actually are. How many people in the world can actually say they perceive, know, be, and receive entities, beings without bodies? Not that many. And how many beings without bodies are there? A fuck ton. And more every day, right? Like, I mean, there's, we're clearing more and then there's more and then we're clearing. More. It's a reality. It's not a, it's not something we have to get rid of. It's not a problem. It's just a reality. It's a part of living here. Just like green plants are a part of living here still. Just like water is a part of living here. They're a part of living here. So what will we be with this is our choice. What will you be? Will you take up and be the gift that you are? Or will you reject it and refuse it and refute it? And for what reason? When claiming it and choosing it is such a pleasure. Such a pleasure. And listen, I will encourage you guys that if this is something you've been resisting, that you have a mega ability. And 
refusing a mega ability is something that makes your life harder. So choose that, don't choose that. What will you choose? All right, cool. Um, I wanted to read your comment, Katrina. Does anybody have any questions? Put them in the comments. Um, I've been reading Palms Healing since a young age. I do one-on-one -on -one demonstrations and mediumship. I love working with spirit. Cool. Um, there, you know, I took so many classes this year with Talk to the Entities, like probably eight of them. Uh, one of the classes I took was called Beings of Light in, you know, in Italy. And one of the phrases that Shannon used was the lost art of spirit work. And I've never forgotten that. It just, it still like kind of brings tears to my eyes because I never, I'm one of those people that was not, I wasn't a medium. I wasn't a psychic. I, I did the, the new age people were kind of like, guys are weird. And so I wasn't one of those people that I thought would ever get into this stuff. I thought it was too weird for me. I'm like, uh, never mind. It turns out it's like oxygen. And I can't explain that to you. It's something that you're gonna have to choose and see for yourself, but working with entities is like the greatest bliss I've ever chosen. And I don't know in what ways my life is getting greater, but I do know like after those series of classes, I have never been so clear on what I'm here to create. I've never been so clear on and so have had so much knowing in my world. I have so much knowing in my world now. There's no doubt. There's no fear. Um, there's no hesitation. And so even if that was all these classes gifted to me, that would be everything because my business has changed. My classes have changed. Money is changing. Um, even if that was true, but that's not all that's true. I can walk into any situation now with any person and know that there's entities, there's demons, there's, and I, and I just clear them and I, I have total control now, whereas other people go into freak out. So that's power, that's power. And so maybe what power are you refusing with the unawareness of entities and demons are you choosing? And everything that is, will you destroy and create it all? Ray Ron, goodbye, pop, pop, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. What power are you refusing? Awareness is power. It's not a curse. And everywhere you've misidentified and misapplied awareness as a curse instead of power, will you destroy and create all that? Ray Ron, goodbye, pop, pop, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So I can't speak about this work enough. Um, I can't encourage you to run to a class enough. Every facilitator is different, so I would encourage you to use your awareness and choose the one that's going to really create for you. And you'll know because it'll be light. Crystal, I have no funds, not working, and I'm starting over. Which loop recording can I invest in? I've only done one bars class to date. Crystal, I would buy and study the How to Become Money Workbook. I know this is an entities group, but it's an access consciousness group. I would go through that workbook every single day if you need to. It's a four, it'll take you four hours to go through it. But that is what I use to totally transform my reality from being a waitress to being a multi-figured facilitator. So do that workbook. I can't speak about that enough. So I'm running out of things to say. I'm just super grateful for you guys and thank you for being here today. Happy Halloween and, and what... Um, you know, today, especially of all days, the day where we invite the saints out, the ghosts out to play, like what gift can you be to who and what you're aware of in the facilitation of them into something different? You know, the, the entity clearing goes like this. Hey, truth, who are you? Truth, who were you before that? Truth, who were you before that? And truth, who were you before that? Truth, what is your job? Truth, what's your job before that? What's your job before that? Truth, what's your job before that? And truth, who will you be in the future? You can take all your magnetic imprinting and your baggage and you can go now. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, buck, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. So it's not difficult. It's very simple. It's not something you do just all the time. It's just be aware. When you have, start asking to recognize how you perceive entities. How do you perceive them? When you perceive them, get present with that energy and just ask, hey, 
Do you want to be cleared? Do you need me to communicate with you? Just get present. Receive whatever it is they have to communicate to you and then clear them. And you will notice a shift in energy if you're paying attention. But listen, guys, the one thing I want to say before I go is that all of your awareness of energy happens from here down, not here up. If you're in your head, that's not awareness. It's from here down. So look down, get present with the energy. Get present with what's required of you. Clear, communicate, receive. And then if it's time to clear them, use the clearing. It's very, very, very easy. Um, Crystal, what I call angel lights, particularly blue at the moment, is going off repeatedly while I'm listening and thinking as you speak. I just want to understand better. What is it? What can I do with it? Is anything required of me? Yes or no? No? Cool. Then just receive. And I will say the last final thing about this is that don't make any of it significant. Because we tend to make stuff like this significant, right? Like, oh God, there's ghosts, there's demons, there's blue lights, I don't know what to do. Right? It's like if, if it comes, if it's differently shaped than our puppy, than our couch, then it's significant all of a sudden. It's not significant. You're just aware. You're capable. They can talk to you. So they do. So when energy, space, and consciousness can we in our bodies be to be as, as powerful as we refuse to be and everything that doesn't allow it, right, wrong, good, bad, pot, buck, all lane, shorts, boys, and beyonds. All right. Well, happy, happy, happy Halloween. And thank you for joining me here. And hopefully I get to hug you guys somewhere in the world soon. been so excited for this for so long and I am now holding the phone in my hand because of a problem with my orientation so it's moving a little but I hope it still works um, to talk to the entities uh, it has absolutely changed my world my life the way I look at everything the way I interact with energies um, the best way I can put it is it stretched my muscles of receiving, um, like pretty much. But like I have to relax to receive more. But uh, as soon as I said yes uh, to attending a talk to the entities class, what actually happened? Um, my whole world kind of blew, blew open. You know, like it exploded. And though I was a little uncomfortable in the beginning, definitely not as uncomfortable as before when I was resisting all of the awareness that I already had about entities. But after I attended my first class of Talk to the Entities, which was last year, actually with Shannon, it was last year, and my walls melted and my, my ability to, to to become aware of the subtle energies suddenly opened up to a degree I can't put in words and I can't really explain in words but everything opened up so I was now looking at things like say for example like little things like I had shut off and resisted that part of me so much that even when I walked into a house into my house like there were things that I hadn't noticed like I hadn't noticed the curve of uh, of the kitchen uh, 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 there's a curve of the kitchen platform and I was like oh I, I didn't notice this and I started noticing even those little physical things that I can actually look at look at through my eyes um, I started noticing those as well as soon as I said yes to to, okay, I'm not not resisting my awareness to entities, and most of y'all who are on this, so yeah, sorry, I was just watching. So most of y'all are who are on this. I mean, you're on this because you are clearly aware of entities. Like, uh, you would not join a group or watch this unless you want aware of entities already so where does talk to the entities come in talk to the entities comes in to give you that space of ease and 
practicality with communicating and receiving from these beautiful beings having said that it's not that all entities are good it's not that all entities are bad it's pretty much the same ratio of good and bad as is um as is with humans uh, and people in bodies so it's basically being present with every energy that comes into your space that you are aware of and then doing three things basically clearing them communicating with them or receiving them those are the three pillars of talk to the entities and that's what talk to the entities gave me it gave me ease and practicality of dealing with energies i knew i was aware of but constantly resisted right literally resisted it to a point where the resistance showed up as some signs and symptoms in my physical body especially even more than my moods as very uncomfortable and mind you it's not the entity is doing these things it's my resistance to awareness so what if nothing outside of you is greater than you are and what if everything every energy every little particle every elemental even energies that you've judged are only trying to gift to you and are you ready to receive it and if you did receive from them what would change what would it invite into your life that you've always been asking for but well you resisted it so talk to the entity is is basically stretching your muscles of receiving in my world and i'm sorry i'm sweating like crazy because well i'm so excited and i've been really excited so much so i thought i was nervous but it's really just excitement and my hand is moving and i'm sorry for that okay any questions from anyone because i can go on for the next 20 25 minutes without anyone asking me questions but it would be really nice if someone asks questions so that i can lead this on uh this conversation to it oh and you can also see the doctor the entity's book in the background which is written by shannon o'hara oh, one of if you are new if you've never done doctor the entities before i would really suggest just buying that book it's available everywhere it's available on amazon um it's also loaded with simple tools that you can start off and in white this subtle communication that we have always known but haven't practiced back into your life so mm, what is a portal um i'm not sure if this is the correct space to go in for it I would highly suggest you attend a talk to the entities class and get more awareness without making this significant because I think if I talk about portals it's going to become very significant. How do your body give you signs of entity awareness? Oh, yes. Skin issues. Okay, so I had skin stuff showing up in my oh, space. Again, please it wasn't them doing something, it was more my resistance to their awareness. Um so I started having uh basically dry itchy skin things showing up and it went on for a while till I actually attended the first talk to the entities and almost 90% of it just went away and these are things that the medical doctors actually said it's not treatable this doesn't really reverse all you have to do is do symptomatic treatment for it um etc etc but it 90% of it is gone and it's because i said yes to receiving from beings that were trying to gift to me but i refused and resisted with all my might so who and what is trying to gift to you that you're resisting that if you don't resist will open up your whole world and give you everything you've been asking for everything that doesn't allow that will you please and can destroy all times god said in right wrong good bad pop pod online shots boys beyond 
Access welcomes kids in all workshops. Yes, Access welcomes kids in all workshops. Uh, every workshop for in Access for kids below the age of 15 is basically free. And one of the things, if I was given the tools that I have today when I was growing up as a child, my life would have been so much more easy and fast. And um, uh, like, imagine if you were taught this when you were a kid how much more bigger your life would be. So please get your kids to one of these because they're all aware as you have always been. And instead of scaring them and putting them in a space of fear and superstition or non-belief, maybe attending a Talk to the Entities class would actually give them and empower them with the tools that will make it easier for, me, for them. Cool. Is Talk to the Entities welcome? Yes. Ah, there's one question I think I missed. Oh, that's about it. So, what, I, what have entities shown you about you? Thank you, Aditi, for asking me that question. How aware I am. One of the things that entities actually show me and show me and keep showing me is how aware I am and how aware I've always been of energies, of subtleties, of things beyond my mind could ever, ever, ever give me close to. So every time I say yes to anything related to entities, talk to the entities to be precise, it just shows me how much more aware I am and how potent I am and how there is nothing to fear. There is absolutely nothing to fear. There is just you, your awareness, and how you deal with it. And if you were empowered, which is the tools of talk to the entities, what could you receive now? Are they ready at sub 10 age to attend a TT class? Uh, do you mean can kids below the age of 10 years attend? Yes, absolutely. We've had like one year old babies attending this class so yeah if you're born and you're in a body attend it like things without bodies as well <laughs> i think it answers your question some people have the misunderstanding that if they become more aware it will be so overwhelming can you can you talk about it yes um actually very recently um i did announce a class called house clearing a to z and Though people are interested, intrigued, are also aware about the entities, but one of the first things, and one of the things that, they, that stopped them from even looking at this topic was this point of view that everybody has, that if in case I say yes to this, then I will invite all of this awareness and all of these energies that are mean, that are, that are evil, that will hurt me, that are bad, etc., etc., etc. Well, news, you're already aware of these energies if you're there, but if you say yes to talk to the entities, like in my case as well, I also had resistance in the beginning, but everything is the opposite of what it appears to be. As soon as I said yes, that uncomfortableness and that, that being overwhelmed was actually not true. It gave me the space and the ease to handle my awareness. In fact, till then, I was overwhelmed. And after that, I wasn't. So that, uh, if you're asking that question, that, oh my God, I'm overwhelmed, chances are you already are. And I would suggest to the talk to the entity so that you no longer are, but have practical tools to deal with it. From my personal experience, everything became easier and I had so much more space to deal and to receive from these subtle energies and not so subtle energies post talk to the entities. Before that, I was however overwhelmed, or I thought I was. So as an infinite being, could you ever truly be overwhelmed? And if it is a capacity to be so aware, what if you had tools that would make this capacity very, very easy and fun? So, what could you be receiving from Dr. The Entities that you're not receiving? And if you did receive, what else is possible? Shruti. Uh, okay, wait. 
deep thrust. What stops people to not be aware of entities? Um, in my case, the point of view that I just mentioned before, which was, I thought I would be overwhelmed post that, or that is exactly what I will have to do, or uh, fear because of the things that I'd seen in movies. Movies, uh, movies kind of messed around with my awareness a lot because every time I knew I was aware of something in my room, I would directly go to that scene from some weird, I remember Omen. Anyways, uh, so I, <laughs> I would go to that scene and then it would bring, it would activate all sorts of these fears in my world. So usually what stops people is the fear. But if you just go beyond the fear, which I did, and I'm giving you this from where I was and where I am today, if you just go beyond the fear, which the tools of access and talk to the entities will gift to you, everything will be easy. That's for sure. Shruti, uh, how can I communicate with entities to bring money who owe me to increase and have generated global business? Okay. Uh, there are a couple of things that I would first answer. Um, it's not uh, entities who want to gift to you, to your business, uh, money, etc., etc. Uh, it's usually not from a space of give and take, which is more like a human reality. But if you, if you function from the space of true receiving, you will be gifted, and sometimes directly money, sometimes in ways greater than money, if you just move out of that space of give and take. And so what if entities owe you money? But what if you were willing to deceive the entities that were truly waiting to gift to you beyond the give and take with humans and entities? So what else is possible? Yeah. So what could you deceive should the from beings that are actually trying to gift to you beyond give and take and just receive it? How much more can you receive, Shruti? What else is possible? Huh. Sorry, I know my phone is really moving a lot. Uh, but, uh, that's because my body is. And, uh, what else, guys? Is there any, uh, anything else that you'd like to talk, like me to talk about? All smiles. I'm glad. Um, one of the things that I started off to make it easy for me to receive from entities was noticing my body when it tensed up, right? Like, so if I'm tensed and uh, my muscles are tensed, etc., etc., a very physical sign. I knew in general my receipt, I'd put up a wall. Uh, an energetic wall, etc., etc., and I wasn't receiving. But as soon as I lowered my barriers, so right now, if you guys could just lower your barriers and just relax your body fully and totally and completely, what beings are gifting to you right now that you could receive immediately? How much space and how relaxed can you be every single day to amp up your receiving? Keith Patra, how can bring without being without bodies have the power to communicate? How do they move things or can they really? Okay, Keith, first of all, what do you know? And, okay. The how or are you asking more like how do they communicate so it's different for different entities and different for different people receiving the entities if you're not listening to them and if you're putting up barriers to them they will have to become a little louder in the way they give you the information so in these cases they may just uh, the easiest for them is to mess around with your electrical uh, 
uh, systems because it's easier for them to do that than to say move gross objects okay so it's different again but if you're willing to receive the communication is could be through pictures for some through some other things through just energy sometimes you'll just know what they're communicating sometimes you may hear words but it's beyond any of your five senses but if you're resisting them then they will have to become louder and that can show up as quote unquote scary things happening in your uh, surroundings you know like the mirror breaking or your electricals going crazy etc etc yeah but communication is True communication is very subtle and you will have your own way to communicate. So what do you know about communicating with entities that is making you ask this question? How do they gift? Uh, uh, just relax your body right now. Receive. Yeah, not everyone sees them. I don't see them either usually. Oh, and... <laughs> Well, I'm glad I don't, but that's an interesting point of view. Uh, not everybody sees them. Some hear them, some know it, some, some sense it, some smell it. And it's different for different people and also different at different times of the day for different people. So what is your way of communicating with entities and what have you not acknowledged? Thank you, Nareesh Ji, for that. So if you acknowledge, so this is how I would practice, like everybody's signs and symptoms are different. So the way I would practice is, and I still do, is literally lower my barriers, pick a spot, lower my barriers, lower my barriers, lower my barriers, lower my barriers. By that I mean, relax my body, relax my body, relax my body, relax my body. And then just ask them, okay, if you're around, just give me a sign, please. And it'll be different for different people. Like my body right now is stretching really. So I know that that's how sometimes they pull my, pull my attention to them. But like I said, it's different for different people at different times. I would love to have clear communication. I can sense the communicating what it takes me to have clear and understand differentiate without judgment. That's awesome, Namaste. That's exactly why I attended the Talk to the Entities class, to have this. Um, I'm not trying to push this class on you, but all I know is everything that you're asking for is there, all the tools beyond judgment for you to actually start. As Shannon says, changing your awareness of entities to an ability with entities so i would really one of the easiest ways like i said before to start getting clear communication is first of all poking and podding everything that you've decided that communication with entities is so what have you decided that is communication with entities everything that is will you please uncare and destroy it all right wrong good bad pop pod online shots boys and beyonds so, for me, the simplest way to start getting clear about what communicating with entities for me was, is to go, it's just an interesting point of view for every point of view that I had about communication with entities. So I would literally just, again, pick a spot, lower my barriers, and whatever point of view, everything that I became aware of, I literally went, interesting point of view, I have this point of view, interesting point of view, I have this point of view, till... I was no longer covered with these, I mean, till this thick layer of points of views and fears and everything that was in front of me started to dissolve little and little for me to have that clear communication. So it's not, it's not as dramatic in my world as seeing them and looking, I mean, like headless or uh, headless ghosts walking past. It's not. It's actually very, very subtle for me. Um, and. So what is it for you that if you didn't have too many points of views would give you what you already know about talking to the entities and communicating with entities? Thank you for that question. Any other questions for anyone? I have known people clearing entities in any case. Do they want to be cleared? 
even do without any benefits to you. I used to do that earlier, but then my awareness will stop until you know what's necessary. Well, now, Geet, what do you know and what are you aware of? You pretty much answered <laughs> the question there. So thank you. Uh, yeah. What else? Anything else that I could answer? I have a few more minutes to go. Three, four minutes to go. Bah, I just realized I didn't wish you guys happy Halloween. Happy Halloween! Uh, I was going to dress up, but then... Ah, too many things to do. So I didn't dress up, but maybe I will today and have some fun. Um, any other questions? Yeah, exactly. I had this weird costume in mind, which was like a combination of elephants and horse and pixies and things. But it was like a combination and clearly uh, too much. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> uh, it just wasn't physically possible for me to put that costume together. But maybe next time. Oh, I'm glad, Eva. Thank you so much. Uh, any more questions? So, basically, the way I started off was lowering my barriers, relaxing, 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 turning my attention to that subtlety or maybe not so subtle energy that I was aware of, and just going interesting point of view, I have this point of view, till whatever that reaction and that charge was, or that resistance was, or the wall was, before I could clearly communicate, would dissolve. Once that dissolved, it was much easier. And then, you of course have Talk to the Entities. The tools of Talk to the Entities. They're amazing, they're beautiful, most empowering tools related to this topic that has been that has literally had so many non-empowering things done to it and so much fear and so much superstition that I'm just happy Shannon is who she is and brought this to the world. <sighs> so, talk to the entities, attend the class, buy the book. Uh, it's the best way you can empower yourself and if you have kids to a world that if you open up to, will gift to you beyond measure. Thank you. I think I'm done for now. Yeah. Thank you, Namza was asking what I wanted. How can we keep, okay, I'll just, how can we keep boundaries when to clear entities as working with them with awareness? How to decide when to work with them and how to not sometimes, okay, Namza. Um, first of all, does an infinite being need protection? Cool. Now, does that mean that the entities are always in my space constantly? Not anymore. Because you will learn in Talk to the Entities tools where we give entities business hours, like how you would have clients and you would tell them, okay, your appointment is from this to this and when you come from this to this, I will give you attention and I will pay attention to you and not after that. But I will make sure that I'm there in those hours. So one of the ways that we go about making sure that we're not constantly clearing entities or etc cetera, etc cetera, is to give them these 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 um, office hours. Right? So we give them office hours. Literally a time and a day, but make sure if you've given them a time and a day that you remember it and then use talk to the entities tools if you have them to either clear, communicate or receive from them. So we give them office hours. Thank you for that question. Yay, I'm glad you're not afraid. Oh, yes, you can. The only difference is they don't have bodies. Uh, other than that, uh, because the ones that you're mainly talking about right now would be disembodied, uh, uh, disembodied beings, uh, which is dead people uh, in small terms. So yes, they're pretty much exactly how living people are, but you would have to give them office hours. Now you can give appointments. Yes. Thank you, Namrita. Thank you so much. This was fun. 
Uh, I'm sorry for the shakiness of the video. Uh, I tried to uh, orient it horizontally, but kind of didn't work, so I have to hold it in my hand. So thank you, thank you, Josephine. Oh, thank you. Bye, guys. Happy Halloween. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everybody to this Talk to the Entities Halloween special 24 hours of facilitators, Talk to the Entities facilitators, inviting you, being with you to celebrate Halloween. First of all, a great warm welcome from Shannon O'Hara, the creator and founder of Talk to the Entities. Um, she is going to be joining us. There is an entire schedule. We have facilitators, more than 50 from all over the world that are basically geared up to be with you on this page today in different moments and in different languages. I'm actually going to have a sneak peek in my computer to not make any mistakes, but I know that we have Portuguese, we have um, German, we have Turkish, we have Chinese, we have Romanian, we have French, we have Dutch, we have Spanish, we have Japanese, so many languages, so many facilitators, so many parts of the world are being in invited to be here on this page to look at Halloween and to be present with Talk to the Entities. Um, for the people that uh, are in my same time zone, which is Europe, CET, good morning, but I also am seeing people from other parts of the world, good afternoon, or maybe even already the day before, good night, or good night if you're maybe in Australia, I think it's good evening there. At any rate, I'm so happy to be here and really honored to be kicking off this very special moment. Um, I think it's really an extravaganza that we're going to be having 24 hours. So any moment that you want to, that you need to get off, get off and any moment that you can get back in and meet the facilitators that you might not even know or that you uh, might not even able to understand because they speak a language that you don't understand. And what if you allow the energy that they're being and the energy that they are contributing and sharing with you to be received that goes beyond your mind. That might be fun. So I'm already seeing so many people joining me. Thank you guys. Hi. And there's a lot of fantastic facilitators here. Beata, who also speaks Polish. I think maybe she's doing hers in Polish, but I think it's English. Um, and so I'm really psyched. So Halloween, last night I was like, okay, we're going to have this Halloween special. What's Halloween? So I was just having a look and it, it was saying that this is connected to a old tradition, a Celtic tradition. And I was like, oh yeah, I remember studying that because uh, I studied anthropology and it's actually an invitation, um, a celebration of the end of a season and welcoming the cold winter that is to come. And so it was actually a, um, a celebration, a holiday celebrated uh, at the end of October, welcoming the long winter, the cold winter to come by actually throwing clothes and things in the bonfire, um, wearing costumes. And it was also connected because the 1st of November is the All Saints Day, the uh, Dia de la Muerte, but I don't speak Spanish, so make, please excuse me, but the Day of the Dead. So the interesting thing is that here, I'm just reading from uh, actually online, it says that Halloween's origin date back to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain. And in that time, they said it marked the end of summer and the harvest and beginning of the dark cold winter, a time of year that was often associated with human deaths. Celtic believed that this night was the night before the new year. The boundary between the worlds of li the living and the dead became blurred. So is the world of the living and the dead blurred? I think one of the most empowering organisms in the world is talk to the entities that show us that this is a blurred world all the time. This, let's say, opening of the gates <laughs> where this artificially distanced world of the entities and our safe, mental, rational, logical world of humans um, come together is actually occurring all the time. But how much have we learned that this is not 
good or this is something we have to stay away from or even that we have to be afraid of. And this is why it's interesting when I um, read more because they said that um, they say that with the winter coming, they're required to honor those beings that will aid, that will support, that will contribute for their agriculture, that will work with them. Those days, they knew that they had to work with the spirits of the earth, not against the spirits of the earth. And how much have we abandoned this collaboration, this communication, this working together to be in this rational, logical world. And so I find it really interesting that now all we see in Halloween is that we're wearing costumes and we're going around for uh, candies, trick-or-treating, but this awareness like, hey, winter is coming, I have my crops, what can I be or do to create more and to be in sync with and present with those energies and entities that will lift, support, create with me. What would it take for us to start living like that, not only on Halloween or not only on the Day of the Dead or All Saints as they call it, but every day. So everything that doesn't allow it, let's destroy it and create that. Right, wrong, good, bad, all night, book shorts, boys and beyonds. Now they're suddenly starting to drill. Um, next to me. Can you guys uh, hear me? Otherwise, I'll put in my earphones. Just let me know if it's disturbing you, okay? Not planned. <laughs> and so what it also says, which also um, interested me yesterday when I was reading this, is that they say like, hey, they realize this is the end of the, win uh, of the summertime. It's the beginning of winter. Now, how much are we present with the cycles of the earth and with the entities that are also part of that and here there is a little bit of a fear or maybe not even a little bit like okay we have to do the sacrifice with the bonfire great to hear sorry good to hear um that you can hear good to hear that you can hear me um to appease these entities, to say, hey, we are giving you something, so please take care of us. Now, my personal point of view, and I would say, we talk about this a lot in Talk to the Entities classes, is this idea of appeasing comes from fear. <sighs> How much have we learned that we have to have fear? And what if fear in those days was a way to make you present, was a very distorted way to make you aware that there is something present all the time that we might not see and what if we don't have to use that fear anymore as a way to become present and as a way to honor and appease but truly wow they're entities of the earth they're spirits of the earth this moment is one of those moments that, that we can just be present more with them since the winter is coming the cold winter is coming what if we don't require fear anymore to be present with something or somebody? What if we don't need fear anymore to choose a presence and awareness? And where is the lie that if you are in fear, you are choosing greatness or consciousness? I know one of the interesting things I, I hear in India that makes me laugh is, uh, oh, the girl is a lovely girl. She's God-fearing. She's wonderful. And I'm always like, why is it wonderful to be God-fearing? So where have we learned that it's wonderful to be fearing those energies and entities that might seem greater than us, but that are not, but they are present to contribute to us if we are willing, if we are willing to be present. And for me, this knowing that, wow, I don't have to be afraid. Wow, there are these entities and energies and they can be people and they, it can be my annoying, whatever, aunt. <laughs> but there are also other kind of entities and energies present that I can be with. How does it get any better than that? I think the entities are speaking through the drill sound because it's really interesting noises that are coming for me. But I'm thinking you guys are okay. Um, for the sound so yeah 
that was my what I wanted to kick off with. <laughs> and I'm really curious what you guys want to speak with or about or want me to look at um, this early morning. I feel that it's a great morning, uh, a great moment for us. We are in this rush of life and living in this reality. We are in this very mentally constructed reality. Talk to entities, access consciousness invites you to go beyond that. And maybe we can just take a moment now to just, if required, bring our barriers down. And become present with all those energies and entities that are here that might, we might have been ignoring or that we might have been even trying to push away or those entities that we have not been considering. How many energies and entities have you kept out of your world because you were looking. <laughs> Stefan says, the sun is perfect for a Halloween special. I agree. How many energies and entities have you even kept away because they don't fit your definition of entity? And it's become completely silent here. How does it get any better? And in this presence, in this being with, what is possible? In this being with, what can we step into that entities are inviting us to be? Talk to the entities is not a, a science. It's not a mental activity like, okay, I do talk to the entities. I'm going to bring my bears down. Then I do blah, 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 blah. It is not. And in this reality, that scheduling and that rational way is the way and we all know, I know you guys know this, there is something so much greater available. And so what would you have to be and choose for yourself to choose that space? To choose that space of being. And where indeed, like this idea of there is the world of the living and there is the world of the death and there is this border and on certain moments, the gates open and there is something occurring and we have to be careful what if we can let go of this idea we can truly allow ourselves to in a way stop resisting through these borders that we've created and allow ourselves to be that energy that perceives and be that being that perceives and that knows and that bees and receives what can we create together in the world if we do not only do this on Halloween or only on our birthday or only on Christmas or New Year's but we actually start <laughs> to muscle train ourselves we have been so freaking muscle trained to be out of this, to stay away from this. And we use all the distractor implants we can think of to validate and justify and maintain this. And what if we don't anymore? Uh, I saw Aditi saying everything in India has background music. So do so, so does the version of today. <laughs> and Manita says, talk about why you chose to become a talk to the entity facilitator. Wow. Well, <laughs> It was the only facilitators class that I went to a few years ago where I said, oh, I'm only going to go to the Talk to the Entities facilitators class for myself. It's a gift to myself. I'm just so curious, but I'm not going to be facilitating this class. This was my fantasy. And uh, luckily, the entities had very different ideas about this. Because um, as soon as I went to that class, my world completely changed. Shannon as many of you have experienced, many beautiful facilitators that are on and that will be on today, has this wicked, wicked, <laughs> I would say this wicked way of being that she just freaking instills something in your world where if you're interested in consciousness, you cannot hide it from yourself any longer. And this was the case with me, as I know 
for many people. And so, you know, talk to the entities facilitator, being a talk to the entity facilitator has in that way was nearly like something that I desired to do as an idea. And I never knew what I was choosing till I sat there and my blue, my moment, my world just opened up. And when I started facilitating every time my world opens up and the world, the universe opens up. Yeah. And so, you know, I know that there are many here that will be speaking perhaps about this too, but like, what can we all be where this talking to entities is not anymore a thing we do, is not anymore a manual action, but it is really like all the access tools, a way of being. And sure, it's really like, you know, you have to, you learn to walk. So one foot at the other foot and you fall and you get up and, you know, and then you don't think about walking anymore. If you want to go to the toilet and you have to go, you don't think about right, left, right, left. You just go. And so what if we don't have to think anymore and be and start to first play with the tools and as you play, become the tools and somebody's beautifully, beautifully Karen has written, choose it every day, 24 seven. Yeah. And this reality is so, so, so into celebrating anti-consciousness and un unconsciousness. And this reality is so into showing you and luring you with the greatness of thinking and, and the proof and justification and fear and destructor implant, destructor implant. And what would you have to be where you can be this energy where those destructor implants, you're like, ha 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 ha, not putting my foot in the poo poo of destructor implants and then complaining that it's smelly anymore. So this is my personal um, surprise, really. I literally did the talk to the entities facilitators class in the summer in London. And then I started to facilitate an entities class in October and then I haven't stopped and I've been traveling all over the world and it is so amazing to see how much we all have entities awareness and we've learned that it's only for those or we have to be afraid of that. And what if that, what you think you should be afraid of is that which is the key to all of you and is the key to the greatness of you. What if that that you're supposed to be afraid of is actually what make others afraid of you? And as I love, Shannon says, don't be scared, be scary. What if you're willing to be scary, dangerous, intimidating? Instead of appeasing, instead of... Um, bowing down to this reality and the lies and in that in that bowing down and submitting to this reality maintaining it and continuing it right what if we can be that energy that is required that opens that all up so we, with these amazing talk to the entities tools and being that energy space and consciousness of that talk to the entities can start to create, we are creating a different reality. I mean, every time I'm seeing what all these amazing facilitators and I also, we're all creating and Shannon is creating with the classes in the world. It's phenomenal. And as I was saying, I travel as many do in many countries. I facilitate in French, English and Dutch. And I've been traveling really from like all over the place. And it's been like, wow, we have been so misinformed about entities and energies. We have been so misled about our capacities with energies. We are energetic beings. And where have we learned that we are mental constructs? <laughs> We're like a head uh, on feet or maybe legs if you're like a sassy girl. But we're basically just a head walking. And in a way, talk to the entities allows you to become a body again. Which, <laughs> which I see is like, I'm seeing it like as a cartoon. Yeah. And so this page, this talk to the entities page that has been created as well. Like, you know, people are interacting and are sharing their experiences. And what if we don't 
I have to hide this anymore. I know that many people go, oh, look, talk to the entity is such a weird title. It's such a, can we change the title of the class? And I'm like, I know that Shannon was aware of something and Gary Douglas, the founder of Access Consciousness, that in a way I would say worked with Shannon and the life of Shannon was in a way like this work of creating, really opening up all these awarenesses and tools of talk to the entities. They're aware of something with the name, talk to the entities. People are like, oh, oh, I don't know if I can post, you know, talk to the entities. People might think I'm crazy. How fucking crazy is it that acknowledging that we're aware of energies and entities is crazy? And how much have we made that crazy so normal that we think we're crazy? <laughs> and everything that is <laughs> that's destroyed and created. Right, wrong, good, bad, all night, but pop shorts, boys, and beyonds. Cool. Uh, yeah. I'm not I'm actually really built I have to catch up with all the messages. Thanks guys. Uh ahead walking, yeah. Um yeah. I know that there is a Goga coming up in ten minutes. I don't have the schedule by heart, but I will. So just so you know, uh, we have uh, Croatian with Goga coming up. And after that, Japanese for, um, for an hour, actually. And then English, and then it goes on. Um, what else, guys? Is there anything else that you want, would like me to talk about? I saw something, somebody saying, can you speak about the elementals? <laughs> um, that's the phone. I'm in my parents' house today. Um, I will let it go. And what else, what else, what else? <clears throat> so what if this Halloween is not... So I'm just going to quickly go back to this whole... Um, we have to be afraid. Let's appease the gods and the... Uh, and do this Halloween thing. Like, what if this Halloween is truly, a, and this is why I love what Shannon has created with her team, is truly a celebration of the entities of, and the spirits of the earth in a way, and is a celebration of the beautiful summer, and is a celebration of our awareness of these entities. And there is no need to go to fear. And there's only possibilities if we're willing to see fear as the lie for what it is. And... There you go. What else is possible with that space for us all? Are you having fun with entities in India? Someone is calling. You guys are hilarious. Yeah, it's so funny because in my mom's house, it's always so quiet. So I was like, I don't really prefer to use headphones, but I could. And then, ta-da! But I know that it's not a big deal. Um, yeah, and so what energies, spirits of the earth, entities are you aware of now and what if you can acknowledge them and acknowledge your awareness of them and what is possible with Talk to the entities that you think is not possible. That if you would allow the possibility, would actualize a totally different reality. Right, wrong, good, bad, online, pot, book, shorts, boys and beyonds. And I would say, you know, connected to um, the question about, you know, becoming a talk to the entities facilitator, it is really this acknowledging and <clears throat> whatever you have to change in you to be that energy that acknowledges and being that willingness to be present and what inspiration and invitation can we all be, be it a toxic entities facilitator or not? What if you don't need that excuse? <laughs> like, I'm not an entities facilitator, so somebody else can do it for me. What if we can all stop hiding? What if we can all stop passing the bucket, what if we can stop pointing fingers at others and be that ourselves, where we are that invitation and inspiration and we are that willingness and the moments that we forget, we forget, but then we can stop forgetting by being present again, 
And it's that willingness to be like, hey, I put my foot in the poop, but I took it out. And I'm going to be present again. And hey, I'm aware of something. What's occurring? Hey, I'm doing fear. Wait a minute. <clears throat> are you willing to be so tenacious? And are you willing to be committed? Because committed to consciousness, committed to being this present is being committed to you. Being committed to being present with all that is doesn't mean you're sitting there like doing anything. It's literally willingness to be that space, that energy space and consciousness and that choice that interacts with, that is aware of, that acknowledges, that perceives, that bees and that receives. And so you will have to be willing to be more potent, be your greatness, be stronger. And what if we can at least be that all of us together in this video for our life and then let that kind of trickle down, trickle into, leak into our days and our lives more and more and everything that doesn't allow this can be destroyed and created. Right, wrong, good, bad, all men, black, book shorts, boys and beyonds. Woo, wowzers, what a day, what a way to start a day. I know it's not a morning for everybody, but here it's really gorgeous. I'm seeing um, the sun slowly coming up and um, just before I was in bed lying, kind of tapping into this beautiful day and hearing the birds, I was like, oh, there's some, there's still a few here. And like, wow, what a beautiful planet. What a beautiful earth. And what beauty can we be and are we already? And how more color can we add to this beautiful earth where all these energies and entities that are present can be acknowledged and can be seen for who and what they are. Thank you everybody for joining me. <clears throat> thank you for uh, joining me for this kickoff. I'm really honored and thank you Shannon O'Hara for inviting me for this kickoff but also for this this amazing energy that is available in the world and that we are able to all create and be in the world. So um, I will leave the, pla leave the platform, leave the stage to my, uh, to my next um, facilitator. And Goga is going to start in a few minutes. And I really hope you enjoy this extravaganza because this really is an extravaganza. I personally will be back um, in 12 hours or 12 hours and 11 hours and a half uh, for a French live with uh, Cindy. So maybe I'll see you there. But otherwise, I am so grateful and I wish you a beautiful day, night. Um, hope you'll be on with us as much and as long as you can to enjoy together with all the facilitators and all you facilitators. You guys are awesome. Bye, guys. Thank you. Welcome everybody. Welcome everybody to the Talk to the Entities Halloween special. Um, everyone out there in the world online, welcome to the smack dab right in the middle of the Talk to the Entities facilitators in California. And I thought since, since we were doing our class right through the entity holiday of the year, which is Halloween, that we would for the first time do a special on what is Halloween and what is this Talk to the Entities shit and how does this stuff all work? So um, you guys out there online, I thank you so much for being here and also you're not going to be able to ask questions, sort of afterthought, but you will be able to uh, one way stream into our world. So um, sorry, <laughs> um, hopefully I'll have enough interesting information uh, for you guys and uh, I'd love for you guys to be able to ask questions and I don't know that we will be capable of that. Actually Meredith, are you on the Talk to the Entity Skype account? All of you guys that are out there with us right now around the world, if you want to go ahead and add Talk to the Entities um, on your Skype account, you can, you can Skype your questions, comments, feedback into Meredith, and she will be your voice in the room. So Talk to the Entities on Skype, okay? So Halloween is a descendant of 
uh, Druidic or pagan celebration, which was a solstice celebration between the summer and the winter solstice. And it comes from England. So there's a lot of cultures on the planet like India, South America, Asia, that Halloween is totally irrelevant for. Um, or they have their own celebrations or ceremonies for that time of the year. Um, during the time of the Druids, and we'll call it a Druidic holiday, the Druids were sort of like the superhumanoids of the British Isles, um, there was a huge amount of celestial connection. So their lives were uh, affected a lot by the seasons, for obvious reasons. And so the Samhain was what it was originally called, and it's then been Christianized into Hallow's Eve, All Hallow's Eve Halloween. Okay, and so Samhain was the, Samhain Eve was the night before November 1st when all of the cattle or the livestock would be driven out of the upper pastures and down into the lower pastures and slaughtered for the winter to come, which of course the Christians took as um, Satan worship. And it was also during this time that the, that the rural or pagan people, and pagan means rural, the pagan people um, believed that it was on Samhain Eve that the veil between the spirit world and the human world was the thinnest. Now, is this so? Right? I can't really say, hello. I can't really say. Now, if we look at the celebration of Halloween, we've got a lot of people dressing up like ghosts and ghouls and stuff that tends to be on the more hidden or darker spectrum of things. So is this a time of year or is this a celestial influence that creates this or is it or is there an expression of stuff that people are not usually willing to see or act out or believe in that gets expressed this one time of year, right? And it was really interesting before we were getting ready to come uh, down here, I was hearing lots of sirens and I could feel the sort of town getting ready and so is this a night where the spirits are invited out to play more? Are people aware of it? Do people like to get really drunk and fucked up so they, they can invite the spirits to come out more, <laughs> right, in ways that they wouldn't normally feel comfortable with um, without the permission of the costume or the celebration? And so today we have one day a year where the creepy, the dark, the mysterious is allowed to exist. And what if we were willing to bring the creepy, the weird, or the mysterious more into our day-to-day -day lives? Would people feel so alienated by, or would people need to then act out a lot of the stuff that they act out as a repression of the darkness that is in everybody or the resistance to the spirit world? And so for me, I've always been someone who had a lot of connection to the spirit world no matter what day of the year it was, right? And that's where Talk to the Entities came from. So those of you guys that are joining us online and um, in the room, I've got a couple people here who I don't know if they've had any exposure to Talk to the Entities. Um, and so this is a celebration of Talk to the Entities. Talk to the Entities is an access consciousness specialty class designed to create more awareness, more ability um, around dealing with the spirit world. And this is something that everybody is dealing with and very few people are willing to recognize. And even fewer people have the capability of actually handling. And so we take the conversation into a practical, into a reasonable, and into a creative playground where we stop making the spirit world this scary, spooky, forbidden thing that only gets to exist once a year. And if we ever have our connection with spirits, that that makes us a witch or a bad guy or uh, a scary, disgusting person and starting to recognize that communication with the spirit world is part of our natural being. It's part of our natural way with the earth. And it was only within the last several hundred years that spirit communication started becoming very taboo, especially amongst white people. There's still cultures on earth today that firmly believe in the spirit world and work with them albeit not necessarily in a very conscious way, but work with them nonetheless and believe in them very strongly. Um, it's really only amongst white people that we separate ourselves from the spirit world as though it doesn't exist at all. So if the spirit world did exist, then what? Okay. Would it be this terrifying, ghoulish thing that Halloween has turned into? It's the, really the only, it's really the only day of the year where horror 
is socially acceptable. <laughs> and how exactly did the how exactly did the veil between the spirit world and the human world become a horrifying thing? So everywhere that spirit awareness, spirit communication, and spirit participation was turned into a horrifying, terrible, scary, monstrous affair. Who we destroy and create all this, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shorts, boys and beyonds. And what if we did connect with, honor, work with, and acknowledge the beings who participated in our daily lives, in our cultures, in our, within our societies as part of the creation of our lives? Um, when we lived closer to the earth, or as more rural people, when we lived more close to the earth, it was common knowledge that spirits existed. It wasn't, you weren't seen as a freak when you saw entities, right? That's a very recent phenomenon. And so we take Halloween as an exemption from the enforced normality of reality. And as we were sitting here today in, like I said, we're doing Talk to the Entities Facilitators here in California. And as we were all sitting here today, there were several people around the room in full costume. And I was just thinking, like, what if we saw everybody as they really are? Would they look like witches and kitties and weird light beings and, you know, sparkles? And what would it, and or would also a lot of people be demonstrating and exposing the stuff inside them that isn't so beautiful or isn't so pleasant, the stuff that they don't feel comfortable showing the world or that they know is a judgeable offense to the world. And how much that is strong about you have you made wrong about you and in so doing turned it into a monster rather than into the powerful being that it truly is. So everywhere that everything, so everything that is strong about you that you've made wrong about you in so doing perverted it into a monster, a demon, a creature, or a kitten, will you destroy and uncreate all this, please? Yes. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pud puck shorts, boys and beyonds. And if you were, if you were, what if on Halloween you weren't putting on a costume? What if on Halloween you were taking off your costume? So what's underneath your human costume? <laughs> and everything that doesn't allow that to show up, let's destroy and uncreate it. Yeah. Yeah. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pud puck shorts, boys and beyonds. And what earth consciousness can we celebrate on All Hallows Eve? Now, All Hallows Eve, Hallow is the saint. So they took, they took, they took, um, they took the worshiping or the celebration of Samhain, which was basically a solstice celebration, a celestial celebration, or a celestial awareness time, and turned it into the worshiping of saints. And so all the saints that don't have their own celebration days for the rest of the year get All Hallows' Eve, All Saints' Eve, to be celebrated. So now we celebrate a Christian holiday that's just been smeared over the top of a rural celebration of Earth consciousness. And everything that that is, can we destroy and uncreate it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pod puck shirts, boys and beyonds. And so if you look back at back to what we celebrate now or take for granted as our cultural celebrations or our cultural movements, holidays, for example, Christmas, Halloween, well, we all know, and these are American, excuse me, these are American holidays. And forgive me, because there's a lot of non-Americans joining us around the world. And there's also a lot of non-Americans in the room with us. Um, so these are the American holidays, right? Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween. Um, well, Thanksgiving, we know where that came from. We don't let one sort of set aside. But um, Christmas, Halloween, um, Easter is a, also a celestial or a solstice holiday. And so they're taken from a time when we were dependent on the earth for our survival. We saw the sun as the god and we worshiped the cosmos as, or in unison with the cosmos and the way that they affected the earth and the seasons, okay? And since we live in a time now where there is less connection to the earth or less dependency on the seasons for survival, there also just tends to be more of a disconnection from the spirits of the earth or the spirits that our ancestors would have worked with to create 
um, a safe harvest season or a safe winter season. And so everything that your guys' ancestors knew about the magic of the earth and the creation with the spirits for a safe harvest season and a safe winter season, will you guys destroy and uncreate everything that doesn't allow you to gain access to that now? Yes. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, poc, shorts, boys and beyonds. And it is those who are capable of being in rhythm with or in connection with, in creation with the energies of the earth and the spirits of the earth that will be able to create with the earth if our present technological societies fail. So will we go back to nature like we were or will we go forward to a conscious world or will we destroy the earth? These are the questions. And so what if the celebrations of Halloween, the celebrations of Christ Mass, which is actually the return of the sun, which was which rural people would have been very dependent on the return of the sun in the northern hemisphere. Talk to an Australian Aboriginal and they have a very different point of view about it all. Right? So it is the rural people of Europe that would have been very dependent on the return of the sun and that's what we, where we now celebrate Christmas. It's actually the return of the sun, not return of the son of God, Jesus Christ, or return of the actual sun. <laughs> the days start to get longer, life starts to get easier. Okay? So a lot of what so a lot of what we celebrate as Christian traditions or Christian mythological beliefs are taken from celestial, the celestial powers and everything that doesn't allow you guys. So all of the churches, cults, colleges, schools, universities, institutions, and academies that any and all of you were ever part of that perverted, distorted, and twisted the connection with nature as the expression of consciousness embodied into religious ceremony, can we destroy and create all this? Yes. Me, right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pud puck shorts, boys and beyonds. Cool. And everywhere that earth worship was called witchcraft, can we destroy and create all that? Yeah. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pud puck shorts, boys and beyonds. Whew and all other natural ability that was turned into uh, the judgeable offense of witchcraft. Ooh, and anywhere in any lifetime that all of you were condemned to suffer forever as witches, as sinners, and as uh, demons, will you destroy and uncreate anything and all of that that was ever passed or that you were sentenced to for all eternity? Amen. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pod puck shorts, boys and beyonds. And what energy, space, and consciousness can you and your bodies be to enliven, to access, to invite the spirits of nature, the magic of consciousness, and the clarity of hmm, spirit creation back into society and everything that doesn't allow us to remember what we left behind, we destroy and uncreate all this place. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shorts, boys and beyonds. Yowza. Okay. I feel like I want to ask if anyone has any questions. I don't know if we're prepared for questions on the stream. Are we? Yeah, I have a couple already. I have a couple already. So Kim would like to know, what is the best way to increase my awareness of entities around me and my ability to communicate with them? Well, have you read my book? That's a really good way. That's like a really... <laughs> It's like a really passive way. So if you want to increase your awareness of entities, number one, read the Talk to the Entities book. It passively makes you aware of entities. That's the report I've gotten, that people read that book and then they're more aware of entities. And a lot of people aren't prepared for it. Um, number one, you just need to ask. If you want to be more aware, you need to ask. Number two, you have to undo, right, or push down any resistances or rejections that you solidified in this lifetime or other lifetimes in regards to entity awareness. So all of the resistances, the rejections and the walls that you threw up when you perceived entities, will you guys destroy and uncreate them all please? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shorts, boys, beyonds, and everything your parents taught you verbally or non-verbally about protecting yourself from spirits rather than creating with and being aware with spirits, can we destroy and create all that? Yes. Thank you. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shorts, boys, beyonds, and everything that, am I going too fast? 
sorry, everything that you know about entity awareness that you're pretending not to know and denying that you know. Will you guys just in and create all that, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shorts, boys, meons. So I think, was the second part of her question about how does she deal with it? it was, or I didn't and get my, the And my ability to communicate with them. Oh, well that's a much bigger question. And so I would invite you to go to one of the Talk to the Entities classes where you can actually practice that and learn that. Because um, that's a huge topic. Communicating, easiest form, trust what you know and recognize that what you're aware of is what you're aware of. If that's not possible, then you need to kind of do some of the practices and some of the exercises and get some of the, the tools that Talk to the Entities has so that you can start developing yourself in that way. Strengthening the communication muscles. Because commu is communicating with entities verbal and linear or is it an energetic experience? Okay, is it a telepathic experience? And so communicating and dealing with entities is a totally different muscle than the one we use to communicate and deal with people. And so if you trust your knowing and start to really trust the energy and don't doubt that what you're perceiving with entities, you know, if you don't doubt it, you'll stand a much better chance at acknowledging the communication and developing your own abilities to communicate with entities, even if it doesn't look like what you thought it was going to. So everything that you think that dealing with entities and talking to entities is supposed to look like, we you destroy and create all this. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, puck, shorts, boys, meons, and everything you've been taught by television and movies about communicating and dealing with entities that actually doesn't work, we you guys destroy and create all that. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, puck, shorts, boys, beyonds, and everything that you know about being aware with entities and communicating with entities that you're denying not to know, denying that you know or pretending that you know, will you destroy and uncreate all this please? Thank you. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, puck, shorts, boys and beyonds. Okay, cool. She had read your book, but that helped a lot. Cool. Some of those clearings you gave her. And uh, Zipporah would like to know, um, I would love to hear about some other cultures, holidays that honor or incorporate the spirit world specifically into them. Well, Mexico has the Deo de Muertos. So that's like the day of the dead. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know why that's making me laugh. Um, uh, China has specific weeks that the ancestors come back and that you spend that whole week like worshiping your ancestors grave sites and like putting out fruit like literally the whole city goes on vacation and you worship your ancestors so that's a very Asian I don't India I don't know there's a lot that goes on there like they've got a Cody, they, where they actually worship the ancestors. yeah then India they have 30 whole days where they worship <laughs> their ancestors right so and those are just the several that I can think of off the top of my head um, if you, start, if you start looking into it or studying, you'll learn that all cultures around the world have a death celebration day or a death or a dead people celebration day. Um, and in the white people culture, the only day that we have for that is Halloween and it's not even a worshiping of the ancestors. It's, a, um, it's an entertainment or a reenactment of the spirit world that most people think is a play. I, know, I don't really know about All Saints Day. Sorry. I'm actually not much of a Christian scholar. I just know about the stuff. I just know about the stuff that they did to um, um, make wrong spirit awareness. Yeah. First it was Christian. Yeah. Or religious or human. <laughs> Religion was just a convenient way of controlling people. Um, okay, cool. Another one. What can spirit ancestors teach us about creating your life and greater possibilities for the earth? Well, that's a really interesting question, actually, because as I was talking about it, I, number one, are your ancestors smarter than you? You know, in some people's cases, maybe, and in other people's cases, really, maybe not. Do you really need to listen to your dead relatives? And this is a really, this is a really big thing in Asia, especially because they're taught that their ancestors protect them and that they really need their ancestors' permission. And it's like really the whole culture is really controlled by ancestors. Are your ancestors capable of creating a better reality for you than you're capable of creating? In a lot of cases, not really. 
And so all the lifetimes that you guys have done ancestor worship, and that just led you to know we're good. We you destroyed a grid, all that too. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shirts, boys and beyonds. And if we were, if this was a conscious world, how would entities be viewed? Okay? And so is the way that any culture on Earth right now, is the way that any culture on Earth dealing with entities conscious? Okay. And so if we were going to create a conscious world and create more consciousness around the way people dealt with the spirit world, what would that look like? What would that be? And what would that take? And everything that doesn't allow that, let's destroy it and create it, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shirts, boys, meons. I am nowhere advocating that you need to listen to your ancestors at all. What I am advocating is awareness, entity awareness. And so be aware if you've got relatives or an, you know, ancestors that are bossing you around and controlling you in negative ways that you're letting them, right? Wouldn't it be better to be aware of that than to pretend like it's not happening or to make it an okay thing to have happen? I, um, I just recently did a Talk to the Entities introduction in Japan for the first time, and it was my first time to Japan. And you know, we got into the night and everything was going great. And then we got to the clearing section, and I asked them if they'd be willing to clear some of their ancestors. None. I have never, ever, ever, ever felt an entity clearing not work. Okay. And none of them would let their ancestors go. And I was like, oh, this is really a deep thing for you guys. <laughs> so we just moved on, right? We just moved on. Because they weren't interested. They weren't ready. It wasn't of no interest to them to let go of their ancestors. And so it's everyone's choice. Do your ancestors contribute to your life being better, for real? Or do your ancestors contribute to your life being more controlled? Okay, and that's up for everyone's awareness and question. Cool. Do you have any clearings or processes to create more ease with all of the energies that are up right now and in general as we become more aware? Just what energy? Question. <laughs> what? Just that tiny question. <laughs> yeah. What energy, space, and consciousness can you and your body be to facilitate change and transform all entities and energies with total ease? And everything that doesn't allow that, we destroy and create it, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, puck, shirts, boys, meons. And all of the demons that people are allowing to come out and play, because it's Halloween after all, let's return them all from whence they came. Never to return to anybody or this reality ever again. Let's return them all from whence they came. Never to return to anybody or this reality ever again. And return them all from whence they came. Never to return to anybody or this reality ever again and return them all from whence they came. Never to return to anybody or this reality ever again. And return them all from whence they came. Never to return to anybody or this reality ever again. Halloween tends to be a time when people let the demons come out and play more. Um, and now it might be because celestially or earth vibrationally, this is a night where... Mm. No, never mind, that's bullshit. The spirits always have access to this world. I love that. Uh, this may be a bigger topic for another class, for sure, but uh, the best way to reclaim original occupant. That is definitely not a question for tonight. Yep. So um, those of you guys on the stream, this is an introduction. OK, so if you have big questions, like about original occupants and other talk to the entity stuff, um, not in this class. Cool. So what energy, space, and consciousness can everyone in their bodies be to facilitate, transform, and change all entities and energies with total ease? And everything that doesn't allow that, will you guys destroy and create it, please? Yes. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shorts, boys, and beyonds. What energy, space, and consciousness can you and your bodies be to work with the energies and spirits of nature to create more harmony with total ease? And everything that doesn't allow that, we destroy and create it, please. Yes. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shorts, boys, meons. And what entities are <laughs> what what entities are available that want to play with all of you in creating a different possibility? And everywhere you've been blocking them, stopping them, pushing them away, and not acknowledging them, we destroy and create all this. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shorts, boys, and beyonds. And 
if you are having a lot of entity activity or entity awareness, we're sort of having a two-fold conversation tonight. It's about opening up more, but also about handling what you're aware of better. Um, what are some of the methods in which people tend to handle their awareness of entities? Do they handle their awareness of entities, or do they try to shut off or shut away from their awareness of entities? Does shutting off and shutting away from your awareness of entities actually work? Or does it just hurt you more? Okay. So everywhere you, get, everywhere you thought that shutting off and shutting away from your awareness of entities would work, <laughs> will you destroy and uncreate all this, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pud puck shorts, boys and beyonds. And what if there was a hmm, what if there was a way of being that included entities and didn't exclude you? And everything that doesn't allow that to show up, will you guys just write and create it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pud puck shorts, boys and beyonds. And what if Halloween was a celebration of the spirit world, not of the horror world? And everything that doesn't allow us to celebrate the spirit world as the clean lightness it can be, rather than the terrifying horror people like to make it into, who are destroying and create all this place. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pud puck shorts, boys and beyonds. Ooh, cool. So what have you guys have misidentified and misapplied entities as they aren't? And all of this is for you guys to destroy and create it, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, puck, shorts, boys and beyonds. What have you guys been told entities are that they aren't? And will you guys just turn and create all this, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, puck, shorts, boys and beyonds. Oy, oy, oy. Cool. Did I just ask the same question twice? Different. It was different. What have you been told entities are that they aren't? And will you destroy and create all this, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shorts, boys, beyonds. <sighs> what have you been told? Entities are that they aren't. And I'll let this as we destroy and create it. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shorts, boys, beyonds. What have you taught people entities are that they aren't? <laughs> and all that that is, will you destroy it and create it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Do we have a question in the room? Yes, the witch next to the big penis. I was wondering if there's the other side to that. What have you been told they aren't that they actually are? Cool. So everywhere you've been told that, uh, what have you been told entities aren't that they are? You know, that this is where you destroy it and create it. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, puck, shorts, boys, and beyonds. How many of you guys as little kids came out and told your parents, there's someone in my room? And they were like, no, 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 no. You're making it up. And you're like, I don't think so. <laughs> And you forever then were confused about what you were aware of. So everything that you knew, everything that you know that entities are that you've been told that they aren't all your life time. You guys are starting to create all this, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, puck, shorts, boys and beyonds. And everything that doesn't allow you to know what to do with all the entities that you're aware of, how to be with all the entities that you're aware of, and what will work with all the entities. We would start and create all this, please. Thank you. Cool. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, puck, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Can we hand the microphone back? What about like when somebody wants to scare you and it's like they, they make an imagination or a projection of a scary thing? Like even like a movie, you know, when you watch a movie and it's almost like you start to believe that it could exist? So, yeah, so all of the all of the lies that you all the lies that you have made true about entities, destroy and create it, right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, puck, shorts, boys, beyonds, and all the lies that were enforced on you about entities, destroy and create them all. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pod, puck, shorts, boys, and beyonds. The cool thing is, if something's heavy, it's a lie. If it's light, it's true. So that's in truth, the only guiding standard you really require, especially when you're dealing with entities, to know what is true. Because a lot of people think that when they start dealing with entities and stuff, they think they're making it up and they're crazy, right? If it's light, it's really happening. <laughs> and everywhere you think this can't really be happening, will you destroy and create it, please? Thank you. Right, wrong, good, and bad, old nine, pod, puck, shirts, boys, beyonds. It is absolutely really happening. And what if that's just the tippy, 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 tip? of the iceberg, okay? 
Yeah, Meredith, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. Annie, Shannon just said that entities always have access to this world. When we return demons from to whence they came, never to return to this reality, can they still come back? They can. <laughs> I don't really think they want to, though. They're like, thank you, I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. Demons, you have to remember, or I'll tell you for the first time, um, are, have jobs. They're, they're slaves. They perform particular jobs. So a lot of them are really ready to go, okay? So when you return them from whence they came, they want to leave. And they can come back if they want to, and they can come back if you invite them to. Absolutely, okay? <laughs> Heidi made me move, but now I can't see you. I can't see my Maleficent! <laughs> Peggy Sue will move over. Such a beautiful shot. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Okay, cool. So Elaine from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Um, can entities prevent you from doing things like getting on calls? And if so, what is that about? She had a hard time logging in. Yeah, no, we, that's, a, that's a, definitely a global phenomenon with Talk to the Entities technology. Um, yeah, it, they can prevent you, but in a lot of cases, they're not actually trying to prevent you. They don't recognize the impact that they're having on the technology that you're trying to use. And so, like, when I do a Tech to the Entities video stream or a telecall, there's always technical problems. And so you have to ask the entities, number one, tell them, look, you're messing with my ability to get on the stream. Can you stand farther away from my computer, please? Usually that works, okay? Unless they're assholes, then you need to clear them. Okay? Uh, can we hand a microphone to Mike, please? Yeah. Mike Mendez. <laughs> So can you sort of like, I don't know anything, what are entities, what is true about entities? But you do know something because you're sitting there nodding, flowing very positive vibes told me the, towards me this whole time. Yeah, but what does that have to do with my awareness of entities? <laughs> are you being serious or are you no, being No, I'm a being serious. I really, because I mean, I hear like this chair is an entity. Okay. And a ghost, so I really okay, don't cool. know what you mean by entities. Well, an entity yeah. by definition is an energy that's defined. So that is a chair, a person, a company, right? Um, a trust. Um, for, the, for the intent and purposes of tonight, we're talking about spirits that were people or not, but not chairs or companies. Okay. Is that like a really tiny little police badge? Yeah. <laughs> it's really cute. It's so tiny. I'm a cop this much. <laughs> and then my handcuffs are huge and the badge is like. Where do you see my gun? <laughs> I actually didn't realize you were in a costume until I saw your gun. And I was like, oh, that's his costume. <laughs> um, so uh, the other thing is I was wondering I sort of how would I, how do I know what I am aware of about entities? Brilliant question. Developing or resensitizing to your awareness of entities is sort of like a retraining process. Since you, I mean, were you encouraged as a child to deal with entities or to be aware of entities or taught anything about it? No, I mean, I never had any personal experiences. The thing is, the only thing that did have for me that was like um, left a mark on me was when I was like, 10 years old, I went to see The Exorcist. You know? I think that movie left a mark on right. a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, ever since then, I was just like, I don't Freaked want to have anything to yeah. do with anything. Yeah, exactly. So right. all of the movies that and you And Poltergeist guys, didn't help either. Yeah, so all, everything that you bought from movies about the spirit world that freaked you right the fuck out, could we, you guys destroy it and create all those decisions and conclusions? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shorts, boys, man's... I've been dealing with the spirit world all my life, and I've never seen anyone's head turn around on their neck. <laughs> so good news is that's fictionalized, right? And so everything, so everywhere that the spirit world has been fictionalized and sensationalized, away from the ease that it can be, but you guys, can we destroy and uncreate all this place? Yes. Right and wrong, get in battle, nine pud puck shirts, boys and beyonds. So, um, your question about like how do you, what was? What yeah, it was kind of like what might be an example of awareness of entities? Like how would I know if I was aware? Because I don't even know cool. what Absolutely. it means to be aware of them or communicate with them. Or well, number one, you have to ask, is this an entity, right? 
Now, chances are, after this little thing tonight, you're going to have some more activity that you're not used to having, right? So that sort of could be a good thing, right? Or a bad thing if you don't want to have it. And so the most important thing with, with entity awareness is number one, do you actually desire to be aware of them? And like based on your, you know, based on your poltergeist experiences, does being aware of entities seem like a positive thing or a horrifying thing? Most people are so in fear about the spirit world, primarily because spirit awareness is a form of power that we have been heavily implanted, explanted, and beaten away from. Um, if you're aware of entities, you're uh, a witch, a demon, an evil person, a sick person. Uh, you should die. The they see the spirits, that evil witch. You know? And then everyone was like, oh, they're an evil witch. And then you're like, wait a minute, I'm just aware. <laughs> Oh, awareness isn't safe. Okay. Well, for me, when I was like 18, I got involved with a group called Cosmic Consciousness, and it was about getting higher consciousness. And okay. they said, oh, but you better be careful, because when you do that, you open yourself up to spirits, and you could be possessed by them. And I wasn't really happy about that idea either. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, because I saw Poltergeist when I was 10, and that possession thing was really fucked up. <laughs> So, number one, the, all this stuff about needing to protect yourself is bullshit, okay? Awareness is the greatest form of protection and strength. And so everywhere on all lifetimes that you were told to protect yourself from the things that would actually create great shit in your lives, we you just wrote out great all this, right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, putt, puck, shorts, boys, beyonds. And do you need to protect yourself or do you need to be more aware? People who get possessed do it deliberately to control others. You do not accidentally get entities. I will repeat this. People who get possessed do it deliberately to fuck with everybody else. <laughs> and all lifetimes that you got possessed deliberately to fuck with everybody and then lost your footing and gave yourselves over to the spirits. Will you destroy and uncreate all this, please? Yeah. Right and wrong, good and bad. All nine pud puck shirts, boys and meons, and everywhere, every way, and every how that you made spirits stronger than you, more capable than you, and that you allowed them to trick you into um, allowing them to take over, stupids, will you destroy and uncreate all this place? Yeah. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pud puck shirts, boys and meons. <laughs> the the interesting thing about getting more conscious is you do become more aware. Is that do you need to protect yourself from awareness or do you just need to be aware of awareness? That's one of the greatest sort of I think um, shortcomings of metaphysics is the teachings of protection rather than awareness as a great strength. Where are we taught that awareness is a great strength rather than where are we taught that awareness is like unsafe? We're taught mostly that awareness is unsafe. Is it? Or is it great? And all that this is, can we just drain and create it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pod puck shorts, boys and beyonds. Okay. So what might be an activity that I might become aware of or anyone else, such as, like, what do you mean by that? Are you talking about hearing voices? Are you talking about seeing things? Absolute what does that mean? All that, yes. I mean, people who hear voices are absolutely hearing entities. If anyone ever says, I hear voices, what they mean is, I'm talking to entities. Okay, um, seeing spirits is not everyone's cup of tea, but some people have a huge aptitude for it. Um, and so it, it's sort of, if you do desire to become more aware, the key has to be, okay, so what am I aware of and how am I aware of it? Not, if I don't see it this way, like I think I'm supposed to, I'm probably not doing it right kind of a thing. So you have to start to ask, what are your entity awareness signs and everybody has them um, a lot of people like uncontrollable coughing can be a huge entity presence um, some people get headaches rashes dizzy those are the physiological signs and then there's psychological signs like sch paranoid schizophrenia <laughs> anxiety um, depression these are all entity awareness symptoms and so if you start to bring awareness to the fact of, oh, I'm fucking dealing with entities, then and only then do people stand a chance of getting on top of it. 
it is, we live in a time where awareness is medicated, not when we're never educated. And so what if 97% of the mental disorders on planet Earth are entity awareness? And everything that that is, can we destroy it and create it? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shirts, boys, meons, and everything that doesn't allow entity awareness and entity education to persevere beyond anesthetization. <sighs> can we destroy it and create all this, please? Yes. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pud, puck, shirts, boys, and beyonds. Why would things like depression, anxiety, and rashes be activity or awarenesses of entities? Yeah. In other words, why would entities want to do that to us? Like They're actually not doing it to you. You're doing it to you. And the reason that that is is because you can't actually shut off awareness. You can only sort of like twist it or push it or like shove it away or like kind of try and avoid it. You actually can't stop being aware. And so when you try and block off your awareness of entities, the awareness still has to find a way to come through. And so your body can communicate a lot with you about what's going on. And those are the physiological signs or symptoms. Or your awareness or your being is trying to communicate with you in a million ways to fucking be like, alert, 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 you're aware, you're aware, you're aware. And if you don't acknowledge that it's entities, it just is a slippery slope. As soon as you acknowledge it's entities, it's like, clink, lightness. And then you handle it. And that's what all of Talk to the Entities is, is handling it. For me, the cool thing, the intriguing part about the entities is to have the awareness for me would be an evidence that there's more to life than me and this body and yeah. that that's really an illusion and that we really don't die. That's the positive, cool part for me. And the other one is I heard that you can put them to work and help you make more money. <laughs> 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 yeah, I heard that rumor going around too. Yeah. So... You know, and so like, so for me, it's like, I mean, you're sort of sitting in a room right now of people that are doing like a very advanced training for Talk to the Entity. So, and I thank you so much for showing up because I think your questions are brilliant. And I know a lot of people around the world on the stream have these questions too. Um, and so you're, I mean, you're talking to somebody, me, who I was dealing with spirits as a baby and all growing up and it nearly killed me, but I was fortunate enough to have access. And so I was able to use the tools of access and gain myself and in that start to put together all the awareness that I had tried to make go away as a teenager. And what it turned into was a severe awareness of entities. <laughs> and so as much as I didn't want to believe it, and I definitely didn't want to handle it, I had to. And it's turned out to be this magical possibility that I, no one ever fucking talks about and no one ever like uses it to create greater. They usually use it to create significance or like a witch hunt. And so we live in a different time now and to continue on as though the spirit world doesn't exist is just simply sort of like feigning ignorance to a certain degree. It's like, when is it gonna be okay for the spirits to be part of our world like again kind of a thing? Um, and it's definitely not for everybody, but it's definitely the wave of the future. Whether people like it or not. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, I just had a question about the, when you were talking about demons and um, you said they'll, they, they want to go, except if you invite them back. How does one invite them back? I miss you. I need you. My demons love me. I don't know how to function without them. Am I going to have power without my demons? loneliness also demons like a lot of people can have very like long tumultuous relationships with their demons like really really dysfunctional relationships with their demons that they think is like right and so when those demons go away the person might feel like they're losing their greatest love or like the love of their life or the one person that understood them or none of which is really true but the demons also have a way of giving you information or energies that will always activate you into inviting them back in kind of a thing. And so you just, it's just like any kind of dysfunctional relationship. You kind of have to get real, like, does this person care about me or is this actually fucked up? Is this as fucked up as I think it is? <laughs> right, so, and it's like, 
The other thing people have to remember is you don't accidentally get demons. Like you invite them in and you create them and a lot of people, it's like, what is it that the demons told you they would give to you? And a lot of times that's like power. They're like, if we work together, you'll be the most powerful in the world, you know? And then they just like eat your face off. <laughs> or you get a little badge. Or you get a little badge. Or all you get is a little badge. <laughs> they, my demons will only have a big badge. Right? And so people who deal with having suicidal thoughts a lot or hearing like you should kill that person or people, a lot of times when people are um, drug addicts or alcoholics, they're dealing with really heavy demon influence. If you ever hear in your head you should kill yourself or you should kill that person, that's a demon, right? So what, what's Let's get your microphone. What's the difference between a demon and an entity? A demon is an entity. We're just putting it under the umbrella of entities. So a demon's a bad entity? <laughs> I would say a demon... Okay, a demon, okay, so here's the history of demons. So the word demon is a Latinized version of the Greek word demoni, which started being coined by, I believe, Plato, and he was writing about the spirits of dead warriors and calling them demonies. It was also believed in ancient Greece that all artists, writers, actors, musicians, poets, dancers, singers, etc., all artists had demons spirits that they worked with to create their art with. And I believe that this is why we have the present day suffering, starving, batshit crazy artist, because they are working with spirits, but not handling it very well. And so demons sort of became very vilified through, again, religion, especially Christianity. Um, and that being said, there are spirits that will call demons that really want to fuck your shit, <laughs> really want to fuck your shit up. Mostly because their job is to make sure that unconsciousness and anti-consciousness prevails and that consciousness doesn't prevail. And that's all that demons are. They're just spirits whose jobs are designed to make sure that consciousness doesn't prevail. Will they win? No. Okay. Kindness, joy is a demon repellent. Anger, judgment, sadness, is a demon attractor, right? And so what joy are you refusing that you could be choosing that if you chose it would exodus all demons from planet Earth <laughs> and everything that doesn't allow that, let's destroy it and create it. Thank you. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pod puck shorts, boys and beyonds. Yeah. You can I'm, keep the mic between you guys. I was just gonna add, when I first started working with you yeah. and we let go of some pretty gnarly demons, um, what I found was just all of the space that I actually had that I, um, I guess, what do I want to say? What I noticed most was the places where I didn't really want to deal with my life and create my life yeah. were the places that it, yeah, I could exactly. sense that, that that's what I was allowing them to do for me was actually yeah. create my life for the places I didn't want so to. So everywhere that you decided you didn't want to handle your life, that you invited spirits slash demons in to run things for you, whatever area of your life that is, sex, love life, money, family, health, life, <laughs> will you destroy and uncreate all this, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pod puck shirts, boys and beyonds, and all of the demons that you gave the job to to take care of your life so you could check out, will you destroy and uncreate all that? <laughs> and tell them, their jobs are done now, they can go home now, you'll take it from here. <laughs> Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pud puck shirts, boys and beyonds. Okay? Yeah. Everywhere that you have been demonized as a humanoid or as a being of difference in any lifetime, will you guys destroy and uncradle that, please? Yes. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pud puck shirts, boys and beyonds. Yes. Cool. And everything that doesn't allow you to know when you're dealing with a real demon. And when you're dealing with the figurative demon, we destroy and create all this. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pud puck shirts, boys and beyonds. Ready for me? I am. Okay. Many, many questions. So lots of people are having trouble with electronics and all kinds of things. So no lots of questions about that. Do you want to speak to that a little bit? So if you guys are having trouble with the technology, ask the entities 
to stand farther away from your computer. Like outside. <laughs> like for the entirety of the stream. Cool. Goril. Krill. Um, Krill. She said, 20 minutes into the class, it felt like I was about to drown into the chair, feeling totally drunk or stoned, like something heavy pushing over me. Is this awareness of unconsciousness? Happy Halloween! <laughs> 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 then she started shivering and felt like she was being pulled into the earth. So, how aware of entities are you? And what energy, space, and consciousness can you and your body be to facilitate, transform, and change all entities and energies with total ease? Yeah. Svetlana, what would it take to use all of the energies on Halloween to our advantage? Yeah. What would it take? <laughs> She also wants to know, is there a way to create ease with awareness of entities while sleeping? If you have a lot of night activity, it's because you're not dealing with it in the daytime. Um, people who have night activity tend to, well, if you're having that activity, the way to handle it is to deal with it in the daytime when you're awake. And so I don't know what talk to the entity stuff you've done or haven't done, but basically like you need to have some daytime business hours and you need to start processing entities. If you do that well in the daytime, properly and thoroughly, they won't come to you at night, okay? But you're gonna have to deal with it in the daytime because at nighttime you ain't gonna handle it well at all because you'll be sleeping. Cool. Georgia asks, uh, how do you clear spirits that have taken residence in a house in a different time but are also here now? Well, in haunted houses, um, good topic, by the way, for Halloween, since we need to call spirits living in houses haunting for some reason. Um, in haunted houses, when you have an entity who's like stuck in a time, like you'll have, especially in older properties and stuff, this is way more in Europe and on the east coast of the US. It's not as common on the west coast of the US. We're new world, very new. Not a lot of time for haunting yet. Um, give it another couple hundred years, plenty of haunted houses. Um, that being said, you can have, let's say somebody builds a house in like 1802 and then it's like they, their point of view is this is my house, I own this house. And then their body dies and they stay within that point of view. They keep in that definition of this is my house, I own this house. And they just sort of hang out there. And they might, and it could, this could occur with somebody that didn't build a house but just has the point of view, this is my house, right? And so if you've got an entity like that, first and foremost, you gotta, you gotta be like, hello, wake up you don't have a body anymore why do you need a house <laughs> right and if they're like my house then you have to be like not your house <laughs> my house is this enough for you hanging out in this house forever usually the question of is this enough for you will start to wake them up and then you have to help them recognize that they have another choice to move on from that identity and this is my house, right, to another possibility. So, you know, you can process them like you would a person. So everything that makes you think that this is the, mo this is the greatest choice for you to hang out in this house forever, we just try and uncreate all that. Some of them will be willing. Some of them will be unwilling. I have never met a house that I couldn't clear. All entities are willing if you're willing to do what it takes to move them on. Bigger conversation for another time. Keep going. Yep. Sean, I'm wondering if you could speak to being a contribution to entities. I've been getting regular assistance from entities in my work and I'm wondering if there's something I could be contributing to them to keep that balanced. Well, have you asked? <laughs> you could ask, is there anything you guys want from me? I have found a lot myself that receiving them just purely acknowledging them, which it sounds like you're doing, and receiving them is a huge contribution to them. Okay. Vinrishi, my 11-year-old daughter sees entities and she is aware of their presence, but sometimes they just keep appearing and disappearing over and over again. She, had tried, she has tried clearing, but does not seem, but it doesn't seem to work with these. What is the message? 
Um, here. Well, if okay, so well, is uh, is there a portal in the house? Because if you keep clearing and clearing and clearing and it doesn't ever end, there's a portal. Either someone's a portal or there is a portal. So you just close the portal and keep it shut. Or she likes fucking with you with her entities. <laughs> and Elaine, do we have to deal with entities? I mean, if you don't, what happens? Well, if I don't, I get fucked up. But if you don't, I don't know. <laughs> and she asks, can I send them to you guys to deal with? <laughs> Not if you don't want them back in double. Um, no, you absolutely don't have to deal with entities. And I mean, it's something, this is, the streamers can't see, but the, the person behind the second camera is my, not my oldest friend, because she's not old, but I've been <laughs> friends with her the longest since I was 12, Heidi. And I remember you came to a class of mine once. Um, you should come out and let people see you. She's a ghost from the Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> um, Everyone wants to know who I'm talking about. And she looks so beautiful. This is a ghost from the Titanic named Heidi. <laughs> um, Heidi came to one of a, an introduction I did years ago. And we were driving home afterwards. And she goes, I don't know if you remember this. She goes, she's like, she's like, is it OK if I just like am not really that interested in entities? <laughs> I was like, totally. I fucking am not that interested in entities. <laughs> but it's something that I have to do because it makes my life so much better. And I am what's called like an entity sensitive. And there are a lot of people who are entity sensitives. And these are mostly the people who are institutionalized or committing suicide because of their severe entity awareness. And so for some people, it is a life or death thing. For you, it might not be. Like, it isn't really for Heidi. For a lot of people, they can get away with I mean, entities just don't really show up in their lives. And that's neither here nor there. It's that some people have to handle entities, otherwise it fucks them up really bad. But if you're not one of those people, how'd you get so lucky? <laughs> and you know what? It's like, if you want to be more educated about it, read Talk to the Entities. Do the Talk to the Entities classes. Check out all of our free products. Um, and if you want someone else to handle it, get in touch with a Talk to the Entities facilitator and have them do the processes and the clearings for you. And Absolutely, you know? She said, does it work to just acknowledge them? <coughs> sometimes. And sometimes there's more that's required. If you do go down this path, you're going to have to look at a lot of stuff. OK? Anybody else in the room have a question? I'm hogging the mic. I? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm really, uh, oh, sorry. Um, I am really inspired uh, by what you're putting out about co-creating with the entities for magic and other possibilities. Can you speak totally. more? And like, like my trip is, well, I would love that. You know, like how do you call in the entities that you would be wanting to co-create yeah. with and not so much calling in the other guys? Right, exactly. Um, OK. Creating with entities and receiving from entities is what I would say is like more part of the advanced curriculum of Talk to the Entities because you have to get to the point where you're like comfortable with them. But in addition to being comfortable with them, you're aware of who you're dealing with. Sort of like with people. <laughs> like how many people have you worked with in life or had relationships with in life that you got down the road and you were like, this person's a fucking asshole, <laughs> you know? And you're like, okay. And then did you make the same mistake again? Right? So you've got to have to sort of, you have to really stoke up your awareness of what kind of person, what kind of being that you're dealing with, um, first and foremost. Um, you can't go on autopilot and you can't just hope for it. You actually have to look at who you're dealing with. And that, that level of awareness or that level of commitment to what you know tends to be a really difficult threshold for a lot of people. And it's not difficult, it's just, it asks a lot of you. And if you knew everything that you know about people and entities, what would change in your life? First and foremost, you got to get clear on the beings that you're dealing with, OK? To put it simply. Secondly, 
start receiving more, right? Once you're finally playing with the ones that you know are great, that are supportive, you, it's up to you now to like really push down your barriers, really take the time and space to actually acknowledge them, to let them be present with you, even to touch you physically, to start to connect, start to create more of a connection or an acknowledgement by you and your body of their presence. Take counsel with them. Listen to the energy that they put forward. Don't exclude or ignore them in favor of denser, more uh, obvious energies. Um, talk to the entities is an entity business and I have grown it with the spirits. I didn't even realize that's, that's what I was doing at first until I sort of you know, got it more and more as I went along. Um, they have provided and supported and pushed me in fucking incredible magical ways that are so humbling. I am never alone. Granted, sometimes I want to be alone. I am, I'm, no matter where I am in the world, they're there just waiting for me to let them make this magic. And so I've had to really practice and really like almost sometimes push myself to receiving with them and participating with them because once you start to receive and participate with some really amazing powerful beings, your whole fucking shit gets changed around. You become really different in the world. The, your whole universe changes. Is that a ride you're willing to take? You know, in any lifetime that you did have powerful spirit par partners and you were separated or judged for it or made wrong or told that they weren't what they really are, which is our companions in consciousness, will you destroy and uncradle that? Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pud puck shorts, boys and beyonds. That being said, you can also have a lot of demons showing up being like, I'm your friend. <laughs> so you kind of have to know what you're dealing with. The good news is the beings who are worth creating with feel light. If they feel weird at all, no thanks. Yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you. Right on. Cool. Yeah. And that kind of tied into what you brought up about how you can work with them and stuff. So just something that you all can start playing with that's really fun. Start asking entities to bring you fucking money. Yeah, that's what I want. Do it. <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you started? No, I didn't know how. You didn't know how. You just have to ask. Mike, Mike take the mic. Get Mike a mic. I just said, yeah, that's what I want, but I didn't know how to ask. For you just ask. To bring me money. Yeah. Is that what you said? You, ha you ask. Yeah, bring me money. Can you guys all bring me some money, please? Yeah. Now, I guarantee you that since I've said that, it's going to show up for me. But I'm like really, really, really good at it. I'm really practiced at it. When I first started, I was like, yeah, right. This is going to fucking work. But then I started finding jewelry. And then there was all of a sudden there was more money in my wallet. And then all of a sudden there was like $2,000 more for class than the people that attended. It didn't start at 2000 It started at like 10 bucks. We don't know where this 10 bucks came from. I was like, it was probably entities because I asked them, but I must be fucking tripping. Entities pay me. Oh, there's a hundred extra. Oh, there's a thousand extra. Where'd this extra two thousand dollars come from? My bookkeeper used to make her fucking crazy. <laughs> Till I told her, I was like, it's entities. She's like, okay. Wow. She like created a section in QuickBooks for the money that comes from entities that we have no idea where it came from. Wow. So you have to ask. <laughs> you just have to ask, but then you also have to be willing to receive. And that's a huge part of it. Barriers down, open, willing. If you started receiving money, jewelry, support, contribution, gifts from entities, how much would that shift your whole world? Are you willing to have that shift? Okay, and everything that doesn't allow it, let's just try and create it. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pod puck shirts, boys and beyonds. The, the, um, the time it really was driven home for me was, oh, I got it, it's a sword. I get it, you're like a pirate witch. I just got it. It's a sword that looks a lot like a penis. <laughs> Danger sword. Right. I mean, it's pink too, right? And it's really pink. It's like really ready. It's like a bulging. Um, Live all over the world. Live all over the world. I told you, I'm stepping out, baby. Um, the first time this really like 
drove home for me was this is now this is a story I tell a lot in my classes. I was in Australia. This was some years ago, about three and a half, four years ago, and I was staying in a big house by myself. And the woman who owned the house was, did some access, and she was familiar with me. And she was showing me all around the house and opening all the bedroom doors. And she was like, "Look, there's enough room for all the entities to stay." And like we both laughed, and I was like, "Yeah, well, only if they pay me." And I said it totally as a joke, right? Only if they pay me. And you know, and then we finished. She finished showing me around. And I was coming out back through the kitchen, and there was a gold and diamond and emerald ring right on the kitchen counter. Like literally, nothing on the kitchen counter, right in the middle. And I looked at it and I thought, did Liz leave her ring here? That's weird. So I picked it up and I took it in the other room. I was like, Liz, you know, here's your ring. And she looked at it. She's like, this isn't mine. And she handed it back to me. And I went, that was fast. And I really got that they were paying me to stay there. And I went, OK. <laughs> and I got how you need to ask. And you need to let them deliver it in the ways that they can. OK? And when stuff, and the, the, also the way to make that work better is when entities do deliver stuff, whether it's cash, jewelry, support, an upgrade on the airplane, a, I don't know, a door opening easier for you. Like literally, if I ever get like a stuck door, I'm like, can somebody help me? And then it opens right away. Um, or if I'm lost, because I travel a lot, a lot, a lot, and I'm lost a lot, a lot, a lot, I'm like, can someone just help me fucking get there? And then I'll see a cat running around a corner, or this light will go over there, or I'll just know I need to go, right? So that's a lot of support too. Every time they do contribute, you have to acknowledge it, even if it's like the littlest thing. You're not making it up, okay? You've got to thank them for it, and it will get stronger and stronger. Cool. Yeah. It's actually really easy if you're willing to have it kind of a thing, which is the hard part. <laughs> the entities are the easy part. People are the hard part. What's that all about, our resistance? To receiving, yeah. yeah why? I think because people just, like to have hard lives. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Meredith, before we get there, yeah. I want to do something really quick. Now, so let's, oh, your fake walkie talkie fell on the ground. Oh, <laughs> oh and, <laughs> the entities are like, oh, yeah. Here, now I forgot. I'm to go <laughs> it's really funny. Um, so all the entities that are present, for everyone out on the stream, for everyone here in the room, and out all over the world for Halloween, first and foremost, let's ask them to stand the fuck back. <laughs> now, let's, say, let's ask all the ones that would like to leave, that are ready to go, that are just looking for a way to leave, let's just thank them all very much and tell them they're all free to go now. Everyone's free to go now. Now. Did anybody in this room start feeling the cool breeze as soon as I said that? So you guys around, this, around the world on your streams, did any of you guys start noticing the cool breeze instantaneously? Okay. So now all the other entities that are a little stucker, let's do this. So who are you guys? Who were you all before that? 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 And who will you all be in the future? What are you? What were you all before that? 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 And what will you be in the future? And what are all your jobs? <sighs> and what were all your jobs before that? And what were all of your jobs before that? And 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 what will your jobs be in the future? Thank you, you can all go now. You all have to go now and destroy and create all the magnetic imprinting. Right, long, good, bad, all nine, pod, poc, shorts, boys, beyonds, okay? And what will it take to keep the clearing going for the rest of the night? Depending on where you are in the world, the rest of Halloween, right? Keep the entity clearing going. We let them keep going, let them keep going, keep going, keep going, keep clearing, keep clearing. Because they're gonna go in like waves and it takes a bit when we're dealing with this many because we've got like 400 people of, tuning in with us around the planet, which is an excellent opportunity for huge clearings. Okay. So just know we've started the process. Keep staying present with it and keep letting them clear. And if you start feeling weird, time to clear more. <laughs> okay. Now all the demons that are ready to go, and even the ones that aren't ready to go, that are still going to go. <laughs> Let's return them all from whence they came. Never to return to anybody or this reality ever again. 
return them all from whence they came, never to return to any body or this reality ever again. Return them all from whence they came, never to return to any body or this reality ever again. Return them all from whence they came, never to return to any body or this reality ever again. <sighs> Finally, the demons were the most grateful. Bye-bye. Go kill your own planet. <sighs> A little cold, Gosha. I'll just take it cold now, Gosha. I'm like overheating now. Thank you. Okay, Meredith, ready, ready to go. Can I ask a question? Can you yeah. Please cut me off. Oh. Oh. I'm totally alone. Go, Peggy Sue. Um, I had a photo taken in my bedroom about a year and a half ago or something, and I was showing it to somebody recently, and they said, can you see what's behind you? And I went, holy shit, there was a man standing there. Yeah. Uh, very, very clear. Is it still there, even though that was like a year and a half ago? I know you're going to ask me, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I think so. And is it a demon or an entity? Okay, so this is so this is like talk to the entities clarifying what, who and what you're dealing with one on one, okay? Number 1. Relative or non-relative? Relative, related. Yeah. She already stated it's a man, so we don't need to go male or female, right? We got it's a man, it's a relative. Do you know who it is now? The first person that pops in your head, yeah. it's that's who it is. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So then the question becomes, okay, so like what's he still hanging around for? Does he want something from you or does he want to give something to you? That's why entities hang around. They either want something from you or they want to give something to you. And they will hang around until they're able to give that thing to you or to get that thing from you. It's called handling relationships. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> So you, that's a question. So does he want something from you or does he want to give something to you? I, 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 cool. So both. here's like a, here's both. a, here's a, oh, okay. Can it can be both. This, in this case, it's more one than the other. And so this is a little trick I like to use, which my sister taught. No, Simone Millicis came up with this actually. Okay. Is it this hand or this hand? He wants to give something to you. Okay. Yeah. I'm emotionally attached, so I'm, I can't. It be makes clear. it very difficult to get clear. So, as a facilitator, when someone's emotionally attached, take the words off the table and just be like, this energy or this energy? Great. It makes it a lot easier for people to choose. Mm -hmm. um, so, he wants to give something to you. Cool. Is it support? Is it control? Is it caring? What does it feel most like? Support. So now, what's it going to take to actually have it? So what I would suggest to you, since, well, for those of you that have entities that desire to support you, that you're like having a hard time receiving it, and it feels really like overwhelming, or, and it is, and it's awesome, and you're still going to have to go through it, you know, take the time on your own. What I would suggest is even like lay down and invite him to come forward and say, I'm so sorry, I've, I've been, I've really, I'm sorry I've been so hard to get through to. Can you please help me now? And invite him to touch you or to hold you and just go for the ride and get through whatever that that needs to be processed. Because it's something that you haven't processed fully yet, emotionally, energetically, and sometimes even physically. So you're going to go through all that. Thank you. Totally. And tell him also, tell, give him permission not to back off on you until you've made it through. Like tell him not to give up on you and that you really want to get through it. Okay? And that's what you do with a being who is there for you and that does have your back. And it's not coincidentally who's like standing behind you. Well, I actually... Oh, let's get your microphone. I actually woke up at like 3 o'clock in, in the morning and I heard him say something, but I thought it was me. And I just did what he told me to do, which was take the picture. 
and then I went back to sleep. Cool. And then, and then cool. a year and a half later, I, you know, I didn't even see mm. it. So interesting. Cool. So a couple of people were wondering, you mentioned figurative and the difference between regular and figurative entities. Cool. Demons. So demons. what I meant by figurative demons is the thought forms of the judgments that you create that work against you. Because sometimes you're just judgmental and you've created this like demon of your own like making and sometimes you're actually dealing with a, a spirit. So that's what I mean. The ones we invent and create are mortal, are, we're our own worst enemy kind of a thing. The judgments um, that we use to create the spirits that limit us. So those are the ones that we're creating and then there's actually the spirits. How do we know when to ask entities to, con I can barely talk anymore. I'm there's also yeah. winding down. How do we know when to ask entities to contribute or to clear them? You have to ask. That's, a big, that's actually a pretty big question and that's an awareness developing thing where you need to be aware of. I mean, I would say as a rule of thumb, just clear. First and foremost, just clear entities, see how that goes. And then if they don't leave, then you need to talk to them. Do we invite demons to deal with areas in our lives where we are actually potent and powerful and don't want to acknowledge those areas? Y yes, and or you were given a demon to make sure that you never became that potency. How come cats see entities so clear and we can't? Most animals can see entities better than we can. Because <laughs> they don't have the ability to block out awareness like we do. That's all. Yeah. Can they see demons too? Yeah. We're caught up on the stream. Cool. Okay. Well, how's it get better than this? So I think this has been a great conversation and I thank everybody for joining us for this and I hope this was fun for people. I hope this was educational. I hope you guys start to trust yourselves more and start to recognize that there's a massive world of possibility with spirits. Some good, some not so good, some fun, some not so fun, just like people. So what would it take for all of you to embrace your abilities and stop pretending like you aren't capable with the spirit world so that we can evolve into a more conscious way of being with the planet, with the spirits of the earth, with the spirits that desire um, our assistance and our participation for change, for creation, and for a different world. And how much of a gift could you be to all the spirits who want to get the fuck out of here and no one will listen to them? <laughs> so it's a different possibility, a different perspective, and um, what are you willing to be that could create a different reality? So I thank you all so much for being here. I thank you for joining us and go forth and prosper. Thank you so much. Thanks everybody out there. You're getting Bye. lots of gratitude. Cool. People are really grateful. Thank you so much. Awesome guys, well thanks so much for being here. And Mike, and what was your name? Yeah.